In the small old apartment, the noisy sound of playing video games and the sound of music with special effects. Fingers tapping on the mouse and keyboard quickly to the level that it is difficult to see. Finally he passed a difficult level. In the game, Frog with the nickname Frog Boy is a brave warrior, who is admired by many players with his unparalleled killing skills. But when the game is over, he looks at the screen in a daze, wishing that in real life he would be as admired as in this game. So, Frog looks up at the ceiling depressed by the compliments that evaporate as soon as he returns to real life. He has a strange real name, Frag, which means frog in English, perhaps because of that, he is also cowardly and bland on the sidelines of people's lives. As an ordinary student, he sometimes looks up to tall guys with many talents who are followed by girls. He has nothing but a pair of bottle butts, easy to part hair in the front, and a coconut snout in the back. Moreover, his height is limited and he lacks many words, such as economy, so even if he wants to be noticed by many people, Frog cannot do it. His wish to become strong has never come true. In the game, Frag Boy is so strong, like a superhero who descends to save young girls. Sometimes he wants to immerse himself in the admiration and surround of girls. Just thinking about it is cool. Sometimes the young man looks up at the sky and smiles like that. Suddenly Frag's mailbox has a new message. When he clicked on it, his hazel eyes suddenly widened in disbelief that she had asked to meet him. A smile bloomed on Frag's lips and then he suddenly felt depressed. Fantasy is always beautiful because it never comes true. But is it possible that the little princess is also an old man? Perverted muscle who likes to dress up as a schoolgirl? Thinking of that scene, Frog hugged and vomited. But, reality is probably not that cruel, right? Encouraging himself to think positively, the young man blew away the vision he had just thought of. Frog encouraged himself, his arms were about to touch the table. The keyboard was shaking and he agreed to meet the little princess. She said see you in the park tomorrow. He agreed right away. That night, the apartment echoed with a scream, and finally, Frog also successfully asked a girl out. The next day, the sun was not yet up, the Pikachu-shaped clock was ringing. He waved his hand to turn it off, his feet were ready to step out of the house, heading straight to the lily park. The young man stuck out his hand, licked some enzyme, spread it on his parted hair and then fondled the petals of some carefully wrapped white chrysanthemums. When he was done, he fondled the bow and confidently changed himself today. Everything was ready, only his legs were shaking slightly. As the light turned green, Frog blended into the crowd and walked across the street. Just walk through this section, he will meet the beautiful woman of his dreams, the heart in his. Chest was beating wildly, it was unclear whether it was nervousness, anxiety or excitement. Will Frog be able to immerse himself in the beautiful feelings he always imagined? No matter what the outcome is, Frog knew himself and others, it couldn't be as easy as in the game. Thinking forever, his steps gradually slowed down without realizing that the light had turned red. The young man still walked calmly, just being confident to feel. Recognize the budding love before it fades. Every step today is the beginning of a life. An introvert changes, from now on I will live differently. He was so lost in thought that he didn't hear the people behind him, screaming, not far away a car braked but too late. The front of the truck was very close, but Frog still had a hopeful smile on his lips. Until the sound of the collision sounded violently, the bouquet of white chrysanthemums flew away. Frog was hit by the truck and flew forward more than 10 meters, his bones broken, lying on the road in a strange way and blood flowing in streams. People rushed out to see the situation, some panicked and called for an ambulance. A crowd gathered around Frog who was gradually losing consciousness. He suddenly felt that the world was strangely quiet, only the petals of peach blossoms were falling, but it didn't touch the ground or time had stopped. How could that be? Time stopped as well. Hopeless as the love story he secretly wished for. Frog frowned tiredly, he hadn't done anything in his whole life, except playing games, but now he was tired. Is it over? Why is there a, some kind of board with the word post like this? Oh, Frog doesn't know, but whose bulging eyes are those? What's going on? A strange voice rang in his ear, I thought you, would accept it sooner, I'm your system. What system? I got hit by a car. Well, it's true, the strange voice continued to say something he didn't, understand much, why did it abandon you and reincarnate into this world? What the hell? I must be dreaming. The stranger grumbled, will you let me finish? No, tell those awful eyes to stop looking at me. Hey, the one who calls himself the system called Frag, calm down. You've just entered a new body, you haven't adapted yet. Frog asked to go back again, not wanting to listen to any more explanations. The system argued too much, now too tired, suddenly. Have to come to a new world, 
can you just go and be a human? Strange lines asked again, why give up? I just want to say that as long as the task is completed, you can choose. One of the rewards is to reincarnate and return to the real world. Well, knowing Frog was excited to know the mission. What? The system chuckled, don't be hasty. The mission has been planned, now get to know your body? Where's the hand? Frog asked in confusion why he couldn't see his hands anymore. And the new system said to look at yourself, there is. A lake in front of you, go there and have a look. Frog excitedly jumped up and down, he found that in front of him was right. There is a clear lake with rippling reflections. But wait, there were strange movements before his eyes. Dozens of snail sly eyes were staring at him. Then he looked down at himself in amazement, following their gaze and roaring. What is this? This is the shape of a mushroom. Frog realized in horror, has he transformed into a mushroom? Jumping up and down in a panic, Frog looked sideways, up and down to see if he had really turned into a mushroom. The snail's eyes looked at him as if he were a new friend. Frog was terrified and gritted his teeth and turned his head away, hoping it was all just a dream. But those eyes looked at him, that's all, the voice. The strange rustling of grass made me itch all over. These hideous toothed things chewed more and more, the sound. Moving around Frog scared him so much that he bit himself. My god, what kind of army is this? Who can tell me why snails have, have enough colors to appear in this horror interface? Frog looked around, his eyes wide open and bumped into a few lines of words. Oh my god, he froze. Five seconds noon, I know you'll feel that way, it's hard to accept, isn't it? No, but it's okay, the game has started and time is running out, I, I can't tell every detail, so just use the new data entered into the head. Frog was bewildered, just asked what data, suddenly countless strange lives appeared in his mind. This is a mysterious magical world, there are many ecological differences, between different regions, but they are generally known as the continent of bravery. Long ago, humans and monsters lived together very happily, helping each other, the giant monsters also helped humans do heavy work. In return, humans use magic to help monsters survive when they get into trouble. At that time, both humans and monsters lived in peace and harmony learning from each other and becoming very close friends. Until one day, a demon named Gallum turned everything upside down. He is a high-level demon, known as the leader of all demons. Gallum hates humans, arguing that humanity is a part of nature itself and should not be separated as a separate superior species. So he led his army to attack the human stronghold. In order to counter the monster's attack, humans began to build up their strength. Many guilds were formed over time, receiving quests from the kingdom to defeat monsters. Finally, Thanks to the combined efforts of the six strongest legendary warriors, the demon lord Gallum was sealed away. But the demon lord Gallum's magic was too strong, the soldiers divided it into six different places, including the Castle of Time, the Desert of Colors, the World of Sinking, Limbo, the Valley of Clover, the Bustling Volcano and the Land of the Dead. After the demon lord was sealed away, the continent of bravery was at peace for a short time. Because humans and monsters had turned their backs on each other since then. Gallum was sealed away, his mind still lingered around, looking for an opportunity to cause chaos in order to regain his lost power. Finally, the warrior seals were lifted to revive Gallum. Frog read in confusion as the words continued to run. If the demon lord Gallum is successfully revived, the continent of bravery will surely be plunged into chaos. To prevent this, you have been chosen and summoned here. And so time is up and the mission is about to begin. If you have any questions, ask me right away. After a moment of bewilderment, Frog finally had a question. You mean if I stop the demon lord from resurrecting, I can go back to my original world. The word bingo appeared clearly, just to drive Frog even crazier. He cursed, bingo, that lottery, so why not turn me into a warrior? But turned into a mushroom with no hands or feet and jumping around like this. Just said there were no legs, he slipped and fell backwards in pain. The system popped up a line saying not to get too excited. Later you will get used to your new body, but you have to hurry. Don't forget the first mission is about to start. Frog flexed his glutes and tried to support himself but couldn't. He exhaled to gain strength and then continued to curse. Why the hell didn't I turn into an elf or a mist warrior in the shape of a human? Otherwise, a salamander or a spider would be fine but it's better than being a mushroom. Frog was already tense, it wasn't funny. Before he finished cursing, he fell backwards again because his head was too heavy. He murmured softly as tears streamed down his face. Fuck it, the mushroom lady wants to fight the devil. Oh really, I won't go back to earth anymore. Seeing Frog crying, the words changed to something shorter for him to see clearly. The player can choose whatever he wants. The important thing is that the game that heaven has given starts right away. Mission. Try to survive within the specified time. Number 5. 
then four, then three jumped out like a living thing. Number six, suddenly he saw the group of snails crawling away. He retreated into the grass, climbing up the ropes to disappear as if fleeing the countdown. Only Frog didn't know anything and kept his eyes fixed on the number two and then one. Then the mission announcement began, you have to survive. They're coming, there are 59 minutes and 57 seconds left. Suddenly a dim stone gate appeared, revealing an extremely bright light. Frog rolled over to get a better look at it, and inadvertently asked again what was coming. Oops, the light at the stone gate swirled. Just as the number zero popped out, he saw a human. Leg came out and a bunch of kids of all sizes ran out excitedly. Some were shouting, some were panting, but all were running towards Frag. Before he knew it, he was so scared that he was chewing on his teeth, only to have time to realize I was dead, and flicked a person behind a bush, sticking out half an eye full of vigilance. In this world I am a monster, those little ones. Warriors are preparing to hunt me, aren't they? No, the thing in the hand of the little boy running first is a light branch, with only one attack point. Usually used to hang clothes, but it's too easy for him to hit a snail and send it flying into the sky. This little boy in green is a level 1 warrior, looking at the red snail that I just killed plus two experience points. The other quickly ran to the green snail, it was so scared that its head fell into its shell and it shook violently. Suddenly, the little boy hit it and knocked out both eyes, only hearing him laugh and say why are you so stupid, using a stone is a better attack than a branch. Seeing its kind being killed, the green banana snail was very scared, it tried to be silent and rushed, as fast as it could, not wanting to end up like its dead friends. Unexpectedly, as it was running, it was lifted off the ground, and its bulging eyes turned, to see a little girl with pigtails, who asked gently, is the little snail so cute? Can I keep it as a pet when I become a master of pets? Her sparkling eyes made the snail think it was alive, but the angel squeezed it, its neck and laughed, saying that now it had to collect materials to upgrade. The trusting snail was pulled hard, and was thrown into a magic jar. The cute little girl sang Lala and went to find nine more. Storage jar, can only hold ten small items, can be transferred after the magic is transferred to the owner. It's cheap and small, and doesn't hold much. Soon the forest echoed with the laughter of the children hunting snails. From Frag's point of view they were no different from demons to monsters like him. With a puff, something as black as ink knocked the little boy in green. Into a rock, he fainted with a little blood on his head. It turned out that he had really fainted from losing blood. His body gradually faded and was transferred back to the novice village. Experience points were deducted by 100, the light branch was also broken, and the leader had been eliminated, causing the children carrying the snails to look to see who the culprit was. Level 3 snail father with the dream of becoming a stepping stone for the normal strawberry group or playing on the board of his own, now saw his family being killed with tears streaming down his face, crying for a few hours. Frog looked furtively at the one who looked different from the others, wondering why. He could still see its description and level. The system replied to the player, this is the effect of the surround check skill that you have acquired. For more details, please open the list and view it. But he was busy watching the snail fight in the middle of the circle of children, each of whom wanted to kill it to gain more experience points. But the melee caused a fat kid to lose all his blood, and he was immediately transferred back to the novice village. Next, a tall boy and another boy suffered the same fate. Add this little girl, and the snail has already taken down five kids. But behind it was still a kid laughing gleefully. Those guys from the novice village are just the opening act for me to catch you. The snail father turned back to see who was talking. Unexpectedly it was a level 4 warrior boy holding a small knife and running over. I've been waiting for this time to deal with you, don't even think about running this time. The snail cried and screamed as it rushed over to the little boy and confronted his sword head on. But it lowered its head and bit down on his booted foot with all its might. But unexpectedly it was a thick skinned defensive item with a defense of 5 points. It was made from the skin of a wild boar. So it was extremely tough, not only was it not damaged, it also protected his foot well, so the snail was easily kicked away. This little boy seemed to be very experienced, he knew that the snail would slow down without its skateboard. I worked hard for two months to save enough money to buy that item, don't even think about winning. In the little boy's hand was a sharp sword with an attack power of 9 points. Short sword. Made of good quality iron and light, suitable for explorers. The only drawback is that it needs constant maintenance or it will rust. The snail father spat out a broken tooth. Its expression caught the eye of Frag, who was moved by the intense fatherly love. 
So moved, he couldn't help but shout out encouragement, you can do it, snail father. It must have heard Frag's words, because it died immediately. Afterwards, the little boy pointed his sword at the snail and laughed. It's not that difficult, it's just that my weapon is too good for a novice, but it's also normal. He grabbed the snail's head and pulled it out of its shell, finally getting the shell of the biggest one. Experience points increased by 20 points, the little boy laughed happily, and he also got a lot of snail meat. Lucky him. He put the giant shell on his head and ran away, singing la 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 I'm going to be a warrior. Frog was so scared that his teeth chattered when he heard the shout, his life suddenly shrank. Back to just the bush, and he cried out in his heart how can I survive, who will come to save me? Because the noise had attracted the children, who walked over with evil smiles on their faces. There's a noise like this, so there must still be a snail hiding here, right? Frog heard the sound of the bushes being parted, and turned his eyes to look. The group of humans saw the tree. Mushroom with eyes, nose and mouth and shouted A, and he also exclaimed, they saw me. They will definitely take me back to be fried mushrooms. Frog saw the future as darker than a turned off light. But unexpectedly the children screamed and ran away, there's a monster mushroom here. Oh, that's strange, are they afraid of me? Frog read the words on the window in a daze, of course they are afraid. I told you to try opening the attribute list to check your skills, but you wouldn't listen. He began to trust the system more or less, so he asked how to open the list. The system changed the interface. Immediately, his classification was Monster Mushroom, no occupation, no name, only level 5. At the bottom there was a resurrection coin, and the stats weren't very good. Slow and low, but Frog understood why the novices were afraid of him. Even though he was a mushroom, he was still a mushroom with a much higher level than them. The lowest level 1 was the colorful snail. Then the level 3 snail that was taken by the level 4 novices, and above the children was Frog at level 5. Glancing at the window with delight, he said to Wong, open the skill list to see what I have. There were only two level 1 lines, identification and bull mushroom. Identification simply introduces the character by name and level, occupation, basic information that Frog had already experienced. But the skill had a strange name. The bull mushroom was actually a form of attack that didn't cost any stamina. Suddenly, feeling very cool, Frog held a branch in his mouth and sneered, this is just the beginning, but the novice village is dead to me. Hopping out of the bushes, Frog laughed to himself, thinking that being a mushroom would be a sure death, but unexpectedly it was heaven's will for me to destroy the novice village. And so from a trembling mushroom tooth, Frog is now brazenly looking for his prey. Over there were three children trying to figure out how to get the snail inside the green shell to come out. The mushroom warrior couldn't help but feel indignant. Hey guys, I'll show you what a mushroom wife is like. After saying that, he activated the bull mushroom and charged forward at an altar-like speed, making a few bong-bong sounds. Two novices. The two novices fell to the ground unconscious, foaming at the mouth, their bodies glowing green as they were teleported back to the village. So Frog pocketed five experience points easily, while the third guy was still wondering why his two friends had disappeared. If you want to know why, then, look at Frag's sinister smile. He was like a ghost that scared the little boy to death, who asked in a trembling voice, why are you here, it's not time yet. Turning into a vine and quickly leaving the dangerous area, the little boy led the way to a higher area, his eyes constantly looking down below. Escaping. He scratched his head in confusion, it wasn't time for the monsters to appear, so why did a monster as tall as a mushroom appear at this time? Frog stood below the vines and looked up, wondering what this little boy was thinking. Did he think he couldn't climb without arms or legs? Come to me, boy. The round butt jumped up. Frog bumped his head straight into the vine, but it was true that he didn't have any hands. The vine shook the mushroom and he had a chance to bite down on it with his teeth. But that was all. There was no way he could climb up. Frog let himself fall to the ground again, muttering that it must be hard to be a monster. Well, let's just let that little boy go. There are plenty of novices. Looking down from above, seeing the mushroom monster leave, the little boy with two horns had already planned his next move. Frog flicked himself through the forest, a stone flew from nowhere and hit him on the orange head. He screamed ouch 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 ouch, and his health was reduced by two points. Used to being the leader, Frog turned around and growled, why did you guys dare to pick up a stone and throw it at me even though you know I'm a high level monster? Because there were so many of them, the little boy with two horns had returned with three reinforcements ranging from level 2 to level 3. One had a coconut head with vegetables growing on top and a shield, 
and the other had a sword and a haircut, both attacking and defending. But to Frag, it was nothing. He turned his entire mushroom body and slammed himself into the ground, his lips curled into a sinister smile. His eyes flashed with danger, warning them, I'm not an ordinary monster. After saying that, he charged towards the children like he did with the group earlier, hitting the round shield with eight defense points. It was made of thick wooden blocks, so it was extremely heavy, and the person holding it had to have a strength value of five points or more. Even so, the little boy with the vegetables was still thrown backwards, the shield shattered, and he shouted to his companions. He's been stopped, quickly seize the opportunity while the mushroom hasn't recovered and block him. The boy with the haircut glanced over and called to the little girl named Melon to go with him to the right, Tykin, take care of the left, saying that, they ran away, leaving the little boy with two horns on the left to continue throwing stones at the mushroom. They hit frog one after another, doubling the HP points lost to four because they hit his body. He was both sorry for the points and angry because of the pain, his face scowling, determined not to let that little brat escape. On the right, the mushroom took dozens of stones and threw them at Frog at the same time, combined with the stones from the left thrown by Tykin, they hit the mushroom cap continuously, causing Frog great pain. Hearing the sound of his head being hit, but unable to do anything because the bull mushroom was still waiting for its cooldown, Frog gritted his teeth and watched his HP points gradually decrease. The mushroom thought to himself that this method was not good, with this body, a mushroom like him could not move as flexibly as other species, and when faced with this type of attack strategy, he had no advantage at all. As soon as the bull mushroom's cooldown was over, Frog charged forward again, once more, but to his surprise, the boy with the vegetable hair pulled out a metal shield. Just before the monster charged, the little boy ran out and held it up to protect his friends. The boy with the haircut took the opportunity to run over with his sword, his mouth shouting, let me do it, let me do it. Tykin and Melon waited anxiously, their hands ready to attack if anything went wrong. Frog promptly avoided the sword that slashed across his body, but his cap was torn deeply. The pain shot through his head, causing the mushroom to brace himself and curse inwardly at the team for being so weak, that even when they combined their strength, they were still more than capable of killing the strong. He tried to search his mind for a way to deal with situations like this. This, he was sure he had seen it many times in role-playing games. Thinking of it, although he was in great pain, Frog still made a bold decision, not allowing them to continue using the shield to avoid his attacks, if he didn't gather them all together and then finish them off. At once, he was afraid he would be tortured to death. Around Frag, they threw their hands and feet continuously, at the mushroom's cap, causing his HP points to drop rapidly. After only a few seconds, the mushroom gasped and lay on its back, face up to the sky, his eyes rolling as if he had fainted. In this state, he must be really delicious, the four little buffaloes headed towards each other, whispering proudly, did we kill it? Let's celebrate, they cheered, we never thought we could work together to defeat a high-level monster. Everyone in the novice village will be shocked. Suddenly, Mei Ling asked in surprise, why haven't I received any experience points? Is it because this mushroom is too far apart? What about you guys? Ahihi, this little girl is the most awake of the bunch, Frag. Couldn't help but smile slyly at the fake death. Ordinary monsters are not smart enough to think of these tricks. After all, he finally got the kids together without any caution. He roared, you're dead. The forest echoed with the sound of strangulation and many lines of text announcing the increase in experience points for killing the warrior. The status window popped up congratulating Frog on his level up, successfully due to receiving many experience points. He just stopped, his whole body shining brightly on the ground. The kids were lying around waiting to be teleported back to the village. Frog had reached level 6, his stats had increased significantly, making him look stronger. Ha ha, the feeling of being upgraded is amazing good. Job, all the pain and wounds are gone. Suddenly, Frog felt a sense of loneliness in his heart. Of the undefeated, he sighed and then laughed out loud. I like playing guerrilla warfare and killing rookie warriors. To gain experience, what can you guys do to me? As long as I can get out of this place, I will be the boss of all levels. It's true that the details of the novels are often. There, I am the leader of all wild monsters. While he was self-absorbed, suddenly a lightning bolt struck, right next to Frag, scaring him to death. Looking at the charred base of the tree, 
the fire suddenly went out, he was terrified. Thinking what the hell is wrong with the weather, why did I almost get struck by lightning? It turned out not to be the case. Frog heard the sound of human footsteps and saw three strangers approaching each other in a ridiculous manner. What an idiot, you haven't officially changed. Job, but you've already exposed your weakness. He was referring to the level 18 mage in the middle, who didn't look up, but could still hear the displeasure under his hood. The mission said there was a monster that was wreaking havoc in the new village. I didn't expect it to be just a mushroom monster. The level 17 archer next to him smiled. Anything is fine, if you hit it, you get a hit. The remaining fighter, level 12, was the lowest, but he couldn't help but join his brothers. Oh, I almost forgot that I'm on a mission with two older brothers, otherwise I would have been able to return to the new village. Because he could read the information of the whole group, Frog was very scared. He counted and saw that level 12, 17, 18 were all here to kill him. The mage dropped a small ball, and without saying a word, threw it at the mushroom monster. Frog watched with wide eyes, and the familiar spray of powder came out of his mouth again. He held his breath and lowered himself slightly, allowing the spell to burst through the top of his hat and into the forest with a deafening bang. Losing the top of his hat, the mushroom lost 14 HP, which scared Frog to death. The mushroom flew 14 HP, which scared Frog to death. The first time I witnessed the power of magic, how come this is a new village? Novice village but met such a high level, then how can I live to complete the mission? Seeing that the others were getting closer, Frog panicked and decided to run away, so he used his Didiker muscles to activate. Maximum mode of the bull mushroom skill, he shot into the forest like a missile. That's what Frog thought, but in the eyes of the warriors, it was just a short burst. However, it was clear that this guy was trying to escape, and they whispered to each other to be careful not to disappear now. The warrior pulled out a bright torch and replied to his senior, don't worry, the game is easy again. He roared and raised his hand. I will use this mushroom to practice the new skill I have learned. He slammed his tongue down on the ground, using the Earth Mother's tongue skill. The warrior successfully erected a wall of earth to block Frag's path. He lowered his head and flew, not knowing how to avoid it, so he hit his head on the hard rock, his teeth and lips aching. Lost 10 points, the system also popped up a warning. Membrane life is only 50%, if you swing around, you will become a garlic bulb. So Frog endured the pain gritted his teeth and popped his head out of the wall to prepare to continue running. This move had been anticipated by the archer, she said let me give you a little point for the final blow. With a gentle flick of the wrist, the arrow shot out, sinking into the body of the mushroom tree and then piercing through the other side, taking 23 HP from Frag. He knew that the shot had reduced his HP to zero, and in the momentum of the arrow, he hit the rock wall head on, rolled out, and his eyes rolled back. His vision blurred and he could only see two short words, game over, the mushroom monster fell to the ground. A few trees and then stopped, the spot where the arrow had pierced it was smoking. The warrior glanced at her and praised Linda, you are so good at archery, bye. The Candor Society will definitely want to recruit you for the archery competition. Little Linda put away her bow and smiled. She replied modestly that she probably wouldn't. But if they were really serious, she would be happy to give it a try. The old mage hovered above them, dismissing these two and focusing on collecting the monsters, they still had to exchange them for rewards. The mushroom was dead, but Frag's consciousness was still able to read the long system notification message. Why did you say I was the leader of the game, the king of the virtual world, the master of these games. Well, there's still one gold coin to revive, do you want to use it? He wanted to shout at the system, why are you asking me? Asking me a stupid question, of course Frog wants to use it. Suddenly his body emitted a bright light as if he was leveling up, but in fact Frog had received a new skill, Spore Eruption. Soon the mushroom recovered its original shape, new, its whole body emitting a strange thick golden smoke. It was the newly acquired skill, Spore Eruption, which was being deployed growing so large that it enveloped the entire group that had just killed Frag. They coughed and tried to find the mushroom monster, surprised that it could also use skills? I've never seen this before. And the bull mushroom. Two, Frog took the opportunity to launch himself out of the giant cloud of smoke. Su Ca Na was seen by Linda, who shouted out loud, it's running, chase after it. Immediately all three ran in the direction they had just seen Frag, and he too, ran as fast as he could to get away from there, jumping three steps at a time into a bush, temporarily safe but not stopping for a moment. Frog continued to bounce forward, asking, the system, how much longer until the mission ends? It displayed the system details, trying to survive until the end of the moon. The only condition for completion is to survive within the specified time, part, the hardening or growing limb skill reward. Time remaining 3 minutes 21 seconds. Frog calculated that there were only 3 minutes left, 
all he had to do was get through. That and he could pick up the hardening skill, and then grow limbs. Either one would be fine, it would definitely increase his chances of survival. Don't try to run, the sky above suddenly turned black, striking a bolt of lightning just a short distance from Frag. He realized that something was wrong, and he braked to see why he had used the mushroom's running skill, but was still found so quickly even though he was covered by trees. It was then that Frog realized that there was some kind of symbol above his head pointing at him, and on the other side of that symbol was the targeting finger of the prey tracking skill. It was a skill that hunters used to lock targets for their bows and arrows. The higher the level of the hunter, the longer the target lock. Linda smiled confidently, although she didn't know why the person had suddenly come back to life, but, as long as the target was locked by the hunter, it could not escape its fate as prey. The warrior swung his sharp iron axe at the mushroom, his mouth saying die, you bastard. Frog had to jump back quickly, his mouth cursing, oh shit, but luckily, he escaped, only to lose his balance and hit his shoulder on the ground. He was in so much pain that his face turned purple, but he couldn't give up, because the last revive coin was gone, there was no chance to do it again. Before his eyes, two sharp iron swords slashed straight down. Frog had no way to resist except to dodge, but unfortunately his body was still cut deeply. Goodbye 18 HP. He was furious, and he swore to himself that he couldn't die like this. Once again, using the spore eruption move, the mushroom emitted a golden smoke like before, but it was nothing new to the hunters. Linda smiled confidently, looking through the smoke and seeing the symbol of herself still clearly visible, she raised her bow and aimed at it. As long as this mark is there, I can shoot you easily even with my eyes closed. She let go of the arrow and it flew away, piercing through the trunks of two or three trees before embedding itself in frag. Again, he was stunned and couldn't believe it, his whole body collapsed to the ground in the direction the arrow fell, losing 28 HP. The status window showed that there was only one drop left out of 47 drops of blood, the mushroom was entering a life or death situation, and its movement speed was reduced by 80%. Skill points increased by 100% but could not be used to reduce injuries. In short, Frog was in a situation no different from a fish on a chopping board. When the hunters approached him, he still lay there listening to the ticking countdown from 5 to 4. I guess this mushroom suffocated this time, the hunters exclaimed that this monster is not bad either. Apart from the fact that it used its skills, it also knew how to escape. The mage agreed, that's right, but the night is long and full of dreams, so this time we have to kill it for sure. He waved his hand and summoned a magic bullet, preparing to shoot Frag, but was still a step too slow. The system had announced the end of the hour, the mission was complete. The birds suddenly panicked and flew into the sky, the hunters felt something was wrong and glanced at each other. It's been a long time since I've been to the newbie village, so I almost forgot. A low-level blonde asked what the two were talking about, and as soon as she asked, she saw a blue magic circle used for teleportation appear above everyone's heads. The mage screamed, retreat now. And from that magic circle, a mushroom cap began to emerge, then two, then four, gradually. The whole mushroom body emerged from the magic circle, looking quite like a metamorphosis. The thing is, they talked a lot, and hundreds of mushrooms jumped out of the magic circle like rain, every. One of them was grinning happily, shouting in unison, mushrooms, mushrooms. The warrior saw so many low-level monsters for the first time, and opened his eyes wide, in delight, exclaiming, what the hell are you talking about, senior, why retreat? He slashed at the mushrooms continuously, each time he swiped, he would cut down a dozen of them. The more he fought, the more excited he became. How could he pass up such a pile of experience points? Using the storm wind skill, the warrior swept away dozens of mushrooms at once with great ease. Watching his experience points soar, the warrior was delighted. This was too easy. The mage and archer Linda did not participate, standing at a distance and sneering. That idiot knows nothing about the monsters in the newbie village. Let's not get involved. Blonde heard that and turned around to curse. Don't pretend like you know everything. Do you think that just because a group of noobs call you senior, you think you're really cool? If you don't want to get involved, then I'll do it myself. Linda felt that it was urgent, she just wanted to get out of this place, so she urged the mage to leave it alone, anyway, they were protected here as newbies, so they couldn't die. So the two of them left the warrior behind and ran away, Linda didn't forget to warn him that it was over. You can do whatever you want, but don't blame us if you die. The warrior found it strange, but still cursed. You two are so stupid that you don't even dare to kill a few monsters, who would die from such nonsense. As soon as he finished speaking, the rain of mushrooms falling from the magic circle stopped, a large shape emerged from it, which made the warrior exclaim in fear, hey, wasn't it just a bunch of mushrooms? Suddenly, the shadow of that huge thing fell over him, 
making him tremble with fear, it was so huge, that the warrior had to look up to see the smile under the raised eyes, that thing wearing a red cloak jumped out of the magic circle, it was the level 60 mushroom king, the leader, of all the mushroom monsters living in prison bay, capable of commanding all mushroom monsters, every seven days, it would lead its army back to the newbie village, claiming to be looking for the secret of the lost mushroom, the warrior was terrified, his weapon fell to the ground, and he could only scream, what the hell is this, run, the mushroom king sat its huge butt on the warrior, crushing him to death in one blow, the mushrooms, no longer threatened, were jumping around happily, their mouths constantly shouting, mushrooms, mushrooms, celebrating the blonde's death, a blue teleportation circle appeared above it, taking him out of this place, and into the sight of the mage and archer who were, running away in a hurry, hey, the warrior has been teleported back to the newbie village, all his experience from the past few days is gone, Linda didn't stop, saying don't worry about him, we have to, run away quickly, we can't resist the mushroom king for a second, hurry up, frog saw the mushroom king looking at him with a smile, and the whole group of small mushrooms running around, he was still in a daze, but, he still managed to praise it for being so strong, is that the real mushroom monster, and you're here to save me? The mushroom king grabbed the sword that had been drawn from its sheath, pointed to the distance and shouted, mushrooms, and the whole group immediately ran in that direction. Some rolled, some jumped, following the direction pointed by the mushroom king. The whole area was noisy with the sound of mushrooms, very lively. Myth guessed that they were saying obey the boss, but all he could hear was mushrooms. The mushroom king flicked. The person in the middle of the path that the two rows of soldiers had made for him, and soon he was farther and farther away from where Frog was lying. He felt his vision darken, and thought in despair, am I being abandoned? Now? Don't go, don't go, I'm a mushroom too, save me. Frag's vision gradually blurred, he kept mumbling the words save me and then fainted, crackling. The sound of fire burning fiercely and the stone ceiling began to appear faintly in Frag's vision. He was groggy and then jolted awake, turning his head towards the light end, realizing that he was not dead yet. Who is this? Where am I? Why are there so many long mushroom corpses littering the ground? In front of him, next to the burning fire, was a big pig's butt, facing Frag. From that, he realized something unusual. A pile of mushroom corpses on the ground, and a pig was sniffing at it. With a loud noise, what else could it be thinking? Suddenly it turned around. Frog had to pretend to be unconscious, not daring to look, but his eyes were blurry and his legs were shaking, his teeth chattering. When the pig went back to its food, he dared to look. Over there, guessing that it had dragged him back here as food. If so, sooner or later he would be chewed up if he stayed here. Frog tried to get up, taking advantage of the moment when the pig was eating to get out of here. Unexpectedly, he suddenly realized that his lower body could not move. It turned out that it had been torn apart. Frog was horrified and dazed. Could it be that the pig had chewed up his lower body? The tiny pig's hoof and wiggling tail were approaching Frag. He heard the sound and was so scared that his face turned pale, but he tried to pretend to be dead to avoid being bitten by it. But the thought of the pig coming back to his place to eat him made it hard to stay calm. He kept closing and opening his eyes, waiting in fear for the moment when the hoof would fall on him. Hearing the sound of the pig's mouth opening, Frog couldn't help but tremble. But instead of eating him, the pig vomited out a mess of mushrooms, covering Frag's lower body. He felt his life points rising rapidly, although very little. Each time only one point, but it was clear that this pig had chewed some mushroom pieces and used them to heal him. After filling up the lower part, the pig approached Frog more closely, poking its nose into his upper part and pushing gently, until its whole nose touched him, then it kissed Frag's cheek lightly, his eyes were closed, so he didn't see the pig's, affectionate eyes looking at him, it looked back and forth for a while, then lay down next to Frag, taking a nice nap, the next morning, when the sun shone down on the hole above, the pig, woke up with a start, startled to find that Frog had disappeared, it looked around cautiously, looking in the direction of, the light, thinking that the mushroom might have run outside, so it lowered its nose to sniff the ground, following the direction Frog might have gone in search of him, when it stopped under the two lights, the pink pig suddenly, remembered something, and it ran back into the cave, its two short back legs kicked up dirt and sand continuously, throwing it onto the fire until it was completely extinguished, because the pink pig remembered to always check the embers before going out, Frog took advantage of the time to activate the bull mushroom mode and escaped from the cave, now he had to seize every minute and second, even if he died, he had to die by the bots, how could he be eaten by a pig, but strangely, 
why did everything seem blurry, was there an earthquake, he slid backwards, no, it wasn't an earthquake, it was the pink pig coming up, frog was terrified and screamed, oh no, don't come here, but the pink pig ran closer and closer, its hooves, digging into the ground, causing violent vibrations, frog ran with his tongue hanging out, realizing helplessly that no matter how fast he ran, he could not be faster than this pig, so he played the trick of spraying lava, frag, wanted to release smoke to block the pig's footsteps, unexpectedly, it saw the smoke and was overjoyed, its eyes sparkling as it activated its two nostrils, which expanded, wide, and it used its vacuum cleaner trick to inhale all the smoke frog released in an instant, the pink pig's eyes lit up as if it had just eaten something delicious, this scene made frog so scared that he ran as fast as he could, behind him, the pink pig was looking at the mushroom, with sparkling eyes, which only, made frog more scared, not knowing what to do, he screamed for the system, Chu am I na, it appeared immediately, here you are, it's me, frog gritted his teeth, panting and running, asking if it was true that I had, completed the task, it answered correctly, do you want to redeem your reward, redeem it now, the pink pig is closing in, frog urged the system to hurry up, okay, now you, can choose one of two rewards, one is to harden, the other is to grow limbs, this time it was a matter of life and death, frog thought seriously that hardening seemed good, because his defense would increase greatly, but having limbs was also quite good, imagine having muscular limbs, being a mushroom wrestler who could, kill this pig with one punch, and then use his strong legs to run away, it is worth mentioning that frog was sure that having limbs would help him more, than it would hinder him, and it would also make his fighting style more varied, the what, have you made up your mind, my love, the system just, asked frog and he shouted, I decided to choose limbs, just then, his eyes and mouth emitted a golden light, of evolution, and two arms grew out of his sides, below, legs grew out in exactly the same shape, only slightly larger, completing the evolved form with both arms and legs, frog stomped his feet on the ground to test them out, clenched his fists with determination and shouted, let's go, however, this step was too strange, it sounded like a thump, but it didn't go far, frog turned pale and wondered, can these four short things be called arms and legs, behind him, the pink pig was very close, frog shouted, loudly, damn you, stupid system, running forever, the pink pig spread its four legs, and rolled forward, grabbing frag's mushroom hat, and the two rolled forward a few times, when the pink pig's feet touched the ground, frog lay on his back in despair, next to the happy pink pig, it licked frag's face with delight, causing his tears to well up in disbelief, please spare me, pearly, the pink pig licked the tears and snot off frag's face, suddenly, he realized that it was not going to eat him, so he was surprised, and called the system to use the identification skill to see what it was, unin level 10, life points 135, speed 25, attack 50 and critical 20%. Below there was a note that this was a monster that lived in Kryzen Bay, with a keen nose and was hunted to near extinction due to its delicious meat. Unan is quite gentle in nature, but can be very violent when enraged. Frog remembered the look in its eyes, and when he saw level 10, he told the system to open his own panel. Mushroom monster level 6, life points only 47, speed 13, attack only 24 points. Current skills are identification level 2, while bull mushroom and spore eruption are both at level 1. Frog ignored the fact that Unan was kissing his cheek and groping his hands and feet, thinking that his identification skill had leveled up. The information he read also increased, but the gap between himself and this pig was still very large. How could he escape? While he was enjoying the affection, Unan suddenly stopped. With great vigilance, staring at the entrance of the cave, it left Frog for a moment, stood up, and used its keen nose to sniff from a distance. Suddenly its face turned pale, it tapped its hooves on the ground, and, over and over again, like a pendulum in front of Frag, but he didn't understand. He raised his eyebrows and asked, what's the matter, if you're not going to eat me, let me go. The pig's hoof pounded on the floor, and suddenly the whole cave shook with every beat of Unan's hooves, but Frog didn't know. The bulky body was crashing towards one spot and then shooting out from it again. Once they had gained enough momentum, they would throw their bodies down again, creating an aftershock that caused the entire cave to shake and the sharp rocks to fall down below. Frog was caught in the crossfire and ran for his life. He didn't know what to do, and when he looked back at the entrance of the cave, he saw Unan running away. 
Frag's short legs couldn't keep up. He was scared to death, and shouted loudly, Hey, save me from that pig. Don't leave me here, you dirty green poison. Was his cry for help what awakened Unan's sympathy, or, did it turn around to run back to the mushroom? It kept running with its head down as rocks fell, and when they got too close, it would jump over them, aiming, for Frag, so when it charged, it rammed its snout into the soft belly of the mushroom. Throwing him high into the air, he landed with a thud on the back of the pink pig. With something to ride, he grabbed the short fur tightly. Before he could count to three, he was thrown away. The pink pig ran for four or five seconds, and Frog was already foaming, at the mouth on its back, but his hands still held on tight. More and more rocks fell, but the pink pig didn't slow down, and when it was not far away, it stomped on the ground and flew out of the cave just as the rocks fell and blocked it all up. Landing with the mushroom still on its back, the pink pig looked over, and over again with great vigilance, not knowing that frog had fainted on its back. Suddenly, a rock fell from the top, when, the smoke cleared, five short figures could be seen getting clearer and clearer. They were five grey-haired warthogs looking at frog with their eyes wide open, making him ask in a small voice, who is this, your friends? The skill to read information told him that it was not a friend, this was, a wild warthog monster level 18, with nearly 500 health points, attack points 159, speed 16, critical hit rate 33%, understand, if you get hit by it, your intestines will be messed up, this species lives in groups in the Krizen region, and is, very sensitive and has a very high sense of territory, when faced with weaker invaders, the warthog will charge forward to chase and kill them, but if it encounters a stronger opponent, it will try to scatter and hide, who says pigs are stupid, this way of life is very smart, the ground under his feet suddenly made a cracking sound, and the grey-haired warthogs made, way for someone to come forward with a fire on his head. It was none other than the leader of the warthogs, who looked extremely impressive with a rather stylish hairdo and a long scar over his eye. Now he was staring at the pink pig, which looked not afraid at all, and its eyes looked back with determination. Only Frog was scared to death, stuttering, level 3, 35. The information on this burnt-haired creature was not much more than level 35, because Frag was not high enough level to read the other information, so he didn't panic. However, the pink pig acted as if it didn't care, and walked away with a mushroom on its back, despite the warthog's stares. A young and inexperienced one looked at it and hated it so much that it grunted, and was immediately scolded by the leader, making it retract its trunk and stop daring to envy the pink pig. So the whole group just watched it leave, and Frog was saved because of it. But, the atmosphere just now was really scary, and he kept looking back at the pigs. After a while, Frog came to his senses and realized that the piglet had saved him, and brought him along, so it didn't seem to have any bad intentions. From this angle, he saw the pink pig sniffing left and right. It taught Tong, Sao to walk very carefully, not to rush around, even though the scenery looked very peaceful. Riding on the back of the pink pig but with a very low view, Frog asked the system where he was. It appeared and said Hesela. Hesela, my god, you are in the Hesela Bay area, west of the Endless Plains, 200 kilometers from the novice village. And that's 200 kilometers, Frog asked with his mouth open. How did he get here? Suddenly he thought. But he seemed to know everything because of the teleportation formation or something. When he was unconscious, this pink pig used teleportation to bring him here. Suddenly the piglet looked up, and not far away. Not far away. Something squeaked and whipped down to where the two of them had been standing, barely dodging it and having to dodge another one. Luckily, Frog didn't dare to leave the pig's back, and no matter how he jumped, he didn't fall off. He braked hard, out of reach of the thing, and the two of them could see how big it was, and it sank very quickly. The meadow rustled in the wind as if nothing had happened, but Frog held on tightly to the pink bow. In nature, there is always danger, and the two of them are alive only because the piglet is so vigilant. Sure enough, from where the long thing had just sunk, the ground began to move and a huge brown male toad appeared, its mouth gurgling disgustingly. Frog had encountered toads before, but one was big and one was small, and he checked it out and found that it was only level 11, but it was so big. Life points. And other things were also normal, only the speed was up to 45 which is a very common monster in humid and warm areas. This type has a very strong jumping force, but most of the time it likes to stay in one place and wait for its prey to appear. It will eat anything as long as it can swallow it, because it is not too big, so it requires a lot of food every day. When it raised its head like that, it must have seen a mushroom riding a pink pig. But, 
Ignoring Frag, the toad made eye contact with the piglet, and both of them confirmed that the other was their enemy. Without hesitation, it opened its mouth wide and shot out its snapping tongue, trying to catch the whole group just now, and its vision was better, so it was always able to strike very sharply. This time it caught Frog by accident, who was screaming for help. The piglet didn't expect him to be thrown out, and was angry and annoyed from afar, and ran hard, but not to where Frog was caught, but to the big toad. The toad saw it, but it liked the new prey more, and quickly retracted its tongue and tried to re-frag. He screamed his head off, seeing the piglet running at full speed below and guessing that he wouldn't make it in time. He was about to use the spore eruption skill, but he stepped on the other foot wide. On the ground, the pink pig sucked the toad's head and body into it, causing it to fly out. Hit by the savage sucking skill, Frog flew out of the snapping tongue, successfully landing on the back of the pink pig as before. Thank you, piglet, you saved me again. Just as he said that, both of them felt something rushing towards them. It cut through the grass, forcing the piglet to jump up to avoid it. Although he escaped death, the damage was terrible. The giant toad from before had been torn into three pieces and fell to the ground below. The sound of arthropods stomping on the ground made Frog swallow his saliva and stare. In the middle of the rustling meadow is a praying mantis with a straw hat, looking like a swordsman wandering the world. Except that it stabbed its claw into the toad and began to munch on it on the spot. Praying Mantis, level 19, blood and energy points bone. Bone, but the attack power is up to 280, and the critical hit is up to 60%. The system also commented below that this Praying Mantis practices very hard every day to become a master of the tongue lashing technique, to the point of sacrificing an arm and turning it into a sickle. It is rumored that this young hero has trained his skills to the level of the highest level, and it is very easy to cut steel. His grandmother must be level 19. Frog looked at it secretly, and judged that this praying mantis was not good at defense, but its attack points were terrible. While looking at it, for some reason it suddenly looked back as if it was looking at him. Frog tightened the pink pig's bow, muttering that we could only handle the level 11 toad. This praying mantis can't be underestimated, don't be hasty, piglet. The great hero praying mantis was still munching as if he didn't care, but all of a sudden, he pulled out his tongue blade, put his claw into it, and silently walked towards Frag. He looked like a kind farmer, but he knew that this thing was about to kill him. The piglet was sweating just like him, and he had to be very careful or he would die for sure. Suddenly, something big jumped up from behind the praying mantis. It was so big that it covered the sunlight overhead, and when the mantis looked up, at the same time it fell to the ground with a bang, causing both Frog and the piglet to gasp in disbelief. The boulder-like thing had crushed the praying mantis, and looking at the green liquid flowing out, it seemed that it had gone to meet its maker. But strangely enough, just a second later, all of the green liquid was sucked back into the boulder, turning into several green threads that gradually adhered to it like a tree, until the green claw of the praying mantis was gradually absorbed and disappeared. Suddenly, a huge eye opened up with red pupils in the pitch black hole, and the thing opened its mouth with missing teeth, making a few grunting and groaning sounds as if it was possessed. Thanks to the system, Frog could see that this thing was a level 26 boulder mushroom. Its vitality points were as high as 1088, which was enough to live a long life. Its attack points were as high as 350, and its critical hit rate was 100%, and its defense points were all very high. This is a very common evolutionary form of mushroom monsters. After absorbing the essence of the small stones, its body gradually turned into a super heavy and well-defended boulder. Because of its slow movement, it likes to set itself up as a boulder to hunt for prey. The two of them were really scared, and the piglet knelt down on the ground, trying to reduce its presence. He heard Frog whispering in his ear, asking if they could just retreat quietly like this. Slowly, slowly, the two of them retreated into the grass. It seemed that the boulder mushroom didn't see them, and after a while, it crouched down and lay in the grass again. Luckily for the two, a mushroom and a pig, it closed its eyes again, pretending to be a boulder, and saw nothing but the rustling grass. The journey to conquer nature was never easy. Even a mushroom could stick out its tongue and breathe heavily like a golden retriever. But stable wasn't any worse, climbing up the slope made the pig breathe heavily, and its butt was covered in sweat. As they climbed to a shady spot, the two of them collapsed. On the ground, panting as if they were about to die. Stable looked up and saw that they were sitting under a strange tree that looked like it had been trimmed regularly by someone, and looked down at the meadow of dandelions swaying in the wind. It felt so refreshing, as if all the fatigue had disappeared, only Frog couldn't let go of his guard, and had to ask, Hey, Piglet, 
do you think this place is safe? That was until he opened his eyes and was surprised to find that the land in front of him was covered in endless leaves of grass, and to the east he could see a strange, clear blue lake. His eyes widened. This world was truly dangerous, but also very beautiful. As he was marveling, the status window popped up to greet him, revealing to the player that he was in the Kryzen Bay area of the Endless Plains. This place was actually similar to his own world, with a similar ecosystem and natural laws. So Frog had to ask again, so a mushroom monster, like me is at the bottom of the food chain? He would have been eaten by so many monsters by now, if Stable hadn't been able to sniff out the danger. But he couldn't give up, Frog was determined to become stronger so that he could survive, and then complete his mission and return to his original world. As soon as he called the system, it answered, I'm here. Frog asked cheerfully, can you give me a different mission to earn some rewards? Of course, the system showed many missions of varying difficulty levels for him to choose from. Feeling confident, Frag decided to go big and choose the hardest difficulty right away. The first difficult mission was to defeat one of the generals who came from heaven, under the command of the Endless Plains Emperor. Just hearing that made him want to play dumb, Frog sneezed in disgust and then arrogantly said, Hee hee, I mean the easy mission, give me an easy one first. Okay, my friend, this easy mission is to collect 10 red strawberry herbs and you will receive 50 experience points. Red strawberry herbs grow in large numbers in dense grass. And when eaten, they help to reduce hunger and restore vitality. Wow. That's easy, Frog said excitedly, standing up and pointing to a distance, calling the pink pigs to follow him forward. But the path ahead was a bit steep, and Frag's short legs had already rolled down the hillside. A moment later, the mushroom stopped rolling with a bundle of herbs in its hand, its nose pointed up in pride, it's just a matter of collecting this garbage. There are so many of them here, this mission is easier than eating cake. Sure enough, the number of herbs in Frag's hand had already reached 6 out of 10. Suddenly, someone's shadow flashed past, grabbing all the herbs in his hand, scaring Frog out of his wits. By the time he realized it, the number of herbs counted had dropped to zero, because the pink pig was sitting on the side, munching away. Frog watched in disbelief as the piglet ate everything, and shouted in anger, Hey, you greedy pig, how could you eat all of my quest items? Oh my god, Frog clenched his fists and rushed towards the piglet, it's time to show you who's boss in this world. He threw a powerful punch, but when it hit the pink butt, it sank in like he had punched a rubber ball. The piglet didn't care, and continued to munch away, ignoring the mushroom's antics. Behind it, not until Frog was knocked backwards and screamed did the piglet turn around. It shook the grass off its head and turned to face him, its tail wagging furiously as if to show its bones. Frog was terrified and stammered, H hey, wait, what are you thinking? Please, don't come any closer? The piglet snorted at him instead of answering, and in the air, his helpless scream echoed, this stupid pig is going to kill me. The next mission was to collect 30 specified fruits, and receive 80 experience points and a special reward of a storage box. Even though he had completed it, the piglet had eaten it, and he had to charge at the tree to make the fruit fall. The next easy mission was to catch 15 fish in the river, and receive 80 experience points. The fish were knocked out by his spore spray, making them easy to scoop up. The two of them moved on to the next mission, which was to collect 20 specified stones to earn 100 experience points. It was at this point that the piglet proved to be somewhat useful, as it carried a basket on its back and caught the stones that Frog threw at it. By the afternoon of that day, they had finally completed the missions, and the strange mushroom had risen to level 9, and all of its stats had increased. The identification and bull rush skills had both reached level 2, but the spore spray was still at level 1. After a hard day's work, Frog sat down under a tree and panted. This pig doesn't do anything but eat, and I've only managed to level up by 3 levels while it's been eating my quest items and sleeping. The piglet was now dreaming about food and drooling. Frog decided to abandon his plans to rest and take advantage of the piglet's sleep to earn some more experience points. The next mission was like a summary, it required Frog to absorb all of the items he had collected to receive 200 experience points, 30 fruits, 15 fish and 20 stones, the special reward. It was a skill, so he was very excited and stood up straight away. He suddenly felt like a pretty cool disciple. All he had to do was buy a fan of bones and he would receive a reward. Absorbing in this game was so easy. The storage box released a pile of collected items, which soon piled up into a heap. The fragrant smell wafted into the pink pig's nose, and it woke up with sparkling eyes and trotted over to Frag. He raised his hand and shook it in front of it. This morning, you ate too much, these are mine. The piglet slipped and sat down on the ground, 
looking at Frog evilly as he put food in his mouth, but, he couldn't ignore its pitiful expression and threw it an apple. When the little pig was very excited about the food in front of it but couldn't touch it, it turned off the object that rolled up beside it and jumped up and down excitedly. Well, I have a lot, so I can give the piglet some, but, eat slowly, there's no more to give if you finish it too quickly. That was enough to make the afternoon go by smoothly, each of them gnawing on food in a corner. Frog also gnawed on the stone like a fruit, except that his teeth were a bit soft. It was only then that he asked himself, wait a minute, why did that hole tell me to eat stones? There was still a pile waiting for him to eat, and Frog ate his stomach out, and asked the system, how can I chew so much? The quest window appeared just like when he had started, and all of the amount absorbed was zero, making Frog jump up and ask again, hey, did you count correctly? It's true that I haven't eaten any fish or stones, but I've already eaten five fruits. It didn't answer right or wrong, but instead showed a small sign, leading up to it, saying, I mean absorb, my friend. Use your brain to think about what the mission is telling you to do. Oh, so absorption is digestion, I've only eaten five fruits. Suddenly, he seemed to wake up, and absorption reminded him of the stone mushroom that absorbed the mantis's core. Frog realized that its way of eating was clearly different from his own. Well, the way it digested, was also reasonable for mushrooms, because mushrooms absorbed nutrients through their roots. But, Frog looked down at his plump buttocks, surely. The system didn't mean for him to use these roots to absorb? Late at night, the moonlight cast shadows over the land, and at some point, the ground around the mushroom was covered in. Dried fish, wilted fruit, and garbage everywhere. Frog sat down on a still fat fish, and just as you might imagine, he used his buttocks to suck the nutrients out of it, making a slurping sound like a smoothie. And just like that, the mission was complete. Frog was two parts happy and eight parts helpless, thinking about how mysterious it felt to eat with his buttocks, and how mysterious he felt himself to be. The system window congratulated him on receiving 200 experience points and a new great skill, and the player who had collected enough experience and leveled up disappeared on the spot. The mushroom monster, Frag, had reached level 10, and his stats had increased, with his attack points reaching 44, his speed 13, and his defense 25 points. In addition to the three skills he had before, he also received decomposition. Level 1, which made the young man extremely confused. Isn't it normal for mushrooms to be able to decompose things? In nature? What am I supposed to do with this skill? The system answered immediately, decomposition in the literal sense, and use the resulting substances to nourish the player's body. The player can now decompose monsters below level 20, either stone or wood. That's great, Frog exhaled trying to force himself to understand, or at least to think he understood. He had used up so many life points to absorb items that he was feeling dizzy. Looking at Unan lying around hugging the only fruit he had given him, Frog suddenly felt that it was okay, at least he had reached level 10. The easy level mission felt like he had just completed a hard level. Unan was sleeping soundly, and he should go to sleep too. He had worked hard enough for one day. He had worked hard enough for one day. Under the golden moonlight and a shooting star, streaking across the sky, the two of them snored. The next morning, they woke up to the sight of the pig's tail wagging. What could make Unan happier than having a pile of fruit, with a pile of apple cores behind it? Meanwhile, Frog was looking at the next mission board. Kill 10 monsters in the Grizzen Bay area. Oh, the mission was clearly much more difficult. Now, killing 10 monsters was no easy task. Looking at the carefree Unan, Frog silently calculated that they had both reached level 10. As long as he could find some lower level monsters, it should be fine. After eating and sleeping well, the mushroom grabbed the pink bow and set off with the pink pig. On Unan's back, he kept thinking that this world was very different from the game, the monsters here just like to jump out from nowhere. As soon as he finished speaking, Unan's four legs came to a halt, and Frog immediately put himself on alert. According to him, the target was a greenish something that was wriggling on the ground. Oh my god, it looked just like a slime with a lot of liquid, with a silly face looking back at you. It turned out that it wasn't a slime, but a level 8 green slime with no outstanding stats. Note that its entire body is made up of a gel-like form, with transparent internal organs that float throughout its body. As long as its heart is intact, it will continue to live, after being killed it will collect into a small pool of gel that is used to make medicine. They may look silly, but a mushroom and a pig were still very vigilant. Next up was the battle between the two of them and this slime. Frog opened with a head on charge, flicking, the slime flying and bouncing on the ground. Its eyes rolled around, and it made some strange gurgling noises. It must have been about to die. Frog took a step forward, preparing to give it another blow to finish it off. Suddenly, a group of them jumped out from behind him, 
yelling, oi, oi, and then charged, straight into the slime, causing it to split into five or seven pieces and fall to the ground at the same time as the pink pig. They turned around and gave a graceful bow with, a proud look on their faces, expecting a compliment from Frag. Unexpectedly, he had been petrified since the pig had started playing headbutts. What a jerk, Frog gasped and opened his mouth to curse. I finally found a low-level monster to complete. The mission, how dare you kill it before me? Suddenly, a status window popped up saying that you had killed one of the ten Chrisen monsters. Frog was surprised to see that he had been awarded nine experience points. Why did the system still count for him even though Unan was the one who did it? The pink pig spat something out of its mouth, dropping a small stone. Towards Frag, who was sulking, but he picked it up anyway. It was engraved with a symbol like a question mark, thanks. To the system, he was able to read that it was a team stone. After absorbing the essence of the moon for a while, the stones naturally displayed a magical symbol on their surface. When one of the two members of a group has this stone, it will create a team effect. Members of that team will share experience and common mission goals. This type of stone exists in large numbers in the Boulder Mountain Ranges. Frog suddenly remembered, wasn't this the strange stone he had bumped into before? If it really worked, did that mean that he and Unan were a complete team? He glanced at the little pig, seeing that it was sadly hurt but didn't dare to speak. Tears welled up in Frag's eyes, but he stubbornly crossed his arms and refused to look at it. His mouth said, I'm sorry, okay? It was my fault for blaming you, so I'll find something delicious for you to eat, okay? Despite his guilty attitude, it accepted, nodding its head repeatedly, smiling excitedly and then jumping into the forest. After a while, the total number of monsters killed reached 4 out of 10. Riding on Unan's back, Frog was frustrated that he had only killed 4 slimes all day. The two of them had to run around looking for a stronger type but they couldn't find one. At this rate, the mission would not be easy to complete. Passing through a strip of forest under the canopy, they heard the strange sound of insects flapping their wings. Frog asked in amazement, Hey, Unan, do you know where we are going? Don't tell me we're lost. The pink pig kept walking into a denser area, and a tree root flicked out towards them, intending to give them a stern warning. Fortunately, Frog jumped up and dodged it in time. He tightened his grip on the bow, stared in that direction, and asked warily, Who's there? A bare tree stump covered in mushrooms and insects, was slowly rising towards the two humans. This was a level 18 cursed tree, with a sky-high vitality, of 540, an attack power of 99, and a super high defense of 150. To put it simply, it was the kind of tree that, if left untouched for a long time, would be possessed by a low-level demon soul. If it found a suitable host, it would give birth to offspring right there. This monster lived in dark, damp places, and liked to disguise itself as an ordinary tree stump to deceive its prey. Also because it prefers to live in damp conditions, the trunk of the tree is very moist and difficult to light on fire. People say that a rotten tree stump is easy to deal with, but this tree was surprisingly resilient. It lashed out with a blow that was more painful than a combo of children's fists, and immediately sent the pig and mushroom flying in two different directions. Frog gritted his teeth and didn't dare to make a move as he looked at the deep wound left by that attack. Level 18 monsters were different, and if you made a mistake, they would help you right away. Even though he had been separated from Unan, they understood each other's intentions with just a glance. The two of them jumped back and forth like a zigzag, unleashing a combo of head-sucking skills. They still charged into the tree stump with all their might, and heard a loud bang before they were sent flying to the ground. Embarrassed that his health had been reduced by 30 points, Frog admitted that he had been wrong, and hadn't considered. The fact that a possessed tree stump wouldn't feel pain, and that charging head-on would cause him to be counter-attacked. Looking over at his teammate, Frog asked, Hey, Pink Pig, are you okay? There was no answer, and it turned out that Unan had fainted on the vine trellis at some point. It turned out that its savage sucking skill had the ability to stun opponents, but when the opponent was too strong, it would be counter-attacked and stunned, which was why it had fainted. The tree monster was still standing there, unmoved, which made Frag frustrated, as it was too difficult to deal with a monster that was eight levels higher than him. Hey, wait a minute, he had a flash of inspiration, just as another tree root lashed out at him. Frog immediately released a spore eruption, and took the opportunity to grab the little pink pig and run off somewhere. The tree monster looked around and didn't smell anything anymore, so it called out for someone to find them for a while, and then lost interest. Returning to its original state of pretending to be a dead tree stump, the pink pig had now woken up, and together with Frag, it peeked out from behind a rock and sighed with relief that it had been faster than the monster. Thinking about it, 
he got angry, and grabbed Unan's tail and pulled it, scolding it for being as stupid as a pig. But the pink pig didn't expect it, and licked Frag's head affectionately. Well, it was cute, so he let the little thing lick. Until it was satisfied, as long as it didn't chew on his head. Unan squealed a few times, which made Frog wonder why it was telling him to move on to another target even though it knew they couldn't defeat it. Hey! Wait a minute, stop for about 5 seconds, so that it can see how handsome and charming I am. Frog tossed his head and told the pig to wait. I've got a great plan now. The clouds of smoke from the spore eruption drifted lazily in the air, gradually moving away, and the two of them hid behind a rock and stuck their heads out, whispering, it's coming, it's coming. Sure enough, the rotten tree trunk quickly grew mushrooms all over it, which was no different from a boil on the tree monster's skin, causing it to lose health continuously. When it tensed up, it would be the most off guard. Frog gritted his teeth and howled at Unan. Let's attack together. His eyes were full of determination, and together with the mushroom, they played the head-sucking trick again, and at the same time, they charged into it, hearing two loud bangs. This time, however, neither of them was knocked away, and they landed on the ground smoothly. Looking back at the tree stump, it had fallen over to one side, and each of them received their own experience points. It was indeed an effective strategy, and they both leveled up to level 11, giving Frog a lot of confidence in himself. The two of them had managed to level up and kill a monster that was much stronger than them. If they continued to use this tactic, they could easily kill more possessed stumps. The pink pig agreed, so it was about to turn around and leave when suddenly, Frog looked at the fallen tree stump and said, wait a minute. It squealed and asked, what is it? And then it looked behind it and saw, Frag, its beloved friend, sticking its butt up on the tree trunk. He folded his arms and tried his best to push, absorbing it, absorbing it with all my strength. Frag's butt gradually grew a few veins, and each vein that grew caused a part of the tree's roots to shrivel up. A moment later, he jumped up from the pile of scrap wood, his health had dropped by 50, but a new status panel appeared immediately. It said that he had successfully decomposed the tree monster, and that the quest to become familiar with decomposition had been completed. His proficiency had increased, he had received 200 decomposition experience points, and 3 wooden planks. He had also received the skill single, 2 camouflage skills, and 1 bark skill, with a 24-hour cooldown. Wow! Frog realized that he had received more experience points from absorbing than killing monsters, except that the cooldown was too long. After reading through the information, Frog asked the system, what is the single skill? It sounds strange. It said that these were skills that had been obtained from the monsters that had been absorbed. Each monster could receive up to two skills, which would disappear after being used. Those that were currently available would only last for 10 minutes. By the way, the camouflage skill could transform one's entire body into an object in the environment at the cost of 10 health points. The next skill was bark, which hardened the user's skin, like bark, making it very suitable for defense, and this one did not cost any health points. Frog was excited to understand, in the game there were always some heroic characters who were required by the system to kill boss monsters in order to receive various tricks. That means that absorption is the key to my success. So naturally I feel incredibly confident. Another night passed in the forest, and inside an old nest, a warm fire burned. And a new fire burned brightly next to Unan, who was sleeping soundly. By this time, the mushroom monster had reached level 15, and its health, stamina, and energy had increased significantly. Most notably, the mushroom bull skill had increased to level 3, and Unan was only one level behind Frag, and its health had increased to 388, while its other skills had also increased significantly, and its critical hit rate had also increased to 20%. Looking at these things, Frog understood that even though he was leveling up slowly, he would still be able to continue to improve, and that defeating Gallum at this point would be like a grasshopper kicking a car. So he called up the system and asked, if I continue to level up like this, when will I be able to change ranks? It was very happy to say good evening, but Mon monsters cannot change ranks, instead they only get stronger through evolution. Ha, huh, what kind of evolution? Frog asked naively. Well, evolution, all monsters have their own unique way to evolve, but they all have some way of mutating based on the environment and unknown conditions. Frog asked anxiously, so how do I start? The system will tell you that you will receive evolution quest when you reach level 20, and then another evolution quest at level 40. So that's five more levels, Frog excitedly asked the system to tell him. The strongest evolution path for a mushroom. He asked this because he didn't want to turn into a mushroom. Boulder as stupid as the one he had seen the day before. The system replied that it could provide the player with an evolution method. Each method would only cost 200 gold coins. Frog read it over and over again before speaking up with an unhappy expression. Oh, 
Now you're showing your true colors. It pleaded for peace, telling Frog not to be angry. In fact, the system was very generous. Here, it would give him one evolution path for free, but it would only do it once. The image on the window was of a mushroom monster that had reached level 20 and transformed into a mushroom boulder monster if it collected 100 iron stones and 100 copper stones. Then, from the level 60 mushroom boulder, it would collect 999 diamonds, a glass, dildo, and a million gold coins to become a diamond mushroom that would shine brightly. Well, Frog had to admit that the diamond mushroom looked good, not bad at all as long as it didn't look as stupid as that mushroom boulder the system nodded in agreement that's a good idea if you know the path of evolution the collection of necessary materials is clear before your eyes the price of each path of evolution is still only 200 gold coins after reading this sentence frog fell into deep thought for a few seconds and then he frowned and asked hey system i'll be honest with you I know you're not stupid, so why? Do you think a monster like me would have gold coins on me? It said that if you want something, you'll find a way, and if you don't, you'll find an excuse. Players can always find a way to earn money. Frog didn't even bother to remember, and said again, if you had turned me into a human in the beginning, I would have had the guts to go out and earn some gold coins. But now I'm just a stupid mushroom monster, understand? A new window popped up, and the system said, what if I make an exception and agree to accept materials in exchange? What do you think, player? Do you want that? Frog lowered his head and stood up, and said in a low voice, I don't need it. It doesn't matter. What you can do, I already have my own path of evolution in my head. Then what do you want to do? The system asked, and Frog didn't hesitate to remember. The first time he met the Mushroom King and said coldly, I want to become the Mushroom King. The wind blew softly across the sleepy meadow, but Frog was busy, jumping up to avoid the slash, while Unan was also dodging it successfully. The two of them landed next to each other, and looked at their opponent, a bright green praying mantis. It turned out that this was a common quest, to hunt a praying mantis and get its bones for 500 experience points. The note at the bottom said that the praying mantis had a very high attack power but its health and defense were low. As long as you find an opportunity to strike a critical blow, you will most likely kill it in one hit, but be careful because it can do the same to you. Not far from the praying mantis, the top of the mushroom suddenly hardened into the shape of a shell. Helmet. Frog immediately used his mushroom head to leap at the fearless praying mantis that was approaching. With a bang, the praying mantis hit the ground and didn't move, and Frog charged at the pair of buttocks on the opposite side without saying a word. The scene was deep, but he couldn't help but turn around and shout, Hey praying mantis, your attack is useless against me. The crack in the mantis's shell separated and then quickly reconnected, and the sound of its click was heard as the top of the mushroom cap was torn. A deep gash. Frog lost 75 health points at once, and screamed in pain, Oh my god, I'm going to die. But his little finger still beckoned Unan to whisper in his ear, saying that he had a plan like this. Very good. After that, Frog patted the pink pig's butt in encouragement, and he dodged to one side, angrily telling it to go ahead and finish it. The green praying mantis looked to the left and then to the right, and didn't see its opponent from before, but instead a pink leg appeared. Unan walked around the praying mantis very seriously. Without saying a word, it suddenly charged, and its hands and feet suddenly rushed forward, facing the green praying mantis head on, which was also preparing to draw its sword. It swung its sword in a quick arc, slashing out the skilled triple diagonal, only. In a single beat it could unleash three slashes to the right, left, and arc at Unan. It dodged them all, and took a few steps back to charge forward and launch a savage bite, but the praying mantis didn't even flinch because it had blocked it, except that its body was pushed back, close to a tree stump that had been waiting silently for a while. It turned out that it was the tree stump that Frog was using his camouflage skill to approach. After observing the battle just now, he sneered, thinking that the praying mantis's tongue slash was so fast and powerful, it must have been surrounded by idiots to write such a martial arts story. Now that he thought about it, he knew why the stupid mushroom boulder had ambushed it successfully. He didn't even bother to camouflage himself anymore, and Frog returned to his original form, and threw the branch in his hand so that it fell to the ground. He didn't care if it made a sound or not, because his lungs were filled with confidence. Frog braced himself, used his mushroom head, and rushed towards the praying mantis from behind. It only heard the sound of the wind, and turned its head to look back, but it was too late, and it ate a whole vicious bite that flew straight down its throat, and its head rolled down to the ground. Before they could celebrate, both of them gained experience points, their bodies turned yellow, and they successfully leveled up. Their appearance was no different, but the mushroom head had increased to level 4, 
the attack power of the skill had increased by one and a half times, and the cooldown was only 20 seconds. Frag, shouted to the sky, praising himself as a real VIP pro. With his brain full of tactics, the monsters were just a piece of cake for him to chew on. Confidently putting his hands on his hips, Frog asked the system to give him a more difficult task, and it immediately gave him a general task, to go to the Mushroom Kingdom. The reward, was 600 points, with a reminder that the journey was long, and he had to be careful with his stamina. If you run out of stamina, you may be killed by weaker monsters. Frog felt like he was finally starting the main quest, but what was the Mushroom Kingdom? How far away was it? The system knew what he was thinking, and before he could ask anything, it jumped out and said, it's not that far, okay? It's only 400 kilometers away? Looking at the dirt road stretching out before him with nothing but grass and wind, Frog took a second and a system message appeared. What the hell is? 400 kilometers, are you kidding me? Do you think I'm an idiot? The system had to jump out and calm him down, saying that he didn't have to walk the whole way. I have many other ways to get there for only 200 cheap coins. Speaking of money, Frog ignored it. Right away, just threw un in to ask if we have each other, right? 400 kilometers is just a blink of an eye for you, right? The pink pig seemed to be just waiting for this, and shouted out loud with a proud and radiant look, making the system speechless, earning money from people. Playing is so difficult. The sun rose high in the sky, casting its light down on an area of greenery growing on rocks, which was the habitat of many small monsters. He had come 20 kilometers by dangling food in front of his nose, and Frog went into Un Inn to lie down under the shade of a tree with a half-red, half-white flower, panting, and sticking out his tongue. He only had 33 out of 100 stamina points left, so he looked very thin, and now he realized that he couldn't walk like this anymore. The window seemed to have been waiting for this sentence, and popped out to say that's right, player. With your current condition, you will run out of stamina after only 18 kilometers if you don't rest. Looking at Un In, who was silent, Frog had hands, and even it could only get here after a day, and only had 12 stamina points left. I mean, I should have known that there would be a problem when I saw that the quest was so easy but was ranked as common difficulty. Knowing that Frog was in a difficult position, the system jumped out to add, you can't cancel the quest, my friend. Once you start, good luck this time or next time, you may have to figure out how to get there yourself. I mean, you're going to give me money to figure out a way, right? Oh, it's not hard to be rich, but I can get free gifts. It said no, don't even think about getting any guidance if you don't give me any money. Then the system opened parentheses, saying that it knew that the player didn't have any money on him. But this time, Frag didn't yell at the top of his lungs anymore. He lay down on the ground exhausted and cursed at the bastard who came up with the idea of making him pay the system after being turned into a mushroom. Feeling sorry for him, the window popped up a new line, why don't you try? Your abilities, you might find something new and interesting. Frog went back and read it over and over again, and just as he was wondering, something shot out, and exploded a patch of land in front of them both with a bang like a bomb. Un In stood up on its hind legs, clutching the mushroom that Frog didn't know anything about, and waited for the smoke to clear to see a stick with a gem on top. From it emerged a man who looked like Satan and a white-haired man with a hood over his head who looked very mysterious. Frag's eyes could clearly see the human form, and he realized with great concern that the level 28 sorcerer in front of him was the same guy he had met in the novice village. After all this hard work, and with the help of the system, he had only managed to reach level 16, Frag, was scared to realize that this guy had leveled up so fast, not to mention that there was someone else with him. He was also a sorcerer, but at level 36, Chow's eyes narrowed at Frog and growled, finally, he found you. The two of them walked towards the tree where the two of them were hiding. Frog and Unan both turned pale when they saw the sorcerer start to fly up, gritting his teeth and not knowing what to do. What? From behind Frog the pink pig jumped up and stood firmly in front of him, squealing. The two of them were already very close, but Unan didn't flinch. Frog turned pale and whispered from behind, Hey pink pig, come back here or you'll die. The sorcerer kicked Unan without saying a word, and gently kicked the pig away, and it lay on the ground for a while before lying still on the ground. Frog looked at his feet, not knowing what to do, but the two sorcerers just passed him by without paying any attention to him. The level 28 didn't seem to recognize the mushroom he had encountered, and only looked at him with contempt. It's really strange. How come there are low-level monsters so far away? The other one looked at the place where Frog had been hiding, and laughed. 
Ha ha, after a lifetime of adventuring, I finally have it in my hands. It turned out that what he was talking about was not the flower of the tree, but the last item to level up, the egg of the great fire eagle. However, the joy of the two of them in the eyes of a lowly mushroom was no different from that of two murderers. Frog was so scared that he couldn't bear it, and used the spore eruption skill, emitting a thick smoke that made the two sorcerers cough for a while. The level 36 fanned his hand in annoyance, wondering why a mushroom monster could use this kind of skill. Level 28 remembered that he had encountered this type before, but let's not waste any more time here. This area is too dangerous, let's pick up the eggs and go. Suddenly there was a sound on the ground, Un and the pig ran at full speed, using a savage slurp to take the sorcerer. As the target, determined to give him a lesson he would never forget, or to destroy the eagle egg in his hand. Unexpectedly, the staff in his hand lit up, and in an instant, Un and found that he was not rushing towards him but was out of phase. He panicked and struggled with his four legs but couldn't stop, and slurped straight into the nearby rock, throwing himself up and grabbing the tree, lying face down on the two eagle eggs. You're dizzy, the pink pig must have fainted after that. Suddenly the trunk below it stopped shaking, and the stone under the roots cracked louder and louder. Frog clenched his fists in anger, cursing this stupid pig. He had a chance to escape but turned back to attack. What people are doing, making him unbearable to step towards the two sorcerers and want to take revenge immediately. Level 28 looked at Frog curiously, wondering why this mushroom not only had strange abilities, but also grew hands and feet. Could it transform? Suddenly there was a loud noise nearby and the sorcerers looked over in surprise to find that the tree that was wrapped around the rock was now lifting its own rock and spinning it around. It turned out to be a happy tree monster that lived on rocks. When it encounters a strong impact from the environment, it usually swings the surrounding rocks as a self-defense mechanism. However, it doesn't distinguish between friend and foe, just swinging in a circle past the sorcerers. Frog saw that it was about to rush towards him, and at first he intended to run away with a clatter, but it was too late, so he played the mushroom head to jump up to the top, just out of reach of the tree, and landed on the top next to the pink pig. He looked down below, where it was too dangerous for a low-level person like him. The roots of the tree kept spinning, and after a while they spun out of their original orbit, hitting the core of another tree as if to wake it up. The tree on that side groaned and lifted the rock, spinning it for a while and then hitting another tree. Frog gritted his teeth in fear. This thing was causing a chain reaction, and the situation was about to get out of control. In no time at all, the entire peaceful area where they had been sheltered from the sun became a group of trees spinning around like a dance, dragging the pink pig, who was dizzy from spinning, up above. The level 36 sorcerer, with his flashing skills and magic shield, avoided it quite easily, while the level 28 also used the same method, but with some difficulty. The only pity is that the small monsters who were just hiding under the shade of the trees to avoid the sun, not able to run, were hit by the rock and died on the spot. The tree spun a few more times and gradually reduced the radius of its rotation, finally closing the stones together with a thud, trapping the ugly monster inside. The row of trees growing right above it sucked it dry until it was completely drained. Only then did the whole forest return to its original state of tranquility. Frog was shocked by the sight, the scene was too gruesome, and Unan must have been shocked too. But now it couldn't open its eyes, and was still spinning around. The sound of footsteps came from not far away prompting Frog to turn around and look. It was the two sorcerers approaching with an unpleasant demeanor that darkened the atmosphere around them. It's no wonder they're annoyed. The level 36 was moving so smoothly that he got a few scratches. The level 28 sneered with his missing teeth, glaring at the monster and cursing it. Frog was scared to death. The two of them, one blue and one red, had already rushed over and used all kinds of skills to prepare to kill them. Just then, a scream came from the sky, and a huge figure spread its wings wide, casting a shadow on the ground, causing the two of them to turn around and look at it immediately. Damn, we spent a thousand gold to hire those soldiers. But those idiots couldn't hold that thing down for a minute? It was clear that both sorcerers recognized the figure, which swooped down from the sky at an incredible speed and plunged headfirst into the ground below. Dust and smoke obscured the figures of the two sorcerers, but they stood firm behind a wall of ice, which was effective against the fire phoenix, which was roaring ferociously. Frog peered out from behind the leaves to see the level 47 fire phoenix. All other information was beyond his level, so he didn't know anything. The level 28 turned to the bearded man, having just used up a lot of energy to resist. The tree monster, uncle, help me replenish my energy. The level 36 refused, gritting his teeth in frustration and asking, do you think I'm any better off? I'm almost out of energy too, 
How am I going to defend against the next attack? Then use that high level potion we brought from the magic alliance to attack it. In a moment of distraction, the light swept through the level 28, leaving only the lower half of his body in front of the horrified old sorcerer. He gritted his teeth and sweated profusely, watching his arm, which was bleeding profusely, gradually disappear into the beak of the phoenix. Its whole body was ablaze, its eyes blazing as it turned and stared at it. He didn't have time. From the storage space he poured out a lot of blue and red potions and grabbed them all with one hand. The old sorcerer drank the potions as if they were water, pouring them straight into his mouth as if it was already too late. The phoenix was scraping the ground, preparing to pounce on its prey. Damn it, he crouched down and prepared to face it because, either way, this phoenix was going to kill him anyway. Its razor-sharp claws shot forward, and with one hand he pushed the egg forward, to threaten it, and with the other hand he pushed the staff to play a bloodless game with the phoenix. Sure enough, when it saw its child, it flapped its wings to slow down and braked immediately, but the wind from it was like a hurricane. The ground beneath the old sorcerer's feet was pushed back, and his clothes were torn to shreds, revealing his heart-shaped pink boxer shorts. As dreamy as it was, he spat out a mouthful of bright red blood, and the old sorcerer laughed with glee, even though, no matter how high level the monster was, it had the same intelligence and emotions as he had guessed. Squeezing both things in his hands, he threatened, what do you want? If you can't attack me, then listen to me, or I'll smash the egg in my hand to pieces. The fire phoenix glared at him, growling uncomfortably without backing down. Raising his staff, he shouted, up, the thunderclap, calling down a giant bolt of lightning from the heavens to strike the phoenix, burning it black. The thunderclap made it convulse violently and then fall heavily to the ground, paralyzed. The old sorcerer gleefully stepped forward and sneered, what a stupid bird. Because I'm over 50 and haven't passed level 2 as a sorcerer, I've been laughed at all this time. No, guild would let me join. Old age has made it difficult for me to compete with the young people now. But now it's different. The old man's eyes were bloodshot. Finally the day has come for me to have revenge. Not only will I level up, I will also be able to kill a high-level monster like you. The fire phoenix was paralyzed all over, but its eyes were fixed on the sorcerer, and would not let go, which made him even more angry and he kicked it in the head with a little hatred. Do you know what your father has been through? Those, who called me trash, useless, will be finished by me. Each of the old man's kicks caused the fire phoenix great pain and it cried out a few times, spitting out blood, which only made the sorcerer more gleeful. So what if the younger ones are more talented than me, they'll all die anyway. Look at you, aren't you a high-level monster, and yet you're being trampled under my feet. Take it out. A green potion in a strange vial, smiling and saying that was enough fun, now it was time to end it. It was a synthetic poison, made by a pharmacist above level 45. Its power depended on the creator and the type of poison used. The vial was crushed in midair, the old sorcerer's eyes wide-eyed, looking at its green light, using his power to create sharp iron ice pillars with poison on their tips, gathering above the fire phoenix's head, ready to kill it. With a flick of his wrist, a series of ice shards stabbed down into the phoenix's wings, and its body and tail were also stabbed. Blood. The monster howled miserably, its whole body paralyzed and poisoned. Unable to bear it, it collapsed and closed its eyes. He then raised the ruby-studded staff with an attack point of 26, a magic attack of 42 and 2 points of luck. Luck. This was an item created by combining a wooden staff and a ruby, which greatly increased its magic power. The higher the quality of the ruby, the stronger the magic it cast. He gleefully said his last words before killing the phoenix, I guess I don't need to kill you with high-level magic, but that's okay. The observation of the challenge is enough for you. The fire phoenix lay in its own pool of blood, only its human eyes moving with contempt. Light. Bright red light emanated from the ruby, and the old sorcerer continued to speak from above. Hey stupid bird, after you die, rest assured that I will crush your eggs into pieces. It went crazy, screaming, but could do nothing against the thunder summoned from the sky by the power of the staff. At the same time, Frag's disguise skill ended, and he revealed his mushroom form hiding behind a vine, watching the sorcerer scream hysterically. I'm finally the main character. A middle-aged sorcerer is finally invincible. Ah ha ha. Pop, his mouth was open and shouting. Open for his tongue to flick out as Frog used all his strength to pull off his mushroom head and hit the old sorcerer in the back of the head. He lost control and dropped both the staff and the egg into the air. The mother phoenix panicked as she watched her egg, gradually touching the ground 
but luckily Frog had flicked himself over and successfully hid. He breathed a sigh of relief. You're safe now, little one. Fire Phoenix seized the opportunity, squinting its eyes and spreading its wings, telling its mother that its wounds were bleeding and it attacked the sorcerer straight in the face with a loud smack. He flew a long way after landing and hit his back on a rock nearby. Feeling that he was not well, he needed to find a way to get out of here. Taking out the summoning scroll, using 20 life points could take the user back to a previously selected location after pouring a little magic into it. But the mother phoenix would not allow it, from afar it summoned hellfire right under the sorcerer's crotch. It squeezed up a huge pillar of fire and burned from the butt, up to his head, causing him to scream in agony. The heat radiated all the way to where Frog was holding the egg. He was terrified and could not believe that the bird's power was so great that it had quickly burned him to ashes. By killing the sorcerer, the bird increased, leveled up quickly, with the added effect of smoke and fire. A moment later, the fire phoenix's eyes cleared and it had reached level 48. All its wounds had healed and its power had clearly increased to a new level. It let out a roar that shook the heavens and the earth, and spread its wings wide, creating a whirlwind. On the meadow, almost blowing Frag's teeth out, he struggled to hold on to the egg, not knowing when the shaggy figure had approached. It was the mother phoenix with red eyes staring at him. Frog was terrified and tried to smile confidently in the situation, but he saw nothing but her eyes staring straight at him. Suddenly, the egg in his hand was gone. It shook and fell directly. The crack grew deeper and deeper and then a yellow feathered chicken cracked out. It looked around with great interest at its new life and then, landed on the ground immediately, turning its head to see a strange creature hiding its belly on the ground looking at it. The baby phoenix chirped with delight, making Frag's soul fly away. Before he could understand what was happening, it had chirped over to the mushroom, its whole face full of intimacy, ignoring Frag's cries of hot, too hot, oh my god. The mother phoenix watched with tears in her eyes, her child was born healthy and lovely. She lowered herself and cried out, my child, my child, my child, my mother's heart is as vast as the Pacific Ocean, my child. Unexpectedly, the naughty child did not recognize its mother, and kicked the fire phoenix in the face, causing its jaw to shift to one side. Its whole body trembled but it did not turn back to scold it. The baby phoenix had time to slip through and hug Frag's apron, making him sweat profusely. Stop it, what are you doing, it's your mother. From afar came the sound of a chip and two flames, making the three of them turn their heads curiously. It turned out that the other two children of the fire phoenix, had hatched and were being pushed and laughed at happily. One of them still had half an eggshell on its head, making the mother phoenix want to cry with joy. Her gaze was full of maternal love and attention, looking at her children and then making some emotional clucking sounds. She received two cold kicks from her two newly hatched children, almost breaking her leg. They chirped happily towards the pink pig and then, rushed over to the mushroom, rubbing their bodies against it continuously. He found it so cute that he also put out his two short arms to support them, finding them so adorable. The three baby birds, a pig and a mushroom played together for a while, completely ignoring the sad mother phoenix, who could not get near her children. She flapped her wings, suddenly feeling lonely, and the scene caught. Frag's eye, he suddenly had a very bold idea. Leading the pig, he told it to come with him. The pink pig turned around and squealed a few times. The little ones followed immediately. But in front of Frag, a pair of wings suddenly appeared. The whole group was walking too fast and the one in front stopped. Abruptly because Frog had to stop because the road was blocked. The mother phoenix looked down at it sternly, her eyes piercing as if to ask, where do you want to take my child? However, before she could bear it for a few seconds, the naughty child had already pecked her head, causing the mother phoenix to fall back several steps. She was ashamed and heartbroken, but she did not dare to speak, watching her three children, whom she had given birth to, now standing, in a brave line facing her to protect the two peppers that had come from nowhere. Frog suddenly jumped out between the mother phoenix and her children, and solemnly, told them no, no, you can't do that. The little ones did not understand anything, they looked at Frog and asked what they could not do. He described the appearance of these people, clacking, clacking, all sorts of things, pointing at his butt and holding a stone. He acted out the cruel scene of taking her child away. He took the stone and broke it in two, scaring the three children. Pointing at the mother phoenix, Frog finally said the key. Sentence, that's the real mother of those children. That's it, this mother has put her life on the line to protect her children, you know? Cluck, cluck, cluck. The gentle mother phoenix called her children to return to her. Frog watched as the children hesitated and walked towards her reminding them to remember to give their mother a hug. And so the family was reunited, the three children under the warm embrace of their mother the phoenix looked very touching. 
Frog called the pink pig back with satisfaction and look. We have helped the mother phoenix, surely it will repay us. Then we will ask it to take us to the kingdom of tongue lung mushrooms and complete the task easily. The fire phoenix heard everything, it closed its wings to keep the little ones back and then suddenly looked at Frog with a menacing look, as if to warn him. He was terrified of its mouth, and stammered to the pig. Surely, surely this phoenix will repay us, right? I guess not. The whole family turned around and left right away, before Frag's eyes, causing the hope in his eyes to vanish. He reached out to hold it back but could not, how could it leave like this? Please take us to the mushroom kingdom, but no baby, I won't let you. The sound of the phoenix's footsteps grew, further and further away, and the sound of the wind was desolate and rustling. Suddenly, all three children turned their heads to look, making the mother phoenix glare at them. Aren't you surprised, old lady? She asked back fiercely, why? Would a monster of such a low level dare to order me around? Holy crap, it, it, it can talk. Frog was stunned and could not believe it, and what's more, it was a male voice, a male. Frag's face turned pale as if he had seen a ghost, his sharp feet had already slammed down to the ground right in front of him. The entire body of the young phoenix emitted high temperature flames, and it stepped closer to Frog and asked in a low voice, what rank are you to order someone like me around? A like from you guys only takes a second, but it makes Mitt happy all day long. Like Mitt for motivation to come up with more stories, my dear friend. Just when the tension was at its peak, the phoenix suddenly felt a piercing pain in its skull. It spat out a mouthful of blood right in front of the little ones. They were terrified, but the father phoenix could not do anything more. Its mind went dark and it fell to the ground. Un in and frog waited for their eyes to adjust and saw the fierce monster lying trembling on the ground. While the little ones were terrified and chirping helplessly, it tried to force its eyes open but all it could see were the two little monsters with lecherous smiles on their faces, as if they wanted to take advantage of its unconsciousness to do something bad. The night was quiet and cool, and it was not until a long time later that the father phoenix opened its eyes in a daze. Glancing towards the light of the grass, it saw its three children, hugging each other in a blazing fire. It screamed in fear, afraid that its children would become roasted birds. They opened their eyes to the noise, looking hazy as if they had just woken up. But it made their father smile with satisfaction. It turned out that it was the children's fire-making skill. But making a fire for the pink pig to sleep next to was really warm. Looking at the way Un In was enjoying himself, it gritted its teeth with anger, forcing itself to get up and kick the pig to vent its anger. But as soon as its feet hit the ground, its whole body lost strength and fell down unable to sit up again. It thought bitterly that even though it had leveled up, it still could not cure the combined toxins of that sorcerer. Don't think about it. The clinking sound of bottles and jars made it look over curiously, and saw a short hand pouring several bottles and jars out of a small bag. Who else could it be but Frag, who was piling up all sorts of money and potions into a pile? The fire phoenix called out to the mushroom in confusion, and it smiled, cunningly and laughed, are you awake? The mushroom held a bottle of orange liquid in its hand, and with a smile on its face, it approached, like a villain, making the phoenix's eyes widen in alarm. One, two, three, into the mouth. He stood up on a sloping mound of earth and poured the entire bottle of potion into the phoenix's mouth. It was furious and could not believe that it had no strength to fight back against a low-level monster. Unexpectedly, after finishing cursing, it felt something strange. It stopped abruptly and fell down accepting that its physical strength was gradually increasing. Frog didn't even bother to pay attention, and walked back to the pile of things he had picked up from the lower part of the sorcerer. This guy was carrying all sorts of fancy stuff, including an antidote. It's just that it will probably take some time for the antidote to take effect, so don't try too hard. The fire phoenix was still wary, and you asked why I saved you. Oh, Frog looked back at it as if it had just asked a stupid question. How can your children survive if you die? Look at them, they're using all their strength to make a fire for the pig. The fire phoenix suddenly felt very sorry for them. Thought Frog was right, but it had to try its best to stand up. He led the people over and tried to persuade them. These people didn't have any bad intentions. They just wanted to go to the mushroom kingdom and ask your brother to help them cross the river. The phoenix glanced at the sleeping pig lying outside, and asked calmly, is it just you and that pink pig? The path there is full of strong monsters, and if, even if you were carried there on the backs of your grandparents, since you are a mushroom, you will be fine, but that pig is not so sure. Un In was dreaming of eating meat, and his saliva was dripping down his chin. Frog didn't understand. What about it? 
phoenix asked back, don't you know anything, at all, the king of the mushroom kingdom is very famous, not only humans, but any monster that is not of the mushroom race, will be attacked without reason when approaching that area, frog understood why the fire phoenix was so angry, when he asked to be taken to the mushroom kingdom, it was no different from him asking the phoenix to put itself in danger, but what happened to the pink pig, it suddenly leaned down and looked at frag, who jumped back in fright, what are you doing, old man, he jumped up and down, far away to avoid being pecked by that sharp beak, pondered and said to you, it's very strange, but frog thought, this phoenix was the strange one, what was strange about him, an ordinary mushroom monster like you should be, a brainless creature, but you are unusually intelligent, its eyes were fixed on frag, a low level monster, but a high level brain like you is very rare, I'm sure your meat will be perfect for my children to eat, frog was terrified, and tried to back away, crossing his arms and resisting weakly, the phoenix couldn't help but laugh out loud, I'm just kidding, kidding like this, one day frog will have a heart attack, he almost fainted, the phoenix looked at him with a wise look, and said I'm not like those humans, who put everything in their mouths just to satisfy their selfish desires, but didn't monsters and humans live together peacefully in the past, why can't we go back to the way we were before, frag's question made the phoenix angry when he answered, I don't care what they do with the eggshells after my children are born, but just to get the shells, the humans are willing to steal, and break the eggs before the phoenixes hatch in exchange for money, my organization is the same, all my children were destroyed by those damn humans, oh man, that's a sad story, frog sighed, guessing, that in every world, humans deceive everyone just to satisfy themselves, the more the phoenix talked, the more bitter it became, so bitter that its eyes seemed to be on fire, it let out a deafening roar, and its entire body transformed into a, giant pillar of fire, the heat of which forced frog to retreat quickly, the children were still huddled together, sleeping soundly and, not knowing what was going on, which reassured the phoenix father, this time, my children were able to survive thanks to you, so thank you, frog said oh, it's okay, but his legs were covered in, the fire spots from the phoenix, which were sizzling, it said as it turned away, tomorrow I will take you to the mushroom kingdom, now go to sleep, frog blew on the fire spots on his legs, okay, let's go to sleep, suddenly, his mind flashed back to what the phoenix had said, and his eyes lit up as he asked, really, are you going to help us get to the mushroom kingdom, yeah, it replied indifferently, before I change my mind, you should shut up, frog ran to the pile of bottles and jars, and looked, back at the phoenix and said, rest assured, I'll do this before I sleep, it closed and then opened its eyes, curious to know what the mushroom was going to do, frog poured a bunch of solutions from the bottles, into a large basin and stirred it with a branch, intending to experiment with a few things before setting off, taking out a block of soaked salam, frog poured it into, the basin and then threw a large stone next to it, and hopped up, thinking he was going to jump in for a bath, but instead, he put his butt out in front and placed it on the surface of the water, gradually absorbing it, the strange absorption method was accompanied by a gurgling sound, which amazed the phoenix. The solution was not hot, but frog was sweating all over, and he inhaled and exhaled. In one go, a thick yellow liquid, exactly like the one he had given the phoenix to drink earlier. It let out a loud cry of damn it, immediately, realizing that it had drunk the vomit of this mushroom. Frog wiped his mouth and hopped out of the basin. Dean Lan came over with a test tube and said, Boss Bird, we're going on a journey tomorrow, so here's some medicine, that we made specially for you to help you recover faster. The phoenix immediately felt less tired, and it stood up and roared, its wings spread out like a threatening fire. If you come here, your mother and father will die. Frog didn't understand anything, and at the end of the day, he checked the total number of items he had collected that day. I got three summoning scrolls, 497 gold coins, 18 small red potions, 13 small blue potions, 11 small yellow potions, and a bunch of magic items, plus a bunch of recipes for making red, blue, and yellow potions. Overall, this trip was a profit and not a loss. As soon as the sky turned light, the phoenix was already flying high in the sky. Instead of letting the two of them ride on its back, the phoenix carried the mushroom on one side and the pig on the other, like two prey. Frog shouted to Un In, trying to overcome the wind, don't be afraid, little pink pig. Be sure to remember what I said. When we land there, you must listen to me and act accordingly. Un In agreed immediately, and squealed with delight. It was not easy to get a ride on the Phoenix airline. The Phoenix swooped down, saying we're almost at the Mushroom Kingdom. Get ready to land. Its landing was even faster than its flying. Frog grimaced and cursed, while Un In was very happy. It just wanted to keep flying. 
Flying like this made me dizzy. Frog grimaced, but the pink pig was very happy. Its wet eyes gleamed with joy as it called out to him to look quickly. The mushroom opened its eyes and looked at the scene in front of it, which was a large area designed like a colorful tray in the middle of a barren land. The mushroom kingdom had enough large and small circles spread out within sight, and before they had seen enough, they saw two pillars shooting straight up into the sky. The phoenix knew it was aimed at it, and said seriously that it was under attack, so hold on tight. A pig and a mushroom hugged each other and looked curiously at what it was. The phoenix lowered itself to avoid the two pillars, carrying the two little ones around, in a circle, and saw another pillar shooting into the range of the flying phoenix. It puffed up its cheeks and breathed out a magical breath of fire, which collided with it and exploded with a loud bang. Frog was startled and asked the phoenix what had just attacked. It, it said it was your mushroom, wasn't it? Hovering in the air for the two new guests who had not yet experienced life, when the flames dissipated, they saw a lot of black dots waiting on the city wall. There were a lot of mushrooms of all kinds that looked like they were taken out of plants and zombies. One mushroom looked like a wizard who had just waved his hand, and several soldier mushrooms. Just like Frog had jumped up and down and lined up in a row. Sure enough, it was a level 44 wizard mushroom, with its life force and magic power being very high. Although it was not fatal, its physical attack and magic power could defeat any chatterer. From the information provided by the system, the wizard mushroom is a very rare type of mushroom. Its personality is extremely calm and patient, with a very different appearance, being thin and arrogant. With its extremely high magic power, the wizard mushroom can help lower level mushrooms evolve. It lives only in the mushroom kingdom and is one of the right hand men of the mushroom king. The wizard mushroom closed its long eyelashes, raised its staff, and read three. Three whole spell leaves, then tapped a soldier mushroom on the head. It bounced faster and faster on the ground, and then, out of the blue, the mushroom suddenly turned into a soldier with thorns on its head, like it had just returned from Africa. The level 24 mushroom bomb did not have a high vitality, but its critical hit rate was as high as 20% due to its extremely high self-destruction ability. Legend has it that in ancient times, these mushroom bombs created concentrated self-destruction attacks capable of destroying enemies twice their level. These guys are also known as very impulsive and fearless mushrooms. That's why it bounces on every wall, its whole body on fire, sticking its butt into a very tight hole, which is the top of a mushroom that looks like a firecracker. Below it were many legs, wearing thick glasses, looking like a real bookworm, very unlike the name of a level 36 mushroom cannon. Its vitality is super high, with a critical hit rate of 50% and an attack power of 789. The mushroom cannon is considered an unparalleled evolution of the common mushroom because only after going through a terrible illness can it transform into this. Because of its large and heavy body, it cannot bounce around like the soldiers. Instead, the mushroom cannon grows countless small legs in the middle to crawl on the ground. The mushroom cannon connects its mushroom cap to its nostrils and uses it to shoot out extremely smooth and powerful bullets thanks to its own nasal mucus. When it runs out of nasal mucus, it can stuff other things into as replacement bullets, which at this time are mushroom bombs. Its nose turned red and then it sniffed, the mushroom cannon opened its mouth and took a breath, and then its face wrinkled up. Finally, it let out a big sneeze, and the trunk on the cap tightened into a pinch, making the mushroom bomb smile happily and expectantly. The sound of the mushroom cannon's nose and mouth sneezing was also the moment when the mushroom bomb was shot out. Not just one, but a whole series of them were shot out into the sky, turning into red bullets that the phoenix had to dodge quickly just now. It glanced at the trajectory and turned to avoid it, carrying the two burdens under its feet. The mushroom bombs laughed, he he he, and at their highest point, they exploded with a bang, the spore eruption technique exactly like frags, and the thorny caps flew out. The blinding spore eruption was actually just the first step, with a large number of them used to block vision. The mushroom bombs pressed the switch on their stomachs, activating their self-destruct skill. Their mouths lit up and they flew towards their opponents at super fast speeds from all four directions. Unable to avoid them all, the phoenix turned on its magic ring of fire mode, curling its whole body up into a wheel and colliding directly with the mushroom bombs, which exploded with a bang in the air. From that cloud of smoke and fire, the phoenix shot out, flying out of there and continuing into the airspace of the mushroom kingdom. We're done with the outer circle, I'll take you two to the inner circle. But from that point on, you're on your own. 
The boss was mainly reminding Frag, but he didn't know if he could hear him anymore. The young man had been foaming at the mouth for a while now. The phoenix's wings spread wide, and as it flew through the clouds, it saw something out of the corner of its eye. There was something in front of it, emitting smoke of a strange color, causing the phoenix to break hard. Due to inertia, Frog was pushed out and woke up, stammering and asking, Ha, huh, ha, huh, where are we? He was sweating all over his head, changing his mind from before. I can only take you guys this far. I'm afraid there's no way back for you little ones if I go any deeper. The amount of magic in there is terrifying. Could it be from the Mushroom King? Frog tried to remember, and asked again, where is this? The phoenix didn't answer, and its claws suddenly loosened. Frog and the piglet had just stopped screaming and were about to ask why their heads were cool when they felt their whole bodies falling freely downwards. The piglet squealed with delight, but Frog looked like his teeth and lips were all mixed up, and he didn't know what to do except scream and shout. Below the piglet's feet was a seven-colored rainbow but Frog was busy screaming and shouting, so he hit his head on it and slid down at the same time as the pink pig. They thought it was fun to slide down with their hands out, like playing on a slide, but they suddenly felt something was wrong. This slide was too steep, and their four butts dragged and dropped them to the ground, bouncing a few times before they finally came to a stop. It was so short that they were a little stiff, but after a while the piglet raised its hands excitedly and squealed because it had landed, only Frog spat out a mouthful of blood because it was too painful to land on his butt, but if he looked back at what he had just slid down, he was very lucky not to have died. Suddenly there was a thud next to them, and the two of them looked cautiously over to see a boulder moving. Not moving, but turning the other side inward, and suddenly five or seven mushroom boulders turned their faces to the two of them and stared at them. Frog was so scared that he bared his teeth. Oh my god, is it a mushroom boulder again? But they ignored Frog and looked over at the pink creature that was looking at them with its eyes closed. After thinking for a while, as if trying to digest what this thing was, the mushroom boulder suddenly opened its mouth, oh my god. It roared an alarm and then a whole group of mushroom boulders roared ferociously, calling in other groups around them to rush in. Frog remembered the fire phoenix's warning, the piglet had been targeted and was going to be killed. He stubbornly supported himself on his four legs and groaned a few times in response, only to be hit in the head by Frag. What are you yelling about? Shouldn't you be running away instead of fighting with your mouth? Frog grabbed the tail of the pig and ran away, followed closely by a group of ferocious mushroom boulders. The scene was chaotic, like a creditor chasing after a few deadbeats. Frog used all his speed to run, shouting for his father and mother. These stone boulders were not fast, but there were too many of them. As soon as he finished cursing, two huge ones appeared in front of him. Frog and the piglet turned sharply to find another way, but they were blocked again and they turned again. They went left and then right, and soon they were surrounded. Damn it. Frog used all his brain power and gritted his teeth to make a decision that there was no other way but to fight to understand each other. Spores erupted, the mushroom boulders lost their vision, and bumped into each other. With nowhere to run, they chased him down to his feet, trying to guess where their prey had gone. A tiny arm stretched out from under the smoke of the mushroom spores and stuck something on the piglet's butt. Frog crouched down under the smoke and frantically pulled out a few mushrooms from the ground, and as the smoke began to clear, he had to move faster. The mushroom boulders saw something moving dimly but didn't know what it was, and just stared at it. Then they suddenly saw Frag's smile. Dear mushroom gentlemen and ladies, is there some kind of misunderstanding here? They happily dealt with the one from under the smoke as a family, and when they were cornered here, they talked nonsense. What? Frog appeared with a very confident attitude, calm down, mushroom brothers, they are my family. What family of yours? They looked down from above with a look of incomprehension. Frog pointed to the side, and I am honored to introduce, Tada, the piglet mushroom. The piglet was covered in green from the blue touch, and it put the mushroom on its head and back, and even its nose was running, and its eyes were watering. The air around the mushroom boulders was silent as they tried to figure out if this was really a pink piglet mushroom. Pop, a mushroom on the piglet's smooth butt fell to the ground, and the glue came loose. A silence fell over the grim faces of the mushroom boulders. Even Frog could only smile and try to put the mushroom back in, explaining that it was nothing. When it's time for the pig to shed its hair, the pig mushroom sheds its old mushrooms. The suspicious eyes kept shining on Frog but didn't attack. He slowly led the piglet away from there. His mouth still smiled playfully, asking permission to leave first, big brothers. The piglet tried to keep the mushrooms from falling off its head as it walked, and together with Frog they finally escaped the big ones. He breathed a sigh of relief, glad that he was still alive. It was lucky that his opponent was a big head with a brain like a grape. However, the green touch was quite useful 
and Frog decided to keep the camouflage on the piglet's back. Maybe the small-brained mushroom wouldn't notice. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard someone chuckle very close by. You're an interesting little guy. Both of them stopped cautiously and asked with narrowed eyes, who is it? A mushroom that looked very much like him but was fully clothed, not naked. At this moment, he was leaning against a tree, crossing his arms and replying carelessly, aren't you a mushroom controlled by a human? He leaned against the trunk of the tree, but it was an ancient mushroom with large, round branches. All Frog could read was the name of the mushroom. He couldn't see his level, and all his other skills were beyond his level, so he couldn't see through him. This uncle could actually speak human language. Frog was wary, his mind racing for a way out, but he knew he couldn't use the tricks he used on the stupid ones. What's that? The shiitake mushroom looked at him sternly, and asked, Are you planning to use a fake moon and stars? Sure enough, that's a skill only humans can use. I guess I was right to guess that you are a human pet. Accused of having a black heart, Frog panicked and pointed at the shiitake mushroom trying to calm it down by saying, we are all mushrooms, don't do anything rash. As soon as he finished speaking, the cap flew over to the two of them, spinning violently like a boomerang. Frog was resigned to his fate, closing his eyes and giving up, but unexpectedly, the shiitake mushroom followed its cap and appeared behind the two of them in a pose like a swordsman crossing the lake, with a bun on its head that looked very much like a golden needle mushroom. It sheathed its sword and grabbed the cap to put it back on its head. Now Frog knew that this was Cage, one of the four great generals of the Mushroom Kingdom. Turning to the two of them, he said that we have nothing to say to each other. As the guardian of this territory, there is a 0% chance that any threat will get past me. Frog didn't understand anything. He turned around to explain, and suddenly saw that his health points had been reduced by 257. And 257 was all his health points. Frog realized in shock that he had just been split in two from the top of his head down. Unin was startled, and when he looked over, he saw Frog split in two and fall to the ground. His friend was dead. Already, he sighed and his eyes filled with tears. The mushroom camouflage on his nose fell to the ground and shattered. Oh dear, Unin exclaimed slowly for a few seconds before screaming out in hatred. The pink pig had transformed into a monster, using all four of its thick legs to charge towards Cage, putting all its strength into a savage charge, but the shiitake mushroom only raised an eyebrow and repeated, all trespassers must die. He drew his sword and struck Unin on the back, causing it to kneel down on the ground. The entire camouflage was shattered, and the pink pig fainted at his feet, ignoring the sharp sword that was gleaming menacingly and preparing to strike. His hand tightened, and his eyes didn't even blink, when suddenly the mushroom loudspeaker from far, far away sounded a terrible howl. The sound waves from the central area of the mushroom kingdom gradually spread to the entire area even beyond where Cage was preparing to strike. He leaned back and quickly jumped onto a nearby mushroom tree without touching Un in, disappearing. Without a trace, outside the kingdom, there was a loud noise, and the boulders jumped towards the center at the sound of the whistle. Each time they hit the ground, everything shook, and they all seemed to be in a hurry, ignoring Un in. Lying unconscious and Frog being split in two. Suddenly, the two halves of him moved closer together and joined together unexpectedly. Gradually, Frog regained consciousness, opened his eyes, and found that he had returned to his old form. What happened? Here, I was clearly dead, so how am I still alive? And there's no resurrection gold, so how? Frog looked around in confusion and found Unin lying nearby, knocked out by a blow that had made him smoke. He rushed over and shouted at the pink pig, shaking it back and forth countless times, but there was no response. Frog was terrified, thinking that his friend was really dead, and he hugged the pink pig and cried. The emotional shock. The emotional shock was so great that it activated his spore eruption without him knowing it, and a violent yellow smoke erupted along with the pain. Frog cried and regretted it immensely. It's my fault. I shouldn't have brought you with me. I'm the one who caused this. Of yours. Suddenly, the spore smoke entered Unin's nose, and it suddenly stood up and charged at Frag. The pink pig stood up on its four legs, sniffing the scent of the spores, and became so excited that its hair stood on end, blowing away the mushrooms. Frog was terrified, and called out to it, Unin? The pig only then realized that there was someone else beside it, looked at Frag, and then rushed over, squealing, joyfully, turning into a puppy and licking Frag's face affectionately. He was relieved too, it was good that it was okay. Wiping away his tears, Frog whispered, I thought you were dead just now. The whistle sounded again, echoing throughout the area, this time, the two of them looked over in that direction in surprise. While Frog was still wondering what the sound was, Unin looked on with caution. Suddenly, it saw its friend jump up, his hands shaking, 
his eyes unfocused from being hypnotized. Unin ran after him, calling out Unit, but Frog didn't hear it. It tried to use its mouth to clamp onto the mushroom cap, and pulled him back with all its might. The pain from this brought Frag's consciousness back. He shook his head and wondered what the hell was going on, what had just happened that made his head hurt so much. Unin came over and asked, why are you looking at the little guy like that? The loud noise from the center of the kingdom rang out once again, and Frog was hypnotized as soon as he heard it, charging forward without saying a word. This time, he was even faster, and Unin was so scared that it tried to pull him back, squealing, but Frog didn't notice. On the other side of the mushroom kingdom wall, the waterfall poured down from a distance, turning the light into beautiful streaks of color. From there, it poured into a winding stream between the giant mushrooms, and now there was a sound of shouting that was even louder than the sound of the water. A horde of mushrooms of all sizes, armed with weapons, shouted loudly, their feet stomping as they faced a group of humans with shields and swords running towards them. Kill them, kill them all. Both sides charged at each other without mercy. The sound of weapons and screams clashed. The mushrooms looked small, but they were very bloodthirsty. One jumped up and landed on a shield, digging its feet in. This warrior Sukana had reached level 33, and was well equipped by the one-eyed poison guild. An arm wrestle caused this mushroom to become dizzy. The spiky-haired man opposite him shouted at him, Sir Kuga, we'll leave the rear to you. This swordsman, Chase, had reached level 29, but had been ranked alongside Kuga. With a quick glance, he had accurately slashed a rather large soldier mushroom. Behind him, a mushroom assassin tried to attack him from behind. Unexpectedly, it was hit by an arrow that pierced its body, and it fell to the ground. The level 21 archer Kagaya from the poisonous eye guild pointed her finger up confidently. Senior Chase should be careful too. But don't worry, leave it to me. He reminded him haughtily. Now is not the time to relax. The battle has only just begun. A horde of mushroom soldiers charged over in large numbers, forcing the poisonous eye guild to huddle closer together. Be careful, they're going to use their human wave tactic again. Two gloved hands reached out from a cloud of freezing cold smoke, and there was a click. All of the mushrooms in the new wave of attack became ingredients for a pearl and cheese dish, frozen solid in midair, becoming targets for arrows to pierce, or to be slashed or stabbed by the spikes on the shield that Kuga was holding. They glanced over there and laughed. Finally, the sea ranks have decided to lend us a hand. Taha was a level 38 ice mage, also from the poisonous eye guild, and he laughed as he explained, it was the vice commander's orders. The sound of metal hitting the ground was deafening, and the metal mushroom with its rapidly spinning drill was aiming at Taha as well, and was about to strike. He quickly summoned an ice wall to block it just above his head, but it was no match for the drill. It pierced straight through, casting a shadow over his bespectacled face that was no longer calm. The D-Ranks screamed, and before they could run over. To save him, there was a huge explosion, and the Ice Mage was lying in a pool of his own blood, his mouth whispering, Brother, save me. The metal mushroom seized the opportunity to pounce, its several vicious mouths roaring continuously. The mushroom mouth screamed, Taha, and the other person swung his shadowy arm. Up, revealing a staff, and in an instant, covered it in flames and twisted his body into a javelin throw sending it straight at the metal mushroom to save his senior. The throw unleashed a terrifying force, piercing through the mushroom monster, splitting it in two, and earning a combo of 170 experience points. Waga Waka, a level 49 fire mage, was the one who had thrown the javelin, and was also a member of the same guild, running from the C-rank battlefield to save Taha. Primer looked at his uncle anxiously, reminding him to run over here and prepare for the guild's punishment. Taha, you idiot, save me, save me. Hearing him gasping like that made Waka furious. If you want to punish me, then punish me, if you want to kick me out, then kick me out, but don't. Let Taha die. I joined this guild to honor the mages who created fire magic and poison magic. But looking at the current situation, they don't see mages as anything other than useful. Guns. They've just been waiting and watching all this time, without doing anything useful. While he was cursing, he heard the roar of the metal mushrooms, and another horde was jumping on the D-rank kids, drilling into Kuga's shield. He braced himself, gritted his teeth, and reminded them, we're in the middle of a battle, everyone needs to focus, now is not the time to argue, help me. Kuga, flung his arm out, sending a mushroom flying, but that wasn't enough, and another one charged at him, its mouth roaring. Chase used his sword to create a shield skill, hopping around and then taking a running jump, ending on a large mouthed mushroom. The sword spun in the middle of its face, and it roared a few times before going silent. Waka glanced at him, suggesting that they all leave with him. 
There was no need to stay here and be stepping stones for the high ranks. But Chase didn't agree. I think this is the guild's way of testing our abilities and selecting suitable members. After all, we've been fighting for a long time now. Only a fool would give up at this point. Both sides of the river were now littered with the corpses and wounded of mushroom soldiers and poisonous eye mages. Chase continued, breathing heavily, if we want to stand at the top of the guild, we have to accept the risks. The quest to find the mushroom king is our chance to prove ourselves. Sweat pouring down his bald head. Kuga agreed, I'm getting old, and I'm still stuck at the bottom, but younger people like you, still have a chance. As the leader of our team, I will cover your backs and help you all gain the recognition of the guild. In front of them, many warriors continued to charge forward, crossing the river to fight the mushrooms. Chase felt his lungs fill with determination. Myself, even though I'm just an insignificant swordsman right now, but one day I will become a pillar of the guild and a holy swordsman. Well, if you say so, Waka thought silently, agreeing with Kuga, even though this boy was very young, his attitude and strength were exemplary. Even though he was the one leading the team, Chase was the one who had brought them all together in the first place. Primer was full of determination. I believe in you, Chase. The sound of a trumpet blared out, shaking the entire area, and the whole team didn't understand what the sound meant, but the mushrooms that had been cut down beside them suddenly healed their wounds in an instant. Primer flew overhead, they're moving and coming back to life, and now they're gnashing their teeth and roaring, but everyone knows they're cursing the humans. Waka was furious, even the metal mushrooms that were killed came back to life, and under Chase's feet there was a roar that scared him to death, and he stabbed wildly in a panic. Kuga had to turn around and remind him, don't panic, we need to get back into formation. As soon as he finished speaking, a shadow appeared in front of him, and a dark, muscular hand sent Kuga flying, along with his sturdy shield. He flew backwards, and the shock was evident on Chase's and Waka's faces. The two of them looked anxiously at the one who had just attacked Kuga, and saw a level 47 black and red mushroom monster standing tall, its fists clenched and shouting, Out, Mokumoku. Waka felt angry, and he roared, he couldn't hold back any longer. This is the moment for me, Waka, to burn this whole lot to the ground. His whole body burst into magical flames, spinning around and then, on command, unleashing a great fireball skill, which shot out dozens of fireballs and roared towards the mushroom monster. Just when it didn't know what to do, a star-shaped staff was waved, and a mushroom mage appeared, gently calling out, Mokumoku. The light from the staff illuminated a nearby mushroom soldier, and in an instant it transformed into a tall, ancient mushroom, its cap extended to block all the fireballs. Waka was furious, that was his strongest spell, and it had been blocked so easily? But that wasn't all, the mushroom cannon sneezed again, shooting the thing on its head straight at Kuga, making his jaw drop and his eyes go wide, and no matter how much they called out to him, he wouldn't wake up. The tiny legs, like cow's udders, moved quickly, carrying the laughing mushroom bomb on their heads. Very quickly, a formation of mushroom cannons with runny noses moved into position, nearly a dozen of them, preparing to fire at the children with staffs, so they panicked and shouted at each other to spread out and kill the mushroom cannons, or they would all be blown to kingdom come. They all sneezed at the same time, exploding into the crowd below, sending noses flying everywhere. At the same time, in the sky above, an airship flew over the battlefield, preparing to land. On board the airship, several men and women dressed differently were calmly preparing to join the battle, and it was clear that they were all high-ranking members of the Poisonous Eye Guild. Seth U. Bell, the level 69 swordsman commander, rank A of the guild, turned his head and looked at the little girl behind him, asking, Lilith, are you ready? Currently focused on communicating with the Mushroom King, Lilith, the level 62 monster tamer, grimaced and replied, don't rush me, it's not easy, to control a monster from this distance without being detected or having the mushroom king control it instead, Nia, level 64, hiding her face behind a mask, grimaced and interrupted, even if, it's difficult, senior Lilith, you should hurry up, our comrades down there are fighting for their lives just to create a diversion, for a little while, and I don't want them to suffer any unnecessary losses, looking over at the blue haired girl behind her, Nia said, even though their fighting ability, is limited, they are still members of our guild. Senior Marianne, can you really just stand there and watch them die? Marianne, level 68, was the guild's highest ranking priestess, and she stood there, clutching her staff, her eyes half closed, not responding to his criticism. The blonde man behind her answered instead, our strongest priestess is a rare resource. Her strength, Marianne's strength, can't be wasted on fighting these small fry. That was Borha Mahanov, the level 67 master gunner, 
cheerfully adding, our strongest priestess, doesn't need to get her hands dirty dealing with these cannon fodder, put this at the beginning, he still insists that someone with a gun should help his teammates, the mushrooms are getting stronger and stronger, and if no one helps, poisonous eye will be wiped out, unfortunately, Nia's kindness was cut short by Borja, the value of that kind of, third rate guild you used to be is useless here, poisonous eye only cares about results, understand? Looking inside the swaying curtain, Borja smiled, without orders, just stand here and play, am I right, leader? The one he called the leader was hidden in the shadows behind the curtain, but his gaze was fixed on those outside. Wilhelm, a level 129 fire mage who was beyond the norm, but only the deputy guildmaster, it was unclear how far the guildmaster had come. Under the giant mushrooms, there was a noisy pon pon sound, the Anoki mushrooms endured. The pain, their mouths always calling out mo see you mo see you pulling out the Anoki needles from their heads. It looked over at the level 6 common mushrooms, ordering Mo Cu Mo Cu to make them jump pawn, pawn closer, receiving a loving Cu tap on the head, emitting a dazzling light. Suddenly, hands and feet grew out of the sides of the common mushrooms, and, voila, we have level 19 mushroom soldiers with arms, legs, and Anoki needle weapons. In this way, each common mushroom received an Anoki needle to transform into a mushroom soldier, pulling and squeezing. Continuously like that, until the Anoki needle looked back, its head was full of holes from who knows when. To avoid those with a severe fear of holes from seeing this part and skipping it, it tried to concentrate and flex its butt muscles, and in just a few seconds, Anoki needle heads emerged from those holes. Come here and drink some nectar. The Anoki mushroom's head was already covered in needles, continuing its mission of distributing weapons to the soldiers. Behind it were dozens of mushrooms of all kinds and colors, all extremely excited, shouting, determined to drive away the impudent humans. The mushroom king stood on a rock, observing the situation from a height, when suddenly he heard a pon pon sound, and saw a green-headed mushroom full of thorns hopping towards him. The assassin mushroom smiled slyly and then, suddenly flicked itself, performing a mushroom headbutt. The dignified mushroom king didn't understand what was going on, the image of the assassin mushroom headbutting, something in it shattering was transmitted directly to Lilith's orb. She wiped away her sweat and looked up with a satisfied smile. It's done. I've destroyed the Mushroom King's secret treasure. At this point, the deputy guild master in the shadows finally spoke up to praise them. Good, go and fight. Just waiting for this moment, Borja looked up and laughed happily, glancing at the others who were also ready to join the battle. People like them had to wait for the leader to speak before they could attack. Looking at his tuba that had been smashed to pieces on the ground, the Mushroom King frowned and asked. The controlled assassin mushroom didn't even bother with him, pulling six needles out of its butt, jumping onto the heads of the mushroom soldiers and stabbing each one on the mushroom cap, causing them to be mentally controlled immediately, pointing their spears at the king, roaring. The assassin mushroom now had six mushroom soldiers on its side, but, as soon as they jumped up, they were blown to pieces by something from the ground. Their green mushroom caps, riddled with bullet holes, fell to the ground, dead, revealing a cowboy hat in the distance. Bow, one of the kingdom's great generals, exhaled. A leisurely puff of smoke, muttering, did you dare to do it? The king stared at the assassin mushroom, stunned, seemingly not noticing the mushroom nearby. The camouflaged chameleon had spat out an assassination needle. Suddenly, it swung its tongue, intending to stab the king in the head, but was immediately met with several slashing attacks, its body and head separated and bid each other farewell. The sound of a sword being returned to its sheath was heard, before. The chameleon's body fell to the ground. Bo glanced at the straw hat, saying what took you so long, I thought you were dead. Ka K slowly looked down, saying earlier on, the way here, I met a mushroom that was being controlled. Could it be that the humans have already infiltrated deep into the territory? The king's hand picked up the assassin mushroom that had been shot to pieces, his mouth grinding, shouting see you mo with hatred. In no time at all, the seemingly normal green mushroom was absorbed into the king's arms, gradually turning into green threads before disappearing. His cloak fluttering, the mushroom king roared with power, attack with all your might. The entire kingdom was in an uproar at his command, the sound of, see you mo, see you mo accompanying the stomping footsteps of a hundred different types of mushrooms. On the outskirts of the kingdom, the sound of o-o-u-h-t could be heard from Un-in, who was struggling to hold Frog back. He was about to give up and let go when the king's tuba was destroyed, causing him to wake up in a daze and ask, oh lo, 
what just happened? Unin looked at him with annoyance, not understanding why he had lost control. However, very quickly the two of them heard the sound of banging in front of them, so they went over to take a look. What's going on, Unin? From the large holes on the body of the large mushroom, all kinds of mushrooms, big and small, poured out, shouting, Mogu, Mogu, charging straight into the bewildered humans, why are there more and more of them appearing? Frog and the pink pig lay on their stomachs on the grass watching, wondering if, all the attackers here were part of the human alliance. This battle is so big, look at Un In, there are so many different types of mushrooms. Oh, mushroom army. Frog cheered silently, beat the humans to a pulp. On the grass, the mushrooms attacked deeper and deeper into the humans' territory. Skewering a few of them to death was nothing to them. Level 9 mushroom soldiers were weak, but they were numerous, and the corn cob mushroom was so strong that it could knock out half of a human's teeth by itself. The twin mushrooms slammed their butts into the humans, and soon Chase had no enthusiasm left. His legs went weak, and he fell to his knees on the ground, trembling. I, I don't want to be brave anymore. I just want to live. In his despair, Chase didn't notice someone approaching him. It was the high-ranking generals of the One-Eyed Poison Guild, who were leisurely, descending from their spaceship, lining up with confidence in their gleaming armor, finally pulling Chase out of his despair. He saw the light of the future flashing behind the experts he had been waiting for. To arrive, Seth Ubel confidently called out to this Marion, asking her to send everyone here out. Then we can fight without worrying about causing any friendly fire with our teammates. Lilith pulled out her powder and reapplied her makeup. Even in battle, she had to put on her foundation. Boza hummed a tune, leaving it to Chania to praise everyone for fighting so hard, leave the rest to us. Marion grabbed her flowing hair, not saying a word as she raised her staff. From it, a bright blue light shone, activating the large-scale teleportation skill. The light touched those closest to it, like Chase, turning into a transparent sphere that enveloped him and all the living and dead soldiers on the battlefield. It lifted everyone up like delicious tapioca balls, before the astonished eyes of the mushrooms floating, high up. Marion let out a shout, calling out the blue teleportation formation above, sucking the sphere containing the people into it. She strained her lungs, using all her strength to suck everyone in, until the formation flashed and everything disappeared. The mushrooms roared in protest, see you mo see you mo, from a hundred people, now only five remained, what fun was that? Seth chuckled, let's not waste any more time here, let's finish off this lot. Before he had finished speaking, he pulled his flaming tea sword out of its sheath. The snake's foot. The snake's foot cracked the ground, its two hands gripped the sword tightly, its face full of blue veins, it roared, damn it, and then jumped up and slashed out a heroic sword tip. Wherever the golden light swept, from the stone mushrooms to the metal mushrooms, they were all cut in half, and soon the entire army was wiped out. Nia jumped into the air, her sharp eyes never leaving her as she cast the shadow clone technique. In an instant, three more shadows of Nia appeared from her main body, and then multiplied into a dozen. Each one held a shuriken, hurricane that increased their attack power by 25 points, specially designed for ninjas, and threw them out simultaneously, creating the skill, Reign of Steel. From a single shuriken, they spun around and turned into four, and soon there were hundreds of them in the air, whirling around like saw blades, cutting the ugly mushrooms below to pieces. The mushroom mage remained calm and collected, raising his staff, turning a single mushroom into a giant, raising it high to receive all the darts on its cap and then shooting them back like rubber. The entire team of mushroom mages jumped up, shouting Mogu Mogu continuously, when within seconds, the humans fired something like tea at them, in the face, making a loud bang. In an instant, the entire team of mushroom mages were shot in the face, and the mushroom cannon and mushroom bomb had no one to command them. The barrel of the gun was still smoking from the shots, and as the smoke cleared, a figure could be seen standing in the distance, the target of the mushroom cannon. It fixed its eyes. On that person, its tiny legs suddenly running very fast, its face gritted with anger, and then it started shooting tea in rapid succession. The mushroom bombs had just entered the battle and immediately launched their ultimate move the eruption, but Bo was not afraid at all. He reached into his pocket, singing, Lala, too slow, at this speed, you can't even touch me. Bo took out a bullet, flicked it up like a coin, and it fell into the bullet chamber of the gun. He closed it and aimed it with great skill and proficiency. Bang! His gun fired hundreds of tiny but sharp bullets, turning into the skill, twilight snowstorm, and firing precisely at the mushrooms, leaving a beautiful orange color, and then flying out of it, aiming at the heads of the mushroom cannon standing behind. They were each cut dozens of times, and the pain was excruciating, 
but their legs were too small to run. Way in time, and their health points kept dropping as their bodies burned with fire. Seeing this, the mushrooms swarmed in, roaring see you mo see you mo, charging in to take revenge. The hand wearing. The glove was still patting the powder box, and then patting her face as if advertising some kind of fairy powder. Lilith knew Moon was bored, so she closed the powder box, put it in her bear bag, and took out something else. Rummaging through it for a while, she sang, Lala, I'm not full yet. But then, a growl came from inside it, and a sharp claw shot out of the bag, towards the mushrooms, squeezing them in the palm of its hand. That thing held on and wouldn't let go, squeezing until the mushrooms suffocated and then let go to grab a new one. Lilith opened the bag wide for that thing to jump out, until the bag deflated, making a whooshing sound like a deflating balloon. At the most intense moment of the battle, Frog and Un Un were still lying high up in the sky, unnoticed. The pink pig didn't care which side it was on, so it had been snoring. For a long time, only Frog was so scared that his teeth were chattering. Damn it, this isn't the way those high-level players should be sweeping away these small fries. Seth knew that his side had the advantage, and he swung his sword with all his might, challenging, be prepared to receive this, king of mushrooms. He jumped up, preparing to add another heroic sword tip. With Nia beside him, preparing to launch another rain of steel. Boza couldn't miss out, raising his gun to aim for a twilight snowstorm. The three streams of power shot out, clearly visible as three different tips. But then, at a certain distance after plowing through the ground, they merged into one. They kept the same speed, and together they formed a pillar of dazzling light, shooting straight at the Mushroom King. He didn't move a muscle, just stood there, but his mouth was pursed in displeasure. Suddenly, a patch of earth rose up with a rumble, pushing the stone part up, from which a pillar shot out, directly receiving that terrible power. The powerful impact caused the entire group to fall silent and wait. Suddenly, under the sunlight, a pair of sunglasses were reflected, and a smile like that of a PS vedette. Who else but the diamond mushroom was smiling, saying, he he he, that hit only took one health point from me, like a cow losing hair, like a tree losing leaves. Perhaps because they were of the same species, Frog could read the information that the diamond mushroom was level 92. As for its health points, needless to say, they were in the tens of thousands, and its stamina points were amazing, almost infinite. Except for its speed, which was zero, meaning that this monster could not move. All its stats were in the thousands. It was written here that the diamond mushroom could only evolve once. When it found a pair of sunglasses that suited it. When it grew to its maximum size, the diamond mushroom would no longer be able to move and would live off sunlight. Because it is so large, the diamond mushroom is almost fearless of any attack. It is said that the eyes of the diamond mushroom are the original material that all the bravest blacksmiths on the continent desire. Just by looking at the angry face of the mushroom king, you can tell that he himself summoned the diamond mushroom mushroom to protect him. And at this moment, in addition to Cage who had already appeared, beside Garoth was also one of the four high-ranking generals with a long beard like an octopus. As for Bo Bao, needless to say, she was just waiting for an order, and she shot up with her two companions to join the battle immediately. The Mushroom King was furious and had been waiting for this moment, of course he wouldn't miss it. Boza pushed his glasses up and sneered, oh la la, what a surprise. The whole group of people walked slowly towards the Diamond Mushroom, which was grinning and not showing any panic, but rather evaluating them. This is the first time I've seen such a rare monster. If we can take it back to the guild, it will definitely increase our prestige. Boza replied without enthusiasm. I once saw a diamond mushroom in the castle of time, but it was only an ordinary one. The one before was as big as a small hill. It must be rich, baby. Lilith was annoyed by his words. I hate such useless monsters. Tell the vice president to burn it. It's easy to say, but the little girl wants that thing and can't get it. Her metal weapon can't pierce it. To put it another way, if we rely on the vice president for everything, then we're no different from those newbies. The diamond mushroom didn't care about the humans. It just looked up at the sky and laughed. Suddenly, it it shrugged its shoulders, said Mogu, and bent down to let the sunglasses fall off. I don't know if it has a nose, but it landed between its mouth and eyes, revealing thick eyelashes that no one would covet. Suddenly, those eyes dimmed, reflecting the sunlight, shining like car headlights, shooting the ultimate gem emitting light at an extremely fast speed into the eyes of the people in front of it. The beam of light was like 20 cars shining at the humans, and the golden sword tip immediately pointed up. Exit calmly spread out his shield, emitting a golden light, and then plunged the tip of his sword into the ground, causing it to crack open. His sword shone brightly, directly opposing the gem light, and everything shook, 
even Marianne's fruit orchard was busy following suit. Thought the Chinese fruit would spoil quickly, but in fact, she was using. Her balancing modeling skills, and the goddess's favor appeared to support exit. Two beams of light of the same color as the gem shot out, and, directly into the golden white screen, exploding with a terrible sound. The power was so great that it almost covered Exate's shield. From a distance, all you could see was the image of the goddess above. The reflected light shot out in all directions into the surrounding space, hitting a small stone on the side of the road, turning it into a sparkling diamond. Soon, the entire area where the light touched was covered with a thick layer of stone. And from a distance, you could see a large rock quickly becoming a sparkling diamond. The blonde's eyes gleamed behind the fortune teller's glasses. Oh my god, this thing can turn dirt and stone into diamonds. I'm going to be rich soon. If you like, give me some more. The diamond mushroom's eyes were like high power headlights, and once they were on, they wouldn't stop. Marianne concentrated, so hard that sweat poured down her face, and Exit also struggled to keep his shield steady. His arm was stiff and sore, and the part where he held the sword began to turn into diamond. After a long while, the light gradually dimmed and then went out completely. The diamond mushroom breathed a sigh of relief, finished its work, and then took a deep breath, stretched out its body, and pushed its glasses back on. In this situation, all it had to do was smile sweetly, and it turned back into a giant diamond mushroom in the sun, quietly absorbing the sunlight. The diamond mushroom's smile shone brightly on the land that it had turned into diamonds, leaving only a small area around the humans where grass could still be seen. To outsiders, it seemed like diamonds were shining everywhere, but Exit saw nothing but exhaustion and misery. He lowered his head to the ground and gasped like a dog, cursing to himself that even with Marianne's help, his shield had almost been completely destroyed. It was too dangerous, if he had been careless, it would have helped him turn the whole group to stone. Lilith came over worriedly and pointed to the hand that had turned into diamond, whispering, Uncle Seth, your hand. Seth stopped replying, I know, I have. Tried all kinds of different recovery potions, but none of them worked. Marianne landed on the ground, knelt down opposite Seth, took his sword, and fell silent. A moment later, transparent wings like a veil appeared behind her, and with a swoosh, hundreds of beautiful and dazzling feathers spread out. Marianne opened her dreamy eyes, her lips turned a strange shade of pink, and she gently touched the petrified part of the sword, activating her angel's kiss skill. Seeing the soft light radiating from it, Seth couldn't help but smile. As soon as he called Marianne's name, the diamond patches on his hand immediately shattered and scattered. Nia was stunned, thinking to himself, good job. She was able to completely restore such a terrifying technique. No wonder she was ranked as an S-class warrior. After a while, Seth had completely recovered without a scratch. Waving his wrist to test it out, he excitedly said that he had fully recovered, and that he felt even stronger than before. Nia added from behind, I now truly understand that in a team fight, damage is not the most important thing. Bo Ra, come back and boost the team's morale. Once that's done, let's get ready to fight. Let's clean up this place and collect all the loot. Hearing this, Lilith cheered, agreeing. With him, let's conquer the Mushroom King, and then I'll ask the guild leader to let me keep it as a pet. As soon as he finished speaking, something like a bullet flew towards the group. Although it was fast, it did not escape Seth's eyes. He swung his sword and shouted a warning, be careful, the enemy is coming. The five of them switched to a back-to-back -back circular formation to get a clear view of their surroundings, but where was the enemy? Suddenly, Bo Ra shivered. He aimed at a certain spot and fired a shot, intercepting the enemy's bullets in time, causing them to explode in the sky. Nia formed a hand seal like a real ninja from Naruto, but it was unclear which village this hand seal belonged to. Perhaps it was the hidden leaf village. His eyes lit up with a blue light, activating his magic detection, and he discovered three other beams of light, of different colors approaching, so he sounded the alarm. The enemy is using invisibility magic, they're here. Swish, swish, the sound of a cross-shaped cut rang out, and the group jumped up from the ground, seeing that it had been split into two diagonal lines, intersecting each other. Seth frowned and ordered, each of you take one, and they quickly received everyone's agreement. Marianne closed her eyes, not knowing if she could sense the enemy's location, but Nier clearly saw the mushrooms, only he didn't know what Cage was whispering. Spread out and intercept them first, we can't let them get near the king. Whoosh, all three of them flickered away at lightning speed. The straw shoes thumped on the ground as Nier landed with his hands in a defensive position. 
he kept. His skill activated on his eyes and looked around, but then a light flashed behind him and a steady voice said, no need to look, I'm here. Nier spun around in surprise, and as soon as he saw the other arm swing its sword, he grabbed two daggers to duel with Cage. Focusing on his strikes, he couldn't help but ask, what the hell is it with you humans, always invading other people's territory like this? As he swung his sword, Cage continued, you're not the first to attack the Mushroom Kingdom. Besides you, there have already been five groups that have attacked this place. Nier was knocked back by Cage's swift blows, raising his hand to cover his face, but his whole body was pushed several meters before he came to a stop. Cage went on the defensive, his eyes narrowed, but there were no exceptions, their survival rate was 0%. As he finished speaking, the previous sword strikes caused Nier's limbs to crack open, and blood splattered everywhere, indicating that the cuts were very deep but extremely small. However, they quickly healed thanks to Marianne's healing circle. Glancing behind him with confidence, he nodded at her and then turned back to look at Cage and replied, You are indeed stronger than we thought, but as long as the people in our group unite, it's only a matter of time before you are defeated. Unexpectedly, when Nier's gaze reached her, Cage's figure suddenly appeared in front of Marianne. The hidden leaf village ninja panicked and threw a shuriken at him, but he couldn't catch up with Cage's speed so he had to turn around and use his sword to break it in half. But those sharp eyes had already caught the movement of the one that appeared after that. However, it was Nier who had transformed, and he appeared full of excitement, asking, where do you think you're going? Your opponent is me. The two of them exchanged dozens of blows in the air, fighting one on one, but Cage fell into the sights of another. Who else could it be but Boza, with his long-range aiming device? He sang happily. La, la, just focus on fighting near, don't worry about me. However, before his index finger could touch it, someone else touched it instead. A soft, ethereal female voice suddenly drifted through the smoke, Hey, kid. Boza pointed his gun at her head and asked calmly, What do you think you're doing? Boza turned pale and stammered, W wait, let's talk this out, I I I. Headshot, kid. The sound of a gunshot rang out, and Boza's forehead was blown open, and he fell to the ground face down. However, it wasn't his head that was blown open, but only the smoke that had been lingering around him. The sniper's skills were so amazing that even Bo was surprised. She took a puff of her cigarette and noticed three shots fired from behind, and the four of them immediately rolled over on the rocky ground and fired back. Seeing her bullets being destroyed, Boza's sharp tongue reacted quickly. That was a pretty fast reaction. I thought that shot would kill you. That look, Bo stood firmly on the ground, answering her question. She shook her wrist slightly, and the bullets flew out of the barrel. She jumped and twirled in the air like a pink feather, firing a shot at the invader's head. The bullet flew swiftly, but those eyes caught it. Boza dodged it successfully. The bullet exploded against the rock behind him, and he immediately raised his gun and fired a shot in the opposite direction, straight at Bo's face, exploding the cigar in her mouth and leaving her stunned. The guy was smug. Did I overestimate you, or are you just slowing down? Bo didn't say much, and used her turbocharged butt engine to do a backflip, and landed with a completely serious attitude. She raised her two barrels at the same time as Boza fired a pair of bullets at her. Using the engine attached to her hip, she shot up into the air, swinging violently like a pendulum and then spinning around in the air. Bo fired a series of shots at her opponent. With the same confident smile, Boza opened his mouth and shouted, I can see your trajectory clearly. But surprise, surprise, old lady, the bullet shed its shell and turned into a golden bullet that shot away. Boza had just realized, when it changed direction and collided with each other, firing in two different directions, forcing him to turn his head quickly to dodge it. But he was still bleeding profusely, and Boza gritted his teeth. Unbelievable. There's another type of bullet. Do you think you're smart? Bao chuckled. Idiot. How can the firepower of that little twig in your hand compare to mine? She jumped up and pointed her gun at his body below, firing a barrage of dozens of bullets at Boza. He sneered, you want to compare firepower? Without waiting to respond, he fired a magic beam into the ground, opening a magic circle to change his magic gun into a six-barreled gun on one stock. Picking up the minigun, Boza grinned, have a taste of this baby, ha ha ha. The six barrels pointed up, sky, firing hundreds of bullets at once, exploding in the sky, obscuring the view with smoke. Seth's side was still relatively calm. Looking out of the sword, he called out to Marianne in a low voice, I'm going to have to trouble you again. The mage behind him said nothing, watching Seth thrust the sword into the ground before exerting his strength on the top of the staff. A series of characters appeared above Seth's head, such as increased strength, blessings of the saints, increased fire resistance, increased melee attack percentage, double critical hit percentage. Just as Marianne was casting her spell, 
the cloudstone behind her flashed purple. Gareth silently exerted his strength on the top of the staff, casting the mushroom magic, but he couldn't escape a fist that rose from the ground towards him. His eyes just swept past it, and his body easily dodged it. Gareth's small nose kept sniffing, and Lilith looked delighted. I can smell the stench of old mushrooms. Your tricks won't help you hide from my hands. The cat-gloved hand pointed straight to Gareth's hiding place. He laughed and appeared without hesitation, replying calmly. It seems that the trump card of this team is the monster hiding in your pocket. He thrust the staff into the ground, and the ground broke open, revealing something red and glowing. The top of it looked small, but when it shot up, it was huge. Standing in the shadow of a war mushroom shaped like a pitcher plant, Gareth calmly said, let's see if you can stop this. The buds of the war mushrooms suddenly burst open and spat out a mass of green phlegm. They flew towards little Lilith, but she didn't run away. She just raised her eyebrows and patted the bag she was carrying, calling out, hey, hey, it's feeding time. A jagged toothed mouth with a bright red tongue rushed out and quickly devoured all of the toxic substance spewed out by the war mushroom. After eating, it retracted into the little girl's bag as quickly as it had appeared. Gareth's voice was as cheap as a child's, little girl, you can't let your pet eat everything. What it just ate was the poisonous substance of the war mushroom. Really? Lilith looked worriedly at the bag and heard a clattering sound as if something inside was kicking and punching. Violently. A moment later, there was a snorting sound, a puff of dark vapor escaped, and everything was quiet again. Gareth's old eyes narrowed, but his voice was no longer affectionate. I wonder how you'll fight without the help of that beast. Suddenly, its fist slammed straight into Gareth's head, and he looked up and asked how the old hat had suddenly puffed up. The hardened spirit shield directly received the monster's punch. The surface cracked and vibrated, shaking Gareth underneath. He closed his eyes tightly to endure it, then jerked his head out of the spirit shield. A annoyed to realize that even this could not stop the monster. A few seconds later, the entire shield made a damp sound and cracked, revealing a fist that shot towards Gareth, punching him and sending him flying to one side. Lilith took the opportunity to roll her eyes. How stupid. My little gray was raised on the poison of the guild leader. Your mushroom poison is nothing compared to the poison created by the guild leader. In the distance, the armor on Seth's shoulder cracked, and he roared. Damn it, the armor on his body cracked, like broken pottery, and a golden light emanated from his entire body. It wasn't that Seth had been punched but that he had just finished preparing his strength to face the diamond mushroom that was grinning. How did Garoth fly to this scene? He hovered right in front of the diamond mushroom's belly, causing Seth to smile with delight. If that's the case, that's great. I'll kill both of you at once. He used his entire muscular body to rush to the diamond mushroom, gritting his teeth and saying, great god. The guru's sword skill activated, and the sword spun thinly before Seth threw it away, putting all his strength into sending the tyrannical sword across the ground, plowing it up, and aiming it straight at Garoth, who was blocking in front of the diamond mushroom. His face changed, feeling death approaching right before his eyes, but unexpectedly. With a bang, the young golden sword was stuck straight into the ground nearby. Seeing the huge figure fly up, he mumbled an apology, this old man is really useless. I've let the king protect me when I should be protecting him. The mushroom king said nothing, his goose-like body suddenly puffed up with his round cloak fluttering. His face was like, hey, I've put up with you for a long time. Seth smiled coldly and waved his hand to cast the return skill. The golden sword trembled violently from a distance and then sprang out of the ground on its own flying back into his hand for him to grasp tightly. You can make the sword of my gurus young, so easily, as expected of a monster king? Looking at the mushroom king's arrogant expression, Seth was even more sarcastic, saying that too. Me, you're just a slightly bigger mushroom. Swish, swish, on cage and near side, they had just separated. A little, and he already felt something unusual. The hand with the chain and dagger was left with only the hilt, and near was helpless. Thinking that we have fought 93 times and I still keep losing. A soft blue light enveloped his arm, and Nier turned his head gratefully. To see Marianne standing behind him, thanking her silently for healing him. If I can hold out long enough, that mushroom, without anyone to heal him will surely run out of stamina. Page arched his back and ran forward, but not towards Nier. He glanced back and said, I told you your opponent was Tarker. Unexpectedly, a cross-shaped mushroom was thrown in front of him, and Cage suddenly landed on the ground, 
leaving two diagonal lines on the ninja's body. I know, that's why you're always my target. Ah, uh, two deep cross-shaped marks appeared on Nier's chest, but only his clothes were torn. Where his chest should have been was a rock face, deeply engraved by Marianne, who had quickly cast it into stone. Nier did not die, but he seemed to be paralyzed, and he roared. We'll never lose with someone supporting me. Oh, really? The cut on his chest suddenly widened, his face was already broken, and the small cross was now long and wrapped around his bloody chest. Marianne was backlashed and carved out a pool of blood, and her whole body was pushed back. She closed her eyes in pain and coughed up blood, her white dress covered in bright red bloodstains. The skinny Jonan, as thin as a cartwheel, fell to the ground, and seemed to have gone to heaven on a fish. Picking up his book hat, Cage said, the survival rate of those who attack the Mushroom Kingdom is 0%. Does my face look like I'm joking? If he had wanted to, Jonan wouldn't have stood a chance against Cage from the start. On Bose's side, the shotgun was still firing. His yelling was no less loud than the gunshots. Is this enough firepower for you? Ah ha ha ha. Why are you running? Bullet casings fell to the ground. There must have been a hundred of them. Already, no wonder Bo didn't have time to light his shriveled cigar. She put the pistol back in its holster and reached around. Her back to grab her robe and pull down its belt. When her clenched hand opened, the belt had been crumpled. Into a ball to replace the bullet in the chamber. Bo didn't hesitate to shoot it out like a handful of hair. A few meters away from the gunman, the mushroom tongue spread out to cover Bose's bullet wounds. No matter how much he fired, it gradually closed its mouth, dropping only a few bullets at the end. In those poor blocks, Boza clearly despised. Fighting would be futile. You have nowhere to hide. Why don't you just die? His eyes caught sight of a shadow that looked like Bo's behind the ball, and Boza raised his eyebrows and sang the song Sin as Sin, Farewell to You. He fired his gun straight at the shadow behind it, like fireworks to send off the mushroom. Unexpectedly, what was hit was really just a shadow, and Boza was horrified to realize that he had been tricked. Suddenly his senses became more alert than ever, and as soon as he heard something flying away, his eyes darted behind him. His hand retracted the minigun and placed a large, long rifle on his shoulder. The pistol fired three shots in a row, the target, direct with three shots from Bo's gun barrel. Oh la la, I thought I had killed someone with that move. Compared to humans, your speed is quite commendable. Boza sneered, do you want to shoot us with that garbage? Dream on, but how did you get behind me? Is that your mushroom special power? Calmly flicking a spark to his lips, Bao replied, being a professional. Marksman is not enough to rely on bullets and fast firing speed alone. Do you understand such a basic principle? My bullet is slow because I changed the gunpowder. With mushroom spores, you should pay attention. Raising the barrel of his gun, Boza growled, Hey, we are still fighting, why waste time talking? It's too late, you're in my sights and locked on. Bao glared at his opponent and said, I told you to pay more attention. Look again, you're the one who's been locked on. Boza was startled and couldn't help but look behind him, not knowing when the bullet fragments that had fallen to the ground had sprouted mushrooms, shaped like cameras saying hello. He frowned in contempt. Are you trying to scare me with these stupid things? They pressed the red button on top of their heads, and immediately their eyes flashed with a white light like, ignoring the camera, so bright that it blinded an area, and Bose's eyes had to burn and close. He screamed in pain, my eyes, and jumped out of the way. From where he had been, retreating to avoid those strange things as far as possible. Bao explained, some mushrooms emit bright light when they grow. Those hands moved, but not at Bao's command, but rather to catch. The movement of the mushroom girl, as long as she was still talking, he could still locate her. Gently growing out of the ground, a series of mushrooms that looked like hip-hop never die people were listening to the second theme song. Boza didn't know what kind of mushrooms they were, his eyes couldn't see, he could only try to identify them with his hands. Unexpectedly, they were like DJs playing music, sound waves suddenly dampened Boza's eardrums, shaking violently until they bled. Boza explained, some mushrooms emit a piercing sound after they grow. At this time, Boza hugged his hands tightly, trying to endure it, but couldn't bear it, and cursed at their mung bean and coriander. He took a few light steps back, wanting to get out of the sound's range as far as possible. Unexpectedly, a small mushroom grew between his heels, and it quickly grew into a giant. Boza's head was knocked flying to the top of his fellow's head, making him look like a ball being passed from one place to another. Exhaling a puff of smoke, Bao's voice was steady, some mushrooms can grow to incredible heights in an instant. Boza fell to the ground like a bag of garbage, and was immediately surrounded by another group of small mushrooms. His eyes had just recovered, and his whole body was aching as he opened them, he saw his vision, blurred with strange jars, and he couldn't help but look up and curse. My grandmother gave it to me, finally I can see the sunlight again. Calm down, 
I need to calm down, I just need an accurate shot to blow this bastard's head off. He clenched his fists on the ground to show his determination, and the strange jars suddenly turned to look at him, making Boza even more mad. If I could calm down, I wouldn't be fooled by these low-level monsters. This trash, I'll follow this damn place out. However, before he could make his move, the mushrooms twisted their bodies and cried out. Uncle, their heads swelled up with large lumps and large veins running through them. In an instant, the tops of their heads erupted with a cloud of dark red smoke and then exploded back into place, causing Boza to run away in fear. As soon as he dodged one, another exploded, and he had to spread out his body to try to escape the dense bombing. Bao calmly smoked a cigarette, it was a mushroom that could sense the intentions of living things nearby. If friendly, the mushroom will release a healing cloud of spores. But if hostile, they will explode. The last one exploded with a bang. Knocking Boza aside, he rolled around on the green dance floor for a while before stopping near Bao. Look at your pitiful appearance, I really don't know why you. Humans believe that you can invade our mushroom kingdom. Boza lay still until he heard Bao approaching, and then saw the time. Had come to stand up and point his rifle, shouting, it's because of you stupid awakeners who protect this place. But his index finger kept pulling and couldn't fire the gun, it was all in Bao's plan. Why do these annoying things appear everywhere I go? No. Way. From the beginning, this mushroom knew where I was going. Under the feet of the shooter, the green slime was like chewing gum sticking to it. The green mushrooms kept squeezing the slime out of their caps, their mouths smiling with extreme joy, and they stuck more and more tightly. To the point of pinning Boza to the ground and unable to stand up straight, Bao stepped forward, her feet stepping on the slime, but it broke apart, allowing her to move easily. Standing above the human, Bao whispered, there are over 40,000 different types of mushrooms here, don't underestimate any of them. Raising his pistol, Boza tried his best to keep his chest aimed at Bao. Because there was nothing but slime holding him back all around them, she continued, but there is only one type of human being, the evil kind. So, tell me, who do you call trash? His eyes widened, his hand already firing the large-headed gun. Out, all caught in the eyes of Frack, who was stunned on the cliff. So strong, the mushrooms are so strong. If I can, evolve, can I be as strong as them? No, even though they are very strong, they are still of the mushroom king's rank. So how strong is he in the end? At this moment, the king is standing opposite Seth, each holding their swords in their hands and glaring at each other. Suddenly, Frack felt strange. He shook the person next to him and asked him if he was the only one who saw it or if there was really someone else on the other side. The man whipped between the flock, looking like a human in a cloak. Compared to the size, no matter how muscular Seth was, he was, he was still only human no bigger than the Mushroom King. But in the face of such arrogance, Seth smiled. The feeling of being looked down upon by a monster was really uncomfortable. Turning his neck back and forth to make it crackle, he took a deep breath and puffed up all the muscles in his body to the max. His heart pounded in his chest, his biceps shaking, as he held back the enormous amount of air in his body. Suddenly, it emerged full of veins, Seth's mouth gritted, tight and he shouted, ah, the fighting spirit of a general. The place where he stood exploded in a loud bang, the ground sank and left thick smoke. From there emerged Seth's giant muscles and mischievous smile. Now his size surpassed even the Mushroom King's. The little head was delighted to say that this is much better. However, Seth was ready but did not see the Mushroom King attack. Ben wondered why you didn't attack when I was moving. Don't tell me that the monster is learning the spirit of chivalry from humans. It sounds unreal, chief. Don't expect me to be lenient. The Mushroom King's face still twitched with annoyance, but his mouth did not make a sound, not even a gnashing of teeth. Suddenly, all four of them moved out, moving continuously and then, clashing their swords with a bang-bang at an extremely fast speed. The Mushroom King pointed his sword straight at Seth, when it came into direct contact with the golden sword, it suddenly folded into several pieces. He swung it hard to one side, pushing the force to the right, accidentally, crushing the ground until it hit the diamond mushroom. The ground under the mushroom's feet was dented with a large, dark mark, but the smile was still. Full of hip-hop never die because the hit points only dropped by one. Seth laughed and jumped, not bad. So he jumped up and gave the Mushroom King a full force blow to the head with his sword. But with just the tip of his sword, the Mushroom King successfully blocked it. His sword bent in a semicircle and deflected it. The parry was not successful. Seth swooped in again and slashed another arc, leaving behind two sections of land that had been eaten away and cracked as deep as an earthquake. The more Seth fought, the more intense he became, and the more determined he became. His mouth smiled with glee, stronger, faster, and more violent. Let me see how capable 
capable the leader of the mushrooms is. The two sides exchanged hundreds of moves in a row without a clear winner. The moves were deflected and shot crookedly into the air, flying up to where Frog was snooping nearby. Seeing that it was coming close to him, he dodged to one side, shouting out loud. Both of them rolled around on the ground for a long time before stopping and zooming in to see the cut. I almost died again, just watching the battle was too dangerous. I can't take advantage of this moment to sneak into the territory. What is that? Frag's eyes suddenly saw a warning sign according to the situation, now showing only one line. The urgent mission has begun. Down below, Seth's attack, critical rate, and armor penetration were doubled, showing off his smugness, his mouth roaring with delight. Come on, is this all you've got? I can do this all day. The Mushroom King silently tightened his grip on his sword, and rushed up to meet Seth's move immediately. He was able to meet all of his moves. Over at Garozer's, he was still creating a shield to counter Gray's blow. He wondered as he defended himself, what kind of monster is hiding in that bag? I can't let this thing get near the king. Lilith gripped the bag tightly, and with the momentum of her two feet, she was lifted high, following the battle without having to run. She replied excitedly, I like to collect them because they're cute, but I don't have any interest in mushrooms like you, so you should just die. The claw aimed at the old mushroom and swung, but it all hit the purple shield that Garozer had summoned. As many as he catches, he flies away, his hands quickly chanting purple block that makes a small U-shaped sound. He flicked the poisonous mushroom straight into Gray's arm, who was following Lilith's orders to block it directly. The ball evaporated instantly thanks to its immunity to magic, and Lilith took the opportunity to taunt Garozer even more, useless chatter. He squinted and thought, all my magic is useless against it. This feeling of being completely overwhelmed is so frustrating. Free to glance at the other battlefield, she wondered why they were taking so long, Uncle Seth was fighting the Mushroom King and it was fine, but Sarnia and Boza hadn't come back yet. Don't tell me they can't handle the enemy even with Marianne's help. She looked up and said to the furry leg, Hey, little Ray, I don't want to play anymore, so you go outside. He replied succinctly, Give me a cactus, Lilith. Annoyed, she shouted, What? Say that again. You stupid dog. I know you're staring at the thing in my bag. Lilith was yelling at her dog without, knowing that Seth had been panting from afar for a long time. Facing him, the Mushroom King looked no different than when he first entered the battle, which puzzled Seth. According to the report, the Mushroom King only reached level 60 at most. With the help of Marianne and his own abilities, his base stats had increased by 7 times. But why is this guy still keeping up with me? He frowned, spread his hands out, and his greasy mouth was full of defiance, which made Seth so mad he wanted to drop everything. Does this guy dare to look down on me? You're just a giant mushroom. Watch me take you down. Seth roared, I'll kill you, and burn your fighting spirit 100%. He stomped on the ground beneath his feet, and the four of them flew up high, completely powerless and looking at their opponents in fear. With both hands gripping the hilt of his sword, Seth leaned his body forward, his chest, heaving like an uncontrolled beast, and swung his sword hard at the Mushroom King. He just stood there, only his sword was thrust forward, spinning, so fast that the blade was no longer visible. It was all just a warm-up when Seth brought the great sword down. The Mushroom King simply raised the blade of his own sword to meet it head-on. Despite the earth and rocks beneath his feet being crushed, the tip of his sword still easily withstood the force from Seth. He has a lot, standing before absolute power, all tricks and techniques are, are useless. Seth was hit in the face by a beam of light, and then his whole body was thrown into the air, rolling several times on the ground with no way to stop. Seth's eyes were wide open, his body hit hard against the lower edge of the mushroom, diamond, making a loud sound like a bell. The Mushroom King's move was clearly very skillful, this must be a sign of irregular breathing. When did Seth slide down, his whole body, trembling, his mouth stammering with blood, how? Didn't it only reach level 60? Why can't I resist at all? The Mushroom King flew up, not at all in keeping with his overweight appearance. His slow, greasy voice and murderous gaze frightened Seth to death. No, I can't die here. He used all his strength to raise a shield to block the Mushroom King's drill-like sword point. There was a swish and blood splattered, the whole battlefield fell silent. Everyone present stared at it in disbelief. Even the Diamond Mushroom stopped smiling. Seth gritted his teeth until his mouth was full of blood, but the expression of the Mushroom King returned to normal at this moment. From the whirlwind of the sword that had taken a large chunk of Seth's sword and left wing 
Coughing up a mouthful of blood, he couldn't bear it. Propping his sword on the ground, blood from his left armpit staining a large area red. His muscles gradually shrinking, Seth trembled and dropped his sword, his body collapsing to one side. The Mushroom King's sword was only covered with a little bit of blood. On the tip, he glared at Seth as he gradually grew smaller. He was both helpless and hateful, growling, human, beast, kill me. But, the Mushroom King just stood there staring at Seth, making him even more afraid. Why? Why is it just standing there? Finish me off first, you bastard. Didn't it have its eyes on me from the beginning? Could it be that it's just been playing with me all this time? Seth collapsed in a pool of his own blood. It was unclear whether he was dead, but in the eyes of Lilith, he had lost the fight. So she grabbed the bag and shouted, Okay, I'll give you a cactus. Gray's two front legs stopped for a second, and an excited but equally angry voice came from it. Really master, thank you. A moment later, a head with gleaming white teeth poked out of it. Gareth had a bad feeling, we must stop it. The old man raised his staff to create another poisonous mushroom ball, this one growing bigger and bigger without stopping until it was much larger than Gareth. Whether it was magic or mushroom poison, it had no effect on this monster. But I don't believe you can withstand it with your little body. He waved his hand, throwing the energy of his maximum into the ball, sending it flying towards Lilith, who was still clutching her bag. There was a loud boom as the poison ball exploded, but in an instant it disappeared, having been absorbed by the monster's foot. Gareth had a bad feeling. The little girl was still standing there with her arms crossed, reminding her pet. If you dare to be lazy with my cactus, wait until this is over and see how I deal with you. Gray appeared, as a giant wolf monster, holding Lilith in his arms, respectfully assuring his master that all was well, then gently putting the little girl down. However, they both turned their backs on Gareth, facing the Mushroom King. He would not allow that thing to approach the king, so he shook his staff gently, causing the Lingzi to charge forward to perform a mushroom headbutt. Gray only needed to turn his head slightly, and a heavy blow hit Gareth's head, causing his face to be flattened to one side, blood gushing from his mouth and throat as he fell heavily to the ground nearby, cracking it open. Finally standing before Lilith, the monster respectfully said, you can rest assured and let your baby, Gray here take care of the rest. After saying that, it disappeared right where it was standing. The wind in front of Lilith had not yet died down, and she suddenly appeared. Above the Mushroom King, raising her foot and preparing to stomp on him. The Mushroom King squinted his eyes, looked over and asked the old man. His hand had already drawn a zigzag sword shape. But the weight pressed down on the Mushroom King's body, causing the ground to sink. Gray pressed down even harder on the tip of his sword, laughing and apologizing then kicked the Mushroom King straight in the face. It stopped when it saw that a large hole had been dented in the ground, and a second later the whole area exploded continuously. It seemed that the inside was seriously cracked. Gray lifted its foot, flexing its body and howling a long, refreshing cry in celebration of having killed it. The scene scared Frog to death, and he did nothing but listen in silence. Unin lying next to it looked at the piece of land and thought of food, not understanding how it worked. Gray threw dozens of consecutive punches, punching the ground with a bang, determined to find the Mushroom King before it stopped. Bo and Cage rushed in from behind, each with a different move, which it only used its hands to resist casually. When the smoke cleared, it was clear that its two left fingers were holding the sword, and its right hand was holding the pile of shells. Its voice was low as it asked, where did you two crawl out from? Cage only replied with another sentence, your opponents are us. Bo looked at it with hatred, you were the one who killed Locke, one of the four great mushroom generals. On Lilith's side, someone quickly used teleportation magic to appear behind her, it was. Marianne brought the two dead men in a floating ball, and said softly, I came here to help you. No need, little Grey can handle them. The monster showed a bloodthirsty expression and asked with a sneer, He, he, I've killed so many weaklings before, you can't expect me to remember all of them? The duo ignored what it said and just fired their guns and slashed, but Grey suddenly disappeared. Right before their eyes, all of Cage and Bo's attacks hitting the ground in vain. Cage was furious, gritting her teeth and looking at her teammate Bo, who was sweating profusely. Suddenly, the mushroom girl was punched and fell headfirst into the ground, leaving Cage, who had been followed closely by Grey, above her. Hey idiot, where are you looking? It resolutely swung its fist up just as Cage crossed her arms, slashing out a cross-shaped mushroom blade. Grey didn't dodge, and still charged straight at it, the two forces colliding directly. With a loud bang, and the wolf had to retreat quickly, its feet sliding on the ground. The small but sharp cut left a bloody mark on the back of its hand, 
which only made it more excited. It's commendable that you can make me praise you. As soon as Cage landed, Garoth and Bo appeared beside him, having just emerged from the ground. The magic detection skill had just been activated, and it had already spread out. From where the three were standing to cover several dozen meters around them, Garoth used empathy to learn about his opponent, absorbing knowledge about his location and then firing a small beam for Bo and Cage to receive. The monster smiled broadly, looking very amused. Garoth took the opportunity to remind everyone to stay at least 50 meters away from him. I'm using magic to detect all its movements and pass them on to you too. The smile gradually faded with the wind, and soon the large figure disappeared into the meadow, leaving only an empty space, causing the three of them to grit their teeth and activate their enhanced vision. It dared to disappear right in front of them, there was no way that could happen. Garoth concentrated on searching within his sensory range, seeing several black shadows flickering outside the detection range. In an instant, it accelerated to an untraceable speed, and somehow swung its hand, to punch Garoth away, leaving Cage and Bo leaning against each other in worry. The two exchanged a quick glance, activating their alert mode to the highest level, seeing nothing but Gray's feet flicking back and forth in front of their eyes. Suddenly its claws struck, Bo immediately raised the two barrels of his gun, up, swinging his arms to create two lines of continuous fire, shooting at the monster's limbs. Cage was also busy on her side, continuously using cross-shaped mushrooms to counter the claws. Frag's eyes were wide with amazement, he asked in confusion if they were about to lose, that wolf was so strong. The chat window was still open, and it suddenly jumped in front of Frag's face, he asked it in surprise what it was doing. Can you please stop blocking my view? As if waiting for that moment, the words changed to a special mission, you have discovered a follower of the demon king Galorm, defeat it, reward, a resurrection coin, one lottery spin and 200,000 experience points. Frog asked in shock, why is the reward so generous this time? Do you really think I can do a mission at a time like this? He grabbed the status window, not answering himself, and said indifferently that the system must be delusional. It changed into several helpless ellipses as Frog pointed at it and told it to go away. Don't block my view anymore, there's still a long drama down there that I want to watch. Cage finally understood the working principle of this monster. It didn't disappear but used its incredible strength and speed to jump out and then back into Garoth's magic detection range. Bo continued, and it's not even serious yet. Her hands were shaking, I'm afraid we won't be able to keep up with it by then. Gray chuckled, have you finally realized the difference in strength between us? It appeared without either of the two mushrooms noticing, if you want to stop me, the two of you are not strong enough. Interrupting it, it punched Cage, causing her to spit out blood, Bo also received a punch like that, and together they were sent flying far, far away. Gray stood on the devastated land, wheezing and reminding it of its cherished philosophy. In the end, the weak are always the weak. And I used to be a king, it used to be the former guardian, of the wasteland, the level 92 wolf king. Bo and Cage were punched and rolled to the feet of a stranger floating like a spirit. The two tried to get up and ask each other. Bo told Cage to retreat but he wouldn't. The two mushrooms lay on the ground and looked to the other side, not surprised to see a stranger behind them. Frog stared intently, wondering why they didn't see the black shadow. Was that shadow human or some kind of monster living nearby? He seriously thought of something else. Wait, maybe this is what the system calls a follower of the demon god Gallum. He immediately used the identification skill, opening his eyes and looking intently at the other person, but the system kept reporting errors. Frog pondered, before now it was only when he was low leveled that he couldn't see information. Why is this error different? Suddenly the black space under the hood stopped moving. Frog was shocked to realize that it was staring intently at his face. Before he could figure it out, the other thing had disappeared, and suddenly appeared right in front of the mushroom. Frog was stunned to see the shadow that darkened the whole space, a moment. Later he realized and was so scared that he broke out in a cold sweat, it had appeared in front of him. And then right away, it stared intently at Frag's face, he heard people trying to avoid it. His eyes seemed to be blushing, and he was surprised to realize that the mushrooms were not reacting at all. Don't tell me that it can't see this guy. The cloak. The fluttering cloak suddenly stiffened, forming a gleaming blade. Frog wanted to scream but the words were stuck in his throat. Oh no, what are you doing? The thing pushed the tip of the knife against Frag's mushroom cap, he sat stiff, as a stick in the sun, telling himself that he couldn't move. If he moved, it would find out that he could see it, but the tip of the knife was too close to his head. Frog struggled with the thought, should he move or not? He suddenly uttered the word pawn on his vochi face, his hands and feet waving and continuing to pawn pawn, leaving the other person confused. Frog played the role of a vochi mushroom perfectly, 
suddenly rolling onto the ground and then rolling into the forest, avoiding this guy as far as possible. Unin waited for a long time to hear the sound and then turned around, oh oh, full of question marks, but Frog kept rolling in without stopping. I'm just an ordinary monster mushroom like a carton of milk, a mushroom with nothing suspicious. Unin thought Frog was playing a game with it, his eyes sparkling as he rushed in to play along. But the game was ironic, he was oh oh happy and then blocked Frag's rolling path. But that's fine too, he thought to himself, let this pink pig play a game with me. It's good to be calm, if I keep rolling by myself it will definitely be suspicious. Unin seemed not to understand what he was saying, remember me Unin, Frog didn't know so he glanced back. His mouth still whispering continuously, over there, over there, push me into the forest, away from the cliff. Not seeing Unin move, his mouth still whispered, do you understand, his eyes placed. His faith in the pig who was sparkling his oh oh eyes, responding with great authority. In Frag's panic, Unin actually pushed him back towards the cliff, even though the young man had tried to shout in a whisper, not this way, the pink pig still pushed him hard. Ending with a missed head, Frog helplessly watched himself roll to the edge of the cliff, right at the feet of the black shadow. He said pawn for no reason and his face twisted, resigned to lying there and letting Unin lick him in delight. His mouth smiled but his heart ached, Frog cursed to himself, damn it, he's really a pig's head. But Unin's delight didn't need to be faked, the round cloaked guy, thought for a moment and then ignored both of them, turning his back and walking away. There was something floating around, the guy pulled out a strange hollow object, from somewhere, a bell under his wrist that jingled gently as if inviting him. The hole where Grey punched the Mushroom King down below, suddenly echoed with a sound like the wind blowing backwards. From there, bright eyes shone up at the sky, it was unknown to whom they belonged. The territory of the Mushroom Kingdom suddenly became gloomy, clouds gathered overhead, Grey's arm shot out, and he added another punch to Bow and Cage, each of whom flew dozens of meters before coming to a stop. Both mushrooms sprayed out a pile of colorful sweat, but Cage knew that things weren't over yet. Dozens of fists flew in continuously, Cage bent down and held his sword tightly, this time if he didn't give it his all, they would all definitely die. He jumped high into the air, waving his arms continuously to use his sword to block the path of the punches, to the point where his eyes were about to burst open trying to catch the movement. A moment later, the furry figure gradually approached, Cage knew that even though it looked like it was moving very slowly, his eyes were locked on the fists that were pouring out. He told himself that his intuition was telling him that it was attacking continuously and that his eyes actually couldn't keep up. Gradium unleashed a series of moves, its mouth spread into a triumphant smile as if the next move would end it all here. Bao quickly grabbed one of his round shirts and made a bullet out of it, raising it to his eye level and shooting it without hesitation. The bullet expanded into a mushroom net, for Grey it was no different than a game, he had to breathe a sigh of relief to make it exciting. He puffed out his cheeks and blew, the net was torn apart easily, but that was also when the mushrooms taking pictures below rose up, clicking away at the wolf's eyes. But Grey kept moving forward, showing no sign of being affected, he pointed to his head with delight. Haven't you noticed yet, my eyes have been blind for a long time. Bao was visibly annoyed, damn it, none. Our attacks can harm it. Another punch was thrown, Cage used both swords to rush, to block it, but the force was too strong, and he was knocked away once again. Seeing his teammate being beaten so badly, Bao gritted his teeth and shouted, leave me alone, but still helped his old friend. The two of them didn't have time to catch their breath, before their eyes were hundreds of punches. From Grey, flying so fast that they turned his dark fur white. Well, this time the old man's going to die, both of them, closed their eyes and braced themselves, but who would have thought who would save them? There was a loud explosion, and the two mushrooms opened their eyes in disbelief, finding that the mushroom king, who had already shed a lot of his chains, was blocking them. It must be a lot, the scream, your majesty, echoed through the sky. The front part of the mushroom king was dented with dozens of shallow and deep blows, his body emitted a pungent smoky smell, from which the insides burst out. Seeing the mushroom king in such pain but still alive, Grey laughed with delight, oh la la, you're not dead yet? He once again decisively threw dozens of punches in a row, just like before, don't worry, this time I will definitely complete the mission. Cage stood up abruptly and shouted, your majesty, we can still fight, don't do this. The mushroom king's skin was torn more and more, he still just stood there and took the small blows, but Cage understood and responded with anger. Nonsense, we are not just your subordinates, we have watched you grow up with our own eyes, how can we leave you behind? The mushroom king just stood there and took the punch his eyes blazing with fire as he shouted an order, shut up. Cage ignored it all and charged in that direction, forgive me, but that is an order that I cannot obey. Bao, 
let's attack. Unexpectedly, Cage's temple was hit by a gunshot. His whole body fell to one side, his eyes rolled back and he stopped moving. Bao gritted his teeth, forgive me, I only follow the orders of his majesty alone. Gareth appeared from somewhere with one side of his face covered in blood, breathing. Heavily, I knew this would happen. She passed by and asked, your majesty, what do you mean? The old man asked in return, have you ever heard of the demon god Gallum? Don't tell me that this has something to do with that legend. He didn't want to, but he had to reply that it wasn't a legend. Anyone who accepts the power of the demon god Gallum into their body will be demonized and become a demon king. But at the same time, they will lose all reason and become pawns of the demon god Gallum. Gareth looked ahead at the wide plain. To protect us, the king has accepted that power. His furry nose twitched. Gray didn't know why he felt a chill down his spine. Why do I have this feeling again? I can feel the mysterious magical power that Fenrir used when he took the throne from me. Not wanting to remember the painful memory of his younger brother taking his throne. Gray swung his mushroom fist. If my feelings are correct, I must end. This before the Mushroom King transforms completely. Gareth passed by and said to Bao. Please protect the king's legacy. The future of the mushrooms will depend on you and Cage. Bao panicked and asked, Your Majesty Z, what do you mean by that? Gareth thrust his spear into the ground with force. Let this useless old man chase you two out of here. Very cunningly, sharp shaped tree trunks stabbed up from the ground, enveloping Bao, who was still in shock. Along with Cage inside, the mushroom tunnel collapsed into a complete mushroom and then sank down and disappeared. This old man has served three generations of mushroom kings please allow me to accompany you to the end of the road your majesty the mushroom king gritted his teeth a large gash appeared on his cap revealing several strange looking objects inside facing gray who was breathing smoke out of his mouth he bent down clenched his fists and prepared to deliver another punch to the mushroom king who was already torn to shreds like a teddy bear with its stuffing and skin hanging out gray roared tyrant's fist the blow from the heavens rushed towards the mushroom king creating a sound that shook the heavens and the earth creating a hurricane that swept through the forest gareth frowned with worry and muttered your majesty gray sneered sarcastically it's been a long time since i've used that move his nose twitched again and sniffed and his blind eyes seemed to dim how is it possible the mysterious magical powers and the oppressive feeling are actually getting stronger? Gray's opponent suddenly grew several eyes from the cap of the mushroom, the skin fell off both the cap and the body and turned a grayish color. The mushroom king opened his mouth to reveal sharp teeth like a shark, where his hands used to be wriggling octopus-like tentacles. He didn't make any more noises, just groaned, completing the transformation into a fallen mushroom king, becoming a demon in the form of a demon king. Below were swarms of mushrooms that had turned into demons, and he shook a tentacle from afar towards Gareth. Oh ho ho ho, he laughed when he saw the tentacles touching his face. Go ahead, it is an honor for this old man to become your majesty's power. The tentacles quickly wrapped themselves around Gareth, and then they all tightened at once with a hop, and when they left, only the old man's staff fell to the ground. The mushroom king's cap gave a tinkling laugh and suddenly opened up to reveal a brain. He used the large tentacles instead of legs to walk forward. Every meter he moved left a pile of poisonous mushrooms growing densely on the brown slime. Gray smelled the danger, growled, and then kicked the mushroom king's head, which he sensed. I guessed right, it's that disgusting and evil magic again. But it's different from before, this one, is much slower than Fenrir's, too slow for me to use my speed to tear you to pieces. Gray punched the Mushroom King's left side, then another fierce blow to the right, it appeared and disappeared, punching everywhere on the Mushroom King, constantly throwing punches without stopping. This is the end. He opened his drooling mouth, folded his hands together, and formed them into a long, sharp sword, which he thrust towards the back of the Mushroom King, intending to send him off. From now on, if they hit, they will pierce through to the front, but unexpectedly the Mushroom King suddenly turned around. The fire-toothed mouth took a deep breath, and the whole Mushroom King swelled up as if he had sucked all the wind in this area into his body. The whole body then spewed out the spores of the Demon King, obscuring a large area. Gray kept his arm and leg firmly planted in the smoke that was getting bigger and bigger, and then spun around as fast as a drill. Stepping hard on the mushroom cap, Gray flicked himself out of the laughing gas zone. My fur is resistant to both magic and toxins, as long as I close my eyes and cover my nose, your spores won't do anything to me. As soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly felt that something was wrong. 
since when did his hands become covered with poisonous mushrooms that were gradually sucking away his life points, except for a complete 99. They made the wounds cage had inflicted even more poisonous. Gray decisively bit down on his hand, himself until the blood gushed out and then spat it out. It's just an arm anyway, take it if you want. His arm was small in the blood that was gradually being eaten away by the poisonous mushrooms, shrinking, but it wasn't over yet. Gray was startled to realize that his arm was covered with mushrooms, this time minus 199 points. Damn it, when did it spread? All right, then I'll give you my whole arm. He resolutely cut off his arm up to the armpit. This time, he was horrified to realize that poisonous mushrooms were growing all over his neck and body, draining his life points, up to 799. The life points were getting lower and lower. The poisonous mushroom spread all over the human gray who was now weak and begging for help. Master, master help me. Ah, the whole wolf is covered with poisonous mushrooms. It is draining his life force, causing gray to weaken to the point of collapsing. To the ground. Lilith cried, screamed little gray, and then ran to where he was also trying to get to her. Only the right side of his face was not covered with mushrooms. Gray shouted with all his might, please save me. In an emergency, Lilith pulled out the dirty bag and shouted at him. Quick, get back in. The wolf suddenly disappeared into the bag without saying a word. Lilith put it on and continued to fight the monsters inside. Don't worry, when we get back, I'll ask the guild leader to help you. Get rid of those nasty things. For the time being, I'll keep you safe in my pet storage. It's a good place to use magic energy to heal pets. Suddenly, a blinding light shone from below, and her school bag was jumping up and down, twisting as if it was being punched from the inside. The pain spread. Outward, Lilith panicked and called out to Little Grey, what's going on? Even she started to worry, her manner points were dropping like crazy. The bag exploded with a bang like a bomb, and Lilith was thrown out along with a pile of poisonous mushrooms that were scattered everywhere. Gray's head was mushroom. Almond only returned to a small handful, it crawled painfully on the ground, surrounded by poisonous mushrooms. Lilith cried and screamed, Little Grey. The scene before her was too frightening, plus her manner was constantly dropping. She had not yet done anything to the little girl when she lost consciousness and collapsed on the ground, fainting. The green sphere from where enveloped Lilith and immediately made her disappear into thin air. Who else but Marianne could have that ability? She took the whole group up high to avoid the Mushroom King's attack. That scene made him unhappy. His mouth made a goo-goo sound and then he waved from one tentacle to a dozen tentacles pinching the sky. Marianne was horrified when she saw them chasing after her and was not strong enough to lift Lilith's sphere. Suddenly, fire flared up from somewhere and incinerated the tentacles. The heat was so intense that Marianne wanted to gasp for breath. She quickly took everyone up high and met a familiar man in red. Gilhaim, the vice president of the One-Eyed Guild, a level 129 fire mage, calmly said I'll take care of it from here, you guys, get on the spaceship right away. Knowing that Marianne would not listen, he interrupted her, listen to me and be obedient. Marianne had no choice but to give up, nodded slightly to show that she understood, and then took the spheres and herself back to the spaceship to fly away. Having lost its prey, the Mushroom King grumbled from below, only to be met with Gilhaim's indifferent gaze. He took a deep breath, his body swelling like a ball and then he shot a pile of the Demon King's spores into the sky above. The spores pressed against the group of people who were fleeing, but when they hit the fire shield, they were immediately burned to ashes like thin paper. Of course, the Mushroom King was surprised, his eyes glanced at the diamond mushroom not far away, and he threw several tentacles in that direction, grabbing the diamond mushroom with a strange pong sound. The Mushroom King held it tightly, his mouth muttering a few words to gather strength, and then he pulled the mother diamond mushroom out of the ground with just a few of his tentacles. He threw it straight up, towards the human in red. The scene was so shocking that Frog almost peed his pants. The son of a bean actually threw the diamond mushroom. The guy heard the noise and turned around to look, making Frog hold his breath and lean against him, snoring, while the young man's teeth and lips clashed together in surprise and noise. He pretended to point again, his mouth making a pon-pon sound as if it were real, but it was enough to make the other guy finally turn away. The diamond mushroom was thrown up, creating a super-fast vacuum mushroom skill. But Gilhaim just turned his hand over, and with a slight snap, he saw a sleepy fire spirit. Wow, who summoned this lady? So, her eyes just looked around, the little spirit was flicked towards the diamond mushroom without explanation. Fortunately, the fire spirit regained her composure quickly. She raged a few times and cursed, you stupid human, it's the same every time, 
You just call me out and use me without even telling me. She created a giant ring of fire that enveloped the diamond mushroom. That was approaching, and in an instant, giant fire wires rose up. As soon as he got the chance, Gilhaim muttered, burn, the flames flared up and burned. The diamond mushroom fiercely, making it scream in agony, its eye sockets and mouth were all fire. A moment later, Gilhaim received the diamond mushroom eye, a type of crafting material, SS grade rarity, containing most of the power of the diamond mushroom. Using them to craft equipment not only increases the durability of weapons, but also significantly increases the user magic resistance and magic. For this reason, it is always sought after by warriors and mages. One carat of diamond mushroom eye is considered a first-class crafting material. The grade increases with the size. The fire spirit flew over and took a bite of Gilhaim's cheek, and his mouth immediately cursed, you idiot. He didn't even get angry, he just snapped his fingers and summoned the spirit back. This attack method was convenient, but it was annoying, and Gilhaim didn't like being annoyed. Suddenly, it was dark behind him, since when had the country? The Mushroom King appeared with a slow GUGU sound. It turned out that he had gotten up here thanks to countless small mushrooms that had gathered together to form a ladder. Once he reached the top, the king of the country flicked himself off the platform, and the, his belly immediately opened up into a circle that looked like an eye. It turned into a mouth with jagged teeth, approaching Gilhaim, who didn't even bother to look at it, letting the mushroom king swallow him whole. Chewing on his opponent, he landed heavily on the ground with a thud. Everything that happened did not escape the eyes of the man in the round cloak. The mushroom king Gu gooed a few incomprehensible words, and crawled out of the cracked earth. He slowly walked to the cliff where the man in the round cloak was standing and then, looked up at him, Gu gooing a few words as if reporting to the man above. Suddenly, his belly bulged out into several large, shapes, and the wide grooves revealed the fire inside. Into several large pieces, and the wide groove revealed the fire inside. The Mushroom King tried to suppress it, but the lumps grew larger and larger, weighing down his large body. In an instant, the king's back and head swelled up like an overload, and then they all exploded with a loud bang. From the flames emerged Gilhaim's phoenix skill. He gently reached out and took the crown. He calmly walked through the blazing fire, now in the hands of the deputy gang leader. The owner had the eyes of the diamond mushroom and the crown of the mushroom king. His cold face looked around, and he commented, It's a shame that a level 60 monster could force me to use one of my trump cards, fortunately no one saw it. Lifting the man up high, out of the pile of goo that had once been, the mushroom king, Gilhaim waved his hand to destroy the evidence at this moment. The flames followed his hand, he swirled them around and then they turned into a giant meteorite, blazing with fire, falling down on the mushroom kingdom. Frog was so scared that he broke out in a cold sweat, and he couldn't help but let out a gasp of disbelief. For some reason, the man in the cloak just sighed at the sight, his expression unclear. But two seconds later, his figure curled up into a strange shape, and gradually disappeared before Frag's eyes. He was sure that the other person had left before he started to pack up his things. Get up quickly, we have to run now. The pink pig had a hard time waking up, Frog had to push its cheek several times before it woke up. As soon as he looked up, he saw the whole sky lit up with flaming meteors falling towards them, and the two of them didn't say anything, they didn't think, they just stood up and ran away, just in time to escape a block that fell where they had been sitting. Frog was so scared that he was covered in soot, and he was. How? How can we escape this thing? The entire mushroom kingdom was ablaze in a sea of fire from the, the meteors falling and burning in series. Suddenly, the pig bit down hard on the mushroom cap, and with a loud oink, it pushed hard and dragged Frog deep into the, into the forest, using its ultimate tunneling skill to quickly take the two of them deep down. Soon, the fire above was raging, the ancient mushrooms, were burned to ashes, and they fell to the ground with a loud crash. The entire area that had once been green was soon burned to the ground, and from above, all that could be seen was a sea of fire and a few charred mushrooms. A gust of wind blew past and turned them to ashes, and when the fire was nothing but a few smoldering embers, from within the rubble came the sound of a collision, and then two lumps of earth that had been carefully kneaded fell out. The pitch black exterior from the fire suddenly cracked open, and the pig and frog fell out of it, smoked into a dish of raw mushrooms and pork. Just when the two of them were about to die, the status window popped up with a notification that the quest had difficulty 0 to 2, and that reaching the Mushroom Kingdom had been completed, awarding 600 experience points. Reaching the central area awarded 600 experience points, and thanks to leveling up just in time, the two of them came back to life healthy and full of energy, without losing an ounce of flesh. Frog looked at the scene before him in horror, the entire area of land had been scorched, and nothing could be seen. He and the pig sat down on the ground, 
unable to believe that a single fire mage had been able to completely destroy the mushroom kingdom with just a single spell. But what the pig was most concerned about now was its stomach, which was thinking in place of its heart, and it rubbed its nose against Frag, asking for an apple. However, he was busy thinking, not that the mushroom king was too weak, but that the human warriors were too strong. Pushing the pink pig aside to concentrate on his thinking, Frog suddenly realized, his hands trembling in fear. If that's the case, even if I become the Mushroom King, I will still be weak when faced with those who are stronger. At this time, the system window popped up a general difficult quest level 3 for him, as if to answer his question. Find a way to evolve to the next stage in the Mushroom Kingdom. Reward. 1500 experience points, special reward. 40 level 3 evolution paths. However, Frog was already scared, and he refused outright. No, I don't want to do any more quests. The system didn't make it that easy, reminding the player that completing quests and evolving was the fastest way to become stronger. His short legs also stomped hard on the ground. Frog stood up to make himself more imposing and declared bluntly to the system. I don't want to evolve anymore. I've already decided what I want to become. What is it? The system asked curiously. Frog clenched his fists, pointed straight up at the sky and shouted, to become a mushroom warrior. The next day, under a familiar tree far from the mushroom kingdom, gold, came a small rumbling sound, and the entrance to the mushroom tunnel appeared, filled with smoke. He struggled to open the lid, revealing Cage and Bo lying inside, their bodies covered in slime. Cage propped himself up and coughed, disappointed, crying and muttering. I, I swore to serve your majesty until death, but now our majesty is gone. Gritting his teeth in hatred, Cage was unwilling. No, I must go back. His moving declaration was immediately met with a slap across the face from Bo, leaving him speechless. You fool, calm down. That was his majesty's wish. Do you want his majesty's sacrifice to be in vain? Cage's face turned red. He cried and replied, but without our king. What's the point of us living anymore? Wiping his face with his hand, Cage sobbed in front of Bo. She stepped out of the tunnel, her trembling hand touching the nearby tree. And then she sat down, cursing her old friend, you idiot. Lighting a cigarette, she said, if you want to die, then, die after we finish our mission. Exhaling, Bo reached into her pocket and took out a shiny object and showed it to Cage. We must complete the king's final order. The thing in Bo's hand was the legacy of the Mushroom King. Those who receive the recognition of the legacy of the Mushroom King will receive the right to become the king. Staring at it for a while, Cage seemed to have made up his mind, and he forced himself to stand up and regain his spirits. She's right, our mission is far from over. Looking towards the distant Mushroom Kingdom, both of them knew that the difficult journey had only just begun. The green scenery flowed wide and far, but everywhere they went, they saw error messages popping up. Monsters cannot change their classification. Un-In was hungry and was still carrying Frag on his back. However, he was so focused on the system window that he didn't notice the pink pig gasping for breath. All right, system, aren't you tired of this yet? Can't you just show me the map? I want to know how long it will take us to get back to the newbie village. We've been walking for a day now, if this map is accurate, we should arrive tomorrow, right? However, Frag's question was not answered. The system window still displayed the same message, causing him to plead. Can you please stop? I'm just visiting the newbie village. I'm not planning on changing my classification, okay? As he said that, the status window gradually faded away and disappeared. Un and glanced up at him, his stomach growling loudly, to see if he had noticed. Obviously not, Frag pointed ahead and told him to hurry up. If you're hungry, I still have plenty of stamina potions. The pitiful Un had to run at full speed with his hungry stomach. Just because this mushroom insisted on getting to the newbie village as soon as possible. It was very far away. The lava shook and gurgled at the source of the volcano, pouring down the long, rumbling lava rivers. Suddenly, a mountaintop exploded with a loud bang, shooting out countless fire-covered stones that scared the small animals below to death. They could only run for their lives, dragging the huge rocks that hit them to their deaths. They were boulders wrapped in lava, shaking for a while and then appearing on the back of a monster with a long tongue. It grabbed a hot rock that had just erupted, swallowed it down, and added it to the long lava rock on its back. Lava Rock Level 52 with 8610 HP, attack power belongs to the strong, to 765, 20% critical, and both physical and magical defense points are over 1000. This is a snake-like monster that lives in fire. Because of the harsh environment, they have adapted to eating flint and drinking lava to develop their bodies. Their skin can be used to make equipment with high fire resistance, but this type is very rare on the market because it is extremely difficult to obtain. Countless fireballs were launched from the magma worm's head. It looked on longingly, seeing a spaceship flying 
flying in the same direction but lower, heading towards the headquarters of the One-Eyed Ice and Fire Gang, which was located in the middle of a secluded magma river. There was a magic barrier outside the headquarters, no matter how strong the firestones were, they could not enter, as soon as they hit the screen, they would automatically disappear. Only the spaceship touched its nose and it was like air, as soon as it entered. Inside, the bell on the top of the tower rang loudly, signaling its return. As soon as the spaceship landed, the Marianne had someone come to rest. Gui Ham walked straight into the main wooden gate alone. His red shoes tapped on the ground. The light from outside the door streamed in. Gui Ham was walking alone when suddenly he heard the sound of someone's footsteps running towards him, and the sound of children cheering, he's back, he's back. Little boy with green hair wearing a loose white shirt with a strange crown, was running happily towards the door, brother Gui Ham is finally back. About three meters away from him, the little boy stopped and asked, quickly, did you get it, did you get it? This harmless little boy, Ba Jun, is the leader of the One-Eyed Ice and Fire Gang with the title of Master of Poisons level 119. Although he had a friendly smile, Gui Ham still followed the rules and put his hand on his chest to greet him, and then handed the crown he had just held to Ba Jun. The tiny hand under the loose sleeve held it with great joy. He jumped up and sang happily, finally we got it. Looking at his appearance, which was no different from that of a carefree child, Gui Ham did not smile at all, but only asked, where is the thing that the person promised me? The look of joy stopped on Ba Jun's face, he put down the huge crown, still smiling, and put his hand into his sleeve for a while, and took out a blue potion. Holding it up with great excitement like a new toy, Ba Jun said in a loud voice that this is the medicine I have synthesized for Sister Marianne. Don't hold it behind your coat. The other hand snapped, the bottle of medicine flew out of Ba Jun's hand and into the hand of Gui Ham who was waiting. After he caught it, he said, I have sent all the bodies to the laboratory as requested. Ba Jun still kept that same smile, thanking brother Gui Ham repeatedly, but he did not reply, turned away indifferently, and put the potion into the storage bag on his hip. Holding Ba Jun's hand, he was obsessed with the crown, not paying attention to Gui Ham and continued to sing. La la la, I finally got it, this is mine, what a wonderful day. However, before leaving, Gui Ham suddenly asked, the Mushroom King went through the process of transformation and became the Demon King, is that also part of your plan? Those lively footsteps stopped, still with that smile but no longer. Innocent, Ba Jun glanced behind him where Gui Ham was still waiting for an answer. She was silent for a few seconds and then smiled brightly. What is the Demon King? What are you talking about? Gui Ham didn't even bother to open his mouth and strode out of there. Just said forget it, if there's anything you need, just call me. Marianne had been waiting for him outside for a while. Gui Ham didn't. Stop. Just said I already have that medicine. Let's go. She chased after him closely, calling out softly, stop. In a sad voice, Marianne whispered, so many people have died because of me. Gui Ham did not stop, and replied, you were the one who ordered them to go there. We will stop when we find a way to remove the poison from your body. As for those evil things, I will deal with them. Gui Ham walked away without looking back. Inside the castle, Ba Jun hugged the crown and put it behind a red curtain that covered many brightly lit flames on both sides of the walkway. As if used to this scene, the little girl still sang la la la, standing in the crown jumping, round like a sack of potatoes, gradually going down a long, dimly lit staircase. She sang la 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 as she walked, and only put her foot down on the last few steps. However, the further down she went, the brighter the light became, illuminating the way. Ba Jun hugged the crown and went down to the path where there was a magma river on one side, and walked to the ceiling altar, where a part of Galum's heart was glowing due to the magma river below which had somehow been led up. Ba Jun sang La 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 with delight, stood opposite it for a while and then threw the crown into the magma river. She watched with delight as the high temperature gradually melted it, and she kept talking non-stop. As soon as the crown melted and became one with the magma below, another stream of magma slowly crawled up the wall behind it. It crept up like a snail, inch by inch, the bright image illuminating Ba Jun's chubby face which was filled with delight. Together with the left branch that had already embraced the shape of Galum's heart, it gradually filled the right side, forming two pieces of the heart to complete it. Ba Jun exclaimed with excitement as if she had been waiting for a long time, another piece is complete. As she was cheering loudly, she caught the eye of the cat spirit queen. 
the familiar vortex gradually gathered into a complete person-like orbit. Just as Ba Jun said, the Mushroom King's crown was also finished. The cloaked man listened in silence. Ba Jun lowered his voice. Now there is only one more ingredient. Left to go. The heart of the next uncle, and the power of Gallum will belong to me. Ba Jun laughed sinisterly, his eyes fixed on the third piece that was suddenly shaking violently. In fact, the entire tower was shaking. The streams of magma were like waves surging up, as if something was waiting for itself below. Two days later, Frog played the trick of hanging the apple in front of the pig to motivate it to run. In retrospect, for the past two days, they had encountered countless strange monsters on their way here. Fortunately the pig only focused on the swinging apple and ran faster. The system played deaf, calling it everything from aloe to hexalo but it didn't answer. Frog was bored. Bored. With no system no one would talk to him. Only the quest log still had information. This quest 3 seemed to be due to the interface getting stuck. In the misfortune there was some good fortune. Frog clicked on it and his skill panel still appeared. Now he was a level 17 mushroom monster. The skill's mushroom headbutt and identification had reached level 4, Spore. Eruption was level 3 and the lowest was decomposition level 1. Only the single skill had not yet appeared. He clicked on the last bag icon to see what was in his inventory. At the top of the list were 497 gold coins, 3 scrolls of resurrection, a pack of wolf king fur, 18 small health potions, 13 small mana potions and 11 small stamina potions. A novice mage's robe was nothing much. Frog thought to himself at first. He had planned to use decomposition to absorb all the remaining loot from the battle. But that damned fire mage had burned the whole place down, only. The wolf king fur remained which always made him feel down whenever he remembered it. He would stay in the Mushroom Kingdom for a few more days, waiting for decomposition to cool down, and then use it together with the magic staff of the old Mushroom Mage and the humanoids that had fallen. Unfortunately, the magic staff had no effect or anything because they were all badly damaged after the fire. The system reported that the decomposition was complete, but Frog was extremely disappointed to get only 100 experience points, and then he tried to use the Wolf King fur himself, which was even worse. Not only did it fail, but it also activated the cooldown time for nothing, because the fur was immune to magic. The damn system waited until Frog was in pain before popping up, reporting that the target's magic resistance is too high. Please try again when you reach a higher level. Try again when you reach a higher level. Though so he stomped his foot and waved his hand, cursing the system for not telling him sooner, demanding it give back his precious time. From then on, it shut its mouth and refused to pay him back. While he was remembering that part, Frog suddenly felt a strange shaking below him. His mouth asked the pink pig, what's wrong with you? But his eyes already saw that the little girl was staggering around because she was so hungry. Her eyes rolled back in her head and she collapsed on the ground, fainting instantly. Frog called up the identification skill and read it. In one go, knowing that this move had reached level 4, allowing him to read the abilities of many types of monsters. However, the pig's stats seemed to be fine, her stamina was still there, so why did she suddenly faint? Frog smashed the apple boot on the little girl's head, thinking she was being stupid, and called out, Hey, hey, what's the matter? Do you want another stamina potion or a health potion? Hey, little pig, what's wrong with you? Suddenly frags, and accidentally lowered the apple, swinging it in front of her nose, emitting a fragrant smell that immediately woke the pig up. Her eyes widened with embarrassment, ignoring her rumbling stomach and running after the apple that was swinging in front of her eyes. However, her mouth was drooling, her eyes were filled with hatred, and she was determined to fight to the death with the apple. Frog saw her stand up and asked with little amusement, are you feeling better? Hang in there a little longer, we're almost there. Opening the map, Frog checked the current route of the two of them, and reassured the pig that they were almost at the novice village. Hmm, the snail monsters are appearing again, the novice village must be just ahead. Frog hesitated and pulled out a scroll from his inventory, guessing that he was very close to the novice village, maybe this would work. The tiny town portal scroll in hand, Frog shouted majestically, activate, take us to the novice village. It disappeared, like water on his hand, taking with it 20 stamina points, and a bright flash appeared under both of their feet, just as expected. However, it rose up and then burst open, disappearing without a trace within seconds. The window touched the road and displayed a large exclamation mark, monsters cannot use the return scroll. Frog went mad with rage, what the hell, last time you said the distance was too far so, it couldn't be used, now that we're closer, you're saying that monsters can't use it, are you kidding me? It didn't even bother to explain, and then the quest screen appeared. Frog waved his hand and said, don't, make me do that stupid quest again, 
I can't even use the return scroll because I'm a monster. No one can stop me from becoming a hero. Get out of my way. Frog jumped down from the pig. Anyway, there was no hurry to return to the novice village. Recalling the scene from the first chapter when he first arrived here, he remembered with a sinister smile that if he could evolve to level 20, he would reach the milestone for changing his classification. Hunting newbies here is the safest way to earn points and experience to level up. Slapping the fat. But, Frog called out to the pig, let's go. But the pink pig just stood there with a blank expression like a broken machine, calling out oi 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 over and over again. Hey little pig, are you still not feeling well? Do you want another health potion? He whispered to the pig, just hang in there a little longer. When we level up we can get rid of any diseases. He knew that in the bushes nearby, there were several legs stomping on the grass. It was the rather handsome fire-headed pig that they had met the day before now silently watching the two of them. Walking and walking, Frog finally saw the familiar gate glowing. Behind him, the snail monsters poked their heads out and looked around with interest. In no hurry, he used the identification skill on the gate that teleported to the novice village. It was installed by one of the six heroes who sealed Gallum. In addition to connecting two locations, it was also the center of the formation of magic that teleported people when they faced grave danger. Frog read that phrase again, teleporting people when they faced grave danger. Well, it's not too hard to understand why the newbies didn't die when he defeated them last time. However, the identification skill didn't tell him when the newbies would arrive, so he could only stay here with the snail monsters and look in that direction. It's unclear how long had passed, but a human arm appeared, then a group of children, like last time but more battered, excitedly cheering that this time they would definitely level up. If there wasn't this little girl, there would be another little girl acting cute and whispering, Oh cute little snail monster, let me smash you to death. There was also some rich kid laughing and waving a stick, my father has already hired bodyguards for me, so this time I'll ask you to die without being afraid of you. This shiny sharp knife was the weapon of a kid who was classified as a level 12 chef, and with a flick of his hand, he chopped a snail monster into three pieces. Another chef, level 14 even had a pot with fire on it to burn the snail monsters because they were confident that even if there were 10 snail monsters, they would not be their match. Suddenly, a mushroom monster jumped out of the bushes and shouted, everyone be quiet. The entire killing scene stopped immediately when the mushroom monster frog appeared. He immediately used the spore eruption move, causing the children to cough and lose their strength, taking advantage of the obscured vision. Frog used the mushroom head bump to bounce over everyone, from one to another, hearing the sound of bang bang. When the smoke gradually cleared, Frog landed with the air of a queen, receiving a lot of experience points from the newbies who were being teleported back to the village. Humph, he took the opportunity to act like a hero, the lord of the land. Is here, who dares to harm my little snail friends? The chefs hadn't seen who it was yet, but the black shadow had already appeared, giving each of them a good beating. Frog received the experience points and then realized. It seemed like the number of points he received from these newbies was a bit low. He saw another leg sticking out, and Frog laughed in a way that suggested he saw prey. About to walk into his trap, after all, they had the advantage in numbers. A little girl with two pigtails laughed and called out to her friends. Hurry up, if we're slow, the snail monsters will all be killed. However, when they came out, they didn't see anyone, and they were confused, and asked each other, where did the people who came before us go? The answer came down on their cheeks with a splash. Frog jumped from one to another, quickly gaining 24 experience points. In the second wave of newbies, he gained a total of 630 experience points, and continued to use the same tactic against the third group, gaining 540 points. Soon, as soon as they saw Frag, the children would scream and shout, run away. That's the mushroom monster in the novice village, it must have gotten lost here. Quick, climb up the stairs, it can't catch us there. Frog revealed himself to be a real villain, laughing out loud, you little fools, and then they gathered four people on the same step. Hey, why is there still a mushroom monster here? Didn't he say that the monsters have disappeared recently? Who knows, as long as we're up here, the mushroom monster can't hurt us. Just to be safe, Frog jumped up and looked at them menacingly, and the whole group could only scream helplessly and then stop, leaving only the sound of ping ping. So the fourth wave of newbies brought Frog 720 experience points. Late at night, a crescent moon hung high in the sky, and by the campfire, Frog reached out. A vial of potion to Piglet, who was lying by the fire unhappily. He looked at his dinner, which was just a health potion, and turned away in disgust. Frog didn't know what was wrong, and asked, aren't you hungry? Piglet didn't answer, 
so he had to open the identification panel, vitality, and physical strength 46 out of 100 was still quite good, so the young man was puzzled. Didn't give the little pig any potions, but the points didn't drop, but if so, it should be fine. He went over and patted the poor pig, I think your physical strength is a bit low, you must be tired. Okay, you've been waiting for me the whole way, so, take a break, I'll go hunt for experience points for us. Sitting by the fire again, Frog opened the status panel to see that he only had 16 out of 100 physical strength points, but in return he had risen to level 18. He laughed out loud, it took about a day to hunt the newbies and level up, just need to persevere for a few more days and he can safely reach level 20. He had just finished laughing when he felt tired, Frog yawned, and thought, that's right, my stamina is a bit low. It's late at night now, so save the stamina potion for both of us. So he leaned against Piglet and lay down next to the fire. Suddenly, the pink pig opened its eyes in a daze, and saw the familiar mushroom that was usually. Today, why is it so strange? Why does it look like a piece of roast meat? Roast meat? The pink pig let out a greedy cry, its saliva drooling, not knowing when it had put its teeth on the mushroom cap. Just then, it realized that it was hallucinating, and shook its head to wake itself up. Looking at Frog who was snoring, it sadly drooled, its stomach rumbling, continuously, but it didn't dare to do anything more, just lying down obediently beside Frag. This whole scene was seen by the boar up high, and for some reason, it was so angry that it was breathing hard, and its body was shaking as if it was trying to control itself. From early morning the next day, Frog and Piglet hid behind a bush, waiting for the newbies to appear after the gate, but there was nothing. After waiting a while longer, there was a sign, it was still yesterday's group, but they appeared much more cautiously. They whispered to each other, everyone said that there was a scary mushroom monster here yesterday. Can we come here? I don't want to get hurt. Suddenly, the excited voice of someone walking through the gate rang out. It was the burly hunters scolding the timid children. Village chief told us to protect you guys, so what are you afraid of? Anymore? Isn't it just a mushroom monster? However, the green-haired man found it strange that the monster mushroom here when the monster has not appeared for a long time. The man with lips as thin as freshly cut beef agreed. I heard that the fire poison clan has completely destroyed the mushroom kingdom and killed the mushroom king. The blonde man interrupted, it's probably just a monster. Mushroom that got lost from the last monster wave. Why else would the village chief invite a level 40 warrior here? It's really making a big deal out of nothing. Speaking of mushroom monsters, has Senior Azan ever fought the Mushroom King? He snorted and pretended to laugh. At that time I was still a newbie following two seniors. Unfortunately, I encountered a monster wave, so they retreated safely, and I stayed behind to stop the Mushroom King. It's a pity that I was too weak at that time and still tried to hurt it. It must be because of that wound that the Fire Poison Clan was able to defeat it. Frog used identification on them in annoyance. Stop listening to those flattering lines. The outermost one is a level 17 spearman, the middle one, Azan, is a level 17 shieldman, and the beefy one is a level 23 maceman. Hmm, this is a bit risky. Just two humanoids weaker than us are already as strong as me and Piglet, and now the third one has reached level 23. The strategy now is to separate the other two so that me and Piglet can team up to deal with the highest level one. Besides, if we can't defeat it, we have those healing potions. Survival and escape is not a problem. Snapping his fingers at Piglet, Frog told him to be ready to wait for the order, and we will take them down one by one. Oh, a day's worth of oil is gone. It looks like it's starving to death, but that capitalist doesn't care at all. Frog immediately cast the uninterruptible eruption, releasing a thick cloud of smoke that the beefy man just laughed at. Just like the report said, the mushroom monster releases a cloud of spores to block vision when attacking. The child who had just spoken, what should we do? Now, he had already taken a sip of Frag's head. He quickly urged the newbies to hurry, and the remaining three big men had to gather together with each other because they had discovered that the mushroom monster was not simple. The beefy man looked at Azan and asked, aren't we going to save the newbies? He was immediately scolded, are you stupid? They are just bait. A green-haired man shouted, I understand, the reward for killing the monster cub is higher than protecting the newbies. Hearing the sound of something rushing towards him, Azan shouted, it's here, support me. The beefy man raised his shield to block, but it was in vain, 
Frog went straight for a punch to the side of his fat face causing him to vomit blood, and he flew a distance before finally stopping. The traditional light appeared, officially sending one of them back to the village. The green-haired man cursed under his breath, it even broke his shield? How can a mushroom monster be so strong? Piglet jumped three steps into the cloud of spores, its face was slightly pale but its four legs were steady and majestic, but its stomach just let out a growl, and the little thing passed out immediately without anyone having to hit it. The warriors quickly reacted. The first was Azan's tornado, acting like a fan, sucking in all the spores to reveal Piglet lying flat on the ground. Oh my, why is there also a pig wearing armor here? I heard that many green people pay a high price to buy this thing, it's worth more than a mushroom monster. The green-haired man jumped up with his spear pointed down, leave it to me. He concentrated his eyes and threw a shot, intending to skewer Piglet, but Frog had already landed on the ground first. A headbutt to this guy's armpit made him vomit blood, and he shouted angrily, stay away from the pink pigskin. The spearman flew back several times before stopping, blood dripping from his mouth, and he could only say one sentence, it's very strong. He poured a health potion into his mouth to keep himself alive. As soon as he stood up, he heard Azan, complaining, if you can't do it, then get the hell out of here, don't be a burden here. How can I go back now? He insisted, I can still fight, senior. This monster's level is not low, I will share some of the pressure for you. Frog kept his eyes on them, and called out to Piglet in a low voice, wake up, the enemy is coming. When he didn't see it respond, Frog turned his head and called out more sharply, hey Piglet, what's wrong with you lately? Suddenly its eyes lit up. All the life force was drawn into its butt, and it gradually faded away, transforming into a piece of fatty roast pork in an instant. Piglet, who was as fat as a pig, immediately opened its eyes wide. Zahn glanced behind him and asked, do you think I can't defeat both of them? He took out a tube from his storage, let me show you. The green-haired man saw that it was strange, and asked, Senior, what is that? Azan glanced at him and replied, This is my secret weapon, warrior potion. As soon as he finished speaking, he poured the entire golden bottle into his mouth, burning like a fire. Immediately, the level of his body skyrocketed to level 28, and his warrior spirit turned into a surge of power that erupted everywhere. Frog realized that this guy's level had increased. He laughed when he reached level 38. Even if it could only last for 10 minutes, it was enough to deal with you. Damn it, Frog didn't expect this guy to have such a strong trump card. I guess there's no choice but to use the secret technology. Frag, run away quickly. Azan seized the opportunity to jump up and smash his axe down on the ground, causing it to run a long way and crack under Frag's feet. The earthquake moved towards him, and the boulders around him made a loud noise like iron falling everywhere. Wait, not pouring, Frog vaguely realized that the walls were moving, and in no time at all, they closed in on each other to form an isolated area, trapping Frog and the piglet inside. Azan calmly walked in and sneered, running away was the right choice, but a little too late because I won't allow it. Frog turned around and saw him approaching eagerly, muttering should I kill the pink pig first, or should I crush your little mushroom first? He stood with his legs apart on the ground, facing the two villains and smiled, come to me, little golden pot. Behind Frag, Piglet stood up suddenly, aiming at its roast pork as its motivation, its mouth squealing constantly. It couldn't let its delicious meat fall into the hands of others, it breathed heavily and its eyes widened. Suddenly, a puff of smoke wafted out from the stone walls, followed by a roar, back off, monster. With a bang, the room shattered, sending the hunter flying out with injuries. The large boulders were reduced to a few small remnants and the green-haired hunter lay on his back, waiting to be teleported back to the novice village. Azan trembled not far away, trembling no, impossible, I have already taken the warrior potion, how can I lose, no way. Piglet stomped on his hoof, causing him to vomit blood. In a fit of rage, the pink pig bit the cloak on his chest, threw Zahn over his back and slammed him on the ground, then threw him into the sky. His limbs stretched out like a dead earthworm, and he fell into a nearby dirt pile. He didn't see anyone, but he saw the light of teleportation, and the status bar showed that the mushroom monster had risen from level 18 to level 21, and the pink pig had also followed closely to level 20. A like from you takes only a second, but it makes mid happy. All day long, like mid to motivate him to write more stories, my dear friend. And yet Frog was still in a daze, oh my eyes. What did I just see? The piglet has been so strong since when. He looked at the butt in shock, looked at piglet turned back. The irrational purple eyes and was scared to death. Wait, wait, little pig, why are you looking at me like that? What do you want to do? It squealed like a car horn, and its breathing was not normal at all. All the life force was concentrated on the delicious roast pork. In front of him, 
making Frog finally realize that something was wrong. He immediately called out the system, and he was sure that his reputation had increased by five levels, so he could definitely see what had happened to Piglet. The upper part is not much different from normal except for the increase in stats due to leveling up. Only the new line of red text next to it is completely new. Hunger 0%. Berserk mode increases attack by 500 points. By the way, the system explains further. What is berserk mode? When the pig is in a hungry state, it will release the hidden power in its body, causing its attack power to increase greatly, but at the same time its vitality will decrease rapidly and uncontrollably. Frog gasped, hunger? Isn't that what the stamina points show? Does that mean that even giving it medicine won't make Piglet stop being hungry? He tried to calm down and make the pink pig recognize him. Wait a minute, I'll go get something for you to eat. That face, with its eyes wide open and tears streaming down its face, is obviously starving, right? Frog turned pale and tried to ask it a few questions. You, you're not really going to eat me, are you? The pink pig took a step forward, and Frog didn't dare to take a step back. Damn. Piglet was chasing Frog as if he was chasing a piece of roast pork. He ran away with his legs and shouted, Wait, Piglet, I'm sorry. Can we talk first? Bang. The sound of the pink pig's head hitting the rock is no different than the sound of a temple bell, but it doesn't wake it up. It continues to ram into the base of the tree as it chases after Frag, who is running out of breath. What should I do now, if the pink pig sucks us up, with only the attack power it has now it will kill me in a snap, but I can't keep it up any longer, look at it. It may be running around in circles, but its vitality is running out. Whatever, Frog was shouting as he ran, before I thought that the amount of medicine was enough so I didn't go looking for food. Now that the piglet is in this state, I can't go looking for food either, should I just let it bite me? What the hell? Heaven helps those who help themselves, but why does Frog find it? So strange, this isn't a place where you can grow a garden, so why are there piles of fruit? But he didn't have time to think, Piglet was charging at him like a mad dog. Frog could only wave his hand and invite it to charge at him and then decide what to do. Piglet jumped up and down like it was on a trampoline, ignoring Frog and jumping straight into the pile of fruit, not caring whether it was a crab apple or a pear. It stuck its head in and let out a few grunts for a long time without showing its head. Frag's eyes were on high alert, watching every movement of the apples intently. After a while, the, the apples stopped moving, surprise, Piglet appeared with its usual cute and innocent look. Its mouth was full of fruit, and it was chewing on the apple with such relish that Frog finally dared to breathe a sigh of relief. You almost scared me to death just now. He lay down in the shade, coaxing Piglet to eat up. This time I won't steal your food, but I wonder who left a pile of apples here. Anyway, as long as I've escaped being eaten. By the time it was evening, the two of them crawled back to the newbie gate. Piglet was munching on an apple in its mouth, contentedly listening to Frag's instructions. Our next goal is to sneak into the newbie village and steal the secret book of classification, so be careful. 1. In front and 1 behind, Frog and Piglet approached the gate, unaware that their actions had been seen by the scammer above. Next to him was the HKT level 40 boss, his mouth wide open, and countless subordinates lying dead on the stone steps. Did he just kill these guys? To protect Piglet? The tiny fists clenched tightly, both from the excitement in his heart and the anticipation. I'm entering the newbie village, and to me now, the people there are like babies. I'm going to be the grown-up who comes to eat all their candy. The prospect of ruling the newbie village made Frog laugh out loud. He stepped into the light of the gate, muttering, newbie village, your lord is here. Suddenly, the system sounded, congratulations to player Frog for being the first to enter the newbie village, reward, 10,000 gold coins, 10,000. Frag's mushroom hat slammed into something hard, and when he opened his eyes, he saw the word danger in big letters in front of him. Only then did he realize that on the other side of the gate was a wooden fence with lots of paper pasted on it. There was no one around, just a gentle breeze blowing through a piece of paper, making it flutter and land on Frag's face. Next to Piglet was a snail who was excited to be here for the first time and it glanced at Frog to see what he was gaping at. On it was a picture of a mushroom and a pig with red eyes and the word danger in big letters above it. There have been reports of high-level monsters near the newbie village. Newbie warriors and villagers are forbidden to enter the forest without permission. The village will not be held responsible for any losses incurred by those who disregard this warning. He held the paper in his trembling hand. How, how could this be happening? But then, Frag's English eyes spotted something even stranger. Why was this paper written in English? But anyway, that's none of my business. Frog crumpled up the paper and threw it away. It must be another one of the benefits of reincarnation. I can understand what people are saying and read the text on the system even though I dropped out of English before I could finish it. Frog turned Piglet and headed deeper into the wooden fence, 
pretending not to see the snail with its sparkling eyes. At the stone gate to the city, there were all sorts of hawkers shouting, only the two guys standing there in their shiny armor were silent. They were just standing there, looking around, not saying a word. Frog and Piglet walked past them. At the entrance to the newbie city, there was an endless stream of people coming and going, from merchants and traders to ordinary people, all using this way. Amidst the passing clouds, a strange blue feathered bird swooped down, circled the city wall, and suddenly let out a deafening cry. It spread its wings and sped towards the children near the gate, who were also running away. Hurry back to the gate. It's a high level monster. A bird opened its mouth wide and was about to bite a little boy with blue hair like its feathers, but it was hit by several sharp iron arrows in the mouth. An arrow plunged into the grass right at Frag's feet, who was holding two branches for camouflage, fired with incredible accuracy from an unknown level of the newbie village guard. Oh man, Frog just remembered that even numbered villages always have invincible NPC protection. He looked at Piglet hugging the apple like a treasure, and he looked at it stupidly and suddenly said that he had figured it out, even a pink pig has to go back to the beginning, what did he figure out? All around, there was a buzz of conversation, hey, have you heard? There have been a lot of high level monsters, appearing around here lately, even level 40 warriors have been defeated, yeah, a lot of people have given up on becoming warriors because of this, do you think this has anything to do with, defeat of the mushroom king? Look at the tree with the apples on it, you know who's behind that round cloak. Frog held his breath and took Piglet away in small steps, pretending not to hear the gossip. It's possible, even though, although the Mushroom King will attack anyone who comes near, but thanks to it, other high-level monsters stay away. As he was entering the gate, suddenly the stern guard said hoarsely, stop, which made Frog and the pig below him freeze. It turned out that the guy was just reminding them to remember to dispose of their apples properly after eating them, and that everyone would be fined for littering. The pigskin lip mask trembled beneath Frag's hastily dripping sweat. He was hiding in the stinky cloak from the wizard he had killed in the fire rock egg incident. Now that he saw how good it was, Frog couldn't help but praise himself as a genius. Women really love it. The center of the newbie village was peaceful, with the fountain of virtue as a large trading area. The pharmacy was bustling with people coming and going, and the sound of discounted deliveries. The blacksmith shop nearby was always on fire, and the sound of hammering was incessant. The monster baiting Barbie shop was always full of people willing to pay a lot of money for a good meal. Frog went to the library door and found it more deserted than he had expected. Although he had seen this statue many times when playing the game, it was a completely different feeling to see it in person. Take Piglet to collect information on how to change classification. The two of them walked through the crowd easily, when suddenly on the left side there was a large gathering of people, which aroused Frag's curiosity. He changed the direction of the apple and led Piglet there to see what was going on. Many newbies sighed in front of a sign, when will that monster be killed? I can't even go out there to upgrade. That's right, both times I went out, I was killed while collecting materials to change my classification. Looking at the new information board, they were buzzing that last time a level 40 warrior was defeated, so the village posted a notice to hire a level 60 to come. But how could a level 60 veteran come to newbie and read this? Suddenly Frog remembered that the shell of a stone snail could be used to change classification. He eavesdropped on people talking about what to do now. The price of snail shells has gone up to over 50 gold coins each. The rich can afford it, but what about us? If we don't hurry, we might miss this year's classification change. The little boy stuck his nose out and looked helpless, even if it takes place this afternoon, no one will be able to go out. There's no time, let alone high-level monsters outside. Hey, you said you met the monster twice, right? Is it really just an ordinary mushroom monster? Why would they hire a level 60 warrior to fight an ordinary mushroom monster? The little boy replied, that one is not ordinary. Not only does it have a series of skills that ordinary mushroom monsters don't have, but it is also intelligent and knows how to use human skills strategically. Even climbing stairs can't escape it. Frog quietly sweated under his cloak. Now he understood why no players showed up anymore. Because he scared people. Away? Luckily, he hadn't run into any level 40 warriors yet, not to mention that this village had actually hired a level 60 to come. The children talked about something else. Tonight the divine tree will release special energy. To celebrate the classification change. I'm really jealous of the people who participate tonight. Frog shook the apple aside so that Piglet could change direction, but somehow his foot stepped on the cloak, and both of them fell to the ground, their two bare butts facing the audience of little children. Piglet didn't care, 
as long as he could hold the apple, he was happy, but Frog panicked and shouted, Oh no, I'm exposed. Already, the noise made the passers-by look over, and the blacksmith who was hammering his talisman also looked over. Oh my god, it's right in the middle of the street. Frog hugged his mushroom hat and shivered. This time he's dead. He squinted at, outside, no no, I can defeat the people here, but if they call the guards, it will be too late to send a distress signal. But unexpectedly, the crowd of people rushed past. Everyone took a look and then went back to their daily work, of their own. The people who were closer exclaimed with delight, this is a mushroom monster and a downer pig, whose pets are they? The owner must be very rich to buy these monsters. These two have become very popular lately. Frog was shocked and hugged his mushroom hat, why didn't they? Attack me, and what's that? Other monsters are walking around. At this time, Frog realized that there were many monsters with different functions around him, such as the level 32 cat that was brought back from this source of vibration. For example, it looked no different from an ordinary emperor. Nearby, there was a level 16 horned seal from the sunken world that was talking to a level 26 sleeping owl, brought back from the colorful desert. Frog opened his eyes wide, did they think he was also a pet? If so, things would be much simpler. This red hat looks so familiar, the important thing is that he is groping his way around, so, he doesn't know when two more of his pets have appeared. Frog held his breath and tried to stay close to the herd, when suddenly he was attracted by something on the side of the road, and a high wooden stake pointed out three directions, the village chief's house, the market square and the hot spring. Frog looked at the village chief's house, which was exactly the same as the one on the drawing board, and immediately separated from the group and ran towards it, not forgetting to take Piglet with him, who didn't know, and was still looking for his way to the competition. The leaves gently touched the ground with the wind, Frog and Piglet poked their heads out, from behind a rock, and their new destination started from here. Just then, two teenagers carrying a lot of things passed by, and the two of them lowered their heads and listened furtively. They were talking about the situation in the colorful place where the black-haired boy had just returned from. Just when Frog thought a pet dragon was crawling behind him, he broke a branch when the other two boys were not paying attention and followed closely behind. The little boy with the golden hair suddenly mentioned the most powerful beast trainer, Sir Barbaro, who ranked third on the entire continent of bravery. He was only second to the two legendary sword saints and the elemental king. It is said that even angels and demons are suppressed by Sir Barbaro. We should also try to tame a high-level monster in the future. Angels and demons are something that even a high-level warrior can't touch. 2. I wonder what level Sir Barbaro has reached to be able to tame them. Frog listened with fascination, most importantly, he could not have imagined that this world also had angels. Demons. Look, that's the village chief's house, it reminds me of when we first started out. The two of them walked excitedly towards it, but suddenly wondered why people had stopped issuing quests recently. Why were there still so many people queuing outside? The black-haired boy reminded him that today is the classification change ceremony. The previous ceremony had ten times more people gathered. Hearing that, Frog smiled happily, the secret. To change Changing his classification was gradually coming to him. Listening to the two of them talking again, the black-haired boy asked where he got two popular pets, a pig with a bow and a mushroom monster. The blonde boy laughed, you pretend to be that, I can tell at a glance. You just secretly summoned a mushroom monster and a pig with a bow. At that point, the two boys looked at each other in shock and turned around to look at their two pets and exclaimed, oh, they were just here. The sound of laughter and chatter passed through the wooden house because there were so many people queuing outside waiting. Most of them were eagerly waiting. Why hasn't the village chief appeared yet? Didn't it start an hour ago? The wooden door creaked open, and an old couple stepped out of it. The man was leaning on a staff made of three colored conch shells. His apology sounded hoarse. Sorry, I overslept. The green village chief Supler is also a long, wrinkled conch, speaking as if he was out of breath. Welcome, young and ambitious warriors. Completing this task means that you have the ability to go out and become a real warrior. The children bowed their heads and shouted, Hello, Chief Supler Green. He trembled and invited everyone. In, the wooden door gradually opened for the children to enter quickly with different emotions. Frog was a little stunned. This village chief seemed old. Maybe he could sneak in without him. Finding out, Supler Green was still trembling, asking if he was the last one. He put his staff out to block the way and Frog was scared. He was worried that he had noticed something unusual about him. The wrinkled hand was raised up and it took a few minutes. Supler Green crawled slowly. Food outside was not allowed in the house. Frog was stunned for a moment before remembering that he was talking about his apple, 
Ben put it in his trembling hand. Below him, he grunted and protested loudly. Frog pulled its bow back with both hands and whispered clearly. It was only silent when he let him in. This part was a little difficult to tell the piglet which way to go without fruit. It had to be clear and then it would be given plenty. The body under the cloak walked crookedly like someone with a crooked back, and Frog kept telling the piglet to go straight in. When he finally got inside, he gasped in disbelief that the light was coming from the tree god, it was so beautiful that it was breathtaking. It grew right in the middle of a huge library that was almost 20 stories high with a moving staircase. Frog stood below and couldn't help but be stunned for a long time, because from the outside he felt, this place looked like a small wooden house. Who would have thought that such a wonderful tree would be here? The beauty of the goddess's face was so lifelike that it made one want to look at it forever, and to bow down and worship it again and again. The old soup suddenly spoke up, just put the ingredients in front of the model tree and we can start. While he was urging the children, Frog was confused. Why was the village chief who was trembling behind him so full of energy now? You children take out the ingredients and pray to the model tree, she will be the one to help you open up your classification based on your personal talents. When the ceremony is over, you can come back tomorrow to see what your classification is. The children quickly put ten of each of the green, blue, and red conch shells into the jar along with one of the stone conch shells. The jar lit up softly, and the children clasped their hands in prayer as the leaves on the model tree lit up and gently floated down to land on the children. Very good. Oh oh, the boy behind. Why are you just standing? They're watching. Hurry up and get your ingredients out. That boy was Frog, who had been secretly watching the others, and was startled when he was suddenly called out. The green soup reminded him again. Hurry up, put all the ingredients in the pot, I won't say it again. Frog was embarrassed, he quickly took out his ingredients and put them in the jar. He was stunned for a moment before replying, can I replace it with something else, something more valuable than a conch shell? Those old eyes stared straight at him, looking impatient and reminding him, I don't need anything but a conch shell, don't tell me you came here to lie. Inside the cloak, one was holding the other down by the bow, but couldn't, and the foot pushing the cloak back made Frog anxious. The village chief was like a completely different person. Why was he so adamant about only taking conch shells? Just when he was lying through his teeth, the status window popped up with the words. Error. Previous task failed. New task will appear shortly. Frog hissed through his teeth. Why did you appear at this time? Can't you see I'm in trouble? The old green soup was standing far away but still heard. It raised an eyebrow and asked, monster language? He walked through the children and approached Frog, asking in monster language. Humans can't hear us, talking to each other in this language. Who are you? Frog lied, trying to appease the system. Don't bother me anymore. I have more urgent matters to deal with. When he finally heard what the old man was saying, he was stunned, but asked again, what did you say? What is monster language? Where did he go? There was no green soup in front of him, but suddenly Frog noticed a strange smell in the air. He flew over, his staff raised high in the air, in front of the bulletin board as if he was about to strike it down. The system board lit up and split in two, hitting. Frog's eyes made him close them tight. His subconscious only saw a flash of yellow before it went out. Again as the staff hit the tile floor, the old soup rushed to the ground, his eyes fixed on something in front of him. He now looked like a real ninja. The system looked very different with the words punishment space, it dropped Frog into a strange place. He fell on his face, and the two of them lit up when they received the object, another cube among the countless others floating around in a strange way. Where am I? I suddenly saw the village school appear. Frog was only now able to read the words above, scared out of his wits. His face, was he being punished for not doing his duty? The system's voice confirmed his fears. Yes, you are being punished for failing to complete your task. Sure enough, the system here replied to Frog that because you repeatedly refused to perform the tasks given by the system, you have been sent to the punishment space. Your goal is to jump up 10,000 steps. If you cannot complete it within the time limit, you will be punished by death. As soon as he finished reading it, it started counting down from 59 minutes, and there was no reward. Frog was so angry that he spat out all his saliva, and opened his mouth to scold the damn thing. You never said that refusing a task would be punished. Do you think the system will answer him? Of course not. It said it was a long story and would tell it later. Now I wish the player all the best. It added a small, kind-hearted line, advising you to move as soon as time starts. That's all. And then it disappeared. Frog yelled. In desperation, don't go. You can't do this. He slumped down and muttered curses. Is this system a scam? What am I supposed to do? The little thing beside him could only smile happily, but Frog was in no mood for it. No, I have no choice but to do it. 
10. 0, 0, 0 steps within one hour, that means three steps per second. He stopped talking, I can't waste any more time. Frog looked around, and asked Piggy to go with him, we have to make up for the lost time. He thought, if I go up with a head start, I might be able to climb more steps at once. No sooner said than done, he crouched down and threw his stomach back, then snapped his fingers and stepped onto the third step above. Piggy stood below and squealed in admiration. Now Frog was really focused on this. Let's go Piggy, now is not the time to play. Our lives are in danger, come up here quickly. But the pink pig suddenly walked around in a circle, making Frog anxious. He leaned down and encouraged it, come on, we really can't play around now. Suddenly he looked into those sparkling eyes that were looking at him more than. Realizing that it was really helpless, the little thing couldn't jump that high. The pink pig's hoof had just flicked up when it heard the sound of someone straining. The short mushroom feet also jumped up, taking three steps at once. But it wasn't Piggy, it was Piggy with its four legs on Frog's head. He strained with all his might, breathing through his tongue. And the little thing got off and lay on the floor panting. By now, he had only made it up 1170 steps, with just over 42 minutes to go. Taking out a stamina potion, Frog used the word death as motivation to not waste any more time resting, let's go piggy. Pouring the entire potion into Frog, he regained 50 stamina points, ready for Piggy to hug his mushroom cap and squeal with excitement. Using the head-butting mushroom again, he jumped up a very high step. At a critical moment, Piggy's nose itched and he sneezed. One time, causing Frog to slip off the step he was aiming for. He screamed, his short limbs couldn't reach the step, and the two of them fell down to a lower spot, back to a place lower than before. The vitality points were reduced insignificantly, but the point is that what just happened was too dangerous. If I miss a few more jumps, I could die before the time runs out. Looking down, Frog couldn't see where the end point was. Of this space, it seemed that there wasn't one. Fortunately, the two of them landed on a step. He felt a chill run down his spine, and couldn't help but turn to the piggy and remind him. Remember to warn me before you do that again, or we'll fall down again. As long as there is life, there is hope. The pink pig squealed enthusiastically, its face as bright as if it was playing a very fun game. Making Frog so angry that he couldn't stand it. It's true that you shouldn't be afraid of a strong enemy, but you should be afraid of a teammate who is as stupid as a pig. Before dashing off, Frog knocked back another blood potion and a stamina potion, then jumped up and crawled to the edge with Piggy happily clinging to his head. The two of them rolled from one floor to the next, and in no time at all they had reached the 4117th floor, with 31 minutes remaining. Frog was exhausted, so he knocked back another vitality and stamina potion and continued his arduous task. He progressed to the 6378th floor, with 22 minutes remaining, and his head-butting mushroom skill had reached level 7. By the 9117th step, it had reached level 9, with 7 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Frog gritted his teeth and jumped up, even though it was difficult, carrying Piggy. Using the head-butting mushroom again made his skill level up faster. As the level increased, he was able to jump higher and the time became shorter, and now he could jump over 10 steps at a time. Here it was, finally his foot touched the penultimate step. This step had a bright yellow circle on it, completely different from the rest. From here, Frog had only 2 minutes left, but in return, his head-butting mushroom skill had reached level 10. Frog beat his chest and spat, that was the last step. As long as he could jump up there, they could escape this place, but the distance was a bit far. But the distance was a bit far. Hearing the commotion above, Frog looked up and reminded him, don't move, we can't afford to make any mistakes here. There was no turning back now, Frog had to do this. He stood tall on the high ground, and stretched out his short hand hopefully. Finally we can leave this damn trap. But when he said that, the two of them had only gone one part of the way, and Frog quickly realized that something was wrong. The two of them fell down to a lower step nearby, only. Piggy was happy because he liked the thrill, but he was very angry. The damn cage, I couldn't even get close to it. He told Piggy to hold on tight, and once again jumped up to the 9999th step. Frog stretched his legs out to the edge, and his cautiousness made Piggy feel a little guilty, but Frog didn't think much of it. Activating the head-butting mushroom, he tried again, but fell down to the step below once again. The third time, the fourth time, until the progress bar showed 9996 and there was one minute and 11 seconds left. Piggy felt that Frog had stopped for a while and looked down to ask. He wiped the sweat from his face, 
how can we jump up there? Trying again, Frog jumped up to a higher step with Piggy on his back. By the time he reached the penultimate floor, he was very tired. For the fifth time, he tried the thrill, and Frog secretly encouraged himself that he would definitely succeed. The head-butting mushroom skill was activated to the maximum, and Piggy also raised his eyebrows with determination. There were only 58 seconds left. The atmosphere was tense, Piggy licked Frog's head, making him choke and cough, and then reminded him again, now is not the time to play. His four legs firmly planted on the ground, the pink pig turned to look at. Frog, squealed, and rubbed his nose on Frog's face. This pig, this is goodbye. Looking at the expression of respect in the sparkling eyes, it was even more certain. Frog's face was dark, but Piggy was still the same, not changing at all. Tears of unwillingness flowed down. The pink pig happily licked them dry. Frog stepped to the edge of the step, gritted his teeth and forced himself down, using the head-butting mushroom to shoot himself up to the top yellow floor. He looked back, Piggy was gone, his maximum level head-butting mushroom skill could easily get him here. Perhaps the system had planned it all along, to help him gain experience for this skill. But looking from this distance, Piggy was too far away from him. Frog was unwilling, and asked the system, this is my punishment, so the little pig won't be affected, right? It replied with a long answer, whether or not you complete the mission, when the time is up, the punishment space will collapse, and everything inside will have only one outcome, death. Frog's face was expressionless, and there were 42 seconds left. He leaned over and looked down at Piggy below, who looked up at him with a smile. Little pig, I'm sorry. Frog's eyes were full of determination. He stood up straight, his eyes fixed on the light from above, and then, suddenly he threw himself straight down, jumping down the steps too far and losing 20 health points. Piggy was stunned and didn't understand what Frog was trying to do. Frog had stood up, and apologized to the little pig in a low voice, but I won't leave without you. Piggy angrily stamped his feet on the steps, his face sullen and noisy, and he even went so far as to put his legs on Frog's legs to try to convince him to go back. Tears streaming down his face, he pushed the pig's nose away and said with determination, I can't leave you here. Frog gritted his teeth and declared firmly, if we leave here, we will go together. Piggy's face was as if a new world had opened up to him, he opened his eyes wide, and looked at Frog, then looked up at the last step at the end of the other leg. The small mouth with its newly grown fangs was only a few seconds. Later on Frog's head, and the two of them looked at it with determination, shaking their butts back and forth a few times for motivation and then once again jumped off this step. All their energy was concentrated on the head-butting mushroom, and Frog still put in his maximum effort. The step was very close to him, and he shouted, just a little more. But then the head-butting mushroom suddenly stopped, and the two of them looked at each other in a daze. As they fell far down, no longer stopping at the penultimate step. The screams echoed along with the time decreasing from 12 seconds, and the two of them kept falling endlessly, and the words Frog had read earlier ran through his mind. Suddenly he was afraid of death. Could it be that we would just die here? Wait a minute. Stop for about half a second. Suddenly Frog's head remembered something. It was the bomb mushroom just like that bomb mushroom that shot itself forward. Frog regained his spirits, and with determined eyes, he estimated the distance, and when there were exactly five seconds left, he used both hands to grab. The two sides of Piggy, looked at the golden step, and gritted his teeth to activate the spore eruption. Four seconds, then three seconds, Frog didn't care, and pushed Piggy up with his head and chest up. The two of them flew over very many steps, suddenly Frog opened his mouth and shouted, Jet Mushroom, he had just unlocked this new skill. When the countdown reached 1, Frog and Piggy had already flown to the golden light area, just in time to land on the step as the big number 0 appeared. Congratulations, you have completed the mission. Why is the system board so big and bright today? In a moment, the two of them were teleported out of the area, the golden halo. Disappeared and Piggy slid down from Frog's head and sat on the ground. Suddenly it turned to look at Frog, its tail wagging vigorously, its eyes sparkling, making him not understand anything. I really don't know what to do with you anymore. Do you know how close we came to death? Old man, but in situations like that, all you need is a confident smile, right? The soft night light from the ceiling shone on the statue of the goddess on the tree, and Frog stared at it and shouted, Hey stupid system, if I have passed the punishment, can I do whatever I want now? We only spent an hour in the space, but outside, it's already dark, and it's a good thing that you helped me escape from the village school. Frog pinched Piggy's butt and pulled him away. After this incident, I don't think you're useless anymore. Come on, little pig. No one is bothering us, so now, we have to change our classification to warrior. But Piggy just stood there in a daze, staring at that butt. Usually it didn't have any emotions, 
but suddenly today it seemed fascinated. The image of the short, fat guy had changed completely. Now he was shining and holding out his hand to declare. We'll never leave you behind. If we have to leave, we will go together. Frog didn't know what it was thinking behind him. He just turned his head and wagged his finger to say let's go. And he saw Piggy's face light up, shining with love. Now it looked more like a puppy than a pig, jumping up and down, its tail wagging as it followed its master to the jars of snail shells. Based on the village chief's resolute attitude, the snail shells. Up here must be the secret to changing our classification, right? But I don't know if the sacred tree and the pile of snail shells up here have anything to do with each other. How does it help humans change their classification to warrior? A green light fell into the jar with the red snail shell, and suddenly, bubbles rose up, and the sound of absorption was strange. Frog stepped forward to observe scratching his head. For a while, he revealed a look of I know what you're up to. Grabbing a jar and uncovering a snail shell, Frog poured out the shell and tossed the jar away. He did the same with another jar and threw it on the ground. After he was done, he pretended to be exhausted, and Frog stood in front of a larger jar filled with snail shells after throwing away the smaller jars. The ingredients to change the Super Viper O classification were complete. Kneeling on the floor, Frog muttered even though he hadn't prepared any snail shells, but it would be fine if he borrowed some from someone else. He turned to his right and then to his left to pray sincerely. Suddenly he clasped his hands together and shouted, Great Mother Tree, please change my classification to warrior. He squinted to the left, then to the right, and then down. But nothing happened to the jar of snail shells in front of him. Piggy glanced over, Frog was talking to himself, was he doing it wrong? But I did it the same way the village chief told others to do it, didn't I? Maybe I need to, yes, I need to become focused and praise the sacred mother tree. So Frog closed his eyes again and shouted, Great Mother Tree, please change my classification to warrior. Nothing happened, could it be that the prayer method was wrong? He prayed to every god he could think of, calling out Molly Molly Hong, Great Mother Tree. Please change my ranks to warrior. Still nothing happened. Frog turned to worship the gods of the four directions. From Halalusa to Alibaba, he prayed to everything he could think of. He even jumped up and down in a self-made dance, his mouth chanting, urgently to open the sesame until he was exhausted. He stopped only when he was panting and looking, up at the sacred tree emitting magical glows. How can humans change ranks so easily by just pouring shells? I don't think they did anything else, and don't even say that. Monsters are inherently unable to change their classification. The status window seemed to be waiting for this moment to pop up. I told you so. Monsters can't change ranks. Hurry up. And give up and go back to doing the evolution quest properly. Frog was so angry. This stupid system finally showed up just to mock me? He sat up again, unwilling to give up, he had used all means. To get here, I refused to give up. There must be a way, if not, I will create a way myself. Thinking about it, he sat down and tried to figure it out, his. Muscles were tense, but the noisy sound kept ringing in his ears. Unable to bear it any longer, Frog shouted, Can you shut up? I'm trying to think. Piggy didn't pay any attention to the crazy mushroom, it jumped up and down to chase. The blue glows in the air just to gobble them up. Piggy looked like it was having a lot of fun. Frog was annoyed and called out to it to stop. If you eat it, your stomach will have problems. What a stupid glutton you are. But the upgrade light suddenly appeared on. Piggy, Frog was stunned and couldn't believe it. Now he had time to take a closer look at these glows. They must be the green energy emitted by the sacred tree. A green glow fell on top of its mushroom. Frog absorbed it immediately and suddenly received 50 experience points. From head to toe, he felt extremely refreshed. Was it really a level up score? He glanced at a glow that had just fallen, and used the identification skill to read it. It turned out that its name was Magic Energy, which had a very high amount of magic power. It usually hides deep underground but sometimes it can be led to the surface through specific means such as plants. It can be used to replace the energy needed for evolution. Because the energy comes from monsters, humans cannot absorb it directly. Now Frog understood, because humans can't absorb it directly. They use snail shells as a means to transfer power to themselves. He suddenly had a new idea, which meant that the secret to changing ranks was not in the number of snail shells, but in this concentrated magic energy particle. Frog followed Piggy, who was holding a particle, and told it to save some for him. So the two of them, one on the left and one on the right, 
jumped up and down, chasing the energy particles, using their mouths to swallow them. Soon the two of them leveled up. Frog reached level 25 and the pink pig reached level 21. Throwing a bottle of stamina on the ground, Frog breathed out tiredly beside the pile of bottles and jars. He had leveled up, but the movement speed of a mushroom was still too slow. If only he could gather them all in one place and absorb them, it would be different. He stood up and called out to the piglet, you should also drink the energy potion, don't exhaust yourself. But Piggy still jumped up and down like before, running after the glows without any sign of fatigue. When Frog looked again, he was already level 28, and his stats had also increased rapidly. Frog's confidence was gone, he had jumped a lot and only reached level 27. And speaking of eating, he really couldn't compete with Piggy, it was having fun as if it was playing. Half of the energy here might have been eaten by the piglet. Frog sat on the ground and complained. Being a mushroom was very disadvantageous, there had to be a way to concentrate them all in one place for him. He stood up and called out to the system. It appeared with the sentence monsters can't change their classification, but Frog just wanted to know if there was anything in the inventory that he could use. He swiped his finger across the interface and saw that his mushroom cap skill had reached level 10. The two skills spore eruption and identification had both reached level 6, and the new jet mushroom and decomposition were only level 2. He read it several times, looked back and forth at the table, and suddenly had a bold thought. The decomposition skill is ready for me to use. Standing under the sacred tree again, Frog looked up, and observed for a while, he was still determined. If I'm already here, I might as well go big and see if anyone is impressed. Frog liked this kind of challenge. He clenched his fists and stood with his legs apart, and suddenly flicked his body up. High, using the jet mushroom to aim at the finely carved head and fly towards it. When he reached the desired height, he slowly spun in the air and gently landed on the head of the statue. Piggy stood below jumping up and down, oinking and telling him to come down, but Frog didn't listen. He was so angry that he stood up with his two hind legs and shouted violently while the mushroom just stood there posing. It's okay, little pink pig, just sit there and watch me. He was not happy, but he sat back down to watch what the guy was going to do. He closed his eyes and prayed in a low voice, oh great mother tree, very earnestly and solemnly, then placed his butt on her head and said in a joking tone, I apologize. Flexing his butt muscles, Frog activated the decomposition skill right on the head of the mother tree. The status window popped up continuously, detecting the target of organic matter, and the decomposition was becoming more effective. Frog felt a stream of green light from the sacred tree coming up from his butt. Like a high voltage current rushing into his buttocks, Frog had to brace himself to keep his butt from moving. Piggy didn't know what he was doing, but he knew that this light was definitely a sign of danger. Frog's whole body was covered with the green lines characteristic of the tree. God, he braced himself and said, decompose, decompose. His head was covered in sweat, and Frog ignored the continuous warning messages. A large amount of energy has been detected, absorbing it may lead to unknown changes. Does the player want to continue? Frog found it annoying. Why did he ask that question when he had already started doing it? Absorb it, absorb it all for me. Frog shouted, using all his strength until he saw the words. Congratulations player, your level has increased, the level of decomposition has increased. Frog still sat there absorbing more, the green veins were glowing so brightly that they were blinding. The green spots that had just flown out of the dirty leaves stopped, and were sucked back in, all moving in the opposite direction to before. From the small branches to the branches and then to the trunk, the end point was the head of the goddess tree. Just like that, the branches were drained of all their energy and in no time they withered and wilted, the leaves fell from the branches. Frog's eyes lit up, he read the warning message but continued to absorb it. It said that the player had met the hidden requirements for evolution and could choose any evolutionary path when he stopped decomposing. Piggy began to feel uneasy, its oinking. Sound gradually decreased, replaced by the sound of frog straining. He wanted to suck it all up, so much so that the motherly face on the tree gradually withered away like an old woman. The branches that sculpted the mother's body dried up. The shape of the arms also changed to that of an old woman. The light transmitted from the butt to the head of the mushroom grew wider and wider, to the point where frog could clearly see the bright spots on his butt. He screamed terribly, and a few seconds later the decomposition was completely completely finished. The mushroom twitched and trembled, covered with veins, or rather, Frog's butt was holding too much energy inside and had not yet digested it. Now it was swollen and painful. He gritted his teeth and encouraged himself to hold it in. Piggy stood below, 
very worried, oinking a few times and seeing no response from Frog. His chrysanthemum was trembling like flower petals trying to close, but gradually opening one petal, then gradually two, three, and four. Frog prayed silently to heaven, oh my god, it's coming out. The petals were opening more and more, and Frog's butt was getting bigger and bigger. Piggy standing below also saw that something was wrong, his face turned pale, and he cried out in horror as Frog's butt looked like it was about to explode. The chrysanthemum was about to bloom, and there was no way to hold it back, it turned its petals to show off its bright yellow color, causing Frog to be so scared that he could only say two words, it's blooming. The pain from it made him scream terribly, all the energy inside his butt pushed against each other and gushed out from a single spout, spreading to all corners. Frog was in so much pain that he could only open his mouth and scream, Unable to do anything, the energy emitted from his chrysanthemum lit up the sky like a small sun. It shone down on the bookshelf and was immediately reflected onto the table, from the table it hit the water and bounced around like a pinball. Piggy watched with his eyes wide open, trying to avoid being hit by this thing, but it was too fast. The little pig didn't have time to do anything before a beam of light hit him directly, and he jumped up and disappeared. A violent shock in the library reached all the way to the broccoli's bedroom, and he snorted, and turned over to hug his pillow, extremely comfortable and not caring about what was going on outside. Only the spiral symbol on the wall of the village chief's room was glowing purple. It was the seal on Gallum's left arm. The requirements to open it include the blue, red, and green lotus seed pods, each of which has been blessed with 10 million shells. As for the father lotus seed pod, 1 million pieces, the current progress has reached 95%. In the library, the green energy was still shooting everywhere, looking like a bar light. One of the beams was stronger than the others, and it shot up into the sky looking like a shooting star. It shot from the novice village to the other side of the gate of the novice village, where the fire beast and its little brothers were standing guard in front, and they turned their heads to look at the bright spot. In the darkness in the distance, two familiar black figures watched, as the light hit the ground with a loud bang. Another beam passed through the Tower of Time, shining, on a rag doll lying on the tile floor. Another beam passed through the sunken world, falling to the bottom of the sea, deep where hundreds of fish were swimming below. It hit the bottom of the sea, and there was a loud bang as the waves rolled up like a tsunami and large and small boats capsized. The distant pentagram desert was not spared either, the eyes of the stranger under the cloak followed the path of the green beam but showed no expression, only the desert wolves gathered together and howled uneasily. A beam of light also appeared above the sky of the lava veins, its power just passed by and made Ba Jun and Gui Ham look at it. It crashed into the top of a volcano, causing the entire lava area to shake. The gloomy land of the dead, where the bones of the fog were piled up, had a beam of light passing through it today. It was so bright that the eyes in the night could not ignore it. They opened their pupils in unison in the fog, thick, gossiping about a special event together. That night, gorgeous clusters of light illuminated the night sky over the entire brave continent, as if heralding a new era was approaching, but it was not clear whether its author knew it. The next morning, birds perched on the roof of the house and chirped for a while, when something more interesting appeared, they spread their wings and flew after it, simply because this morning the village chief's house was peaceful. Two, except for the sound of the wind, no one came to visit. But inside the broken threshold, the broken jars, the several floors of books in the library, library were burnt with big holes, and there were dry leaves everywhere. Fraggler's eyes opened to a strange thing blocking the walls of books. Today's status window was filled with two colors, blue and green, running over the upgrade text that was overflowing the border. After a while, it returned to normal, and it was announced that the data restructuring was complete, and 5 million experience points had been collected. The monster system has now been upgraded to the warrior system, awaiting player confirmation. Congratulations to the player for successfully transforming into a mushroom warrior, awaiting confirmation of acceptance or cancellation. Fraggler wondered vaguely, what had he done? Suddenly he woke up from his dream, it worked. Did it really work for him to become a warrior? Reading the text over and over again, Frog was surprised to find that its interface had changed, but he still reached out and clicked on the agree button. There was just something about touching his hand, it had passed through the status window. Fraggler was confused, feeling something wrong with his hand. He seemed to see a pair of eyes reflected in it. Frog turned it over with joy, and found that he really had hands. I have hands, real human hands. Hands. He raised his hands to support his face in panic. Frog screamed, am I human again? He rubbed his head and his butt, was he dreaming? 
but if he had become human again, he should have a third leg, a real leg, right? Frog looked down and found that he hadn't seen it for a long time, but it was still there. The mushroom below seemed to be telling Frog that it was back, so take good care of it. Frog howled with joy, and then remembered. The pink pig, Ben asked curiously where it was. Frog turned and tried to stand up, being a mushroom for so long. Now it felt a little strange to be human again. Suddenly his hand touched his face, and he groped all over. His nose, making him roll around and play with it. Come on, don't play anymore, it's dawn, we have to go to the village school. But suddenly he felt something wrong with his eyes. Or something, why did he see two pigs? He turned to look behind him for a better view, and called out to the pig. But the one with the petrified hand froze instantly. Oh my god, I just became a human and my nose is bleeding. And it's all because of who? who's the stranger or lying on the ground like this. The mushroom police have appeared to protect the eyes of viewers under the age of 16. We have to pull the cord to cover the sensitive parts to avoid being banned by parents from watching Miss Review's channel. Censored. That's it. We have to be careful to make movies for you to watch for a long time. At this moment, Frog is staring at the person lying on the ground, obviously a girl, but who is she? Frog slapped his face to wake himself up. Don't tell me I just became a human and am hallucinating. There was no one here last night. I vaguely remember my green light this morning, hitting the pink pig. Could this be the pig? The little girl on the ground opened her eyes and made a sound, making Frog turn away quickly. He quickly explained that he didn't see anything at all, and didn't know what had happened. The little girl jumped up as soon as she saw Frag, and called out, Mushroom. There was just something about her that wasn't the cute pink pig egg anymore. Her enormous size blocked the light, causing Frog to gasp, and when he turned around, he saw two rosy heads right in front of his eyes, quickly pressing against his face. It was a piglet's kiss, but it was so strange, Frag's face was pressed into two pig's heads. His face flushed as he tried not to look too much, but couldn't. Oh well, it's definitely my piglet, but the nosebleed has nothing to do with it. Normally when he saw this oh-so-cute face, Frog would reach out and touch it, but now he couldn't. He pushed the piglet away quickly, and now he raised his hands to pray to Buddha immediately. Calm down. Piglets are really cute and innocent. Why? Can I take advantage of them like a pervert? If I do that, can I still call myself a human? The system reported something small that he didn't notice, saying congratulations to the player for obtaining a new ability, the level 1 sage mode. Because at this moment, all his attention was focused on the piglet who kept pressing against him with its whole face. Over and over again, thankfully the sage mode helped him to calm down. Suddenly there was the sound of people talking outside. Did you see anything this morning? No but I heard that something happened at the village chief's house last night. The piglet was still hugging Frog tightly while he panicked and shouted, Let go, I can hear someone coming. He was immediately filled with panic, not to mention, whether he was a human or a monster at this point. If they come in and see the mess I've made here, I'll definitely be arrested and punished. Frog squinted at it, trying to call the piglet, but kept seeing scenes that he shouldn't have seen, causing him to spurt blood and fall backwards. Also because the level of the sage mode is temporarily too low, it can't block higher level stimuli. Frog reached into his storage and pulled out a cloak for himself and the piglet. The little girl's was a bit short, but it was better than nothing, because if she kept bulging like that, she would definitely be labeled a pervert if she was caught. Frog was having a headache thinking about how to face the people outside and how to get out of here now. The more he thought about it, the harder it became. Was there really no other way than to fight? Back with a spore eruption and escape in the chaos? But this place is so big, I have to release it with all my strength. He clenched his fists, stomped his feet, and pushed all his strength through the hole in his butt, but the spore eruption still came out, but it sounded like a weak fart. In the vast space, the fart sounded like it was sinking into the void, causing the piglet to tilt its head and ask what the hell he was doing. Frog was also very confused, what had happened to his abilities. He pushed the piglet aside and told it to stop making noise. Now is not the time to play. He gritted his teeth and tried again, spore eruption. But this time, it was just a slightly louder fart. Frog wondered in despair what was going on. Why had his skills disappeared? With no other choice, Frog shouted, Where is the colorful system? It replied immediately, Please accept our apologies, player, your abilities haven't disappeared. But because the human body is different from the mushroom, you have to relearn how to use them. Relearn? What do you mean? Frog asked in shock, Do you think I have time to relearn? The system replied patiently, If the system has been upgraded, the best way to adapt to the new body is to carry out the new mission completely. Is the player ready? Kill 10 monsters level 20 or above. Frog went crazy and shouted out, Do you know how to do anything other than give out missions? Everyone is here, 
who has time to do missions? The system remained calm and said, there is no need to get agitated. Player, I think we started wrong, so, let's start over, first give yourself a name. It popped out four letters for Frog to fill in, but he, looked up in frustration and took a deep breath to curse again. Is this stupid system deliberately ignoring me? I already said that there are people outside, I don't have time to do this. All the other systems try to make their players, stronger by cheating and giving them powerful skills. But look at you, all you know how to do is ask me for money. I want those super cheat skills. Suddenly it said something that made Frog freeze. But you've never given me any money. Then it changed back to the screen asking him to enter a name, leaving Frog speechless. He told it to forget it and become a human. Relying on himself is still the best plan. Frog didn't reply for a long time. So the system created a random name Zamor for him to accept or reject. He was so fed up that he clicked on the agree button, he could be called. Whatever the hell he wanted, just let me see the storage. Zamor searched every nook and cranny for something useful, hoping that anything would be useful as long as it was food. I don't know why this guy is complaining. There's only food and medicine here. And that thing, Zamor leaned his whole head into it to find what he needed. The system trembled and showed a face that looked constipated and whispered, Please be a little more polite, player. After you leveled up, I also gained human emotions and intelligence. Finally got hold of it, Zamor held it up excitedly. It was the return scroll. If it works, we'll be teleported back to the water tank. Zamor didn't care that the system was lying exhausted on the ground, because he was busy thinking about how the system had told him that monsters couldn't use the return scroll. Although I look like a human and am ranked just like a human, it still doesn't feel like I'm completely one. But there's no time to think about it now. The village chief's voice could already be heard in front, complaining that he had overslept last night and inviting everyone to come in. Well, he told himself to cast aside his doubts, there was no time to think too much now. The pig he was told to hold was very happy, Zamor picked up the item and activated the return scroll immediately, which lit up, losing 20 stamina points. The familiar magic circle appeared under his feet, and it lit up with grooves like water gradually rising. Zamor gritted his teeth, hoping it would work this time. The voices outside the library became clearer and clearer. Subler was laughing and saying that I overslept last night and didn't see anything strange. I still didn't feel myself being teleported away. Only the blue light got brighter and brighter, and even the system was surprised and called out. The magic circle was already very bright, and even the village chief's two furry legs had already appeared behind the curtain, but Zamor was still trying to start the teleportation. Old Subler the Green led a group of children in, repeating what he had said yesterday. You children must do exactly as I instruct you when you go inside. The blue light shone on Zamor's worried face. He saw old Subler open his mouth wide and shout, what the hell? But it wasn't him entering the system, but the scene of. The statue was broken, and the floor was covered with garbage. The place that used to be the teleportation array was now just a few flowers, and smoke on the ground, and the entrance to the system had disappeared. The children standing behind him were worried and whispering, don't tell me there was a thief last night. Village chief is the strongest in the area. No thief would dare to face him. But I heard that there was a bright light here last night. I wonder if it's related. He banged the head of his cane on the ground cleared his throat and said that it must be because too few people participated in the ritual, so the energy of the divine tree was too dense, causing a little chaos, no need to worry. Subler the Green told the children to go with him to the tree, I have been here for so many years, I've seen everything, nothing serious, just trust me, no matter what happens, the old man can handle it easily, that's because he hasn't seen the scene a little higher up, Subler's hair bun shot out of his head, his eyes bulged out and he shouted, what the hell is that? His goddess, from a tree carved in the shape of a young woman. Healthy clouds have now become a shriveled old woman. The children's eyes widened, and they screamed, Oh, my god tree, SOS why did you become a grandmother? The place that needed to be sucked had been sucked by Zamor. Now she was no different from the ghost crying in the legend, sending the leaves back to their source. The light outside was so bright to Zamor, everyone in the square just glanced at him when they saw someone suddenly appear and then left. Unin hugged him by the shoulders and looked around in surprise. The return scroll worked. Behind him was another young man who had also been summoned back to the city successfully and was pushing Unin out of the way. On the right, another pharmacist complained that he was being told by his superiors to come and replenish his medicine again. As expected of the teleportation point of the novice village, people kept appearing from this place. Zamor dared to breathe a sigh of relief, they had almost died. Unin wasn't here for the first time 
but he kept looking around curiously. It was as if the pink pig had just realized that it had become human. Its hooves now had five fingers for it to hold, so it went over and was very happy. This leg too, it was so good at keeping its balance, and it could even touch its two feet together. He bent down and put his fake hand on his leg to try it out, not knowing that he had. Missed a little bit behind, and the little friends who were not old enough to be self-conscious did not look. Frack was still thinking hard, the change from the body of a monster to the body of a human was too great. I can't use my skills and my steps are a bit chaotic, so I'll get used to this body first. At least with a human appearance, everything will be much easier and I will also be able to gather information about Gollum's followers much faster. Suddenly he heard the voices of the people around him, pulling him out of his concentration, he looked up and saw a lot of faces, so he looked in that direction. He found Un in below, not covering himself, rolling on the ground as a pink pig would normally do. As usual, Geomo's nosebleed was still flowing, but he still had to brace himself and shout, Oh my god, Un in, please. He tried to pull the little girl up, begging her to listen to him, but she wouldn't. She pouted and squatted down on the cold stone floor, behaving no differently from the usual un in. Gio Mo thought that he had no choice but to solve the basic needs first. When he heard him say that he would take him to buy some clothes and food, he excitedly stood up and ran after him. Normally, he wouldn't even spend a gold coin, but as soon as he stepped into the shop, he had already spent 150 coins, and when he went to the weapons shop, he spent another 200 coins. Un in, in human form, could easily hold objects. Gio Mo bought the items and looked at the cloth bag and muttered, I only have enough money left to eat and stay for a few days, so I need to find a way to make money, because life as a monster before was too simple. Suddenly, a familiar hand tugged at his clothes, Unin's eyes were filled with tears, and she pointed to the food stall on the other side, it was obvious that she wanted to eat. All right, we can use the rest of the money to buy food apart from the accommodation. Unin cheered happily, now she could say the word food, food. The bright moonlight shone down on the quiet novice village, inside. The inn, it was late at night, but Frack's room was still lit. Unin lay on the bed, nodding off like a pig, she had eaten her fill and was sleepy. Frack, the pervert, sat in front of a mirror made from a window, applying makeup, stroking his face endlessly. He pinched and pulled it all over, and finally smiled. Who would have thought that I would return to my previous appearance? And it's even more beautiful than before I was reincarnated. Jormor currently has 89 gold coins, the other items are still there, only the number of blood vials, and the stamina is only 6 and 1. Gel slam is 1 in 12 spots for the same branch of the god tree. Since when did I have this? Is it because the body used to decompose on the god tree? The system shows Jormor that thing, the attack point, only adds 1 and must use magic to charge. It simply says here that it is a branch of the god tree after being decomposed. It's annoying and there's not much information. Jormor decides to check it out another day. Understanding the body is the most important thing right now. He clicked on his attribute panel to see. Level 58 Mushroom Warrior, Manor and Vitality Points are both over 3000. Stamina is 42 out of 100. His attack points have reached 292 points. The other stats have increased but not by much. Most notably, the Mushroom Sip Head skill has reached level 10, the Spore Spray. Reached level 8, Decomposition and Mushroom Jet both reached level 4 and 3. Jormor was terribly annoyed, constantly moving his hand on the screen. To reload the information, asking the system if there was a mistake. Why did I suddenly go up more than 30 levels without feeling any stronger? He looked up at Un in, probably, close to his level to see if there was much difference? Unexpectedly, the system didn't answer, the whole room was silent. Oh my god, Frog was going crazy, he looked at the system earnestly, even if you don't give me back my ability, anymore, you have to tell me why I can't use it? The system answered this, turning from a monster. Mushroom into a mushroom warrior makes the body completely different. Your skills are activated and released in different ways. First you need to feel the magical power inside your body. Jormor recalled when he told the spore spray to erupt, and thought about it again. The system's sense of magic, I don't understand. That's right, although humans are not as sensitive to magic. As monsters, they have better control over magic. I recommend that you close your eyes and focus on feeling. The flow of magical power in your body. Jormor obediently did as every cell in his body. He realized the veins of magic flowing through his body. He grabbed that feeling turned on the identification mode, and read the level 47 pink pig with a bow, the amount of blood, up to 4388, 70% full, attack 686 is the most significant progress, the rest is not much different, but Jormor couldn't help but be surprised, now Unin has also reached, level 47, the two of us suddenly became so strong, ouch, 
Suddenly his head throbbed so badly that he had to hold his head, the pain got worse and worse, but it seemed that the system knew in advance and explained it immediately. Because humans have better control over magic, they have to consciously turn their skills on and off, otherwise consuming too much energy in the human body will make you tired. Right at the point where he needed to know, he interrupted, Jormor had to ask again what was wrong. It threw out exactly one word, dead, then left me alone, joking, haha, at most you, will love to lose consciousness because I learned how to joke with the new update. What's so funny about joking with a cat? Jormor scolded the system as usual, the streets of the village. The novice was getting emptier and emptier as the night went on, with only a few windows still lit. In the empty alleys, there was always the soft sound of drunkards, especially those who had lost. Defeated and cursed, it was annoying why all those high-level warriors came to the novice village. The man trampled something under his feet, making the curse even stronger. Deeper, my mother said, which idiot pissed here, my father will skin you. Although drunk, he still knew what was dirty and disgusting, so he looked down and found that it was not urine. Something stepped on his eyes and made him go crazy, his legs kicked up. What the hell is this? Go to hell. The snail with two eyes oozing with a black, ink-like liquid stared at the name. Drunk and suddenly opened its mouth full of sharp fangs. Wait until the tip of the shoe is down, and throw out all that black goo and wrap it tightly. The guy lost his balance and fell on his ass on the brick floor, trembling and asking what the hell is this, you damn freak, you dare to bite me. The guy reached out to pick it up, but unexpectedly it jumped over and wrapped around his hand, growing countless small teeth, sharp but surprisingly sharp, robbing his hand and making him grimace, trying to retreat but failing. As hell, robbing him of his hand, making him grimace in pain, trying to back away but couldn't. The thing gradually moved up to his neck, and he sobered up, stuttering, someone, someone save me. The thing covered his mouth and nose, and even his eyes, blocking out his screams. And soon the man's shadow fell strangely behind him. The empty bottle in his hand rolled around, and a moment later, nothing could be seen but a long, dark streak of blood. It seems that tonight, something dangerous has appeared in the novice village. The villainous slime crawled through the crack in the door and up the stairs, quickly reaching the wooden corridor of the inn. At this point, the snail looked up at the door, a room from which it was sure. The energy of the divine tree was emanating, and slowly crawled inside through the crack in the door. Finally, I found you. The slime pushed into the room, and the snail's eyes bulged out as it stared, at the two men who were not sleeping in bed, but sitting on the floor with their mouths open. Its eye sockets kept dripping that thick liquid, and it muttered, it's you. And I don't know which one of you two is it. The snail just stood there staring and ranting, you, are the one who wasted so many years of my efforts. Oh my. This eye looks familiar, it turns out that this disgusting snail, is the incarnation of the green broccoli looking for the culprit. Another beautiful morning rises on the roof of the novice village, as the morning sun appears on the, roofs, shining into the windows, the temperature in the room rises but the two of them still snore. I don't know why the snail is standing on the other side, lewdly staring at Domo and Un in. He tried to step forward, but couldn't, just like a vampire. Being exposed to the sun, the green broccoli's hatred rose in his heart. I must be the first to get the power of Gallum, you will pay the price. He squeezed the snail shell in his hand, making it creak, but, could not attack Domo on the other side for the time being because of the sunlight. Un in and Domo slept soundly neither of them knowing that their lives were being threatened. The snail disappeared, and the green broccoli thought, you think you're lucky this time. That drooling face, I've remembered it well, and I will never forget it. In Domo's dream, he saw the pink pig still as the stupid downer. As soon as it was called by the mushroom, it stood up and pulled down the zipper behind it, from which stepped, a gray leg that looked out of place with Unin's cute pink skin. Green broccoli appeared with sparkling eyes, completely undressing, fondling the pink pig and saying to him, I've found you. No, please don't. Domo screamed in horror, his face pale. Without a drop of blood, vaguely realizing that it was all just a dream. Un in in human form was awakened by him, not. The green broccoli, Domo finally dared to breathe a sigh of relief. Damn, you scared me to death, what a weird nightmare. He stretched his shoulders and felt better, so he stood up, and called Un in to go with him to do the task. The sound of a train blowing smoke was loud and clear, and the train moved on. On the tracks, just as the window reported that the novice task was completed, this time the task was to board the train, receive 300 experience points, and then go to Granite Mountain to get 420 points. This time there was no need to hold an apple in front of her nose just because Unin couldn't grab it. Anymore, the little girl just put it straight into her mouth and bit down, holding a dozen more in her arms. Domo muttered as he walked beside her, 
this must be the last novice task. The experience points are too low to be worth anything, but there are many things that I understand more about society. People through the novice tasks. The first is the beautiful monster charm from level 20, helping me and Un and get used to the human body. Next is the task of receiving three bonus tasks at the inn, from which I understand more about the life of a warrior, and also being rewarded with the skill of smelling danger. And the most recent one is the task of moving by any means, and then leading both of them to Granite Mountain. One of the three tasks received at the inn is to destroy the tree cup monster that the enemy came to Granite Mountain. The level 18 tree cup monster here also has basic information like the one Domo had met before, and this nearby quest was just to kill a few of them. He was experienced, so he didn't see this as a problem for him. But Domo didn't understand much, the caption said that the tree cup monster was in dark and humid places, this place didn't look like one at all. Since entering this barren area, I haven't met any, don't tell me the hardest part of this quest is finding those tree cup monsters. The system didn't answer again, Domo just sighed and muttered. This bonus quest is even harder than the one the system gave me. Now he doesn't even know how to complete it, but we need money or we won't be able to buy food for Un In. He was so engrossed in the conversation that he didn't notice the rustling on the ground. Domo's footsteps stopped, and the tree root stopped too. Before he could figure it out, the system warned that an enemy had been detected. As he turned his head, he was startled to see some dry tree stumps, waving wildly, like a motion statue caught in the act. Un and bit down on the apple without letting go, alert to the full force of don't touch my food. Domo prepared to draw his sword, telling Un in to get ready to fight. She only prepared with two words, fruit, mine. Domo's eyes lit up with the identification skill, in front of him was a level 35 tree stump monster much larger than the level 18 one illustrated in the textbook below. It growled fiercely, making Domo shudder. Why is this one so much bigger than the ones we've seen before? The friendly system warned the player that this is a world with its own unique ecosystem. Naturally, monsters in different places will learn to adapt and evolve into different forms. I see. Domo touched the sword on his back again. Un in and I can handle these guys anyway. Hey pig, I'll leave the ones behind to you. I'll take care of the two in front. But she was busy putting her precious apples down at the base of a tree. Not forgetting to tell them to wait a moment for Un in to return. So the tense situation on the battlefield had to stop for about 5 seconds. Domo and the system were fine. But the two tree spirits were furious. How dare they look down on us. Not at all. Un and gripped her axe tightly, and suddenly charged towards the tree spirits, swinging it like a lumberjack, smashing them to pieces before their eyes. She slammed into the ground with a bang, and the two tree spirits were reduced to a pile of lifeless wood before Un and stopped. The little girl didn't care about the stream of experience points running into her behind, but her stomach was growling again. Was she hungry again? Domo watched intently. The piglet's strength was amazing. Good job. Behind him, a tree root stretched out far, transforming into the shape of the young man's broken, jagged axe. But he judged it to be too slow, just a slight hilt of the head and he dodged it with ease. Jumping three steps one, Domo then shifted to a headbutt, which was extremely comfortable to pull off. Since using this human form, the headbutt has become a source of great strength for the figure's legs. With his hands clasped tightly around the sword, Domo smiled confidently, with the speed. Increased so much like this, I can totally pull off a new move. Moving in a zigzag pattern, Performing the mushroom sword dance, Domo's single punch could cut the mushrooms into several pieces that fell to the ground, easily pocketing the experience points. The ground was still covered with crawling tree roots, but none of them could get past. Domo, he smiled, isn't this what they call wave tactics? The trees moved closer together, moving slowly but trying to pretend they weren't moving at all. He tilted his head and said to them, if you guys would just jump around, I'd be less bored. Putting out his hand with the seal on it, Domo began to gather magic. The palm of his hand lit up, and a smile spread across his lips because what could he do? These guys were made of wood, weren't they just too convenient for him? Spores erupted, from Domo's hand came a thick circle of smoke, and two more smoke bombs flew out of it and straight into the group of tree stumps, causing them to explode with a bang. The monsters frowned as if trying to cough out all that smoke, suddenly realizing that their bodies were covered in countless tiny mushrooms that were itchy and draining their life force terribly. 50 points at a time made them grow larger, and the larger they grew, the more life force they drained. Gradually the trees rolled over and died. Domo clapped his hands, completing the task very neatly without much effort. Glancing over at Un In, Domo called out to the piglet, are you done over there? The little girl raised her hand, to wipe her sweaty forehead, 
breathing a sigh of relief, leaving the logs behind to answer the question. It's good that you're done, now let's go deliver this stuff and celebrate. Domo was excited, when suddenly a window popped up warning of danger, causing his arm to freeze in midair. Something huge suddenly stood up over Unin's head, Domo shouted. Behind you, the little girl turned around immediately but saw nothing dangerous. The tree trunk was stupid and then dragged its roots to Unin's feet and touched them. But they should be dead by now. Domo looked confused, and looked around, don't tell me these guys can come back to life like mushrooms too. Scanning it, Domo felt a little more relieved when the monster's life force was zero and it was lying on the ground. But they were really stupid, the tree roots twisted together, soon gathering into a mixed tree full of dead monsters. The apples that Un-In had left at the base of the tree also spread like wildfire, the little girl was about to chase after them, when suddenly a root wrapped itself around the fruit. The thing in front of her opened its mouth and smoke billowed out, then, it opened its mouth wide and roared a roar of defiance in front of Un-In. It was now a level 60 old tree spirit, its scream turned the wind, into a gale, causing Unin's mouth to open wide in resistance. Domo winced, waiting for it to snap out of it, and ask what the hell it was. The system quickly responded, that's evolution, my friend. A monster, a giant haunted tree stump had to absorb all of its kind and evolve. Unin didn't bother to figure out which one it was that had jumped, up and swung her tongue to avenge her apples. Domo screamed, it's a level 60 monster, but she, was faster, her tongue darted into the tree trunk like a dart into a rock. It flew out in pieces, but it drove the monster crazy, Peanut. It reached out a vine and wrapped it around Unin's leg, pulling her over to the side. When the little girl didn't understand, a vine wrapped around her and pulled Unin back into Domo's arms. The little girl gratefully called out Mushroom for less than a second. When the sword on his back shattered, his little legs couldn't take it anymore. Trembling violently and then without any pity he threw the pig away, shouting, it's too heavy. Un In was thrown to the ground without any expression and then jumped up to hug Domo happily, calling out mushroom, and mushroom. So the two of them hugged each other, completely ignoring the newly evolved tree behind them, which made it very angry. The danger warning sounded, and Domo turned back with Un In, telling her to watch out, there's more coming. Suddenly, there was a rustling sound in the leaves, and the fruit. The apples were shriveled up right before Unin's eyes by the monster tree's nutrient absorption skill, and the little girl screamed, oh my god, my fruit. She only noticed that when the monster tree turned giant and took on a fearsome form, she didn't care. Domo had to call out to her, calm down. Piglet, we have to run. But Unin's hand tightened with each apple the tree sucked up and withered. Finally, she couldn't bear it anymore and rushed over to the tree, shouting, the piglet's fruit, no. Her legs kicked, and the little girl flew up to the level of the guardian, and they smiled at her with a smile on their lips. Now with fists ready, the tree monster met Unin's fist with a deafening roar. Domo quickly covered his face to avoid the debris, and before he knew it, he heard the little girl grunt in pain her back hitting a nearby tree stump. I thought, I could use my mobility to trick that stupid tree, but who would have thought it would have a second form? The weapon was broken, and even with Unin's frenzied attack power, she couldn't close. The level gap. I need to run away, but I can't run away with the piglet. No, Domo's hand quickly gathered a ball, remembering that he still had an attribute that could counter it. That's the spore eruption. He pushed the cluster of smoke towards the monster, causing it to explode in a blinding flash, and from its body, small mushrooms began to grow on its head, soon covering both shoulders and chest of the monster. That smoke had drained a lot of Domo's energy, and he gritted his teeth and waited. Surprise, surprise, the old woman, the crow. This one had a bark stripping move. It resolutely squeezed the outer skin and threw it away, running towards Domo to pick up his mother. Oh my god, how could it do something so difficult? He reached into his storage bag immediately, now there was no choice, other than to fight. The only weapon he could use that he could think of was this divine tree branch. Domo jumped up with his new weapon in hand, using it like a sword, Dak. Many consecutive lines with the mushroom sword dance technique on this huge monster. As soon as he landed, Domo looked up in surprise, the monster tree was still, exactly the same, not a single scratch. Behind the monster, the bark began to twist together and rise, high, and suddenly it sprang out two strong arms that looked exactly like a human's. Domo was like, okay, I'm dead. This monster not only has two arms, it also has two. More arms growing back together, 
so fast that Domo realized with dismay that he was too slow. It landed that punch straight down on Domo's small body, and he coughed up blood. Ugh. A sound and then fell down on the ground below, cracking it in one piece. That punch cost Domo 800 health points, but he managed to pull Un in back to reality before his eyes. His teammate was beaten up because of his own negligence. The little girl was furious. Touch my mushroom and you're dead. Un in rushed to the monster, ignoring Domo's panic to call her back. Jumping up, now only Un in was facing the monster. This one. It bared its two new arms to grab it, but the little girl wouldn't let it. She gritted her teeth put all her strength into her piglet punch, and shouted, out loud, who let you hurt my mushroom? The monster was instantly frozen stiff. I couldn't believe that she looked so small but punched like a pig, so she twisted, her arms together into a stake to block the attack. Unexpectedly, the piglet punch was so powerful that it twisted so hard that the four arms cracked and bled, profusely, spreading down from the neck to the head of the monster, and several cracks appeared on its face. Suddenly, the place where it was standing exploded with a loud bang, and the cloud turned into a shape of a strange monster. Its brightness was so painful to the eyes that Domo had to raise his hand to cover his face. As the smoke cleared, he saw a horrifying sight, his lovely un in, standing firmly in the smoke, as if the punch just now had no effect on her at all. In the midst of the smoke, un in's breathing sounded heavy. She was sweating as if she had just taken a bath, and then she fell back. Fortunately Domo ran up to support her in time. However, she was too heavy, and the pressure on his face was too much. Un in lay on his legs, motionless, which scared Domo to death, and he shook the little girl, trying to ask her if she was okay. Suddenly, there was a boom, and the pink smoke dissipated everywhere. A round pig butt appeared, making Domo dumbfounded. Oh, a pink pig with a bow, it closed its eyes and slept on the human's legs, its mouth groaning in misery. It seemed that Un in didn't know that she had returned to her monster form. From a little girl with a beautiful soul, she transformed back into a chubby pink pig. No wonder Domo was shocked, but what could he do? It was all because that evil monster had sucked her apples dry. Somewhere in the stormy meadow, a few wooden houses built on a stone temple were filled with the sound of people talking, excitedly. Recently, the One-Eyed Harmony Society has been expanding rapidly, and we even have the opportunity to be admitted to the society. Why do you want to live in that terrible volcano? It's too hot. And dangerous. And did you hear that? The Sword Saint Society has started to act again. There were people in the tavern talking loudly, and there were also people snoring in the corner as if they didn't care. Suddenly, the door of the tavern was opened from the outside, and Un in walked in with Domo's headgear. He breathed a sigh of relief, glad that he had returned safely, and then went straight to the counter, where the innkeeper, Mr. Ponter, was wiping the glasses and greeted him with a hearty welcome, brave warrior, would you like a drink or to see the bounty quests? Putting the heavy bag on the table, Domo said I came here to complete the bounty request. Reward. With a glance, Ponter reached out and pulled the string to reveal the face of the monster tree from within. He laughed heartily. I didn't expect to see the old tree spirit here. I'll give you your reward. Right now. He took the big bag and put a smaller bag in Domo's hand, saying this is your reward. The interior lit up with a few gold coins, and he asked in surprise, is the bonus so high? Ponter laughed and said, the spirit of. The old tree has been on the bounty list for a while so your reward has been tripled. The people who were drinking heard him, and turned their surprised eyes to the young boy. There was no way that kid could have killed. The spirit of the old tree. I bet he must have rich parents who hired high-level people to protect and fight for him. Domo laughed falsely, and asked if there were any other bonus quests that he could take. Ponter laughed, and said of course there are. He snapped his fingers, and a mysterious-looking scroll appeared. On it were written the location of the castle, the time, and two quests. One was to find the runaway doll, level B, and the other was to befriend the princess, level C. The next location was in the sunken world, with three quests. One was to stop the ocean chill from wreaking havoc, level B. Below that were two level C quests, including clearing the ice flows and fishing with a machine. The third location was in the stormy meadow, with two level A quests, to arrest the criminal duo and to investigate the monsters that had invaded the city. He asked in surprise, are there only level A quests left in this place? The owner nodded, the low level bounty quests are often completed shortly after they are posted. I suggest you take on the quest to arrest the two criminals. Many guilds and bounty hunters have tried, so it's very easy to find a team for yourself. Although the reward will be less, it is also safer because everyone shares the risk. Now that you can defeat the spirit of the old tree, you are strong enough to complete the level a quest. Domo pondered, forming a team, this is something new. 
If he or the piglet were to run outside in monster form, on the contrary, they might become the target of the bounties. But if he could get closer to those at higher levels, he might be able to find clues about Gallum's whereabouts. His eyes glanced at the quest text, arrest the criminal duo. Domo said hesitantly that he would take this quest. Hunter confirmed immediately, there are a few other warriors who have also accepted the same quest as you. Would you like me to help you form a group? He left, waving his hand slightly to say thank you, but he was used to doing things alone. Are you sure? Although this quest is currently level. A. The difficulty could increase at any time. Domo walked out of the tavern and said, It'll be fine, thanks again, innkeeper. The gossipers in the tavern changed the subject immediately. That little brat really thinks he can complete the quest by himself? More than 30 victims have died while doing that bounty quest. I think he'll be the next one to die. The murmur reached the ears of a man who was lying down with his feet on the table, snoring loudly, but it was clear that he was already awake. Lifting his cowboy hat and smoke with his eyes full of interest, he watched Domo give an apple to Un in as a reward. When we get to the station, I'll buy you something else to eat. Now leaving the bear inn, Domo carried Un in across the barren land, through the dry boulders, but his pace slowed down gradually, and he asked Un in in a low voice. Hey, do you feel like we're being followed? But this is the way to the station, is it possible that I'm just imagining things? Un in oinked a few times in response, as she was busy gnawing on the apple. Domo called up the useless system again. You still dare to say that you've been upgraded? Why don't you give me some clues about the location of Gallum Station? It pretended to ignore him, and said vaguely that you should just do the quests you've received. Of course, course, fate will lead you to the clues, haven't you? Already met one of Gallum's followers in the Mushroom Kingdom? Recall the thing under that mushroom hat. Domo asked immediately, are Gallum's followers monsters or humans? What level are they? It replied that there are both humans and monsters among them. I'm not God. How would I know who they all are? But I can guarantee that even the weakest of them is at least level 100. Domo was so startled that he knocked Unin's apple away, and she got angry and tried to grab it with her hands and feet. But she couldn't catch it, and she kept oinking while this mushroom kept mumbling. I thought that once I reached level 60, I and the piglet could fight them together. But if the weakest one is level 100, when will I be able to complete it? Well, there is another way, the system lit up. A glimmer of hope for Domo to stop and look immediately. The rebirth of the demon Lord Gallum requires the release of all six pieces of his seal. You can prevent the rebirth if you can find a piece and destroy it without opening Gallum's seal. Domo's footsteps slowed down as he tried to digest the information he had received. So the system means that I don't need to fight Gallum's followers, but to get rid of one of the six pieces of the seal? So can you tell me where the piece is? Of course the system said it didn't know. Domo unceremoniously stuck his hand into the screen and rummaged around, making it groan with shame. What are you doing? Domo smiled slyly and asked the system while holding the money bag in front of it. I know the rules. You like money, right? How much do you want? Showed a few words gently to him and then quickly replied that it had been upgraded and was no longer interested in money and such nonsense. Furthermore, I really don't know where they are. I can only say that the original six warriors who sealed Gallum all sealed him in an area with the highest energy. Could you be more specific? Domo nagged. Do you know how big each area is? Just as he was about to scold the useless system, it displayed a dangerous warning that made both Domo and Un in immediately alert. He stopped short when he found out that the three people in front of him were strangers, and it was obvious that they had no good intentions. The one in the middle said mockingly, young man, please, stop for a moment, we just want to talk. He routinely scanned them with his identification beam, and heard that the fat guy was level 49 a poisonous herbalist archer, who must be very tired from earning gold coins by killing the spirits of old trees, right? The blonde guy was level 56, a poisonous swordsman, who didn't say anything but also drew his sword. Mako in the middle is a level 63 poison master, he pouted his blue lips and explained, I am the vice president of the Deadly Kiss Club, and I would like to invite you to join our club. I hope you will not refuse. Domo frowned, compared to monsters, the most dangerous creatures are those with depraved morals. I can handle the other two, but the level of the leader is too high. He threw the bag of gold and threw it to the side, I must politely decline your invitation, and I will give you the gold. I don't want any trouble. The fat man smiled smugly, if you want the elephant, you must leave the pig there, and we will pretend that nothing happened. Dream on, you dog. Domo roared as one of them disappeared on the spot. The blonde man jumped up fiercely and growled, we have given you a chance, you fool, go to hell. The tip of her sword swirled with the poisonous circular blade skill, 
but with just one light swing of his hand, Domo easily deflected the move while holding Un in. Looking at the thing in his hand, she was surprised and couldn't believe it was a branch. Domo tensed his leg muscles and kicked her in the stomach with a headbutt, which made her groan in pain and fly up to a nearby guava tree. Perched in the tree, she said hatefully to her two accomplices, I want this brat dead. The fat man immediately raised his hand with the man with the snake's mouth open, and fired three green pythons that looked like they wanted to stay away. Domo immediately turned on the sage mode, and the spores erupted, and behind him a cloud of smoke came out and his feet jumped straight forward, onto the middle of the three pythons. As Domo passed them, the sage mode had increased to level 4. He continued to hold the pink pig and rushed towards the belly of the fat man. When he got close enough, Domo threw another headbutt kick into the belly of this guy, and his mouth broke into a victorious smile when he saw the guy vomit blood, and his body flew out and stuck to the rock behind him. He was so tall that he could block the ground, and he still held Un in tightly because he was dizzy and his eyes were rolling. The vice president of the club smiled, not bad, huh? Before he finished speaking, Domo had already put his hand down activated the spore mushroom and sprayed it directly into his face, and then seized the opportunity to run away. Who said that talking too much would only take off the clothes? He really thought that he would stand still and wait for him to jump again. Suddenly, Domo's leg was grabbed by something, and as soon as he looked down, he was slammed into the rock wall not far away. He slid down the iron railing several times, and Domo gritted his teeth and watched the vice president of the club walk towards him with a smile. You little bastard, did your parents ever teach you not to interrupt when someone is talking? The thing that grabbed Domo's ankle. There are two assistants here, he can crow as much as he wants. Shooting with spores is an interesting trick, but it's useless to me. Suddenly, a blue sword light flashed past each other, and the blonde woman had landed and attacked, causing Domo to shrink back. Dodged in a hurry, her slash carried poison, and it corroded the tree trunk as it passed through, making his face grimace with worry. The woman smiled and tightened the evil green sword in her hand. It was enhanced with the ability to poison with an attack power of 89, made from the teeth of a poisonous beast, with a highly acidic poison that could melt stone. The big snake mouth sang loudly and rushed towards Domo as he was distracted. He hugged Un in and ran parallel, waving the branch continuously to drive them away. Unexpectedly, the pig's leg was wrapped around by the toad's tongue, and Domo braked sharply and watched as Un in was dragged away. It dangled in front of the toad's belly, and the vice president of the club added, it seems that our baby likes this ribbon pig. Domo's fist clenched, his eyes lit up with anger, and he pointed to the open area ahead, I warn you, let it go now. The divine branch in his hand suddenly lit up, but no one noticed. The vice president curled his lips and smiled mockingly, or else what? What can you do to me? Suddenly, suddenly, a strange object stabbed the toad in the stomach, cutting off its tongue and causing it to collapse on both legs. Un In was caught by a hand across the chest, and the other man calmly landed as the toad fell, and brought it back to Domo and told him to let the crowd, I'll take care of it. He was happy to have Un In in his arms, and when he saw that it was okay, he thanked the man for his help. But who is this cowboy? The atmosphere in the Deadly Kiss Club became heavy when they saw that the deputy leader's monster was killed in just one move, and the furious guy clenched his fists and also wanted to know who this virtuoso was. He lifted his hat, tilted his head and replied, I'm just a man who happened to be passing by. Domo didn't care about either side, he grabbed his money bag and ran away. Anyway, he said he would take care of it, so I'll just say goodbye first. Seeing the prey running away, the vice president of the club roared, Do you know who my father is? It's the kiss of the poisonous snake combined with the fire poison eye. The old man gently lit a cigar and said in a flat voice, Oh, I know who you are. I also know all the warriors you guys robbed and killed. The judgment of flames has just fallen, and the last sentence has also sounded, so as an ally of justice, I will sentence you to death. The moon hung high in the starry sky casting a soft light on the familiar inn. In the simple room, Domo was lying on the bed with Un In. Un In was lying in the room. He stared at the chandelier and thought, the internal situation of the continent of warriors is becoming more complicated than I thought. If I hadn't met that cowboy just now, I probably wouldn't have been able to leave in one piece. I thought I had become much stronger since reaching level 57, but when compared to real experts, I'm not even close. Glancing at Un In, who was already very drunk, 
Domo remembered that he once wanted to level up quickly to prevent Gallum from being reborn and returning to Earth, but now he takes that as his life goal. Rubbing Unin's round head, he remembered that this little girl had used up all her magic to protect him. Today, I almost lost her, I need to be stronger to protect the little pig. This little guy didn't think as much as Domo, he fell into a sleeping dream to breathe out a bubble, turn over on the mattress with delight, and then snore. He got out of bed and called the system to show his soul and ask questions. As soon as he saw the window, Domo put his hand straight into the beak and ignored the sound of it screaming like a ghost and pulled out the divine branch. I almost forgot one thing, that is, this branch seems to be, has changed a little after being injected with energy. Opening the information panel of this thing, Domo's eyes went to the line, use, magic to charge, and then thought that why don't I do it often. Now holding the branch, as soon as he dropped the magic into it, it lit up and scared Domo so much that he screamed. It glows like this, and its energy is also decreasing like crazy. Holding onto it, Domo quickly called the system, out, and asked it to get all the energy potions in the warehouse for him. The remaining amount was rapidly reduced for Domo to gulp down, until, this branch was so bright that he could hardly see its outline anymore. Un and just moved a little and scratched her butt, not knowing that her favorite mushroom, struggling, exchanging physical points to increase the brightness of this branch. Suddenly, there was a very small pop-pop sound, and Domo saw something growing out of the branch. One, two, three, and then seventy. In a moment, a strong light passed through the window and shot out, as if a fairy had just landed here. Congratulations to the player for successfully connecting to the branch of the divine tree. Now it has become the sword of the mushroom. It is a type with an extremely long pointed tip, decorated with a mushroom cap on the handle. Domo was very happy, but he was so tired just now, his cheeks were so thin that he could only smile once, and then he dropped. The branch to the floor, fell on the bed and slept until dawn. The sun was shining on his face, but Domo was still mistaken. Give me another five minutes, okay? He pushed his face away, and asked vaguely, is it morning? What caught his eye was not a pink pig with a bow, but a naked girl lying Lying in the morning sun. The boy was stunned for a minute and a half, the fatigue he had pushed away, was not the pig's head, but one of the three heads of the monster. The sage mode has been upgraded from level 4 to 5, but it also, could not stop his nosebleed at this moment. So after a while, the two of them packed up and prepared to leave the inn, and suddenly a voice came from beside them, I didn't expect you to have teammates so quickly. It was the cowboy from yesterday, smoking a cigarette again, and asked if he could find a quiet place to talk. Zormo's eyes fell on something he was wearing on his side. That badge, I don't recognize it. But the old man thought he knew it, so he picked it up and said that I was a member of the Holy Sanctuary Society, one of the six societies at the top of the continent of warriors. I am following the orders of the saint to patrol this area and protect the security. Zormo was much more serious, and thanked him for protecting him yesterday. But the reason for finding him today needs to be asked again. Because this person has reached level 73, not only did he help me yesterday, but also came to find me early this morning. What is the purpose? The cowboy put the badge back on his chest, saying that protecting the peace of the continent of warriors is our mission, so you don't need to thank me. He kicked his feet, lit a match on it, very romantic, and then put the fire on the cigarette on his lips. I'll be honest, I want to cooperate with you to hunt down the criminal duo. Zormo looked up in surprise, you are so strong. I don't need my help, why choose me? He took a puff of smoke, it's simple, I want to protect you because of your pure heart. Zormo didn't understand what he meant, but Unin was hanging on. His neck seemed to understand, his face was happy and confused, mushroom, mushroom. The cowboy put down his cigarette, smiled shyly, and then, his pupils lit up, activating the pure judgment mode. A few gentle diagonal lines meandered around him and un in. But they didn't cut anything, they were just like ribbons of light. A moment later, the number 80 appeared above Zormo's head, but he didn't know it, he was just worried that the other person seemed to be using the identity, so would his monster identity be revealed? Don't be surprised, although my pure judgment is not as good as the wise look that the saint has, but it can still determine the purity of the heart within a person. In order to select those who will prevent an impending catastrophe, the saint asked me to find those with pure hearts. After two months of wandering, you are the first person to meet all the requirements. Unexpectedly, the number 100 appeared on Unin's head, making him stiff and fly away the cigarette. What the fuck, 100 points. The two of them looked at the cowboy's strange expression and felt very annoyed. He knew he was being rude, pulled his hat down to cover his face, and tried to explain that this was the first time I met someone with maximum purity other than the saints. It's so ugly that I can't be cool anymore. John Merchard said, 
I really don't understand what you've been talking about, but if you mean to protect us because of our purity, hi, then we have the right to refuse, right? He also calmly told me that I know you still doubt me, but if you want to catch the pair of criminals, working with me will be more efficient and increase the level of safety. The two of them pulled each other to a corner to discuss and explain, while on, in didn't care taking a branch and scratching the ground to play by himself. Even the ants crawling on the branches made the little one happy. Although I am confident enough to fight them head on, I still need a teammate. Reliable to support because we are venturing into their territory. Breaking the cigarette butt, the cowboy continued, the sacred sanctuary is a place that supports justice, and we. I only accept those with pure hearts, which is why I want to go with you too. What I mean is, are you confident enough that you can beat, defeat the criminal duo right on their own turf? He's right, but because I'm curious about why the criminal duo is sneaking around. Now they choose to return to the ruins of the mushroom monster to be cordoned off so easily. The cowboy replied because their power was at its peak there. After the mushroom kingdom was destroyed, the ruins of the mushroom ancestors were found there. There is just no mushroom king there anymore. No one really cares what others will do. What on that land? The criminal duo occupied it and turned it into their territory. Not to let people cordon off, but to lure others into their traps. It is said that anyone who enters will be surrounded in a strange way. One uses a gun, the other uses a sword, and they have killed so many people that they are known as the assassin duo. So I think they not only set traps but also plan their own escape routes. So this is not a task that one person can do. In the name of justice, let's take them down together. The reason I want to team up with you is not because you are strong, but because of your purity. Of heart, so I'm not afraid of being stabbed in the back. It sounds convincing, but Zamor feels something is wrong. Suddenly, the big hand stretched out, made him jump. The cowboy smiled with great authority, using the skill of righteous persuasion. Trust me, boy. The sacred sanctuary is an ally of justice, and we only fight for justice. You want to take the treasure, whatever is in that ruin. I just want to stop the duo from doing harm. So lend me your strength. Zamor opened his eyes wide, feeling the sun of truth shining through his heart. Well, this uncle must not be bad, because he has helped me a lot. Moreover, it's true that I would be safer with a strong person. Although the identity is a bit sensitive, it should be fine if I keep it a secret. Okay, Zamor took his hand and took care of him. He smiled professionally. Sure, my job is to make things right as they should be. Once we defeat the assassin duo, I will report your achievements to the saints. Han Yu rarely introduces himself as Zamor, the bonus will be calculated later, now focus on the task. We can't waste any more time, let's get going. What way? The cowboy said he didn't need it. I don't know where he got a roll of paper, threw it high into the sky, then pulled out a strange antique patterned pistol, aimed it at it and fired a shot, blowing the roll of paper to smithereens. Before the astonished eyes of the two, the cowboy muttered a spell. Go to the ruins of the mushroom ancestors. From the roll of paper facing down the translation cage, brighter than the future of the hedge, Zamor saw his body light up and was about to be taken away, and couldn't help but stop and scream. The cowboy carefully explained that this is a teleportation scroll, which instantly takes us to any previously marked location. The cage glowed brightly, and the group disappeared into it, soon to appear in the ruined mushroom kingdom. This place has been abandoned for a long time. The soil is a dry brown. Suddenly a light flashed in the sky and a large green circle appeared. Everyone's feet were discovered first, then they gradually went up and disappeared when the group appeared complete. So we're here, Un and hugged Zamor with caution, while he was very excited to experience. Experience this super convenient item. This teleportation scroll is more advanced than the city return scroll. The cowboy laughed and said, there might be even more valuable items in this ancestral ruin. Thinking of the scene of himself wearing a crown with a throne made of gold, Zamor was so happy that he drooled. At the riverbank, there was already a group of people in combat suits appearing in front of their group, the cowboy pointed, down to an area, saying that the ancestral ruins were over there which was also where the crowds of people were flocking to. It is a gate that cuts across the river into a dry riverbed, because Zamor's group came on the cliff, so they had to jump down from there. The cowboy led the way, calmly walking through the crowd that parted ways because the badge of the sacred sanctuary on his body was too sharp. Everyone recognized that they were from one of the six most powerful guilds. The crowd was buzzing with excitement. What they were doing here, but they were all cautious and wary, including Un In and Zamor behind. A curly-haired blonde whispered to the spiky-haired one, this is a good opportunity to follow them and avoid danger. All kinds of expressions fell into Zamor's hands, he knew it was all thanks to the badge the uncle was wearing, 
proving that the reputation of the sacred sanctuary was not to be trifled with. Suddenly he was in a good mood, and I started to feel more confident about the chances of getting the reward for this mission. When he arrived at the gate leading in, the cowboy found it strange and turned to ask everyone why they didn't enter. A person standing nearby said that it was not that they didn't want to enter, but that no one could enter. He took a sip of his cigarette and pondered, there was no fence, no magic barrier. It's not like the last time I came here to sweep the place, un and didn't care about worldly affairs, just feed it. Zamor's footsteps splashed through the water, like a curious person looking at the barrier on the blue gate, silently speculating like the uncle. Suddenly someone shouted, get out of the way making him turn around and see a big guy carrying a huge sack of goods walking over to the drawbridge. What a bunch of useless weaklings, let me smash this gate with my hammer and show you. Zamor dodged out of the way for Brother Zai to show off. Don't forget to whisper to Un in to remember not to mess with this kind of thing, just avoid it if you meet it. The cowboy also stepped aside, making way for Brother Zai to use his muscle enhancement skill. He opened his overcooked beef lips and roared, this damn gate, watch me smash you with my hammer. The giant hammer slammed into the gate head on, the force from it splashing the river under his feet with a loud roar. The gate did shake violently, and stones began to fall from above, making him laugh with glee. I told you, there's nothing that one of my attacks can't do. The crowd was so brave that they couldn't deny that brother Zai was too strong. However, the gate only smoked a little more, causing the sycophants to change their expressions immediately. No matter how strong you are, it's useless, I can do that too. His head was full of tendons, veins, the big guy turned around and asked sternly, if you can do it, why don't you try to break it? Oh, what are you talking about, big brother, we don't know. Just now, who told me to give me blood? A bunch of useless people. The cowboy lit another cigarette and said in a low voice, let me try. Looking at his height, which was not even up to his armpits, the meaty guy looked down on him and said, do you want to break it with your strength? Even I can't break it. But his style was not to say much, just tell him to step aside. The other guy glanced down at the cowboy and sized him up. Although he couldn't see his face, he saw the seven star badge. So he laughed and asked, I understand. You're from a big guild, so you like to show off, right? The cowboy ignored him completely, ignoring the other guy and walking towards the gate, which made him very angry and panting like a cow. Humph, I have. I've seen countless weaklings like this guy bragging everywhere with their guild names, and they don't put anyone in their eyes. The anger pushed his huge body up, and the other guy charged like a buffalo, splashing water all over the place, rushing towards the cowboy. Let me, your grandfather, see if your big guild has a reputation or not. He pumped up his muscles again, just like when he had smashed the gate before. Dumo had witnessed it, so he was very worried and called out to Uncle D to watch out. He calmly took another puff of his cigarette and muttered, pulling out quickly. A tiny bullet shot out of the leather bag on his waist, using a drill bullet, piercing the huge hammer with just a simple basic path and then slamming into the gate with a loud bang. The crowd turned pale, what the hell just happened? Apart from Un In, everyone was chilled by his strength, and the most frightened was the brother who was left with only a handle. He put the cigarette butt on the broken handle, as if touching a paper doll, causing the big guy to fell to the ground with a thud, his face as stupid as an idiot. Dumo and Un In hurried after the uncle who was now walking walking to the gate that had been pinned with a bullet hole just now. There was smoke and a vibrating sound like a phone, and it turned out that the gate was slowly pushing the bullet out until, until it popped out and fell into the water. Dumo tilted his head in frustration. Not even your attack can break this thing? He said nothing, and bent down to pick up his bullet. It was not damaged at all even though it had hit something hard. It's just that his drill bullet could pierce through a hole. Mountain, why couldn't it break this gate? Maybe we can't use force to solve. The problem here. Dumo wanted to roar. Then what did we come all this way for? Farewell, my precious jewels. D calmly speculated that this entrance is actually a, a teleportation gate. The space inside is probably separated from the outside. If we want to get in there, we can only hope to hire a high-level mage to break the formation. With D's protection, Dumo strode over and placed his hand on the gate, breathing, long. I thought we could get a lot of treasure. Calm down, there are many high-level mages in the holy temple. Come on, I'll take you back to the guild headquarters in the colorful desert to find someone capable. D didn't say this, that the current plan was not finished and he still had to find more people, but the saintess would surely be pleased as long as she could bring back these two with pure hearts. Thinking of this, D turned back and said, the colorful desert is too far for the scroll to teleport. First we go to the time castle, and then we take a spaceship from there. Suddenly from his hand, Zormo felt the barrier seemed to be fluctuating. He tried to push it in a little, and found. It cracked like a mirror, 
shattering in front of his astonished eyes in an instant. Mr. D opened his mouth again and screamed. Every time he was surprised, he lost his usual wise image. He looked even more flustered than the rice-powered cameras here, but it was true that the whole gate had been broken by Zormo's touch. Not a small opening, but he had completely broken the barrier. He broke it with one touch. Un was surprised and congratulated his mushroom excitedly. D put his hand on the young man's shoulder and asked in a low voice how he did it, but Zormo didn't know what to say. His face twisted and he didn't know how to explain it. Suddenly he had an idea, rearranged his words a little and began to talk. Before we got here, there must have been many people who attacked the barrier. Furthermore, Uncle D just did the same thing, attacking the barrier and pushing it to its limit, so I just had to push it lightly and it broke as long as a candy. The big brother was so happy to hear that he laughed ah ha ha, it must be because of my super strong viperal attack. D pulled his hat, admitting that the reason was reasonable, but let it go. Because the gate was open anyway, let's go in. The three of them led a group of unrelated people into the pumped water. However, on the other side, there was only a little water, and the whole place was dry, with only a little blue light coming from the mushrooms growing from the walls and the ground. There were small murmurs of surprise inside, didn't our barrier only be broken by our own kind of mushrooms? How did they do it? Maybe they brought a high-level mage with them, we have to be careful. In the darkness, there was a sound of guns being cocked and the cold clinking of sword hilts being drawn tight. A cold-blooded man said, no matter who they are, we can't let these people enter the central area. The other person agreed, just kill them all. As soon as he waded through the puddle, Zormo looked around in surprise. In this closed cave, there was no other light source than the soft blue mushrooms that looked extremely dim. This is the starting area, also known as the ancestral punch ruins, so it looks strangely spiritual. Un and looked over there, it was as if there was a whole starry sky on the ceiling of this cave. Just looking at it, I feel like my whole body is being re-energized. Who has time to sightsee? A guy ran past the two of them and laughed, bye bye losers, if you're slow, you'll have to eat someone else's leftovers. The treasure hunters ran after him, the treasure was right in front of them, they couldn't let anyone else get their hands on it. In the darkness, the young man stepped on a mushroom mine, which exploded with a bang before he realized what had exploded and was blown away, killing two or three people nearby. Be careful, loser, this place is full of mushroom mines, don't step on them. The brown-haired man said to the mage next to him as the mushroom bomb lived long enough to evolve into a mushroom mine. You can avoid them or disable them with ice magic, understand? The little girl nodded, then pointed to the mushrooms that were emitting a golden light and asked, Teacher, why are there these mushrooms? They look bright and harmless. He had never seen them before, and guessed that they might be the treasures that people often talked about or some kind of trap. Take your time, let's investigate first. Touching one of them, he explained that most traps require a certain amount of force to be activated. As long as we are careful, we will be fine. She nodded and said yes, teacher, the teacher exploded and lost his upper body. No, not exploded, he was turned into a flesh-eating flower, which gently ate his upper body. At this moment, she saw it clearly and screamed in fear, oh my god, who will save the baby? But all around, everyone was in chaos because the glowing mushrooms were flashing so much that it was blinding. The slimy green mushrooms, like candy, were large and sprayed out a sticky substance like mouse glue. The unlucky ones who ran into these cute mushrooms were punched by them and their teeth and lips were mixed together. The warriors huddled together in fear. We must hold our formation and protect each other. Bang! A shot went through the cute mushroom. The second shot was aimed at the golden mushroom. That had grown to a giant size, and then three, four, seven shots were fired at the glowing mushrooms, causing them to scatter. Dick ordered a warrior to order his comrades to advance quickly. Anyone who is injured, step back and I will support you. He had just finished speaking when he stepped on a mushroom mine, but strangely enough, it didn't explode. So the two of them continued to walk, and they came face to face with a flesh-eating mushroom that was sniffing around. He screamed, oh my god, damn it, and somehow it bent over and slipped past the two of them and left. Dumo began to vaguely understand that although he looked very human, he was still a member of the mushroom family in terms of technique. The flesh-eating mushroom stalked the noisy big brother from earlier, who was carrying a young man who had fainted under his arm. He was so scared that he was sweating profusely, but he had to calm himself down. If he just pretended to be stupid and deaf for a while, it would leave him alone. But its mouth opened so wide that he was terrified. Just then Un-Un appeared with a piglet 
punch, pushing the hideous mushroom aside. The whole group raised their heads and looked around, then together they rushed, to pinch Un Un, who was blocking the way in front of the injured big brother. Du Mo raised his mushroom sword in front of them, and successfully blocked the attack of the whole group. Seeing that they were not moving, Du Mo raised his sword and pretended to be a warrior so as not to reveal himself. He was a mushroom in disguise, and shouted, back off now or I'll stab you guys. The effect was amazing, they really left. This big brother looked east and west. Did this little boy really scare these monsters away? Could he be an expert? Elsewhere, it was much more difficult. Each flesh-eating mushroom had to eat. Bullet before it knew to go somewhere else, and D was a little tired after a few shots. One aimed at his head from the top of the cave, opened its mouth and fired two bombs at an extremely fast speed only managed to turn his body to the side to dodge it in time to save his life. As soon as he turned around, he retaliated with a drill bullet, tearing apart the one that had just attacked him. Another one, appeared right behind him, and D just managed to avoid a few fatal blows, but was still scratched by a few, causing him to bleed. He shot and killed the one over there, and suddenly there was a small sound from the body of the dead one. Suddenly, a very familiar figure appeared and fired three shots in a row, which D heard and quickly jumped to the side to avoid. The torn cloak made him wonder who the shooter was. The skill was only slightly less than his own. Moreover, he was hiding in the mouth of a monster, so even his old lady wouldn't know about it. The shot that grazed his leg hair was just a cover-up. The whole cave echoed with the sound of countless shots, hitting the wall all coming from the black mouth of the monster, forcing D to run around like a mouse in a rice jar to save his life. Finally, he was cornered in the center by three heads firing in volleys. D jumped a few times, seeing that the situation was not good, he had to use that thing. He reached for his belt, pulled out a very special bullet, and loaded it into his gun. D's knees buckled as if the thing in his hand was very heavy. Suddenly, he jumped up like an eagle, just as a volley of bullets was fired at the ground where he had just been standing. Tightening the butt of his gun in midair, he did something that made the muzzle of the gun emit. A dazzling golden light, from which a giant spout shot up. The supersonic purification skill emitted a light that illuminated every corner of the cave. Seeing the face of, Bao saw that something bad was about to happen, and she pulled the flesh-eating mushroom with her and quickly escaped into the newly dug hole. The small mushrooms at her feet were stunned by the divine light as if they had seen a ghost, and then they retracted their tentacles and disappeared into the ground. The fanged ones protruding from the wall screamed and died, their bodies withered and fell to the ground. The golden light touched the bodies of the ragged warriors for a while and they suddenly opened their eyes and jumped up as if they had seen a ghost, surprised to see their bodies healing from their wounds, and their bodies no longer aching. The man who had been carrying the meat under his arm looked around, and the tiny particles of light touched his head, which recovered completely. In the golden light, Dick's feet gently descended to the central area like an angel descending to earth. Everyone realized that the shooter from the holy sanctuary had made the particles of light to heal their wounds. He was so powerful that we would have surely died. If it weren't for him, it's a good thing we didn't die here. They all dreamed of enjoying the feeling of a healthy body from the warm light of the holy light. As for the author, he acted as if nothing had happened, lit a brand new cigar, and calmly explained that it was a special bullet that had been blessed by the saints. Not only did it make the monsters burst into flames, but it also created a sacred light that healed the wounds of humans. But the dead could not be brought back to life, and the little mage who had seen her teacher die with her own eyes cried so hard that she didn't want to explore anymore. Several others were also as psychologically shocked as she was, having initially heard that the mission was just to eliminate a shooter and a swordsman. After this incident, many people decided to give up, to go on a mission for the bonus, but not to live to spend it. Dumo watched the people leaving one after another, and sighed to himself, everyone was giving up too quickly. Dick's shot suddenly left the barrel, like a whistle that attracted everyone's attention to him. Hey everyone, failure is only temporary, our goal is to eliminate bad elements like the criminal couple from the world. I believe that everyone who survived today understands this issue better than anyone. Else, as long as we are still alive, nothing can stop us. For the peace of the brave continent, his cheers touched the hearts of the collapsed teenagers, one by one. They were the ones who came here to seek wealth, and they weakly protested that they came here for money, brother, who would spend it if you died. After death? Is that so? Dick tilted his hat and said seriously, then I'm not like you guys. 
I didn't come here to find any treasure, just to protect the peace of the brave continent and bring the criminal duo to justice. If you only pursue material things, you will forever be weak. Do you know what the difference is between you and the top fighters? They fell silent, all curious to know the answer, so Dick's call became even more clear. It is honor, they have the honor that you have abandoned to chase after money. Now, this is the time to prove yourself, stay with me and fight the criminal duo. Fight for justice and for the peace of the brave continent, and regain your own honor. Dick probably didn't have the aura of a main character, the poor miners didn't fall for it at all. Yelling out in a thick accent, shut up, keep your personal opinions to yourself. These guys don't have any fancy gadgets like you to protect themselves. Like you do, so cut the noble act. With that, Dick showed no mercy glaring down at them with a stern look. This attitude is exactly why you guys will always be weak. Being criticized so bluntly, who wouldn't be angry? Dick snatched the megaphone before they could. Anyone who still wants to go, get lost, and anyone who wants to stay. He glanced around and continued, I promise, I swear, I guarantee on the honor of the holy sanctuary, I will use my life to protect everyone. I will not take a single piece of treasure, as long as everyone helps fight the criminal duo. The shiny badge, coupled with the effect of righteous persuasion, made Dick shine brighter than ever. There are many things we can lose, but we cannot lose our honor. Remember your childhood dreams and aspirations. If there is a glimmer of light in it, join me, and light the God in everyone's heart with the fire of justice. You can leave here now and live in regret forever, or join with me to wipe out the criminal duo. Dear friends and gentlemen, choose the right one. The chubby man didn't listen, he was still yawning instead of dreaming of listening to fascination, and all around him more and more people were leaning towards the theory of wanting to die in a group. More people will definitely increase the chances of survival, Dick, is also strong, but does he have the ability to protect everyone? Bang. The sound of the hammer rang out firmly on the stone floor, the man, with the meat stood up and said generously, I have decided to stay. Someone spoke up first, and very quickly the response spread. Through the crowd, I also had a childhood dream, so I will stay. In no time at all, the dark cave was filled with a fervent atmosphere, the slogan, to wipe out the criminal duo and protect the continent sounded so goosebump inducing. Romo suddenly felt like idolizing Uncle Dick, ignoring the chubby man who was yawning short and long, now to him. This uncle was the one who had brought ideals to everyone's hearts. The saints have said that hope is priceless, and justice is always common sense. He looked up with a prestigious face, the shiny badge on his chest, and began to lead the search for reason. On this side, a team of four people, including a mage, a mind detector, and a mind clearer. On the other side was another team using stilts, self-made to get through the mushrooms, only suffering the one who had to carry the man with the meat because he couldn't walk on stilts. When they encountered a man-eating mushroom, the whole group, from the muscle man to the mage and the fighter, would join forces to kill it. Stable and Rumo were still teaming up with each other without needing anyone, but overall it was very effective. A day later, in the cave filled with mushroom corpses of all sizes piled high, Dick was no slower, calling out to the children to cheer and celebrate and move quickly to set up camp before nightfall. The group moved in an orderly manner into a more spacious area, making a fire here was not difficult, and it was a rare break, so everyone did it very quickly. Romo looked up and complained, I didn't think it would take so long. Always, how big is this cave? We won't get lost, will we? Uncle Dick's voice rang out above him firmly, we won't get lost. I've marked it. The way in here, as long as we don't go around again, we'll reach the central area tomorrow. Reaching into his jacket pocket, Dick pulled out a flask, raised it to his mouth and took a sip, taking the opportunity to add that tomorrow the job will be done. Uncle Dick, you were so cool just now. Because of your speech, everyone decided to stay and fight the duo. Criminals. He was unexpectedly modest, gently saying that I had overestimated him. Everything I have now was given to me by the holy sanctuary. I used to be good-for-nothing criminal, doing a lot of bad things, but luckily I met the holy saint. Dick slowly told about the days when he met the saint in a small, dark alley. If he hadn't told, no one would have known that this stylish guy's name was Dick. At that time, the young Dick pointed a gun at someone and laughed out loud. Sukana gave him. You met Dick, who likes to punish me, do you have any words to deny it? The boy retreated into a corner, his clothes torn, his face frightened and begging for mercy, but young Dick still fired a shot into the man's foot. He screamed in pain, no, please spare me. But to Dick at that time, hurting people was his pleasure. Do you think I want something from you? 
I just want to hear you scream in despair as you are tortured to death. The other guy was scared out of his wits. Don't be a pleasure for others and don't be afraid. But that day was a lucky day because the hand of the holy God appeared with the light particles falling gently. The voice of the holy God whispered softly in his ear. Turn around and be saved. O oh lost one. The light particle touched the wound on his leg and it healed instantly. Both the other man and Dick were surprised, but he was horrified. Who, who dares to get in the way of Dick, who likes to punish me? The holy God turned the small alley bright, appearing with a gentle voice in his ear, one who will never find the meaning of life by taking the lives of others. He looked at the holy saint in amazement, saying that at that time he had begun to realize, to the point of dropping the gun in his hand and listening intently to the holy God. Turn around and be saved. Join the holy sanctuary and redeem your sins by spreading hope and justice across the continents. Dick looked up and whispered why. Why is it? Such a lowlife who has killed countless innocent people like me? The light of the holy saint shone so brightly that his face could not be seen. Only, his voice was clear, because I have seen the true value in you. At that moment, the young Dick finally realized the meaning of his existence all this time. The holy sanctuary is a guild with the largest number of priests on all the brave continents, so they can produce a myriad of different health recoveries. And everyone knows that priests and medicine are those things that are essential when venturing out there. So so the holy sanctuary has become one of the most influential guilds on the continent. Unfortunately, you are not a priest and can only serve the guild as a warrior. As long as you can serve the holy saint and continue to spread hope and justice across the continent, you are content. Zamor listened in amazement, and then he paid attention to the fire, not bothering to look at the piglet that was roasting two apples that were burnt to a crisp. As he sat pondering, suddenly someone appeared behind Zamor and whispered, Hey little sister. He was startled and fell to the ground in panic. Who is it? What the hell are you doing? The shy piglet handed him a box, blushing, and said that at first, my temper was as hot as ice cream, so I was a bit rude. But ever since you saved me from those monsters, I've wanted to give you the box of food that I prepared today so that we could be friends. Seeing that red face, Zamor was frightened and stepped back quickly, stammering, No, it's okay, no need to prepare any food. Having said that, when he looked down at the lunchbox, Zamor was stunned. Damn, the interface of a weightlifter but the soul of a child, did this god spend 80 minutes this morning making this lunchbox? Before Zamor could refuse any further, the piglet had stuck its head in and squealed loudly, food. He snatched the beautiful lunchbox from the person, and put his whole face in it and munched away in front of the silent mushroom. The arm gently came down on the little girl's head. Zamor scolded sternly. You can't do that, little pig. How did I teach you to behave? She pouted and made an innocent face, holding out the lunchbox that only had a little tomato sauce left on it. Then she stuck her finger in and swiped it bringing it to her mouth to lick it, repeating rude, behaving, pointing her finger full of enzymes at him, the little girl brought it, towards Zamor, swiping it across his face and making him blush, stop fooling around and stop talking, do whatever you want, and don't worry about it, the food is all gone anyway, the piglet laughed easily, it's okay, I, prepared a lot, you guys can eat as much as you want, this is not just talk, the storage bag contains dozens of, lunch boxes of all colors, happily inviting everyone to come and get food, don't be shy. The atmosphere in the cave was very cheerful. Everyone gathered in small groups chatting and joking. With each other, the piglet had already eaten several boxes, but the older brother was still sitting there laughing. Knowing that being shy is harmful to the stomach, Zamor also ate a box, his eyes sparkling as he praised it, it's really delicious. Mr. Muscle, I couldn't tell from your appearance that you were such a good cook. Zamor's compliment made him drool with pleasure. Let me tell you, I cook even more than I go on expeditions. Once I have saved enough money, I will retire, go home, get married, and open a restaurant and raise some kids. I believe you can do it, Mr. Muscle. With this skill, there's no need to say how successful your restaurant will be. Your fiancé is definitely very lucky to have such a great chef as a husband. The rabbit reached into his pocket and pulled out a photo. Look, this is my fiancé. She is a very good archer. He fumbled to take the photo looked at it and his eyebrows twitched, silently listening to the muscle man lost in his imagination of a sweet future that was very near. She will take care of the customers, and I will work in the kitchen. Happy family has been planned for a long time. It sounds so sweet, she fumbled slowly for a long time, she suppressed the horror on her face so as not to displease the muscle man. Because, why doesn't this fiancé look like the advertisement at all? Like this muscle. Man takes care of the customers who don't listen, 
and if they don't listen, he punches them. She grimaced and pretended to laugh, and managed to say, just one sentence, you guys are really a match made in heaven. Dick, who was sitting next to her, took another sip of water and asked, have you, thought about my invitation to join the holy sanctuary? Thinking of the prospect of the saintess discovering that the two of them were actually monsters, that had been trapped for so long, she would interrogate you, do you want to know more about the demon Lord Gallum? You guys must be Gollum's followers, so, be prepared to die, you damn creatures. Domo's face twitched, although joining the guild would give her faster information, but the risk of being discovered was also great. If I met a priest or a high-level mage who could see the truth behind this identity, wouldn't I be throwing my life away? Domo waved her hand and said, no, uncle, I'm going. I'm not a priest or strong enough to be a warrior. I don't think I'm qualified to join the guild. Dick said that the saintess had specifically asked us to look for pure hearts to join the guild, so I believe you are fully qualified if you want to. Besides, if you are recognized by the saintess, you will become a core member. Core members can enjoy many benefits that outsiders can only dream of. The muscular man laughed and patted the young man on the shoulder in congratulations. This is a great opportunity that many people never get. Domo grimaced, is that so, uncle, I really don't know much about guilds. The muscular man heard that, so wide, even if he lived underground, he should know about the six great guilds. They are the strongest and most influential guilds on the entire continent of the brave. The first is the Sword Guild, Holy, a guild of warriors. The second is the Holy Sanctuary, the guild of priests that you just heard about. The third is the Beast Tamer Alliance, a guild of monster training masters. Next is the Spirit of the Deep Forest, a guild of free people. Of course, we can't forget the One-Eyed Horde, where the mages gather, and finally the Sea Thieves, a guild of skilled swindlers. These guilds are the top tier, then there are a bunch of second tier guilds like the Tusk, the Seahorse. Then there are the third tier guilds like the Muscle as Life Guild you're in. The strength and resources of the smaller guilds are not insignificant. Most of us form our own groups and share our hobbies. That's why I always go exploring alone. However, the first and second tier guilds are more serious and often have to guard their territories. They can mobilize a large number of warriors for their campaigns. Even those who are not in a guild want to join these campaigns in order to be recognized and become official members of the guild. Oh, it turns out that the one-eyed horde that burned down the Mushroom Kingdom is one of the six top guilds in the world. The Mushroom King stood in front of the masked man, who looked brown and toad-like. There must be many more people as strong as him in that guild. It seems that the guilds of mankind are terrifyingly strong. The muscular man continued to explain that this is why the opportunity to be invited to become a full member of the Holy Sanctuary is so precious and unique. Domo put on an innocent face, scratched her head and said that she hadn't figured out what she wanted to do yet, so she hadn't thought about joining a guild, yet. In fact, it was because he was afraid of being discovered by the guild. Well, that's true, the muscular man said with a smile that exploring is not the only thing we can do. Many people like him just want to settle down instead of fighting all day long. Oh, by the way, there is a big guild competition in a month, and, if you decide, you can go there and participate, the, performance can be considered to see which guild is suitable to apply for. Domo rubbed her chin and said let's talk about something else, uncle. Have you ever heard about the story of the demon Lord Gallum being sealed? He waited for the right moment when people were gossiping, to ask how they knew the information, but to the muscular man it was just a legend, what was there to mention? Well, I was just wondering about the story that the demon Lord Gallum will be reborn if the six seals are removed moved. Shouldn't everyone protect those seals? Suddenly Dick's eyes changed completely. The guy often asked Domo. Have you ever seen Gollum's sealing stone? Where is it? He pretended to be stupid and said with a fake smile that I don't know anything. I just heard about it. Stupid and smiled and said that he didn't know anything. He had only heard about it. I'm just worried that if that's true, then the demon Lord Gallum will be resurrected. The entire continent of the brave will be destroyed. There was only the sound of the wind chatting around. I don't know what Dick was thinking but he didn't ask any more questions. There was a muscular man who proudly showed off his armpits. Don't worry young man. The leaders of the top guilds are all top 10 power experts on the entire continent. Even if the demon Lord Gallum is really resurrected, he can't lose. He pointed to himself, smiled and showed off a little to the young man. The leader of my guild is also a formidable force. As he was speaking, a small hand poked at him, and when he turned around, he saw. Un Yi's eyes lit up. She had learned three more words to whine with, lunchbox. Domo was reluctant to use the little girl, so she stood up with her. You've already eaten your share.
care, you can't make demands like that. The little girl was about to cry, but when she heard the muscular man say it was okay, her eyes lit up. Although the uncle's lunchbox could not restore health or improve attributes, but as long as it made everyone happy, that was enough. You still have a lot left, don't be shy. And he really did have a lot left. Un Yi felt like the whole world was pink. In addition, the little girl who was full of energy, didn't know what shyness was, and she jumped up and asked for a box for her sister. Domo didn't hesitate to take a box for herself. The late night meal was so delicious, Dick looked at the pile of boxes and felt too bored to speak. The muscular man was so happy to be so popular. His muscular arms clasped the necks of the children, and then he sat around the fire with everyone and told them stories. After eating and drinking, they played a game of arm wrestling. The muscular man was very happy with these games. Don't think that Un Yi over there is a little girl and go easy on her. Domo was the referee and was about to prepare. Both opponents glared at each other with excitement. As soon as the word three sounded, Un Yi slammed the muscular man's sinewy arm to the ground. He was stunned and could not believe that this little girl was the one who had just finished five boxes of his food. No one had expected this situation. The crowd was now laughing and crying. Un Yi was just happy to win and was cheering with everyone. However, Domo had noticed that amidst the merriment, there was a figure leaning against a rock that was completely different from the crowd. Han went over to ask him, only to see that he was holding a water bottle in his hand, not sitting or standing. Uncle Dick, why don't you come and play with us? If you weren't here to cheer us on, we wouldn't have gotten together like this. He smiled and said it was okay. He was just doing what the saints had asked him to do. Looking at the smiles on everyone's faces, Dick knew that he had succeeded in bringing hope to their hearts. Every party must come to an end. The fire was extinguished. Everyone was fast asleep when suddenly, the sound of water gurgling beside the muscular man's ear made him open his eyes. He was about to go back to sleep, but he couldn't, so he had to get up and deal with it. His large body walked with difficulty, trying not to wake everyone up as he found a corner in the cave to relieve himself on the mushrooms, pulling up his pants. Feeling refreshed, the uncle turned to go back to sleep, but his foot hit something blocking his way and he staggered, and fell flat on his face, almost fainting. His head was spinning, but he saw that the other person was still not. Moving, he held his head and asked why he was so careless. Weren't you afraid of being attacked while you were sleeping? Suddenly, his eyes were drawn to a pool of blood. The other person was still lying motionless, which made him panic and try to shake him. When he turned it over, it was not the mage girl who had lost him in the afternoon, it was obvious that she she had died after being severely attacked, her mouth wide open. The muscular man gasped, she's dead. The shock woke him up, and he jerked back, gritting his teeth and telling himself that he had to warn everyone right away. Suddenly the air was filled with the smell of tobacco. A shadow flashed past, shot up to the ceiling, up the wall and was about to land next to him. He screamed, everyone wake up, the enemy is attacking. Just as that familiar foot stepped down, he couldn't believe his eyes, the badge was still glowing in the night. Dick then turned to the silent archer mage, walking up to him and telling him, there's no need to shout, I've already surrounded myself with magic within a 5 meter radius, no sound can escape from this place. He quietly took out the gun from his waist. But the muscular man saw it, and immediately pulled out his weapon, and asked him why he was doing that, looking at the muscular man in a defensive stance with his giant hammer. Dick sneered. Do you really not understand the difference in strength between us? Of course I do. You are the only one who has fought me directly, and I admit that I can't defeat you, but I will create a shock big enough to wake everyone up. He immediately swung his giant hammer, using his enhanced strength to prepare to strike down. But Dick had already dashed forward with his gun held across his chest. Before the muscular man could lower his arm, Dick had reached the other side of the wall, leaving the muscular man in the dark, not understanding how he had done it. Dick exhaled a puff of smoke. That was clever, but what if I cut all your tendons and ligaments? As soon as he finished speaking, the muscular man felt blood gushing out of his body, and he collapsed, unable to resist. Blood flowed out more and more, soaking into the picture of his beautiful fiance who was waiting for him to come home and settle down. Him to return to a stable life. The man stared at it, his voice trembling in disbelief. Why did you kill us after giving us hope? Same old answer, I'm just doing what the saints asked me to do. In the darkness where Dick stood, something darker and more sinister emerged from his badge. The face of the hero became even clearer. Dick took another long drag of his cigarette, 
only those who had known hope, could create the purest form of despair. Du Mo and Yuan slept soundly until they suddenly sat up in the morning. He said it was his turn to watch, but something was wrong, why didn't anyone wake him up? It was then that he smelled the stench in the air. His eyes fell upon dozens of bodies covered in sheets, lying side by side. Thinking he was mistaken, he squinted his eyes to look more closely. His eyes wide open as he saw Dick carrying a man to the end of the row. You're awake, I didn't want you to see this, but you'll find out eventually. I'm sorry, I couldn't protect them. Putting the muscular man in line, Dick sat down next to him and pretended to explain that it was the duo, the criminals who were too treacherous. You killed everyone without making a sound. If I hadn't woken up when I did, I would have been dead too. Dumo recognized the muscular man and ran over in horror. But Dick's face remained expressionless as he covered him with a blanket. I know this is hard to accept, but we need to be patient. He covered the muscular man's dead face with a blanket. Dumo froze for a few seconds, then stepped forward to pick up the blood-soaked picture of his fiance. His eyes filled with tears of disbelief. Why did this happen? Last night, everyone was still so happy. He clenched his fists, trying to bite his lip to keep the tears from flowing, but he couldn't. In his previous life, he didn't have many friends. It wasn't easy to have such a happy time with everyone. He stroked his orange hair, calling out his name only made Dumo more painful. Why did things turn out this way? Dick lit a spark and put it to his lips, repeating that he knew this was hard, but we had to be strong. We have to destroy the criminal duo to avenge this debt. You want to make sure those two bastards pay ten times the price. He quietly used persuasion as he continued, swearing on his honor that he would kill the criminal duo and bring them to justice. We need to kill the criminal duo so that our brothers and sisters can rest in peace. Dumo clutched the picture tightly and sorrowfully agreed that's right we have to take them down for everyone dick continued to explain that he was young and it was understandable to feel emotional about this but we can't let our emotions control us when we're facing the enemy dumo listened to him and nodded honestly saying yes i understand give me a few minutes to say goodbye to the muscular man he turned away immediately telling him to wait in front leaving dumo and him next to the last body he stepped forward and knelt down dumo took out the picture of his fiance and placed it on the muscular man's chest uncle rest in peace i will definitely avenge you after saying that he placed the picture on his chest and suddenly felt a burning sensation in his nose. If I ever meet your fiancé, I will let her know. Dumo lifted his big arm and let him hold the picture, so that in the afterlife, the muscular man could look at the picture of his fiancé whenever he wanted. Unexpectedly, he found a strange spiral symbol in blood behind the picture. At that time, Dumo had a vague idea, but he didn't say anything, and followed Dick into the cave with an in. They quickly encountered a carnivorous mushroom which was identified by the system as a level 40 angler mushroom. Its vitality and physical strength were average, but its speed was very fast, and its attack power was also great. After living in the dark and humid cave for a long time, the angler mushroom had completely lost its eyesight and evolved the ability to dig through rocks at extremely fast speeds based on its sense of touch to hunt prey. After passing it, the group encountered a new type of mushroom called a level 43 burning mushroom with a critical hit rate of up to 30%. These mushrooms evolved from a group of mushrooms that shared a common intelligence, and only attacked in groups because individual mushrooms were not strong enough. Each of their stings carried a powerful poison, which made the whole group run away in panic. Next was the level 37 zombie mushroom that they had encountered before. All of its stats were average, but they were immortal, only helpless against Queen Enchanted's magic. Although their combat abilities were average, their silent fighting style and fearless nature made them more tenacious than leeches in battles. It was rumored that they could later evolve into the deadly Oboy mushroom. With this type, Dick shot each one with a drill bullet, mixed with magic and shot it straight into their heads, which was quite effective. A group of brainless monsters that didn't even bother to run away, only met with a mass death because they were no match for Dick. But he found it strange, why did they only chase? After him and not the two children? Dumo knew but didn't dare to say, so he guessed that it must be because he was strong. Dick exhaled smoke, killing these guys was easy but it took too much time. He had observed from the beginning, there were no signs that, the sniper could be hiding in the mouths of the carnivorous mushrooms, but that person was obviously a good sniper, and could also control the monsters. Dick really wanted to know who it was. Anyway, there was still danger ahead, so he told the two children to move on. If they slowed down, they might be surrounded by these things, which would be annoying. So the three of them continued to walk through the long stretch of rocks. When Dumo walked past the zombie mushrooms that were scattered on the path, his eyes caught a very prominent spiral bullet mark on the face of a mushroom. 
From then on, his mind fell into panic when he realized that the bullet mark is exactly the same as the spiral pattern on the paper in the muscular man's hand. I don't want to believe it, but could it be that Dick was the culprit? On the walls on both sides of the cave, the skylight mushroom had been there for a long time. It didn't start to split, but only turned back to follow the group of three as they gradually moved deeper inside, sending it to an orange-haired girl to watch and evaluate. They're getting deeper and deeper, we need to get rid of them right away. Behind her, the bright eyes in the darkness agreed without a word. He turned on his sword and made a clicking sound, ready to appear. At a large gate towering with patterns of mushrooms, Dick stopped and looked up, saying, we're here. Umo couldn't help but exclaim, it's rare. To see such an elaborate building, that friendly pat on the shoulder was irrelevant. He muttered two words in a low voice, fruit, making Dumo remember that the piglet hadn't eaten anything since he woke up. Anything since he woke up. But he didn't have any more fruit to give it. The bag of apples was empty because he didn't think he would be in the cave for so long. Dick didn't care that the two children were silent just because they ran out of apples. What he cared about was the central area that could very well be right behind this door. I'm sure the saintess will be very pleased if I bring the treasure and these two back together. Dick tried to push the door open, but he quickly realized that it was heavier than he thought. The surge of power flowing through Dick's body made his round shirt tremble in order to put more force into his hands, but the door still stood firm and unyielding. Dick took a deep breath and lifted his hand, feeling confused as to why his strength seemed to be completely absorbed by the door. I guess I can only try to smash it. Thinking so, Dick flicked his body back, a short distance from the door, and then pulled out two of his guns, putting them on his index fingers and twirling them skillfully. His pupils lit up, his mouth muttered, and he quickly pulled out a few mountain-piercing drill bullets shot out of the barrel and rumbled into the door. But they didn't penetrate the door. Instead they were squeezed and deformed, falling all over the floor. The surface left a few large, dented cracks, but even the smoke quickly disappeared. The door was rapidly shrinking the bullet holes, with countless tiny mushrooms filling in the dents. In less than two minutes, the gate had returned to its original state, and not even the cracks were visible. Dumo hesitantly commented, this gate not only blocked Dick's bullets, but also healed itself. Dick quickly pulled out another gun, folded it down and changed it into a heavy dagger, then shot forward without hesitation. He slashed the air, leaving behind large, dark scratches on the surface of the door, then landed on the ground to observe. Only one person could make such deep and powerful cuts. So, Dumo turned pale in surprise. He didn't expect Dick to be able to use a dagger as well. If so, it was indeed very possible that Dick was the culprit last night. We need to stay away from him but not let it show. Otherwise Dick might kill us when he finds out. Just when Dumo was on high alert, the sage mode increased to level 6, causing the skill of reasonable persuasion to be disabled. The large gash on the door was also smoking like the bullet holes, but in just a moment, it was covered by the door's healing ability, and healed as before. Dick showed a clear look of confusion, even that didn't work. Dumo quietly approached and said, let us try. Han whispered into Woon Woon's hand, making Dick impatient to ask what the plan was. The two approached the door cautiously, saying that they weren't sure if it would work. But this was a team skill combo that the two of them often used. Dumo put his hand on the door, nodded and said yes. This is a special skill that only the two of us can use. Suddenly, Dumo turned his head and said to Dick, don't get too close or you'll be hit by their ability. You need to stand a little further away, about 20, no, 30 meters. Trust me, Uncle Dick. His eyes became much colder, but he quickly turned and stepped back. Dumo watched until Dick was quite far away. Ben and Woon Woon used all their strength to push themselves towards the door. I'll use the absorption skill to create a hole, but I need to control it just big enough for me to get in and Woon Woon to jump through. This is our only chance to escape from Dick. While waiting for the two of them to pull and push together, you guys should rest for a bit. Why? Because you've been watching for 5 hours straight. Health is the most important thing. Stop the video and have a bite to eat and a drink. In the middle of Dumo's hand, the light of the absorption skill shone brightly, soon turning into blinding rings of light that wanted to blow Dick's hat off. He held onto it, correctly judging that it was a powerful magic skill. On his side, Woon Woon had to concentrate all his strength to absorb the power from this gate. It was so large and thick that the surge of power flowing into Dumo's body was swirling incessantly. He gritted his teeth and tried to transfer it to his hand, gradually feeling himself sinking inside, accompanied by an extremely uncomfortable burning sensation. When his arms had sunk into the elbow, Dumo turned back and told Woon Woon to hurry up, 
push me with all the strength you have. The little girl's hands tightened on his shoulders, and Woon Woon puffed out her cheeks and pushed with all her might. Both of them sank in almost completely. Only Woon Woon's hair and one leg were left. When Dick suddenly yelled, Hey, hey, wait for me. He had dropped his precious cigar, and used all his speed to rush over, but the distance was too far, and his face slammed into the fully restored gate. When the achievement was completed, the skill proficiency increased, receiving 1. 500 experience points, received a new spore control skill, received a one-time use mushroom wall skill, with a 24-hour cooldown. Dumo was almost choked by Woon Woon's breasts, when the two of them had just passed through the gate, and as soon as their feet touched the ground, they ran without looking back. The symbol behind the photo of the muscular man's fiancé, was definitely warning me about the drill bullet move. Now that I know that Dick can use a dagger, it makes perfect sense to explain the cuts on the bodies, because he dared to use a dagger in front of me, and Woon Woon. Dick must have been ready to eliminate both of us. Dumo couldn't understand as he ran. Why a human heart could be so contradictory. I have to blame myself for being so naive as to believe his speech. For being too trusting. Now that I've left and become a human. I need to find a way out of here first. He glanced at Woon Woon running beside him and told her that he hoped the gate. Could hold Dick back. But either way, they needed to be prepared to fight at any time. Suddenly, the light ahead made Dumo speed up, but he didn't realize how fast he was running and didn't notice the steps below. Woon Woon was more agile and prepared, and landed perfectly, but Dumo fell flat on his butt and lost 40 experience points. As soon as the pain subsided, he realized why there was light in this place, and saw a strange creature that he didn't recognize. The mural on the wall, Dumo wondered if it was a painting and therefore had no meaning. One of them looked like two identical kings, fighting under the throne of someone whose face was not visible. Another one showed people in robes, carved larger than the army of knights and infantry below. Woon Woon called out, mushroom, and looked at the mural depicting a person in a robe standing in the light, but their face was not visible. Below was an army lined up behind a row of mushroom monsters, and a strange, seemingly dark barrier with symbols that neither of them understood. There were other, clearer images, such as a large group of people, holding hands with mushroom monsters standing in a stream of light. Next to it was another one that was extremely difficult to understand. Apart from the smile of the hidden person there was nothing else. Dumo quickly regained his senses, now was not the time to go sightseeing. He ran back to the pile of glittering treasure, not to get the gold, but because someone had once said that there was a scroll of teleportation among the items here. There were too many things. Dumo glanced at them and called up the system. Can you sort out all this stuff in front of me? As soon as it agreed, it changed to two large and dangerous words on the screen. Dumo's eyes had just glanced over it when he had to pick up Woon Woon and dodge. Two drill bullets that had just passed through the spot where they had been standing. Having lost their target, they flew towards the treasure trove behind them and exploded. As soon as he had regained his footing, Dumo immediately cursed. How come he had caught up with me so quickly? From the dark crevice, the robed figure. It was clear that Dick was coming to find him and Woon Woon. The level difference was too great. I couldn't just confront him head on. I needed to buy some time for the system to find the scroll of teleportation. Thinking this, a stream of magic flowed out of Dumo's arm. He placed them firmly on the ground, causing them to gush out more and more. Using the spore control skill to cover the ground, the mushroom spores rose up and embraced the two stone pillars at the entrance to the stairs down. At the same time Dumo stood up straight and forced his two hands together. He slammed them together and the spores, following his command, formed a wall of mushrooms identical to the one that Dumo and Woon Woon had absorbed earlier. Dick paused outside for a moment, which gave him hope that he might be able to hold him off for a while. But then there was a loud bang from the door that made his ears ring, and a drill bullet flew into the gap between the two doors, making a jarring and deafening noise that terrified Dumo. He could feel his wall resisting the bullet, but it wasn't slowing it down much. Despair was written all over his face, and then with a bang, a large hole was blown in the mushroom door. The two of them huddled together and saw Dick appear with a villainous smile on his face. These little tricks, huh? All I have to do is shoot at the same spot a few times and it's over. He stepped inside and asked in a harsh voice, since when did you figure it out? You even told me to trust you, are you kidding me? He pulled out his mushroom sword and prepared himself, we have no choice. To defeat this guy in order to protect our friends. On the wall of the treasure room, a black crevice had just appeared, allowing the two eavesdroppers to look down at the sword that Dumo was holding. Isn't that the mushroom sword? Dick leisurely walked down the stairs, brandishing his gun dagger. I'm quite surprised that you weren't affected by the righteous persuasion skill. It seems that your mental strength is much stronger than I thought. His disgusting tongue licked around the blade of his dagger, and Dick whispered, I actually 
wanted, to take both of you back and keep an eye on you, but it's enough to keep one of you alive. This monster, Dumo swung his sword and cursed, his neck, had been grabbed by Dick at some point and pulled down. He rushed forward with a smirk on his face, the weak have no rights. His eyes flicked over, Dumo was just about to activate the sage mode when Dick's claws struck. Too fast, even in sage mode it was hard to see his movements. He rushed forward from behind, like you can't catch a mushroom. But his punch was easily blocked by Dick's arm, he turned towards the piglet and raised his leg to kick the little one in the side. The kick sent her crashing into the ground, she was knocked away. A long way, her whole body covered in blood, lying there motionless. Come on little girl, I'm sure the saintess will love to touch you, so just lie there and be good. Sage mode was just activated in his eyes, Zamor seized the opportunity to stab his sword into Dick from behind, but he was quick as a flash to raise his gun and block it, and with a wicked smile, he delivered his verdict, I have decided to sentence you to death. Zamor moved into an attacking position with his mushroom sword dance, but was completely outmatched by the two direct strikes from the dagger. With each swing, even though Zamor managed to avoid the vital points, he still received a deep cut on his face and on the back of his hand, making him gradually realize that he was losing control. Dick jumped up with lightning speed and kicked Zamor in the chin, causing him to spit out a mouthful of blood. His small body was kicked away, landing on a pile of gold with a clinking sound. His vitality was seriously damaged, losing 877 points. Zamor immediately called up the system to try to pull out a health potion. He couldn't die here, but as soon as he pulled it out of his inventory, Dick's precise shot flew towards him, shattering it in Zamor's hand, causing a wave of despair to wash over him. Dick stomped his foot on his chest, causing the young man to vomit up another mouthful of blood. He was furious but there was nothing he could do except call for the mushrooms. His mushroom was pressed up against the dagger, and looking up from below, he saw Dick's face, it was. Really Dick, the bastard waved goodbye and then shot him straight in the face. Suddenly, a shield in the shape of a crown appeared and blocked it just in time, behind. Dick, two figures jumped out and stomped on the ground with such force that it seemed to crack. A female voice rang out, full of disappointment, humans really do love to run around and kill each other. The person next to her replied immediately, it doesn't matter, with these guys. Here, they don't have a 1% chance of survival. Zamor looked up in surprise, what was this before his eyes? Another smoking character appeared and sighed deeply, I thought you guys had already killed each other? But then things changed dramatically. Looking at this situation, who would have thought that it was Bo, one of the four great generals of the Mushroom Kingdom? She looked down at Dick and said, I believe that you humans have a saying that is quite appropriate for this situation. The praying mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole behind it. Who is that? Zamor only saw that it was a gunman. Was it a criminal duo? From the smoke next to Bo, a muscular man appeared, his hand gripped tightly around a sword, and he continued. HMPH, invading the ancestral territory of another species and then talking about justice, humanity like yours is really good at turning black into white, isn't it? Dick laughed out loud, you're right, we humans are really good at turning black into white, but you. Zamor's eyes were focused on his height, and he muttered, why are you so short, a dwarf? He got angry when he heard that, who are you calling a dwarf? I'm Shinobi. Dick laughed but not happily, what do you mean by, this human and that human, aren't you guys humans too? Dick didn't like to talk too much, he jumped up and prepared to shoot with his gun. Who cares if the story I made up is true or not, but you two are definitely too fat and good scapegoats. He waved his hand and slashed out, all he needed to do was kill them all and tell everyone that he had dealt with the criminal duo. But the gun for Dick's slash collided with someone else's, and for a moment he was shocked that his move could be so easily blocked. Cage ran his hand over the blade of his gleaming sword and commented, your movements are too obvious, I think that's enough for you to go home and peel potatoes. Cage's many sword thrusts in a short period of time promised several basic moves on his body. Damn, I've met an expert, I didn't expect these two to be so strong. The dagger in Dick's hand immediately turned into a gun and he fired a few shots as if to warm up, he held it firmly in his hand and then switched to the mountain-breaking drill bullet, firing it at Cage and Cabo. Very familiar with this move, both of them simply dodged it with ease, avoiding it without any effort. Dick lowered his body and jumped back, just in time to be in range for Cabo, so she immediately drew her gun. Proficient in both knives and guns, but not at the peak of either, how pathetic. Dick didn't think so, he raised his gun towards her, a smug smile on his face, let me make you think again. Still standing opposite the couple, the two shots went around, typical of Dick's despicable sneak attack. These childish tricks only earned a glance from Cabo, without her needing to move, 
Ninja Cage appeared behind her with his arms crossed so that she could show her gun barrel in front of her. You've given up, haven't you? How pitiful. Cage crossed his arms and cut the sorrow in half. At the same time, Cabo in front fired three shots, leaving three bloody holes in Dick's body. Damn it, these two are much stronger than me, but what the hell are they doing here instead of taking the blood storage and running away? Could it be that they are here to collect despair like me? Don't tell me they are the Saintus's opponents? Damn it, I need to get out of here and warn the Saintus. At that moment, Zomo took the opportunity to hug himself, and ran over to see how Un Un was doing. It had been silent for a while and hadn't made a sound. In a daze, the little girl still managed to mutter, protect, mushrooms, which scared Zomo. Come on, Un Un, I'll give you something to recover right away. He pulled out the life force tube and poured it straight into the little girl's mouth, restoring 400 points, and gradually Un Un opened her eyes. Seeing the orange head looking at her in confusion, she rushed over to hug it tightly with all her might. With all her strength, literally. Zomo was squeezed by her and lost 1022. Life points, almost dying, but Un Un was clueless. The two of them had time to meet because Dick had been shot through with several holes by the screen of double swords. Combined with great skill, his whole body was pushed back, blood all over his badly injured body. But don't think that Dick is going to die. He quickly picked up a green bullet and stuffed it into his gun and tried to lift it high into the sky and fired the purple power streaks of the cursed bullet skill and transformed. He laughed happily, with the kind of bullet that the saintess gave. Even the strongest opponent would have to fall. Cage hated those who crowed too early. He rushed over with his nose, pointed straight ahead, and sent the son of a bitch away. Unexpectedly, as soon as the purple light touched him, Cage exploded and turned into something unknown. The purple light touched anyone and they were immediately immersed in a pile of smoke. Even Un Un and Zomo were no exception. Dick looked up at the sky and laughed. You want to end it, boys and girls? I'm the one who's going to end it. This thing not only heals me but also puts a curse of power on all enemies, turning all of you into monsters. Damn, the curse is effective. Cabo instantly turned into a hiding dwarf. Cage's muscular arms also turned into the hiding arms of a mushroom monster. Even Zomo has become a whole, turning himself into a mushroom. As for Un Un, needless to say, she is again a pig wearing a bow, raising her short legs and squealing. Whether in human or pig form, she still enjoys running, around licking her lips and playing carelessly. Dick approached his opponent, even if the effect of this thing is only temporary, it is enough time for me to finish you off a thousand times. Now the sermonizing tone comes out, feel the despair of struggling to walk like a child. All movement, magic will return to number one too. Start over, and of course, your father Dick doesn't have time. No matter how strong you are, you, just inferior monsters. Well said, Cage couldn't help but stuff his mouth and open his mouth to laugh heartily. Thank you, young man. Of course, Dick didn't understand what his expression meant. Bao also laughed and raised his middle finger. What a stupid human being. The one who should despair as you. Who else is here? Cage pulled out the pain and said angrily that this is how. I have to show you 100% gratitude. Dick began to feel that something was wrong here. What was happening that the aura around them was stronger than before. Cage's infamous cross slash just swung up and he had already rushed behind Dick so fast that he only felt a faint. Something strange just passed by and he had already hit the ground. You deserve to die faster. The words just declared that Dick's blood was splattered everywhere. Cage sheathed his sword, ending the bloody outburst of the naughty Dick. He fell face down on the ground, the cowboy hat finally leaving his head. How is it possible? How did they become stronger after turning into monsters? Blood soaked the ground, the temperature leaving Dick's body faster and faster. He stared at the dark smoke leaving the badge, urging himself that he could not die like this. I have to go back to the Saintus. I want to stay by the Saintus. Dick kept saying the words Saintus, his weak hands, reached out to the badge and placed it on it. The green smoke was suddenly sucked back in, but the Mushroom brothers and sisters didn't know, and no one else did. Zamor felt dizzy and asked Un Un next to him what the two of them should do now that the little girl was just squealing happily and not being helpful at all wait a minute stop for about two seconds isn't that uncle zasho who tried to kill me when i first entered the mushroom kingdom as soon as he finished thinking cage turned back to stare at the other two asking bao what was going on she waved her hand and said to kill them they are just a harmless weak mushroom and a pig cage walked towards the two and un un immediately became alert and blocked him for cage there is no classification if he decides to kill he just cuts down with one slash zamor hugged his head and cried out oh my god we are all mushrooms suddenly cage's movement stopped in midair not because zamor's words were full of mushroom love but his hands were shaking uncontrollably so much so that he dropped the sword on 
on the floor, scaring him, jumped up, thinking his little heart had fallen out. Not only that, Cage's knee suddenly gave way, the noise was so loud that Bao had to turn, his head to look, and so the general of the Mushroom Kingdom inexplicably knelt in front of Zamor. Why is my body not listening to me like this? Don't tell me it's because I've been in human form for too long and lost control. Cage didn't agree, if this thing stopped, me, my enemies would only have a 0% chance of escaping me. Determined to pick up his sword, Cage stomped his foot and charged up for a blow. Cross sword, not noticing the crown behind him suddenly lit up. Un and hugged Zamor tightly, the two of them were trembling with fear. To death, when suddenly they heard a familiar moist sound. This time, both of Cage's knees buckled to the floor, he looked at the crown shining with golden light, but his head was still incomplete. What the hell just happened? Bo began to notice the bright light of the crown, Un and also squinted his eyes to look over there, seeing something strange, he patted his hat. As soon as Zamor opened his eyes, he recognized the light as the same. That had saved him from Dick's bullet earlier. Unan suddenly looked at it with joy as if he knew what it was. He let go of Zamor and jumped up and down trying to lick the crown. Cage gritted his teeth and cursed, you fool, who dared to profane the legacy of my tribe, unforgivable. Flexing his calves again, Cage charged forward, determined to slash the lowly villains who blasphemed, I will kill you. Zamor blocked the piglet, shouting Zame Te Kudasai. Cage's lower head listened to him first and slammed to the floor. This time it forced him to kneel while he was flying, so it hurt like hell. But now there was more blood than brain. Cage repeated, once more, I can't forgive those two monsters. The upper body didn't listen to the lower body, Cage helplessly smashed the poor floor. Again, the loud noise made Unan and Zamor open their eyes to look. I don't know why this mushroom was so stubborn, but this time, his body seemed to be tired of Cage's jumping game. Not letting him jump anymore, just standing up, it collapsed by itself. I don't believe I can't kill you too. My legs are hard but the floor doesn't seem to be as hard, soon there was a continuous rumble. After ten times like that, Zamor was no longer afraid, he felt sleepy and watched. Cage thought his knees were too hard, so he kept pounding on the ground. Unan stuck out his long pink tongue and glanced at the place where he was moaning, as if to say, hey look here. Cage actually looked over, in front of him was the wet tongue was about to touch the sacred crown. Ignoring the pain, he stretched out and shouted, don't. Unan seized the moment to lick it with all his might and then covered it with dirt. With a proud face, wagging his tail continuously and squealing as if he was happy. Cage's world collapsed, oh my god, the legacy of the mushroom tribe. Bao was fed up, lit another cigar, and exhaled a stream of smoke, his eyes patiently on. The voice, this idiot, don't you understand that it's all because of him? Cage asked who, Zamor woke up, he pointed to himself in confusion, asked who, me? Oh my friend, did you misunderstand something? I don't know what that is either. The crown lit up as if to explain Zamor's question, it floated, out of Unan's reach and glided towards Zamor, who was watching with wide eyes. Right on top of the mushroom's head, it suddenly landed, the essence seemed to converge and then the crown sank into Zamor's head. The status window popped up to congratulate the player on receiving the legacy item. The first shock of his life made Zamor jump up. Before he could curse the system, he froze for a moment, his whole body emitting a bright golden light as if he were a rotating sphere. The blanket showed the image of the crown, the golden light shone on the indifferent toad's face, the pig's face. Looked stupid and couldn't ignore the piglet's expectant, happy and proud face. As soon as the mushroom's foot touched it, the crown symbol disappeared, looking. Zamor was completely normal, nothing different. He suddenly came to his senses, shaking his head madly before. He saw the system panel in front of him saying the word enemy. The quest to explore the ancestral legacy has been completed, receiving 12. 000 experience points, receiving the advanced teleportation scroll item. Completed the final evolution quest, received 38,000 experience points. Completed the quest to become the king of a race, received 550,000 experience points, gained the king's majesty skill, the race domination skill, the domain skill and increased respect. The words the player has enough experience and level up flashed continuously. But Zamor's head was still not clear of all this information so he was still stunned. Fortunately, he was still conscious enough to check the attribute panel, surprisingly. He saw that his title had changed to level 60 Mushroom King. Health and mana points were over 4000, attack and magic increased significantly, speed also reached 20, the skill line had added new ones that had reached level 10. Zamor was surprised, Kagakai was also surprised, impossible. Why? Did the king's legacy acknowledge a human as the new king? He used all his strength to stand up, 
full of sweat but still fierce. His mouth cursing trash. Return the king's legacy to me now. Die with me. Cage jumped over and then too. His knees knelt before Zamor as before. He also stopped talking to this stubborn old man. Both of them were silent until Bao's voice rang out. Don't you understand? Your attack will never hurt him. Bao's murderous aura made Zamor turn pale. He tried to raise his hands to ask for peace. Wait, wait, we can talk to each other as civilized mushrooms. Civilized people can also shoot. Bao fired two shots straight. Zamor's head who knew he couldn't fight back and coward. But unexpectedly, the old lady shot out several fireworks over his head, which were bright and dazzling. The light falling on his head was breathtakingly beautiful. The happiest one was the piglet. Bao accepted this fact with incredible speed, pulled down her hat and said respectfully, Your Majesty, we have completed your final mission and found a new king. She stepped over the still stubborn old man, knelt down in front of Zamor herself, and took off her hat to welcome the new mushroom king setting an example for Cage, who was still gaping beside him. He was so hurt that he turned into a curse, but even Zamor couldn't believe it and asked again, wait, me, are you serious? He began to feel his body to see if anything had changed. No, have I really become the Mushroom King? Somewhere far, far away, the melodious music blended with the petals fluttering in the wind, landing on the stone floor in the soft light, making the sacred cathedral as beautiful as a paradise. Behind the silver censer with eyes, nose and mouth, the shape of a pair of wings, had lit up almost completely, only one corner remained to be completed. On the circle formed by the six-pointed stars, were three people kneeling respectfully behind a long-haired woman. As the priestess clasped her hands together, the music gradually faded and then, stopped completely, giving way to her gentle voice. May the one who has realized his true worth, may his soul rest in peace. Indeed, when she finished speaking, the light on the winged staff, as the leader showed brighter and then filled the remaining gap. Fenrir, the king of the wasteland, the white wolf king spoke. Happily, we have finally collected enough to spare. Indeed, even found the last material we need. Something I never thought a street thug could do. Kamazu, the vampire king of the labyrinth cave, sneered, no, one would think you were smart if you only said the obvious. The old fox gritted his teeth and shouted at him, you stupid bastard, are you asking for a beating? Baba Robin, under the cloak, the leader of the beast taming alliance, did not bother to join the argument, just ask the master, have you confirmed it? The priestess said softly, yes, we have found the last material. It lit up in the holy water root that she was holding, and the dark shape stood out very clearly. When she was finished, the priestess turned back and said, I must go now. The meeting is about to begin, and everyone must complete their plans in the next few days. Passing Kamazu, she did not forget to tell him, I will count on you to keep an eye on those guys. He said yes, master, the smile on his face extremely, obediently made her call Baba Robin. I'll leave the other guilds to you, report any movement of the Holy Sword Guild to me. What about me? What is my mission? Kamazu was able to physically, teasing, you should stay here and be a good watchdog. Make yourself useful, pee on it to scare the little animals away. The mocking laughter drove Fenya mad, her muscles swelled, tearing her clothes and roaring, I've had enough of you. Just a flying rat dares to bark in front of the king, I will carve some manners into your rat head. Kamazu was not afraid either, he burst into power with an arrogant smile, stupid dogs like, you have to be taught over and over again. Otherwise the house dog will become a stray dog, right? Neither of them would give in, they burst into a powerful force ready to tear each other's throats out. Just as Fenya's fangs grew longer, a gentle female hand was placed on his head, causing him to calm down again. How could I forget you? It's because you're here that I feel safe. You are my strongest shield, Fenya. He immediately transformed into an obedient pet dog, thanking his master with great enthusiasm, which pleased her. The moment is near victory will be ours. The chalice that was clear before has now turned a deep red like blood, reflecting the face of the censor with five senses as the priestess mutters. Oh great demon lord, please wait for our offering. A person with a pure heart. The back of the censor also has five senses, now overflowing with red liquid, like blood, receiving the despair of ten thousand souls to unlock Gallum's skull. All that is missing is one person with a pure heart and the seal will be completely released. We pray that the world will open up and a new era will begin. In the dark land of the dead where there is no sunlight, on the six, large pillars suddenly lit up with the light of barriers of different colors. A bird flew in from somewhere, aiming at the purple stone and landing there without a care. It was a young bird with a fascination with the world and looked around, 
seeing two stones similar to the one it was standing on but red and green. Looking to the right were two in yellow and blue white. But the strange thing is that the bird could talk and suddenly called out to its friends, are you ready? Suddenly it raised its head and opened its mouth wide to let the yellow liquid fly up, turning into a super giant cabinet, using its mouth to blow into it, signaling that the meeting was about to begin. The sound waves hit the stone nearby, and in a moment, the image of a blurry human figure appeared. On the purple stone, a beam of light suddenly appeared coiled up and formed a human shape under the black hood. The green stone projected the image of someone with a familiar fluffy head, and on the stone, yellow was the one with the clock on his chest, only it didn't look much like a human. The crow glanced at the remaining stone and asked, why so so didn't come today? I miss him so much. He is the apostle of the land of the dead, specializing in protecting the right foot seal of the demon lord Gallum. The blue stone remained silent, but Zuzu didn't mind, and gently changed his form while declaring to get down to business, first let's see how everyone is doing. Zuzu's side showed 67%, the green old man had 96% and muttered with a look of no joy. I still don't like this place, I can't hide anything. The one in the silver light showed 50% and the one under the hood. Purple had reached 66%, while the yellow one had reached 83%. Zuzu, in the form of a newly born insect, praised them in a childish voice. It seems like everyone's work has progressed more than last time. Hey old man, I wanna know how so so is doing. He transformed back into a human form, and said with a sigh, it's okay. We have to trust our friends, right? I'm sure we'll welcome our master back soon. So my friends, has anyone noticed anything in the prophecy? Yellow one said in a muffled voice, there's nothing on my side. Green simply replied with a no, while the silver one suddenly repeated the prophecy. The sky will announce the arrival of that person, the earth will give birth to clouds. When 10,000 lives come together, the legendary warrior will appear. Her voice was clearly mocking, such absurd criteria. And yet this prophecy has been fulfilled? The voice echoed in the space, compared to the legendary warrior who exists only in the prophecy, our greatest obstacles are still the Holy Sword Guild and the Elemental King. If we can eliminate them, no one can prevent our lord, the demon god Gallum, from being resurrected. The green old man snorted in disagreement, if you knew their true strength, you wouldn't speak so easily. Until we inherit the power of Lord Gallum, we will not be able to fight the Sword Saint even if we all join forces to attack. Not to mention the Elemental King who also appeared there. It is important to mention again that Zoa Zoa has not appeared for 30 years. We don't even know if he is still alive or not, and what happened to the piece of seal he was holding, we don't know either. So before we try to inherit part of Lord Gallum's power, I advise you not to provoke the Sword Saint or the Elemental King. Zuzu transformed into an owl again, shaking its head continuously on the purple stone, agreeing. Wisdom has kept our ship on course for 10,000 years, as the village chief Suplerson said, it's better to be cautious but there's no need to be too tense. Why don't you stay and play for a while longer? The woman in white asked in a daze, oh my, I forgot. For a moment, village chief Suplerson, you were once defeated by the sword saint. If you have any psychological shadows, just tell me, I will help you purify them. He banged his staff on the ground, his annoyance evident in his voice. Or should I destroy your holy sanctuary first? You'd better take care of your own business first, a eh? bunch of trash that only knows how to drag others down. Zuzu interrupted him to mediate, everyone is a friend, please don't argue anymore. The one hiding under the cloak did not speak, the muffled voice of the yellow stone spoke up, hey, Suplerson, at your current speed, can you open the seal in a month or two? Once you enjoy the power of his majesty Gallum, you will be able to defeat the sword saint. Zuzu interrupted immediately, it transformed into the shape of a hand again, and shook it, that's not something we can know for sure. It continued to explain, as far as we know, the divine tree that Suplerson spent so much time growing has been destroyed. It can no longer help him absorb Gollum's magic. Suplerson glared at Zuzu as it said, of course he couldn't help the new. Warriors change their classifications either, so no one can help collect the materials. He looked at it and it immediately transformed into a big mouth baby bird. What did I say wrong? Woman in white, the saint, took the opportunity to add fuel to the fire, isn't that embarrassing? Maybe in the end you are the one who is holding us back, village chief. Suplerson, maybe you should just hand over the stormy meadow to me. He immediately turned on the fox mode reminding her that he didn't need anyone to interfere. Old people always have their own way to solve their own problems. Don't think that you are funny and can just interrupt. I can't guarantee that you will end up in one piece. After saying that, Suplerson disappeared without saying goodbye, the saintess was indifferent. And then she also disappeared without saying goodbye to anyone. From the beginning to the end, 
the one in the cloak did not say a word, but when the party was over, he also left. Zuzu called out to Theo in a panic, why is everyone leaving? I thought everyone would stay and play with Tucker, what about Pascal? It stopped its sincere, sparkling gaze, making the yellow one flinch, he frowned, unwillingly but still had to say that he had work to do and could not stay. Zizko also disappeared into the yellow light with Theo, making the bird panic, don't go, just for a while, please. Zuzu muttered dejectedly, they are all gone. Finally reunited with friends but no one stayed to play. Since the little so-so disappeared, Iza doesn't know if he has been noisy anymore. Suddenly it had an idea, there was no one left around except itself. Though they have all left, I can still make new friends by myself. It looked out into the vast expanse and called out, come out and play, my friend. From the depths of the darkness, something small could be heard. Dozens of old eyes looked back and forth as if responding to Zuzu's call. The green soup elder was gradually recovering his consciousness, his eyes were dim, and his whole body was trembling with anger, so much so that his hands were shaking. The skinny old man from earlier, only started to curse that despicable thing when he got back here. Do you think I'm useless without my tree? I'll show you. The madman swung his staff hard at a green-shelled snail, nearby and shouted at it, his eyes burning with anger. It's not just a few snails, I can catch them myself. What do you think? The snail looked at him with half-closed eyes, with three parts disdain and seven parts like a father. Because it had not done anything just now, but the old man kept pretending, don't move anymore. The new warriors wanted to help, and asked each other if they should help the village chief. The other one objected immediately, no way, last time we were just, short of a stone snail shell and he refused to help us level up, but I heard that he used to be a very powerful expert, but he still couldn't escape the arrival of old age. One next to him confidently said that that was exactly the reason why I always said what was the, best reason to be a warrior, to make money and get rich. They were tired of it and left together, leaving the old man annoyed and the playful snail. Suddenly, something from behind sucked on the old broccoli's butt. He let out a scream as if his hair had been pulled, and raised his fishing rod to the sky. It turned out to be the skateboard of a snail father who had endured for a long time, and now wanted revenge. It rushed over with tears in its eyes and bit the old man's fishing rod tightly, refusing to let go, the old hand on. The grass clenched tightly, unwilling to give up, remembering the first time he chose this fragment because he thought it was the easiest. Now he was furious that the stone snail had bitten his butt, he didn't expect the stone to make him so weak without it, to the point of being reduced to this. Unable to bear the pain, he stood up and used all his strength to beat the snail father. A moment later, the grass was covered with shells, and the old man was coughing and choking as if he was about to die but he still sat on the shell of the snail father and complained. I'm so tired, I used to be the strongest, but now, a bunch of snails can make me so exhausted. It's all because of that little brat who ruined this old man's grand plan. It's best not to let me see you again, or I'll swallow you whole. The mushroom kingdom is isolated from the outside world, but it is still illuminated by the bright sunlight, shining down on the four characters with different expressions on the city wall. Dumo asked with a sad face, what happened? Un in beside him was still eating his apple, ignoring his question. Your majesty, as you can see, the mushroom kingdom is gradually recovering. Well, after the fire caused by that demon mage, the land that was once black, is now covered with flowers and grass, and the mushrooms, both large and small, have grown back. Un is very happy, as long as there are trees and grass, he will have apples to eat, and the new king doesn't care what he asks. Dumo hesitated. What I mean is, why did we suddenly come here? Because earlier, he had thought about a lot of the system skills, for himself after being attacked, so it seemed strange at first. At first, I thought that this skill was suddenly activated, and, that it was all skills that the kings had. Cage put his hand on his sword and stomped his foot on the ground. How could a mushroom monster become the king of? The entire mushroom tribe, there must be some mistake. Unwilling to give up, Cage jumped up again to try again, he had to cut this mushroom in half to feel less angry inside. This time it was clearer, the territory skill lit up into several circles above. Dumo's head, and then threw everyone into the air, and then dropped them back to the ground. It was obvious that Dumo didn't do it on purpose, but Cage still opened his mouth and cursed. The whole group landed softly in the territory of the Mushroom Kingdom. Only Cage fell headfirst into the river, he just got up and was already staggering. You want me to recognize you as the new king? Playing with two swords on both sides, Cage jumped up and roared, the possibility is 0%. Standing fiercely, the territory skills suddenly activated, pulling him and the other three to another location, hitting Cage's head on a branch that wanted to strangle his mother's neck, pretending not to see his friend acting crazy. He just said, your majesty, 
Please don't play around anymore. Let's go back to where we were. I have some official business to report to you. Do Mo okay, by the way, I haven't learned how to use this ability yet. Once again, he took the group back to the city wall. But for some reason the three of them had grouped together as a team. Only Cage was in free fall, his sword and head pointing down. In two directions, creating a huge roar that attracted all eyes. Looking intently out of his window, Dumo pondered, the territory skill, allows him to move freely within his territory, the mushroom kingdom. The other skills are all passive skills, aren't they? His attribute panel earlier had some skill explanations. The majesty of the king is an exclusive ability only available to the kings of the race, causing all subjects to obey the king's orders, except that they cannot be forced to commit suicide. The race domination skill increases the effectiveness of all race skills by 100% and increases the speed at which skills are mastered. Dumo Mo has already experienced the territory skill, the limit of use is 10 times in 1 hour, each time consuming 400 stamina points. Finally, there is increased devotion, which makes the king become stronger as the number of monsters and worship increases. Cage clenched his fists on the city wall, wanting to bend his knuckles, he gritted his teeth so hard that he couldn't stand up, he could only crawl back to do Mo but still insisted, it couldn't be. Bao was very sure but still had to say, stop embarrassing yourself, anymore. Don't you see how he teleported us to the Mushroom Kingdom? That is an ability that even the previous kings have not mastered. In other words, the king's legacy has made no mistake, so no matter how dissatisfied he is, he is now our new king. Cage knows that, but look at the round butt of the pink pig mushroom next to him. All the previous mushroom kings had the form of a king, but this one doesn't. It turned out that this was the reason why Cage snapped and stood up straight again. Let me ask you, he has become the king, why does he still look exactly like a mushroom monster? If that's the case, how can he lead us? The sentence. It was like enlightening Dumo. He exclaimed, oh, really? Thinking back, this idiot mushroom is right. I am now a mushroom king at level 60. Why haven't I evolved yet? Thinking of the image of B in the seventh grade. Dumo wondered if he had the king's legacy now. Shouldn't he evolve himself into the super strong mushroom king form? If it's difficult, I'll ask the system. Dumo called it up and asked, could this be some kind of bug? Why don't I evolve? The system searched for images for a while, and gave Dumo a series of images showing players who had changed their rank to mushroom warriors, so they could not evolve any further. Your mushroom monster form is locked. However, since you have received the legacy of the king, there is a situation, strange situation, in which the player evolves into the species of the mushroom king but still retains the appearance of a mushroom monster. Oh yeah. Now Du Mo remembers that he sacrificed his ability to evolve to become a warrior. So that's why he looks no different even though he's already a mushroom king. Cage pointed at Du Mo who was scratching his butt, and exclaimed in disbelief, look at her. This guy is mumbling to himself, can she also see that he can be king? Bo did not answer but walked over to Du Mo, who was sitting with his back to the sun. Perhaps it was all fate, your majesty. Did you also get hit by a meteor? Du Mo asked in surprise, what meteor? Bo recalled, at that time we were looking for, for a new mushroom king, when suddenly a beam of light from the sky shot us. After waking up, we gained the ability to transform into humans. Du Mo understood as soon as he heard it, he was about to speak when Cage interrupted him. It must have been done by those guys. They turned us into that disgusting form. If I find the one who did it, I will kill them. Du Mo was horrified. He kept his mouth shut and didn't dare to say that the meteor shower came out of his butt. He just closed his two butt cheeks together, trying to hide the sweat that was dripping from his butt and laughing like a chicken. That's right, that's right, the piglet and I also became human after being shot by that light. As soon as he finished speaking, Everyone felt themselves explode, smoke rose from the place where Oink Oink was playing with the apple and even Cage the cunning fox, all had returned to their human form. Bo was not surprised at all, it seemed that the time of the curse had come to an end. Oink Oink could no longer hold the apple, and suddenly transformed into a human form causing the apple to fall on its head. It did not catch it in time, and the fruit fell to the ground with a thud. The little one screamed in despair, but Cage's roar drowned it all out. He knelt down like a cow, making everyone's hair stand on end as he let out a long howl. Bo was speechless, this idiot was at it again. Cage lowered his voice and let out all his strength. Anyone who didn't know better would think a pig had been stabbed. Even Dumo was starting to get annoyed. Bo explained that this guy was an idiot, just because he couldn't return to his monster form. That's why he was like that. 
Dumo asked in surprise, can we return to our monster form? Bo nodded. The smoky lady asked back, of course, don't tell me you can't do it. No one paid any attention to Cage's screams. Dumo was now only interested in how to return to his monster form. I've never tried it before. Bo lit his cigar and took a puff, then transformed into a beautiful mushroom lady. So fast that she caught the cigar before it fell, and said confidently. Oink Oink's eyes lit up with admiration quite different from Dumo, who was full of questions and asked, how come you can do it so well? The piglet had once returned to its monster form before because it had run out of energy, so it had never thought that it could change its form at will. Bo said it was easy, you just need to feel the energy from the meteor and absorb it into your body, then transform at will. To illustrate, Bo just stood there and exploded, returning to his perfect human form, causing Cage's screams of pain to echo even louder. Looking at him with tears and snot streaming down his face, Dumo asked, can't you? Mushrooms do the same and transform back? Hearing his question, Cage stopped crying and suddenly, jumped in front of him, very unhappily. It's easy for you to say, do you think everyone can, feel and control the energy of a meteor so easily? If that's the case, Dumo will try, he exploded right, in front of Cage's eyes, returning to his mushroom form with ease. Lala, I never thought of it, I thought, I would be stuck in human form forever. Damn it, why is it so easy? Cage shivered, unable to believe his eyes. Dumo had indeed returned to his small mushroom form, and was being hugged tightly by Un In, who called out, Mushroom, oh mushroom. Everyone turned to look at Cage, this matter is not, difficult at all, it's just that this guy is too stupid, because he doesn't know how to control, the energy in his body properly, the energy from the meteor and the energy in his body, conflict with each other, leading to his current state, turning back into a mushroom once more, Bodhi explained that this guy, is not a complete human, nor is he a complete monster, in the end, he cannot use his full, strength in either form, Cage was like a fish out of water, struggling, to protest, it's not that easy, my dear lady, he pointed at Un In and said, if it's so easy, then tell this little girl to do it, it's just that Bo D is used to controlling her energy, and, this little boy has been boosted by the legacy of the king, that's true, Dumo excitedly cheered Un In on, why don't you try it? It's easy, just think seriously about turning into your monster form. As soon as he finished speaking, he was punched by the little girl, his whole body shrank and he was as angry as hell, his mouth shouting transform transform. After a while, nothing happened, he laughed out loud at hi hi, making Cage open his mouth and laugh with glee. See, I told you, things are not as simple as you two think. Dumo pushed an apple into Unin's mouth, don't be like the old mushroom. Who is laughing? The little girl exploded with a bang. Unin transformed into a piglet with a bow, bouncing around and meeting the apple made Dumo very happy. This little girl is so smart. But her being smart is like calling Cage stupid, even more stupid than a pig. It was so critical that he couldn't stand it. The four great generals were defeated by a pink pig. Cage couldn't take it anymore. His face grimaced and he screamed, oh my god, for a long time. Even more fierce than the old lady before. Everyone was itching, unable to bear it. Even the calm Bo D had to speak up, hold your breath. It didn't work, so she fired a bullet straight into the general's brain. His entire muscular body fell backwards. Cage rolled his eyes and opened his mouth, only stopping when he fainted. Looking at the other two who were scared and thought he was dead, Bo D still had to explain. Don't worry, it's just a blank bullet. Let him hold his mouth so we can talk about the main thing. Your majesty, as you can see, the mushroom kingdom is gradually recovering, but the mushroom tribe has really disappeared. And without the tribe members, this place is also just a piece of land with some mindless mushrooms growing on it. That's why we need you to lead us to prosperity once more. Only you can bring back the lost tribe members. Dumo pointed at himself and asked in bewilderment, what do I have to do? She twirled the gun in her hand skillfully firing several shots at the wall below. Her feet, growing three very familiar assistants, photo mushrooms, speaker mushrooms, and sticky mushrooms. Because the bullets that Bo had just used were filled with spores, plus the super evolution skill. These are the spores of different types of mushrooms that I collected earlier. I put them in the bullets so that I could plant them again immediately. He was still poking at these little mushrooms curiously, asking again, do you mean that we can grow mushrooms from spores until they grow stronger? But miss, 
Why do you need me when you can do it yourself? Bo was not annoyed that he called her miss, and explained that there were 40,000 species of mushrooms that existed in the past. The spores that I have collected are just a drop in the ocean. Only you can bring them all back to your majesty. Curious immediately activated his spore eruption, running back to Bo and asked excitedly, Are you talking about my spores? I could grow mushrooms with this before, but I never grew any mushroom monsters. Only now did Bo notice that he called her miss because she was older than him, trying to control herself and and replying, you can do it now, because now you are the mushroom king, you have the emperor's spores. Speaking of which, Curious seems to have once seen this skill when looking at the status sheet. Maybe his spores automatically became the emperor's spores as soon as he became king. Bo agreed, only the emperor's spores could create the most basic mushroom, the mushroom monster, which would then evolve into other types. As long as your majesty keeps creating more and more mushroom monsters, they will gradually evolve and restore our tribe's strength. All right, let's try it while it's hot. Curious released the spore eruption from the palm of his hand, excitedly calling out, appear my little mushroom. However, as the spore smoke gradually dissipated in the afternoon sun, Curious didn't see anything moving. He looked at his two hands with concern. Why didn't anything happen? His spores were not effective. The system saw that this guy was too stupid and had to jump up to explain. A king has many skills, but the player has not unlocked them all yet. Please upgrade the skill level first. Curious nodded. That's true. After all, it was only recently that he received the king's legacy. Curious understood, the ability to raise mushroom monsters, with his spores was also a kind of skill. So miss, is there any way to help me accumulate experience points quickly? Suddenly, the cold muzzle of the gun was pressed against his face, the gentle miss, had endured enough and could not bear it anymore, and immediately switched to the villain role and growled, your majesty, please call me Bo. Don't call me miss this and miss that anymore. Even as the mushroom king, he was helpless in front of this face, curious. Was so scared that he raised his hands and begged for mercy. Yes yes yes, yes sister Bo. Then the miss smiled happily and put the gun away. Of course I have a way to help you develop quickly. Helping you is also one of my tasks. He took a deep breath and asked in the king's tone. Bo, why don't you call me curious instead of your majesty? The miss asked, why? She asked in a strange way, why? I'm used to calling your majesty, and it sounds more respectful than the way he called me miss at first. Well, because I don't feel like I have the ability to become the mushroom king. I'm still too weak to help the mushroom tribe regain their original strength. When I become stronger in the future and can lead the mushroom tribe to prosperity again, it will not be too late to call me your majesty then. The skill of righteous persuasion suddenly appeared just as curious. Made the announcement, causing Bo to suddenly look at the little guy in a daze. Although he had gained power from the king's legacy, he was not arrogant at all. If he could maintain that attitude, one day, he would definitely become a great king. Though Bo pulled down her hat and respectfully agreed, I understand, curious. For those who don't know, curious means many mushrooms in Chinese, which also matches the two's wish to restore the kingdom. Ignoring Cage lying on the city wall as if he were dead, curious asked, what do we do now? He suddenly opened his eyes wide, regained consciousness, and unexpectedly jumped to the two of them, interjecting, isn't it obvious? Cage slammed the ground, we have to take revenge. An eye for an eye, a tooth. For a tooth, we must crush those in the one-eyed poisonous society. Remembering the elder brother who had incinerated the entire land, curious, frowned and asked, do you mean for us to fight with that scratch? He said in fear, are you crazy? I don't want to die yet. It's too good that the system appeared just in time. My goodness, they jumped out to congratulate the player for activating a new quest, the Mushroom King's Revenge. For Curious, the map of this continent had only opened up a part of the places he had set foot in, the vast and verdant green grasslands. Inside there was the Novice Village, the Novice Forest, and down below was the Bay of Crescent, also known as the Crescent Moon Bay next to the Mushroom Kingdom area. To the west, more arid, was the Inn Range and the Rocky Mountain where he had received the reward quest. To the north was the Castle of Time, the Sinking World, the Pentachrome Desert, had not yet been unlocked, and to the extreme south was the source of the volcano and the Land of the Dead. From the Mushroom Kingdom, the whole group took a glider down to the southern area surrounding the Rocky Mountains. The train driver rang the bell with a loud clang, sending the train through a dark rocky gorge and back to where the sun was shining warmly. On the barren mountain top, the roar of motorcycle wheels suddenly echoed across the ground. Not one but several suddenly stopped right next to the wall and watched the train pass by. 
watched the train pass by. The place without windows saw a yawning pink pig wearing a hat. For some reason the leader stared at it intently. The more he looked, the more uncomfortable and itchy he felt. The train too toed through the long gorge. Inside it was full of people passing by, making a lot of noise. Most of the men's attention was drawn to a young girl, even the service. Staff came over several times just to say, Dear guest, if you need anything, just call me. Bo hummed and hawed in her heart, smiling politely but not needing anything. That attitude caught Cage's eye, and he blurted out that Isa was a despicable person, and it was because people usually didn't pay attention to him. In addition, there were always strange things, mentioning it made him angry, and he squeezed Curious in his hand, who cried out in pain. Bo looked at the scenery outside, admitting that it was indeed easier to get around outside the Mushroom Kingdom in human form. Cage, the sly fox, disagreed, saying that he could completely overcome this thing called a train. Curious stared at him, this muscular but stupid guy kept continuing to roar about revenge without even knowing where the one-eyed poisonous society was. Bo suddenly said, not long ago, the ticket seller said that the railway line in the volcanic mountain range area had been destroyed, so we have to get off the train at a nearby village and wait for the elevator to arrive. This was the first time Curious had heard of such a thing, he was curious and wanted to ask what an elevator was, when he heard a voice nearby, it sounded very strange. Even Bo looked in that direction, no wonder Curious didn't look. A fat old man, dressed like a landlord, was holding a glass of wine and looking at people who were not of high status, and said in a pretentious voice, why is a beautiful woman like you sitting here with these peasants? Why don't you come over here and sit with us in the luxurious carriage? Bo closed her eyes and ignored the flashy guy, and said only one word, scram. But the old man didn't scram, and he glanced at Cage and sneered. Oh my god, you're so cold. Don't tell me you're rejecting me because of this ugly guy. Seeing him squeezing the mushroom in his hand, the old man's words became even harsher. I wonder which cave this little goblin crawled out of, but I'll let you know that I am the priest of the castle. The word time had not yet escaped his throat when Cage drew his sword and slashed across the old man's wine goblet, or rather, across the old man's neck and the wine goblet. The head fell to the ground with a thud, and the two guards beside him rushed over in a panic. It rolled so far away that Zomo had to stick his head out to watch the show because the round head rolled even faster than a bowling ball. The round head rolled even faster than a bowling ball. It stopped to leave a long trail of blood on the carpet in the middle of the aisle, and suddenly a tiny body like a child's grew out of it, and the old face let out a scream. Hey, my butt, why aren't you stupid servants coming to help? Zomo. Seeing it, he lifted it up and shouted at the mushroom. What the hell is this thing? Is that its real body? Is he really human? He was lifted up by his two subordinates, like a toy, and his mouth kept exclaiming, Oh my god, I hate it, I'm so pissed off. He was carried past Cage's seat, his mouth flying, and the two useless pieces of metal didn't help me get dressed properly? Why did it suddenly unlock? I'll turn you two into scrap metal when I get back. The whole carriage looked out to watch the old man, curse as he passed by. Everyone had seen what had just happened, but no one cared why he had been slashed. One of the masked men licked his tongue in his hand and said to the man opposite him, The castle of time is a great place to train, but I have to warn you that it's not cheap and the fees are also expensive. The blonde girl sitting opposite him replied unhappily, I still don't understand why the guild sent us to fight a few monsters that we could have done ourselves. Responding to her was a man with his upper body covered, only his mouth visible. Miss Ellie Fire, we shouldn't ask too many questions about the guild's decisions. Furthermore, we should never underestimate our enemies. The fourth guy poured a lot of wine into his mouth and then laughed and wiped it on his lips. He really gets straight to the point. I want to know what the wine in the Castle of Time tastes like. The bottle of wine in his hand was pushed back as before and put to his mouth to take another sip. The masked man next to him asked uncomfortably, can Mr. Adrian think about his image a little bit? He put his hand on the young man's shoulder and called out, Edmund, why are you always grinning like that? We have the Dragon Knight, Sir Eugene, assisting us in this mission, so what could possibly go wrong? The guy with the knife asked in surprise, really? Isn't Sir Eugene a very powerful expert, who was once part of the guild of sword saints? Adrian didn't answer him, but whistled at Edmund next to him, no need to be so tense. Our guild has many experts, even new recruits have already become members of the B-rank reserve. The sentence made Edmund's knuckles crack, please be polite. If you were a little more decent and drank less, you would have been promoted to B-rank a long time ago. Hearing about having to drink less wine again, Adrian poured the bottle of wine up and drank it all. Forget it, I'd rather be AC rank all my life than give up drinking. 
Speechless with this guy, Edmund looked at him and said nothing more. After a while, the voice was drowned out by the sound of the wheels. Of fire, he looked at Alifei and asked, I can't help but wonder, why did you choose to join this guild? The other guy interjected, isn't it obvious because our seahorse tusk guild is so strong? Edmund disagreed, you probably don't know that. As a member of the elf tribe, Alifei could have chosen to join the wild forest elves. Remembering one of the six largest guilds, the masked young man asked, is it really that easy for all members of the elf tribe to join, so easily? Edmund answered, of course not. But Alifei is a genius archer, and she is fully qualified to join the guild. Hearing people complimenting her, the girl tossed her long hair and said coldly, it's just because the forest of elves is not in this lady's eyes. Her arrogance made the other three boys speechless, people were just complimenting her out of politeness. But Alifei saw an opportunity opening up before her eyes, she would prove herself even without her father's support. I, Alifei, can shine on my own. Adrian, the fool, stood up and invited everyone to have a glass of wine with him to make the atmosphere more cheerful, but he was flatly refused. The train chugged along, taking everyone to the last train station, which was sandwiched in a deserted canyon. The carriage door opened, and a pair of extremely high heels stepped out. The group quietly merged with the crowd getting off the train, and because it was their first time here, they felt a little confused in front of the signpost pointing to the bathroom, the Buddhist mountain, the border, and the vast grassland on the left. On the right were the volcanic source, the barren wasteland, the pickup and drop-off point, and the car park. After thinking it over, according to the system, we still have a long way to go, but as long as we continue to go this way, he pointed to the right and said that it was the shortest way to the volcanic vein, and Unan immediately echoed his warning with an ooh. The system had once pointed out that the sealed fragments were hidden in places where a lot of energy was concentrated, so it was not difficult to think that a fragment was hidden in the volcano. The other two guys with sullen faces, were going there to get revenge. While I just wanted to find a sealed fragment, KGH growled that this time we would take the initiative to attack, and we would definitely not let any of them go. Suddenly, Zomo leaned over to the pink pig and called it over in a low voice. It stuck out its tongue and oinked, and braked right next to the bear mushroom, who was him, and climbed up. The speed of the mushroom was too slow, luckily I have the little pig here. Together with his mount, Zomo pointed to the distance, okay, this time we will go back to being the original tomb team, let's go. As soon as he shouted, Unan's four short legs shot out, and he left a cloud of dust behind him. However, after a while, Zomo noticed something wrong, and Unan only uttered a thick sound. Because his head had been easily grabbed by KGH, who lifted him up and asked what are you doing? He looked down at Zomo, trying to use the most sincere expression to say, even if I don't want to admit it, you are still my king, I will train. You like I did with the previous kings. It sounded luxurious, Zomo frowned and asked again, what kind of training? He dropped the mushroom head and said irritably that if we wanted to destroy those humans, only me and Bao wouldn't be enough. So from now on, I will teach you how to fight properly. Looking at his experienced manner, Zomo suddenly felt uneasy and asked hesitantly, what kind of training is it? Start, what's the hurry? Mr. Mushroom, can't we talk about it slowly? Seeing Cage lift his majesty's head again, Bao snatched the cigarette from him and said, don't worry, he looks like that, but he already knows that Zomo is the last king, and he can completely trust him. A moment later, the two useless mushrooms were spinning around on the grass, while on top of the buffalo, Unan had turned into a human, and Bao were lying comfortably in the sun. Cage's muscles peeked out from the frame, so where was Zomo? The status window showed that he only had one out of a hundred stamina points left, and reminded him that if he didn't return, he would fall into a coma. Then this guy who is panting and sticking out his tongue must be the male lead, and there is no one else. Zomo gasped and called out, Uncle Cage, can I have a little rest, haha. Ha. Well, think about it, he took his sword and knocked the little guy on the head causing a huge bump and directly deducting 50 vitality points, which was almost fatal. He treated Zomo like a draft horse. Why did you give up so quickly? You can't stop, until you are exhausted. Zomo took a few more steps, feeling nothing but tired and about to turn into a dog. Uncle, I really can't go on any longer. It's easy for him to go to Zomo, and he said, don't repeat what I said. Don't stop unless you are exhausted and faint. Also, call me master quickly. He was so angry that he knocked on Zomo's head with a little anger, and he must have some shame left, and told him to call him whatever he wanted, and gritted his teeth to continue to be a coachman. Who knew that Cage was smiling sinisterly behind him, he he, that's because you made me kneel for hours. As long as I use this training trick, even if you are the king, 
I will beat you like a dog. Zomo gritted his teeth bitterly, and pulled the cart, and then heard a bang, and he ran out of stamina points and turned back into a fainted mushroom, with his head full of big lumps. The system didn't hear anything, and at this time, Unan was about to come down to see his mushroom friend. Cage sighed and said, this is probably the furthest point he can go. The pink order lifted its mushroom up and called its name, but it didn't hear it. It was not until the little girl pressed the mushroom's face against her fruit basket that she pouted and told Cage not to bully the mushroom, that Zomo started to tremble because of the lack of oxygen. Cage didn't seem to care, this kind of fighting power still takes a long time to be enough. Babe, you should also teach this girl something. In the middle of the night, the bright moon shone down on the mushroom cart that was standing upright. Zomo opened his eyes dimly and saw someone who looked like Unan warming himself. She was so beautiful that he wanted to take advantage of this pair of lips to suck on the little girl's mouth. Suddenly, Unan's mouth was full of strawberries, and a man's angry voice rang out, wake up. Who else could it be but Cage? He was twisting his mushroom head, and his ugly face made Zomo scream out loud. Oh my god, my lovely little pig has turned into an ugly monster. Zomo flicked himself away, avoiding Cage as far as possible. Aren't I practicing? What's going on here? He looked around and asked in amazement, where is the little pig and the old lady? Oh, I mean, where is sister Bo? Don't worry, Bo is hugging Unan and snoring on a mushroom mattress, next to which is a music mushroom singing a lullaby. Cage picked his ears and asked in annoyance, why are you so weak that you fainted after training? Zomo just remembered, and said uncomfortably, my stamina has decreased, and my head hurts so much. The window popped up to explain that it was because you had been in a coma for six hours. And oh, if you were to faint outside by yourself, wouldn't you be eaten alive? If I was alone, I had to make sure that my stamina never dropped. But no one that my endurance would never decrease. But no one could see the system except Zomo, in Cage's eyes. He was just a kid who was mumbling to himself. He didn't care, and just concluded in annoyance that he might have died if these people hadn't been here. Cage understood this sentence, and he replied that there was no need to be so pessimistic. After all, it was only the beginning of training. He sat down on the ground in frustration. It was my fault that I couldn't evolve. I originally thought that as a human being, I could surpass my limits and become stronger. But I was too reckless, and now I have become a low-level monster. No matter what I learn in the future, I will still be bound by my own state. Cage interjected, who said that you need to evolve to become stronger? Seeing Zomo's dull face, he curled his lips and explained, who said that low-level monsters can't be stronger? Seeing that he still had a face as if it was only natural, Cage became angry and scolded him for being stupid. Your strength is not determined by the form you choose, but by the determination of your heart. As long as you have 100% determination, you can become strong. But Zomo was not affected at all, and he thanked Uncle Cage for encouraging me. But if I become the king of mushrooms like this, I can only drag everyone down. Pessimism is like eating instant noodles. He lowered the hilt of his sword and said, look carefully. I don't know if Zomo has seen it. He spit out the grass in his mouth and kicked it, which made the little guy's eyes wide open. The grass had just flown more than a meter high, and four sword strikes had been slashed out. Zomo saw that the grass was not damaged at all, but when Cage put his sword back into its sheath, it was suddenly cut into several pieces in front of the mushroom's admiring, fearful, and surprised eyes. Cage asked with a smile, what do you think, is it strong? He picked up this thin thing up, and his eyes widened, it's strong, very strong. He continued, but I am also what you call a low-level monster. Of course Zomo didn't believe it, so Cage had to start telling the story, which began 40 years ago. In the Mushroom Kingdom at that time, it was still extremely prosperous, and there were countless large and small mushrooms waiting in line to evolve. They were all ordinary mushrooms, and when they jumped up and down, their whole bodies would emit light, which meant that they were about to evolve. Some of them became level 24 Enoki mushrooms that could pluck the Enoki mushrooms on their heads and give them to level 6 mushroom monsters as weapons. With the Enoki mushrooms in their hands, they would become level 19 mushroom soldiers from level 6 mushroom monsters. But such a seemingly ordinary scene was a different story for a mushroom holding a soft Enoki mushroom in its hand. He was reluctant to pluck his own mushrooms, let alone give them to other mushrooms. Look at this face full of tears and unwillingness, he coaxed the little guy to hold it in his hand. But when he saw that he had turned into a level 7 mushroom soldier, he rolled around crying and making a fuss. So the Enoki mushroom that couldn't harden was laughed at by all the surrounding soldiers. At that time, the soft mushroom was very confused, 
and couldn't bear the ridicule, so it cried and ran away. At this point, everyone must know that it was Cage when he was young. He used to be an Anoki mushroom, but he couldn't provide weapons for other mushrooms. To everyone, my presence is not important. I was born to be a weakling. Until one day, humans invaded the mushroom kingdom again. The king at that time was a middle-aged man with a stiff mustache, who ordered the entire kingdom to concentrate on dealing with the humans. According to his orders, they shouted, Pon Pon, Mogu Mogu, and resisted the humans with a horde of mages and assistant warriors. Amidst the imposing mushrooms, there was one who held his own tattered weapon, but his mouth was not inferior to anyone else's. In general, his courage was a hundred points, but his attack points were zero. The Anoki mushroom head pierced the soft skin so much that it became a dangling string in Cage's hand. He shouted Mogu and was kicked away by the man tumbling several times and spraying nosebleeds. The mushroom soldiers saw Cage being kicked away and ran up to avenge him, but he had to struggle to get up, and the Anoki mushrooms on his head were scattered. Unwilling to accept it, Cage plucked another one from his head and used all his strength to jump up and shout, only to make the other guy laugh even more. What's wrong with this stupid mushroom? He deserves to be beaten up for being so weak. The guy grinded Cage under his feet and sneered at the monsters who were only at this level. Why should the president worry about them? He took out the tip of his sword, ready to pierce through the mushroom. Unexpectedly, a squeezing sound rang out. Cage realized that the human who was about to kill him had fainted, and he was not afraid of anything. The human who had just rescued Cage appeared in such a way that he opened his eyes wide. It was a man with a sword in his hand, his face hidden behind a white veil, and his whole body dressed in a cross between a ninja and a sumo wrestler. The man flicked his finger and decisively gave a blow to the top of the head of the guy who bullied Cage, as fast as, cutting through the entire battlefield, giving each human a fatal blow. In Cage's eyes at that time, the scene was extremely magnificent. The man charged alone, precisely hitting the heads of the humans, as if it didn't take any effort at all. The clay jars full of wine were piled up on the cart, and a tall man at the head urged everyone to hurry up. The leader said that as long as we could get the wine to the front lines, all the mushrooms would be defeated. So the whole group hurriedly pushed the wine to the battlefield, but not to drink it, but for the fire mage with a big belly to jump up and throw a fireball at the wine jar turning them into slow-acting bombs. When the mushroom soldiers approached, they exploded, and the whole group fled in disarray, with their heads burning fiercely, and the sand on the ground was sucked towards the base of the stone mushroom. They moved their chests up to their mouths, puffed out their gills and cheeks, and then let out a pile of sand that covered the wine carts and extinguished the fire mage's fire, making him very angry. Ridiculous, he sneezed and created a fireball, intending to burn them all up. Unexpectedly, the stone mushroom played with the flow of sand, pouring down from above and drowning the fire mage, covering his mouth and throwing him back to the group behind him, who were attacking the outer line. Countless metal mushrooms and mushroom soldiers flew over like flies, causing the weak humans to sweat in fear. Has the leader's plan failed? We're done for. 36 strategies, if you can't beat them, just run away. The whole group of people scattered and retreated to save their lives, followed closely by a group of mushrooms, who threw away all their broken spears and javelins. The mushrooms stood on the edge of the cliff and shouted, Mogu Mogu, which sounded like they were scolding their fathers. The few remaining jars of wine were carried back to the potato field, which made the whole group collapse in triumph, and the cheers shook the whole area. This land had just repelled the invaders, and there were spoils of war, so everyone was very excited. Only Cage, who was alone, hid behind a large rock, sad and afraid to come out to celebrate. That night, the moonlight was shining softly on the peaceful mushroom kingdom. The ground was strewn with empty wine jars, and the mushrooms had drunk all of it and were sleeping naked on the grass. Even the king was so drunk that he was leaning against a mushroom, which showed how happy everyone was. Only Cage was huddled behind a rock, extremely sad. As he was pondering about the future, his life in the future, he suddenly saw the bright light of the traditional magic formation shining near him. A pair of hairy legs landed in front of him, causing the young Cage to be astonished. At that time, he didn't know who this was, but this head of hair was unmistakable. It was the broccoli who was laughing he 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 he, just as his father had planned. He raised his scepter high, who would have thought that invading the Mushroom Kingdom would be so easy and simple? But how can I turn the Mushroom King into a demon? But whatever, the broccoli yelled at the mushrooms who were already snoring. As long as I can complete this task, I will be able to enjoy part of Gallum's power. 
Ah ha 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 ha. A stone flew from somewhere and hit his foot, and he looked over with raised eyebrows, and saw a mushroom looking at him angrily. Impatient, he hit Cage, gently but sending him flying. Away, commenting in disgust. It seems that there are still some awake around here. Cage coughed up a mouthful of blood, and his anger made him suddenly gain the skill of talking. He shouted, I will not let you hurt the king. Ah ha ha ha. Broccoli waved his feet and rushed towards Cage, raising his scepter high and preparing to give him a blow that would send him to reincarnation. He turned out to be a rare variant that could talk, but it didn't matter because he was going to die anyway. The green scepter was about to strike, and Cage closed his eyes in fear, waiting for death. Unexpectedly, someone's sword tip pierced straight into the stone making a kang sound that made Cage's eyes blur. In front of him was the swordsman behind the mask who had saved him this morning, and now he was blocking the enemy for Cage. However, he was too weak to see clearly, and he fainted as soon as he opened his eyes. Many minutes later, Cage lay motionless on the grass for a long time before. He woke up and turned over, feeling pain all over his body. He saw two people in the distance, the wild mage shoveler had collapsed to one side, and the other man had a long white hair, and a bundle of swords of all kinds on his back, pointing at the mage's face but not locking his mouth. Sword Saint, what does my attack on the Mushroom Kingdom have to do with you? The words choked in his throat as the tip of the sword pierced Schubler's neck attack on the Mushroom Kingdom have to do with you? The words choked in his throat as the sword tip pierced Schubler's neck. Green and the face hidden behind the mask showed obvious displeasure. Shubler Green, you have completely fallen. Hearing his name being called out, he stammered and asked, What are you talking about? I know you have contacted the followers of the demon god, Gallum. Although I don't know what your goal in the Mushroom Kingdom is, I'm sure you've made a deal with the followers, haven't you? Shubler Green was hit right in the heart, and he shut his mouth tightly, but his eyes glared at the other man, not understanding how he had been discovered. The sword saint swung his sword, and a white light flashed. Your thirst for power has blinded you, and I will never allow the demon god to return. Sirona is an old friend. At that moment, Shubler Green fell to the ground and rolled up the absolute oath, roaring, I know I'm wrong, my old friend, please spare me, my life. I swear on this absolute oath that I will disband the society immediately and never leave the novice village again. This guy is very slippery. Shubler Green asked again, what if I don't? He was furious in his mind, if I don't, if I don't, I will lose all my magic and power. The sword saint said nothing, and swung his sword in a beautiful long arc, cutting through Shubler's exclusive hair bun, and he felt as if a piece of his soul had fallen out. A deep crack, and smoke rose up. The sword saint then returned the sword to his back and reached out to take the scroll that Shubler Green had offered with both hands. Opened a deep crack, and smoke rose up. The sword saint then returned the sword to his back and reached out to take the scroll that Shubler Green had offered with both hands. As he left, the sword saint left a sentence, you should never think about doing anything bad again. Cage had seen it all. The man walked against the white light to his mushroom hat, gently lifted it, up, put it on his head and drank three Le Chimois, becoming smaller and smaller before Cage's darkening eyes. He closed his eyes wearily, and suddenly woke up and opened them, calling out, your majesty, your majesty, so urgently that he didn't know that he had been bandaged, and only looked around in a hurry, where were the others, were they okay? Not seeing anyone, Cage ran around with his round buttocks, ran to the cliff and looked down. He called out in a trembling voice, everyone, are you okay? It was obvious that they were fine, so his eyes were filled with tears. Below, his majesty was holding his sword high, and together with all his mushroom subjects, he was eating. Celebrating yesterday's victory, Cage couldn't hold back his tears, it was good that they were all okay. Suddenly, a voice sounded beside him, to protect your family, you have not retreated even when faced with an unbeatable opponent. Only now did Cage realize that there was someone beside him, who was praising him, you're not bad, kid. Only now did Cage realize that he had been bandaged, and he asked in surprise, you must be the one who saved me. The man stood up with a cool and casual air, pulling down his hat to hide his face for the time being, well, if fate permits, we'll meet again later. Suddenly, Cage knelt down, surprising the sword saint, what is this? He called out with tears in his eyes, if you have the heart, then please follow through. I don't know what kind of mushroom you are. I don't know if I can evolve into a strong person like you. But please teach me how to use a sword. I want to be as strong as you. The sword saint asked again, 
Do you want to become stronger? Why? Cage gritted his teeth and said resolutely, to protect this place. The sword saint was silent for a long time, as if in thought, before he spoke again, I train. My swordsmanship very strictly, do you think you can withstand it? I can. Cage gritted his teeth to express his determination. Suddenly, he saw the look in. The Moor's eyes, who wanted to ask something but didn't dare. Cage felt embarrassed and asked, what are you looking at? He replied immediately, oh, that's all? Why did you stop telling the story there? Too much training? We're just getting to the good part. He retorted, what else is there to say? I've already taught him how to practice anyway. Hey, listen, Zamor just argued that he taught him when he stuck the scabbard in the kid's face. But he refused to give up and pushed it away, continuing to argue, apart from almost exhausting me? Cage stood up abruptly and raised his sword to the sky, laughing. That's right, that's it, that's the way to get stronger, trained to the point of near exhaustion. Then, once you recover, you repeat it day after day, day after day. Wait a minute, stop for about five seconds, this line is so familiar. Zamor grimaced and said that he had read this story before, that bald-headed guy, right? He called out the system, and it answered him, so Zamor asked, me, a mushroom monster, can I really become stronger by constantly pushing my body to the limit? It affirmed that it was indeed possible to increase your attributes by training your body. So Zamor clicked on his attribute page, and saw that his vitality and energy had increased slightly. He saw that there was indeed an improvement, but his level had not changed. I only got 10 points of each type even though I trained to exhaustion. Isn't that a bit ineffective, system? It replied immediately, the closer you get to your limit, the more your attributes will increase, but I do not recommend training in this way because it is very inefficient and you are very vulnerable to injury while you are unconscious. So is there any way to help me become stronger? Zamor asked resolutely, but the system simply replied, no, leaving him, speechless. Cage pouted and interjected, can you stop talking to yourself? I'll tell you, as long as you can get past the first bottleneck, you'll become stronger. Suddenly, Zamor was curious, how long did it take you, to complete the training course? He spread out his five fingers, winked at the little guy, and laughed, it took me about this long, kid. Ha, huh, five months? That's not too long. Cage looked down at him as if he didn't know anything, thinking, how could it be five months, it's five years. Oh my god, five years? Seeing Zamor's panic, he nodded with satisfaction. Although it doesn't sound very good, but a golden needle mushroom like me is still stronger than a basic mushroom. So in your case, I'll say ten years. Zamor's face twisted when he heard the number ten, but Cage just stood up and said simply, of course, that's under normal circumstances. However, you have the blessing of the king's legacy, so it will be much faster. The previous mushroom king only took one year to complete it. Of course, I must always remind you that everything we are doing now is to break the limits. The body. Then I will also teach you swordsmanship, which will also take a lot of time. Zamor collapsed to the ground, exhausted, oh no, ten years, how many ten years will I have in my life? The Gaulish apostles won't just sit there and wait for me to get stronger. His eyes glanced at the system's previous message advising him not to grind. Zamor read it over and over again, and suddenly thought he had come up with a way. Eureka. He jumped up excitedly, not knowing when Cage had looked up at the sky and said to. He would train him well so that the tragedy would not happen again. He looked up at the starry sky as if he could see the old mushroom king up there, but the new king just stared blankly and didn't listen, so Cage had to ask him what he was doing. After all the trouble he had gone through, Zamor snapped his fingers and said, Oh, I suddenly remembered that I have something to do, so you can rest now. He curled his lips and cursed the little brat. How many times have I told you to call me master? What's with the uncle? But whatever, Cage also needed to rest, and tomorrow he would train this guy harder. He put his sword down on a small mushroom cap and suddenly looked at it up close. The following is not mentioned, but Cage did not forget. He recalled the days when he was a child following the sword saint to train. Diligently following his master's training, Cage knew that his master really enjoyed teaching him, which made him even more confident. But then that day came, Cage, tears streaming down his face, pointed his sword at the opposite side, where his master had transformed into a human form, and stabbed the sword into the head of the mushroom king who had turned into a fierce demon. The crown fell to the ground, as if bringing him back to reality by the flickering firelight. Somewhere, in, the flickering darkness, many blood-red eyes shone, 
shining from a lake surrounded by strange spiral trees. The head emerged from the water first, and then the whole body, strangely muscular, stretched out. After it, a group of level 21 swamp fisherman monsters lived in a group, bathing together in the moonlight. Although its critical hit point was as high as 60% and it looked extremely ferocious, the swamp fisherman was very close to its family members. When they became adults, they left their parents to start their own families. Because of their slow speed, they liked to hide in the pond and wait for their prey to approach. One night, they were having fun playing in the lake when a guy suddenly appeared. It was the one who had emerged from the black ink that Zamor had met in the Mushroom Kingdom last time. He took out a golden bell from his ancient neck, and the clinking sound made the monsters look up warily. Then he shook his wrist, causing the golden bell to ring, and when the swamp fishermen heard it, their eyes immediately turned fierce. Full of murderous intent, the monster roared and glared at the others in the group with extremely fierce eyes. Only, a few seconds later, the whole group rushed at each other, not caring who was their brother or sister, they bit and tore at each other like enemies. In no time, the peaceful lake under the moonlight became a battlefield because of the sound of the bell, and the sound of the waves crashing against each other echoed, until the moon was at its zenith. The trees around the lake were full of scars, blood was splattered red, and the corpses of dead mermen floated all over the lake. Only one survived, growling incoherently. The robed figure stared at it, and then, flew gracefully out of the lake's range, and once again rang the golden bell making the merman's mind even more ferocious. It transformed into a bloodthirsty monster, its body also suddenly growing unusually large, and sharp horns growing out of its skin. Its mouth became as long as a crocodile's, its teeth and horns growing jaggedly, looking like a monster from hell that had just crawled out, now growling hungrily. Grabbing a nearby merman's head, it threw it into its mouth and swallowed it whole. The merman's head followed the esophagus, down, pressing against the dirty green skin, and suddenly on the skin of the skull, the grotesque facial features of the merman were revealed. The monster scooped up all the heads in the lake and put them in its mouth to feast on them for a long time, while the robed figure waited calmly for it from above. Until, when the claws clung to the spiral tree, the monster jumped up like a Spider-Man, and it had equipped itself with a full circle of skulls around its waist. Crawling on the ground like a hungry lizard, the robed figure took out the bell from earlier and shook it to adjust its direction of running. When he saw it running, a group of monsters were ready, and he was satisfied to turn into a puff of smoke and dissipate. The next morning, the morning sun shone down on the land, and Zamor had just woken up after a deep sleep. He jumped to the ground and looked around, waking up the tadpole with him. Near the campfire, only Cage sat in a daze as if he hadn't slept all night. He called out to him, but he didn't answer. Bo went up to the little ones and asked where Zamor was, and Cage replied in an unhappy voice. Ask that little brat tone. Ask that little brat. What he did all night, who knows. He just pointed to a pile of dry grass stacked up like that, Cage said it was his. From there fell Zamor, tired as if he was about to faint, muttering that this was enough. I'm too tired, there's only one more. Over a hundred stamina points. Zamor's eyes were about to faint, determined that only one last step was left. He took out a familiar looking basin, stuffed it with entrails, dumped the pile of dry grass, and then pulled out the limp green slime he had treated before, wringing it like a rag. When he was done, Zamor snapped his fingers at it and again stored the characters, putting his butt on it to activate the skill. What skill it was, anyone could tell by the rising butt flag and the bubbling water. Zamor braced himself and decomposed, causing the pile of dry grass and himself to emit a brilliant golden light. Too familiar with the feeling of his butt cracking, Zamor clenched his fists and continued to brace himself, making bow. Feel very strange. What a powerful magic, it's like a king level skill. Cage also didn't expect that brat to be able to do this much, and began to feel curious about him. The system informed him that he was gradually decomposing 955 dry grass stalks into nothing. The pop-up window jumped out to congratulate him. The player had successfully decomposed a bundle of 1,000 stocks of medicinal herbs, and the reward was 12,000 experience points. But Zamor wasn't done yet, he was panting and panting, and then coughed up a pile of gold, forming a super potion. It is a miraculous potion made from the concentrated essence of 1,000 herbs. The impurities of the grass have been completely removed, and it has a sweet aftertaste derived from mushrooms. Drinking this will cure all conditions. Level 6. Now he had no time to celebrate, he fell to the ground with his face wrinkled together from exhaustion, too tired to speak. Yuan In saw his friend like this and ran over to lick him. Zamor called for help from the robber, his hands shaking as he pointed to the side. On that side, pick it up for me, it's a great merit. Looking at the pink pig fishing buoy pointing towards him, 
Zamor smiled with satisfaction as if he could die right here. Seeing Yuan in just biting the medicine bottle, he tried to borrow the big toe to show the little girl. It's smart, ignore me, see me, drink, drink. Okay boss, Yuan in nodded vigorously in agreement, it had heard. The word drink, so it pushed the whole bottle into its mouth. The bottle was so big that it quickly disappeared in Zamor's eyes as his hopes dwindled. He looked dumbly at the little girl who was wagging her tail violently, proud of herself. Anyone who saw Zamor's soul leave his body, the crazy little girl, was about to scold him, when suddenly her head hurt like a hammer. The pink pig Delner had become a volcanic pig. Yuan In's head burst into a cluster of vitality trees, and notifications of significant stat increases kept popping up. It leveled up rapidly, and its evolution skills and endless vitality along with the physical enhancements it had just received also increased slightly. Happy for your progress, Zamor let his hands down and accepted to give up his life. He had been knocked out like that by the stamina points returning to zero, and had fallen unconscious. Three days later, on a beautiful beach where the waves crashed against the rocks, Bao and Yuan In were sitting under a mushroom that had grown out of a rock, sheltering from the sun. The little girl closed her eyes for a while and then opened them again, looking around with a wary expression, soon causing Bao to open his eyes and look at it with a scrutinizing gaze. But more precisely, both of them were looking at the little boy with orange hair, who was struggling to pull a mushroom cart with an old man sitting on it. Yuan In sprang towards it, happily oinking, when suddenly Bao fired a shot in that direction, unfurling a bright red net that wrapped itself around Yuan In's butt. It fell to the ground with a thud, rolling around helplessly for a few turns, before exploding with a bang and transforming into its human form, using its hands and feet to crawl out of it, its mouth saying, let go, let the little pig go. Only then did Bao step down from the colored rock, looking at Yuan in sternly. Hmm, your speaking ability has improved, but your concentration is still not enough. You will continue to train with me, understand? It didn't dare to move, its whole body, cowering into a ball, timidly obeying and looking pitiful. But at the moment, no one had the time to pity it, and it still had to listen to the nagging even though it only had one stamina point left. Too slow, you've only been pulling for a day and you already want to give up. He's breathing like a dog, with a stamina bottle plugged into his neck that's still more than half full, silently lamenting that he had been in a coma for more than a day, not to mention a failed decomposition, in short. He had wasted three days, with only the bottle on his neck, as motivation for the relentless torture of the old man. Fortunately, he had at least succeeded in creating one of these bottles. As soon as the system reported that his stamina was running out, before he fainted, he bent down and sucked on it. And suddenly he was full of life again because his stamina had recovered to 100%. Okay, old man, he pulled the old man away at high speed, who was thrown out of the mushroom cart by inertia and was completely frightened. Not bad. I thought you'd faint again. There, but you've made more progress than I thought. It wouldn't be possible without the little potato on my neck, the old. Man turned around and smiled wickedly. I made this thing. But before he could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by the old man's hearty laughter. That's because I'm a fucking great master. In fact, you've learned to use your power properly. He smiled and didn't bother to listen to him, so the old man just let him be. Suddenly remembering something, he turned around and said to him that he had a hypothesis. Because the closer he got to the limit, the more he earned. At that point, the old man roared, what then? If you have the energy to think, then try harder. The old man obeyed and then braced himself to pull the mushroom cart with his violent teacher. After all, the old man had already said before, you must know how to break the barriers of our species. The lower levels must try ten times harder than the higher levels. There is no time to be lazy. Just thinking about it, you know that the path of a low-level monster is very long. You have to train twice as hard and work ten times harder to break the limit. With each level you pass, it becomes even more difficult. Repeating the process of breaking through to a higher level, growing more and more muscles, and finally becoming a low-level monster with 18 abdominal muscles. The old man emphasized to him again that only by breaking through many times, can we eat a piece of meat with a high-level demon. The old man agreed with this, and he was also determined, so he was hit by him and almost became a fool. Not to mention the 100-point vitality point. The old man turned around angrily and asked, what's the matter? I'm not being lazy, why are you hitting me? He laughed and stood up straight, preparing to hit him even harder. Don't you think that just a little bit of this will make you better? Think it's time to increase the difficulty. The old man swung his sword continuously, laughing and telling him, to keep pulling the cart while dodging my attacks. Day 4 passed, and the old man was still suffering from the old man's violence, his head covered in mushrooms. Un and meditated with Bao with the only motivation, being a pink pig on a 
pile of juicy apples. Day 8 was still a day of suffering, the old man carrying. The old man on his back, walking on the stone pillars. Phi Un In had been playing until the afternoon, meditating to the sound of Vina Hao's music. On the twelfth day, the difficulty only increased, not decreased. The old man now, in addition to being a horse pulling a cart for the old man, also had to pull a four-eyed elephant that he didn't know where he had found. Un In's progress was obvious, he didn't need his eyesight to catch apples easily, because he couldn't let the fruit fall down to waste. At night, the master was snoring beside the fire after a long day's work, his eyes shining strangely. On the twentieth day, when the crabs were walking around the shore playing the game of catch me if you can, Un In was taken by Bao to a rocky beach where he met a large creature, made up of many sharp rocks. It was a giant level 55 stone monster, with a sky-high vitality of over 7. Oh 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 a critical hit rate of 60%, and a very good defense. This is a superior monster that lives in the storm grasslands. Besides being aggressive, it is also useless. Though most people will try to avoid it, it, these monsters are strange in that they like to collect gems to attach to themselves to attract mates. These gems are hunted by jewelers and craftsmen. However, in Bao's eyes, it was only valuable as an opponent for Un in to test. As soon as she heard the start, the little girl obeyed, wielding two streams of power in her hands, and shot them at the monster. The monster flashed the blue light of the gem in front of it, activating the level 10 hardening skill due to being beaten up by Un In. The little pig's fists kept punching the man. Bao stood at a distance and reminded him loudly, don't use violence all the time like that. There are many people stronger than you. You have to focus on finding your opponent's weakness. She reminded him, okay, and he stood up straight, completely healthy. Not rushing to attack like every other time. Un In closed his eyes and at the same time his wild instinct was raised from level 3 to level 4. His whole body radiated a beautiful light, attracting the stone monster to strike again. Seeing Un In escape, it struck again with another punch. The little girl easily dodged it, her eyes still closed, and she silently sensed the weak points on the monster's body, including the face, two shoulders, chest and abdomen. Leaping down from above, Un In used his little pig's fist again. His eyes lit up and he aimed at the monster's shoulder and punched it with a very satisfying thud. Not stopping there, Un In jumped from its hand over its head and down to its shoulder, finishing a series of punches. The monster was surprisingly fast, activating the level 10 hardening again, chasing Un In's flight path, intending to hit the little girl with its fist. Almost there, it suddenly shattered into several unconnected stones that fell softly to the sand. Un In landed, not needing to look back, and happily boasted. Sister Bao, I did it, can I go play with the mushrooms now? She sighed and told him to go. Although she was just a child, her learning ability was not ordinary. And as the king's companion, this little girl was truly a rare genius. Over at the mushroom picking spot, the old man's grumpy singing voice could be heard again, what did I tell you? These medicines are just a few external items. If you want to become stronger, you have to train even harder. His nagging was drowned out by the mushroom picker's screams of pain. As he grimaced from severe dehydration, his stamina bar completely drained. He was so dry that he stuck out his tongue to breathe, still answering. In a grumpy singing voice, I can still take it. But that was before the system popped up to report his. Stamina was zero, and he fell into a state of unconsciousness. At this point, the mushroom picker could no longer play the trick of sucking him dry like before. His body trembled, his eyes were sunken and his lips were purple, and he fell, face down on the ground, not knowing what day or night it was. This time the old man didn't scold him, he even laughed. Not bad, kid, but you've finally reached your limit. Let's end today's training session here. He put his sword back in its sheath, leaving the mushroom picker lying on the grass. I wonder how many days he'll be unconscious this time. Suddenly his body lit up, and streams of golden energy came out of it and flew up, leaving C.A. Gi in disbelief. The light shone all the way to where Hun and Dang Sinbo was playing, and suddenly it turned into a small sphere, just like the sun. It enveloped the mushroom picker in the middle, who was gradually rising. He was gently lowered to the ground, a breakthrough. Successful, enjoying a body that was as bright as new. The status window immediately popped up to congratulate him, the rate of attribute increase had. Increased, received 80,000 experience points, congratulations player for leveling up. The mushroom picker enjoyed the feeling of super exhilaration, the golden light. Flew away but he was still amazed, his body felt wonderfully light. C.A. Gi looked on, speechless, the brat had done it. In less than a month, he had successfully broken through. The mushroom picker turned back to admire his own muscular body. Amazing, 
This was exactly what he had been expecting. C.A. Guy didn't ask anything, so he asked him what he meant. The mushroom picker explained that he remembered that the teacher had once said that he had to break through little by little. I just added a clever little trick while practicing the breakthrough. I trained as hard as usual, but whenever I was about to faint, I would just take a sip of my medicine. This allowed me to continue to accumulate strength. By constantly reaching my limits, I kept pushing myself until I was exhausted. Once, again, and again, until I felt like I couldn't take it anymore and exploded to overcome everything. All at once, because I couldn't bear it any longer. He looked at C.A. Gee with a mischievous look boasting that this was his trick. The closer he got to his limits, the more he progressed, un and didn't understand, but still liked it, his mouth calling out mushroom, mushroom. Bao standing next to him praised his comment, saying it was clever, but, you need to have enough medicine on your neck to complete it. C.A. Gi finally smiled, not understanding what the little boy was saying, but, if he had broken through, it was time to start training for real, so don't get cocky. From now on, training will only get harder and harder. It's time to train for combat. C.A. Gi's smile made him unhappy. He was already tired of hearing about combat training. So breaking through was just the beginning, where the giant mantis nest stood tall in the sun. Unscathed but the ground was covered in foaming mantises. One look and you could tell that the young man was using his mushroom sword dance hat to face. Mantis's three in one blade meaning Zamor was having a fierce battle here. Exchanging swords with just one blow, he and the green mantis landed on opposite sides. On the face, Zamor had a long cut but the level 57 senior mantis swordsman had fallen. Un and jumped up and down to congratulate him, saying mushroom, mushroom, making him flat-nosed. A lot. See, my fighting skills are very good, aren't they? Of course, Cage would never praise him, he still scolded him for being a fool. That was just a warm-up. Zamor was weak, what a strange warm-up. But no matter how many questions he had, Cage put on his senior face to teach him. In front of a real expert, underestimating your opponent can lead you to death in an instant. Suddenly he felt dizzy all over, his instincts telling him that there was something extremely dangerous lurking around him. Zamor quickly raised his sword to block the thing that had just been shot at him, but its force was too strong. He coughed up a mouthful of blood and was thrown in the opposite direction. The sound of the sword being sheathed was very clear. At this moment Zamor had already seen the one who had just attacked, and observed cautiously. Under the dome with a hole cut in it, thin legs led the flesh to the ground, and an old, gnarled mantis stepped out. This was a level 78 mantis swordmaster, with more than tens of thousands of health points, not to mention a critical hit rate of 80% and a super high speed of 70. When a mantis reaches its peak, it will evolve into a swordmaster, and then become the swordmaster for all the mantis swordsmen in its territory. Zamor looked at the level 78, then glanced down at the attributes, wondering why this monster's attack characteristics were so powerful. Cage stood outside and said, it's just a difference in rank. As a king, you should at least be able to handle this monster. Zamor shouted back, uncle, even after I broke through completely, my attributes are still not as good as this thing. That thing flicked me off the ground, its eyes blazing as it unleashed its swordsmanship. At the master level in the air, so fast that Zamor was still talking to Cage and hadn't even gotten into a defensive position when it launched a very sharp slash, and there was a loud bang in the middle of the team. That night, the ghost burned in the flames, and Un and rustled around picking up branches of herbs and arranging them into a mushroom-like incense burner as it always did. But it was very busy and didn't rest at all. Unlike the other three sitting by the fire, Zamor looked down at his body wrapped in several layers of white bandages, and said with difficulty, can't we find an opponent who is on the same level as me? Cage of course retorted without missing a beat, maybe for others, but not for you. Bo added, because you are being trained. To become a king, you can only show your full potential by fighting opponents at a higher level. Cage continued, among those who attacked the Mushroom Kingdom at that time, Many were of a higher rank, but, they were all defeated by the reigning kings. It should also be mentioned that all the invaders died, except for the last one. The two of them went back and forth, and Cage told Zamor that there were two things he needed to improve. One was that there were too many unnecessary movements in the way he used his sword. Bo continued immediately, you need to learn how to unleash the true power of your weapon, the mushroom sword. Zamor looked. Looking at the thing next to him, he asked in surprise, are you talking about my weapon? How can I unleash its power? The sword that was powered by charging turned out to be the mushroom sword, a unique weapon. 
Cage continued to explain. The mushroom sword is the traditional weapon of the mushroom king, which appears before the king in a miraculous way when needed. Although I don't know how you got it, but it's clear that you haven't learned how to adapt to it, and you don't have your own unique fighting style yet. Frog said stupidly, it's just a normal sword. He looked over at Un In, who was still diligently picking up each branch of herbs with its mouth, and suddenly remembered that they all seemed to have the same formula. Absorb, store, release. Bo interjected, the sword of the late king was formed from a thousand absorbed mushrooms. That's why it has the ability to absorb and release energy. That's right, that's why the level 60 mushroom king was able to defeat the level 69, because his weapon had special abilities. So, all we need to do is learn how to make my mushroom sword absorb and release energy. As soon as he said that, he was immediately hit with a painful expression in his eyes, full of pain. Ow ow ow. Why are you hitting me? Don't you know I'm a patient? He was so discouraged that he didn't even bother to correct him. Just asked if he had heard anything just now. Had heard anything he had just said. It was time for Bo to step in. She released some smoke and began to tell a long story. Throughout history, all mushroom swords have been unique. Their characteristics were based on the kings who used them. So each king had a different fighting style. Please, think carefully. How did you get the mushroom sword? Un In was there too, and when its mushroom was suddenly asked, it turned to look. Zamor was so badly beaten that his mind was in a fog, he tried to say that the sword was made from a branch. Cage thought this guy was talking nonsense. The Mushroom King's sword was made from a branch, this life is over. In the warm firelight, Zamor suddenly thought of something, and took the sword in his hand, and after a while, he said, oh, I seem to remember. Remembering that his head was split open by Cage in one blow. In the dead of night, Zamor could be heard moaning, all. Oh, my mushroom juice is flowing out, my health points are dropping. He encouraged himself, I can do it, I can do it, I'll kill you. Zamor roared with hidden meaning making his eyes bulge open, and the two sides VA collided in such a way that he fell backwards and smashed his butt. His teacher, Cage, shook his head as if he had nothing to do with it, but of course he didn't bother to help him. Zamor had to get up on his own, and rushed towards the praying mantis, let's see again. He drew his sword decisively, and swung it lightly in a master level swordsmanship, which took away 1250 of Zamor's health points. Before he could even wipe the foam from his mouth, the praying mantis was already on the other side. A clear failure that even Bo didn't bother to comment on. But Zamor was not convinced, he breathed heavily and his eyes shone brightly at the mantis, demanding to do it again, and leaping up to try and collide with the mantis swordsmanship. Its eyes narrowed in the manner of a cultivator, and it gently swung a single sword strike as if it were very basic, sending it back into the wall where the other one was. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew from behind, and Zamor didn't know how he had appeared behind it, his feet dragging a long trail. He was breathing heavily but smiling with delight, I saw it. The proficiency level of the sage mode increased from level 7 to 8, and Cage finally smiled for the first time that day, that's some progress. The two sides collided once more, and Zamor flew out, outward, losing 782 points, his whole body falling to the ground. Just seeing its movements is not enough, if your body can't keep up, it's useless. Cage stood outside and reminded him, you've reduced a lot of unnecessary movements, but there are still some shortcomings. If you can't defeat a monster at this level, what will happen when you face the one-eyed demon? Bo didn't let him get complacent, and came out to Zamor's side, you've made a lot of progress in a month, which means you have the talent. Try to activate the special ability of your mushroom sword. Zamor's hands trembled, and he stood on the pair of wind shoes, asking again, the special ability of my mushroom sword? I really don't know. I don't know, but I can't give up. He cursed and tried again. Bo watched as the king was beaten up by the praying mantis. You possess the legacy of the king. You are the only one in the world who can do it. Think about how your sword was formed. Zamor dodged and gritted his teeth, thinking, how did a branch become a mushroom sword? What is its connection to me? There was no progress, and Cage sighed. He's the mushroom king, but he doesn't even look like a mushroom. Maybe that's why he can't use his sword. Somehow, those words reached Zamor's ears, and a few words lingered. Mushroom, branch. Suddenly he smiled confidently, and muttered to himself, I understand, that's how it is. When I use the mushroom headbutt in human form, it becomes a power in my legs, allowing me to charge and jump with incredible force. I charged forward, adding the jet spore skill, knowing that, when I am in monster form, 
the skills will change to the monster form. But when I am a human, the skills will change to suit the user, or rather, it is mushroom magic. Zamor stretched out his hand and cast the spore eruption, hiding in the smoke right before the praying mantis eyes. So it looked around cautiously and drew its sword, so fast that the sword was back in its sheath before I could even see it. Zamor's smoke was cut in half by a sweet slash, the timing was so precise that it was amazing, and Cage stared intently, waiting, only un and screamed out, Mushroom, don't tell me your mushroom has become a split mushroom. Looking at the praying mantis round battle eyes, I knew it wasn't, the smoke was simply cut off, and I had turned into a mushroom monster, pointing my sword straight at my opponent, using free transformation to change abilities between the two. Forms will allow me to combine mushroom skills and mushroom magic into one. At the praying mantis young age, Zamor lowered himself again, putting aside his formality and transforming into a human form. Switching back and forth quite easily, Zamor immediately turned the mushroom sword dance towards the master praying mantis. It still swung its hand and slashed without a beat, but this time it was unexpectedly pushed back. Cage began to understand. This idiot was using his skills to switch between human and monster form to change the rhythm of the master praying mantis swordsman. At this moment, Zamor received the title of magic swordsman, the sword, glowing ominously, causing Bo to nod in satisfaction, I see. Of course, a cunning old fox like the praying mantis had already sniffed out Zamor's transformation, and lowered its body and danced its sword around quite gracefully, increasing its speed considerably. In the first second of the new battle, both had soared into the air with incredible speed. But for Zamor, that wasn't enough. In the second second he cast a spell on the soles of his feet, creating a counter, forced to send him flying out of the path of the praying mantis crosscut, and in the third second he landed behind it. The mushroom sword dance was cast again, and immediately 590 of the praying mantis health points disappeared. Anger surged up as quickly as its speed, and the praying mantis turned around and slashed several times in a row to vent its fury. Zamor tried to save his life, constantly transforming from mushroom to human to surprise the praying mantis. As soon as he escaped the consecutive slashes, he was in mushroom form, but he didn't just use the spore eruption to hide in the air, which startled the praying mantis. As soon as it drew its sword and prepared to slash at the smoke, Zamor swooped down from above, aggressively blocking it. This was the end. The praying mantis didn't say much, and slashed through, and when the sword was sheathed, Zamor's head fell off. Wait, his head fell off? Needless to say, Bo was horrified, whining and crying like rain, and his teacher was also scared to death. But then the body exploded, and Zamor emerged from the spore smoke unharmed. However, it wasn't just him, but many clones exploded from the sky and ground, making the people outside suddenly bewildered. What's going on? Why are there so many mushrooms? Each of his humanoid legs used the jet spore as a springboard, and he soared through the air, looking like he didn't know which one was which. Wanted to make your eyes go crazy. Zamor smiled defiantly at the protruding maggot eyes, then moved quickly and drew his sword, using the master swordsmanship technique. The slash passed through the stomach of one Zamor, two Zamors, and then a dozen of them were slashed into nothingness, but the original was still alive and well, very proud of his special skill. If you're going to cast it, you have to give it your all, each Zamor shouted, combining into the new technique, the Mushroom King Spore Emperor. Combining into a new technique, the Mushroom King Spore Emperor. The praying mantis just touched the sword, and four mushroom sword dances were slashed at the monster at the same time. Zamor had already landed, and the praying mantis body had just reacted, and its hand had not yet had time to draw the sword, causing the three people to look at it with their mouths wide open. It crashed to the ground, and at the same time Zamor's clones exploded, turning into smoke and disappearing, leaving only one original body. The status window popped up to congratulate the player for killing the elite monster and receiving 15,000 experience points. Congratulations on inheriting the level 10 Spore Emperor skill. Zamor was a little embarrassed and happy, and finally he won. The two old men had not yet expressed their opinions, and Unin had already jumped up to celebrate for him. After a while, Bo smiled, there is always a light in the darkness. The Spore Emperor can only be used to create basic mushroom monsters, but because Zamor's form is locked in that form, the creatures created can also transform into human form. She was delighted, and said that he was probably the only mushroom king who could do this. The mushroom tribe is being led by a very good king. Cage's thin lips did not move, and after a while he smiled, I agree 100%. In front of the praying mantis cave, 
the entire group of soldiers and their leader had bowed their heads at 90 degrees for a long time. The master looked up, his protruding eyes, looking at Cage who was standing on the mushroom cart waving at them. Zamor pulled the cart, and turned his head to ask, do you guys know each other? He replied, yes, at that time I and the teacher were practicing on the stormy grassland, at that time he had not yet evolved. But let's stop. Talking and pull faster, Cage sat down and ordered him around like a coachman. Bo suddenly spoke up, Zamor, you can see the map, right? How far is the volcanic vein from us? He looked at the system map and said we are still far away, with the speed. We are going, it will take at least two days to get there. Zamor looked at the system map and said that we are still far away, and at our current speed, it will take at least two days to get there. At the current speed, it will take at least six days to get there. That's really slow. Bo smoked his cigarette calmly while Cage got angry and pointed his sword at him. That was the old him, but now he has improved a lot. How can you run at the same speed? Just three days, just give him three days, to get to the volcanic vein. Zamor didn't bother to grumble like he always did, instead he smiled. Because if he himself improves, everyone else can come to rob a piece of the seal from the Golam apostles. It's true that he's stronger, he threw on and out to run by itself, and he carried the entire mushroom cart. But the piglet and I can push them back without any problems. The king who punched Zamor has reached level 62, his health and mana points are both in the tens of thousands, and his infinite health means he won't faint. His attack points are close to 1000, his speed has increased to 52, and his magic and defense have also improved significantly. Except for the level 6 identification and absorption, spore explosion, manipulation of death and sage mode are below level 10, all other skills have reached level 10. The pink pig downer is also catching up with level 60, its health is more than double that of Zamor, its strength is also infinite, and its stats have increased a lot, except that it doesn't have any magic. After a period of training with Bo, in addition to the skills of infinite vitality and level 10 plowing, the other skills are on average from level 6 to 8, with only the wild instinct at level 4. It's been a long time since the system popped up to remind me that you still have a quest that has not been completed and the Owl Inn is nearby. Do you want to stop by the Owl Inn? No, Zamor just remembered, he had completely forgotten about the quest, because it was also on the way to the volcanic source, so of course he would take advantage of it. The first floor of the Owl Inn is a tavern, Zamor led the group in and even had to call out to the old fox teacher. I'll be quick, you and Sister Bo sit down first and don't cause any trouble. Cage folded his arms and looked serious, but still agreed, and reminded him not to forget to ask for more information about the target. Every time I meet the innkeeper, he is wiping the glasses, asking the usual question. Have a good day, would you like a drink or look over the reward quests? He replied that he had come to complete the quest, so Ponter brought out the list for him to look at. I see, it says here that your last quest was to capture the criminal duo. After the last report that they appeared near the Mushroom Kingdom, all those who accepted the quest have completely disappeared and no one has come to claim the reward. Ponter dropped a large bag into John Moore's hand, saying that since he was the only one to collect the reward after the allotted time, he would be the one to receive all the money, so keep it safe. He took it and remembered the gentle uncle who liked to laugh, and suddenly felt like he was holding his share. Un Un In seemed to understand why John Moore was sad, and it patted him on the head to comfort him, and the little guy stopped being sad right away. Ponter gave him a new scroll, saying that these were some new quests, please take a look. There were five quests in the stormy grassland, but they were all to kill monsters that had attacked the city, all ranked. A and S, below was the sunken world with two B-level quests, hunting fish and exploring mysterious caves. John Moore was surprised, why were there so many quests to kill monsters that attacked the city? Moreover, all of them were quests with high difficulty. Ponter explained that the fierce and unidentified monster suddenly appeared more on the stormy grassland and had already destroyed many towns. Although the Sword Association had sent members to kill these monsters, because there were too many incidents in the distance, was too far, so they couldn't handle everything in time so some towns were still in danger. I must remind you that you should never take a monster that can destroy a town lightly. You can look at the adventurers here and see that, even for people from the six major guilds, there are still casualties. John Moore pondered, at first he wanted to take advantage of the time to complete a quest, but now he should probably avoid unnecessary trouble. Cage the fox came in, what an idiot. No matter how strong they are, can they be stronger than the enemy we are about to face? What are you afraid of? Think of it as the next part, in your training. If the teacher is so strong, then the student must fight. John Moore smiled and asked the innkeeper if he knew which monster was closest to the road to the volcanic source. John Moore is not the same as before. 
even if the worst happens. Kobao and Uncle Cage are still with him. Let's see how difficult an S-level quest is. The innkeeper replied that the nearest monster on this route is quest number 3. The difficulty is rank 3. But it's nothing. John Moore didn't need to hear the sentence before accepting the quest. Suddenly, behind him, there was a loud laugh that attracted attention. The table of Adrian Zara's metal-clad hand patted John Moore's shoulder so hard that his bones almost broke. He laughed. Hey kid, we have also accepted that quest. Do you want to go together? The smell of alcohol was so strong that both of them had to cover their noses and refuse. Adrian was so drunk that he couldn't speak clearly. Hick, ah we are from the very very strong walrus tusk society. After finishing the sentence, he fell over and hit the counter. The wine bottle rolled around and looked like he was dead drunk. The others came to take him away quickly, not forgetting to apologize. This friend has drunk too much. I'm sorry for disturbing everyone. A female voice rang out blocking John Moore's path. On the way here, we visited all the places that were attacked by the monsters that were announced, even though the members of the Holy Sword Society had already cleared the battlefield. Elify was reminding them that, based on the traces and the level of destruction, the unidentified monsters were not to be trifled with. The monsters were not to be trifled with. John Moore noticed her pointed ears before he had time to digest the information. Was she from the elf tribe? Just as he was about to use the identification skill, Elify remembered his unhappy expression. I advise you to give up. On that, don't overestimate yourself, or you'll only be walking to your death. John Moore was confused and thanked her for the reminder, but the other three were not happy at all when the king was warned. Like that, he didn't know why this was the first time he had met someone from the elf tribe who was so low level. But the way she spoke was really like someone from a major guild. Could she be hiding her strength? John Moore looked at Cage, who was about to teach this little girl a lesson, and immediately stopped him. Uncle. Cage, we agreed that everyone would not cause trouble inside the inn. Bao didn't make a move, but just took the cigarette out of his mouth and said, let me handle it. Bao was half a head taller than her, so he just had to lower his eyes to start a conversation. Girl, you belong to that arrogant elf tribe, right? Then your type of spirit should also be a special forces type. What a coincidence, I am also a good fighter. Bao easily pressed his chest against the little girl's chest, and asked her if she dared to fight him? Elify agreed immediately, why should she be afraid of anyone? A man in shiny silver armor came out from inside and called Elify. Don't cause trouble, we're about to leave, focus on the mission. She disgustedly backed away from Bao, muttering curses at the annoying guy. He extended his hand in greeting, introducing himself as the Walrus Tusk Combat Instructor. Yuzin Get, who was also Elify's captain. She just has a bad temper, she's not really a bad person, as her instructor, I apologize for her. Bao just sighed, Elip looked at Yuzin, but the whole world seemed to stop at that moment. This beautiful girl had stolen his heart. Kneeling down immediately, he seemed to be proposing to her. Holding a rose and speaking to Bao in private, it's my fault for not keeping an eye on my members. If we have the same destination, please allow me to escort the beautiful lady. Bao was very annoyed, and said a dirty word, get lost, which made Yuzin's heart sink immediately. He was so proud of himself, but he was rejected outright. Leaving the rich coachman, Elify went straight out. Yuzin was left alone, so he couldn't help but act coquettishly. He had to stand up and say that if we go to the Leaf Town station together, we will meet again, my lady. Before leaving, he confidently turned back to Bao and said, I will definitely move you with my brave personality. In the next battle, it's not too late for you to accept me then. See you soon, my lady. Bao ignored the nonsense, and just asked Zamor, did you notice that? He hesitated, you're talking about the monster energy on him, right? Cage frowned, it's not just a monster, it's a dragon. Bao lit a new cigarette, and said that someone who could tame a dragon was not weak. Zamor was confused, so is he the legendary dragon knight? Speaking of which, I don't think I've ever met a monster of the dragon species. Of course, not. Cage said impatiently, high-level monsters are not like cabbages, you can meet them whenever you want. So what if it's a dragon? Last time one attacked the Mushroom Kingdom, I turned it into a wine snack. Bell didn't hesitate, and called everyone to go with him. Otherwise, the target of your mission will be taken away by them. Zamor agreed immediately, anyway. He wanted to see the Dragon Knight fighting with him to the Lift Town Station. Anyway. Oh my god, what the hell is this station? It's already blown up with smoke and fire. People are running away in panic, houses are collapsing and trees are breaking everywhere. Looking around, Bao couldn't believe that a monster could do this to a human town. Unlooked cautiously at Zamor, and asked him if he could feel it? There was an uncomfortable feeling coming from that direction. It's more like a very strong magic power, so we need to check the situation first, maybe we can get some benefits. Thinking of this, Zamor carefully hid, behind a wall not far away. 
Behind Bao whispered a reminder to change into a monster form, we can't reveal our identities. So three clouds of smoke rose in front of Cage, they transformed into mushroom shapes and called him to go up to a higher position. For easier observation, Zamor's question made him mad, how could he not be seen when he transformed? But it was true that Cage couldn't do it, so no matter how angry he was, he had to endure it, lonely. Running behind the monsters who were swinging over the roof to a higher place, the city shook and crumbled underfoot as the monster's ugly mouth fired a continuous stream of power at the warriors, hitting Eugen's sacred magic shield and bouncing back into the monster's face. A skull hanging from its side withered like a rotten leaf, and then a series of green arrows from the butterfly dance skill pierced the monster's chest in succession, causing it to roar in pain, its mouth and nose gushing blood, and another skull withered. Several skillful sword strikes flew through the air, the swordsman landing after performing a very successful double spin, but the knife in his hand was notched several times as if it were disposable. Have you used the purple venomous snake dagger and still not been able to do anything to this monster? One side of it rose up with a bang, spewing a pile of green and yellow solution towards the warrior. However, he didn't need to turn around, the magic firewall had been erected, burning away the monster from his mouth. Clean. The mage burned it clean and said that this type of monster seemed to be a type of fish. It has a thick layer of mucus on its fins that reduces physical damage. He stepped forward, his hand still casting. The firewall continued to say, if we want to do damage, all we have to do is burn all the mucus. The firewall was erected more and more fiercely, getting closer and closer to the monster, and then the mage blew it up with a bang. The monster was covered in burn marks but still standing, another skull withered, transferring green energy to heal those wounds. From the front, the dragon vein skill was like a sharp blade that pierced through the monster's chest, its eyes wide open, obviously dead, and it fell backward with a thud. From the clouds, Yuzin rode down on his green dragon, majestic. Then he let it fly away, diving down himself at a terrifying speed, activating the dragon soul thwong combo, a fatal blow to the monster. Thing. The whole city collapsed because of that move. Kill it, brave warrior, the warriors who defeated the monster that destroyed our town. The destructive power of the move was so great that its shockwaves caused dozens of nearby houses to collapse, and Zormor's group, standing far away, could still see the smoke blowing towards them. He looked around with wide eyes, the Dragon Knight's attack was too powerful. Cage didn't praise anyone, and now he was expressing his disappointment. I thought the young man had tamed a powerful dragon, but it turned out to be just an ordinary dragon. Bao also found it bland on the other side. He was good at being flamboyant, but he liked to waste his magical power on these flashy but ineffective attacks. Below, the warriors were cheering, and Sir Yuzin, the Dragon Knight, would soon end everything here. Elify was too proud to admit it, she tossed her long, fiery red hair, this lady would surpass him soon. As soon as she finished speaking, something long and hard slammed into the ground in front of the four of them, shattering it to pieces. Elify recognized it and turned pale, it was the spear Yuzin was using, the bloodthirsty king. The group looked up and saw their trainer struggling. In the swarm of invasive vines, for some reason his magical power was running out. Seeing that something was wrong, Yuzin stopped and shouted into the sky. Zondo, the dragon flapped its wings twice and appeared in the sky, from its mouth gathered a ball of bright light ready to fire down, suddenly a sharp stake pierced through its throat from below, the bloody hole in the direction of the stake cut a long way down to the belly, Zando's blood, sprayed out, dripping onto the head of Yuzin, who was too scared to speak, the teammates below used all kinds of support skills, from archery to swordsmanship, and fire magic, combining their efforts to fire at the invasive vines in order to rescue Yuzin, but no one heard any movement from inside, only the smoke got thicker and thicker, they could only stand and wait, Adrian's face was fierce, everyone be careful, something is coming, as fast as lightning, several sharp-headed tentacles surrounded by black gas rushed out of the smoke, Adrian urgently, put his shield down, creating a sacred fortress to protect everyone, he was very good but not capable enough, a large part of the shield was broken, Adrian and the swordsman were pierced by the tentacle, before collapsing, he only managed to say one sentence, run, run away, save yourself, Elify was stunned and stood there, becoming the next target of attack, at the two tentacles without being able to move, the fire mage ran over to her and shouted, 
his hands quickly creating a barrier of magic, successfully temporarily isolating the tentacles from him and the girl. But only for a few seconds, the ruby separated, a few times and then shattered right before their eyes. The barrier shattered and the two people inside were backlashed, screaming miserably. Yuzin shouted for Edmund and Elify but it was too late, he was slapped by the tentacles dozens of times. In the face, his face covered in blood, he fell into a coma and could only mutter, let me go, let me go. But it didn't let go, the vines grew more and more, from within the smoke. A pitch black figure appeared, activating the skill to increase its reputation. The monster had transformed into an indescribable shape, its head and tail were hard to distinguish, it grew too. Rows of ribs and countless vines, looking like a demon in a horror movie. The crowd that was cheering wildly stopped abruptly, there. Confidence collapsed and they couldn't believe what was happening before their eyes. That demon had transformed into the shape of a demon king, Yuzin in his hand, was ecstatic and kept shouting kill, 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 kill more for the devil. Elify was terrified, even lost her mind and could only tremble. Trembling on the ground begging, save me, I don't want to die. Recalling her previous mocking words, Elify was just a spoiled child. Protected by the elemental king, she had never seen how truly terrifying the world could be. The ignorant are often happy. Even her sister always belittled her and said she was weak. If you weren't my sister, then you would have been driven out of the elven forest long ago. At this moment, those memories came flooding back. Elify's tears streamed down her face as she wondered, am I really that weak? The demon king roared, feeling its power radiating out of its body, running wetly along several long cracks that split the ground wide open, making Elify even more terrified. She could do nothing but lie on the ground, watching the monster distort, its mouth only able to utter a single word, kill, kill, kill. Now she knew fear, she clutched the necklace tightly. Her father had given her, crying out to her father, save me. On the roof nearby, two pairs of eyes appeared and then a voice shouted out, filthy demon, stop right there. Who else could it be but Du Mo Company Un Un, who declared heroically, if not, we will spank you. Elify turned her head and suddenly a cloud of smoke appeared beside her, from which grew a blue-headed mushroom that was fuming everywhere. It got into Elify's nostrils and made her faint, less noisy, the vote for. This little girl stopped, and calmly blew smoke on the head of the gun. It was also a kind of demon king but slightly different. Cage chimed in, the energy around this guy is weaker than the energy transformed by the monster king. Then let's go. Dumo put the mushroom forward, ordering Un Un to fight with him. The two of them faced the demon king's hand full of black vines. With a bang, Un Un rushed forward in human form. The monster sprouted a lot of black vines but couldn't wrap them around the piglet. The power in its hand was pushed back and the little girl tried hard to punch the monster hard and it staggered backwards. Dumo kept the shape of a mushroom, using the mushroom head as a springboard to bounce high, holding the mushroom sword in his hand. He cut several sharp and sweet cuts into the big arm. He transformed back into human form increasing the speed of his mushroom sword dance, causing the monster to look on in amazement as several pieces of its arm fell off. Its gruesome chest suddenly shot out a series of vines, aimed at Du Mo, causing his mushroom clone to fall down and disappear instantly. They all aimed at the last entity, but they didn't pierce through it. Like the others, forming a long row around Du Mo, he realized that the situation was not good, there was no way to avoid it. Below, Un clenched his fists together to create a piglet vacuum cleaner that turned into soft ribbons of light that embraced Dumo and pulled him back towards him. After catching him, the two of them observed the monster. This, who was Dumo, was very spicy, and almost died just now. The two of them's attacks didn't seem to be very effective. At this moment, the monster's severed parts used themselves to gather together, looking at it, it didn't suffer any injuries, and landed lightly on the ground, causing Dumo to exclaim in surprise. Wait, it's shrinking, the more it recovers, the smaller it gets, we can destroy it. Then the ground under their feet swelled up with black roots, the monster wrapped itself around both Un and Un. Dumo, trapping both of them in a cage it had just created, but at this speed it couldn't catch up. The two of them dispersed, Un into one corner, Dumo pushed himself up with a jet mushroom, and was about to use his sword dance, a branch had pierced his face directly, causing the clone to disappear. The size of the human form made Dumo an easy target, he hummed and made himself into a smaller mushroom, running towards the monster, making it angry, and releasing even more small tentacles to blow up the mushrooms. But the number of mushroom monsters was too many, and they avoided it better, 
so the number of survivors was greater than the number of dead. All at once released spores that erupted, forming a thick cloud that covered the monster's vision. The eyes on its chest flickered back and forth, wondering if it could see Un in charging at it at the speed of a prayer. The small one transformed into a piglet wearing a bow, using its wild instincts to aim at the weak points that were lit up like lamps. It closed its eyes tightly, playing a cruel trick by sucking right into the belly, piercing through the other side and causing the monster to let out a terrible roar. Umo laughed, seizing the opportunity to transform into many human clones, simultaneously creating spores, fire bombs from the tip of the sword, and firing them at the monster like meteors falling on its head. Still, the man dodged it, but not slowly, very quickly on his body there appeared several holes emitting acrid smoke, his legs collapsed, the monster had become a long-haired ghost in the movie The Ring, crawling around to cause terror. Suddenly it opened its hideous mouth, seeing something that lit up like an eye but created a shock like ten candy speakers combined. The sound waves blew away Dumo's clones into mushroom spores. Seeing him fall freely, Unin shot up and transformed into a human form reaching out to support the mushroom gently. He was annoyed and cursed the magical explosion that had the power to tear apart, and even succeeded in destroying all his mushroom clones. The two of them landed not far from the monster, which was struggling to stand up, its mouth constantly jumping and killing, killing. More for the demon lord. Roaring like a drug addict in a trance, the slash from above cut the monster's sorrows in half. Its whole body fell damply to the ground, seeing two shadows flash by. Dumo recognized them and called out happily, Uncle, Sister Bao. He told, the little guy, just asked Bao if he felt okay, why the human attack had no effect. Dumo immediately said, that monster can absorb that magic power, Uncle. All attacks based on, magic will be absorbed by it. Instead of harming it, the monster will become stronger. Bao stared at the place where there was movement, reminding everyone to be alert. It wasn't over yet. The monster split into, two halves roaring in an unknown shape, but still groaning the word kill, 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 kill them all. Playing the mouth opening game again, it gathered a small purple light, and blew it out, clearing dozens of houses at once. The tile floor. The cracked floor around it showed nothing but the wind blowing, and the Dumo group had to quickly move to the side to avoid being affected by it. At this moment, they ran quickly to flank the monster. Bao fired the first two shots, hitting the two big, hideous eyes. Cage responded to her, signal, and pounced from the other side of the big head, but unexpectedly it suddenly turned its big head 360 degrees its mouth open, making Cage scream. What the hell, it even has eyes in its mouth. The strange red monster shot out a strange purple light, and Cage quickly slashed out a cross-shaped mushroom, splitting the light into four equal parts. It passed through without hesitation, straight along the line that divided the monster into four pieces. The whole thing was shaking but had not fallen to the ground, still sticky, together by mucus, so Cage could not let it live. He planted his sword on the ground and flicked himself forward, kicking all four pieces into the dust, sending them flying into the air to separate the mucus. He flicked up again with his two swords crossed, wiping them clean, with effort, but the chances of these things defeating him were 0%. With his incredible speed, Cage unleashed his mushroom slash. Wherever he went, he saw flesh falling down like rain. He landed, put the two swords back into their sheaths, and the battlefield behind him at this time was already roaring with several scattered parts of the monster and the small green mushrooms. They were still trying to reach out to their brothers, but suddenly stopped and dissolved into pieces that flew away with the wind. Bo looked at the remaining half of the monster, wondering if we should go help them deal with the remaining one. Cage said no, especially since they could handle this level, so just watch. The other half of the monster had no arms or legs, it was just a single eye with a lot of tentacles attached to it. Unan darted fearlessly into the crowd, after using his wild instincts to assess the weakness of the other eye, he frowned and activated the brutal attack, the ground under his feet suddenly being thrown up by something. Zormo stood behind and fired a continuous barrage of death rays, telling him not to be impatient, wait for it to open up. The pig landed firmly on the ground, oinking a response. At this time, the monster, the wire was spinning around, trying to blow away the smoke that Zormo had just released. He saw that it was okay, so he ordered Unan to charge, the little guy blinked, affectionately and then put his head down to the ground, playing the skill of plowing. The monster wire swung harder and harder, partly because of the smoke disturbance, partly because it saw Zormo somewhere and slammed down there to kill him. The young man sneaked through the vines, changing from mushroom to human and back to buy time, 
Soon the area around the monster was covered with mushroom spores. Zormo silently lurked in it, assessing the situation without provoking it anymore. Although this thing has infinite regeneration ability, its defense is not that good. There is something that magic does not work on and the only option is to use physical attacks to overwhelm its regeneration. Suddenly the big eye stared at the exact spot where Zormo was hiding, and Zormo was surprised. Suddenly realized that it could do so because it had become gigantic in size. It furiously stabbed down down at the spot where it had just seen. Zormo's butt was so fast that he couldn't jump out of the way. But it was still okay to hold the mushroom shield in his hand. Suddenly the ground two meters away from the monster opened up a small hole, Unin suddenly jumped up and used a brutal sip on the person, sending him flying high into the air. From below, Zormo waved his hand, commanding the spore operation to shoot up into several giant columns of smoke. Following the monster's flight speed, he shouted, Unin give me some fire here. The little girl immediately transformed into a human form, landing a distance from, not far from there, touched a nearby beam, and lifted it onto her shoulder with one end already on fire. Unin threw it like a tennis ball, the target, of course is the big eye, the glowing thing. At a loud bang, before seeing anything, Zormo raised his hand to perform. The spore operation again. He sweated, gritted his teeth and tried his best to perform the technique. As long as I can use the flame to concentrate all the spores on it, there will be enough flames. To burn. It's not magic, it's not magic, it's simply science. The spores wrapped around the monster were burned to a crisp, catching fire quickly and creating explosive dust, exploding again and blowing the monster's pieces away. Another piece of unknown shape fell to the ground, making the elders over there very satisfied. Zormo's way of fighting is really different from the previous Mushroom Kings. Even I couldn't predict how he would use the special properties of mushrooms that day. Cage finally complimented him, but it sounded like a compliment. This kid is only good at playing tricks. He needs to be trained more, that's not the limit of his potential. The afternoon sun shone on his sweaty face. Edmund suddenly sat up on the white bed. His panic stopped when he saw Alifei sleeping with her eyes closed on the other side. Am I still alive? Are Miss Alifei and I the only survivors? At first we thought it was an easy task, but now, even Sir Uzen too. Speaking of which, Edmund couldn't help but cough up a lot of blood. He quickly pulled a large vial of vitality out of his inventory, poured it into his broken chest. But before he could finish, he dropped it and coughed up blood. Edmund looked helplessly at his blood-soaked hand, lamenting that he had lost all his magic power just to block the monster's attack. My internal injuries are too severe, the healing potion is not. Can't heal me in time. The wooden door suddenly opened a crack. Zormo appeared with two small vials in his hand, asking him if he was awake? Just ho. After coughing, Edmund's voice was still very weak, trying to ask if you were the one who saved us? Thank you. Zormor handed the vial of gold potion directly to Edmund, saying that your body is too weak now. That hit a sore spot, the mage gripped the vial of potion tremblingly. Thank you benefactor, but I'm afraid that normal potions will not be effective. I can use advanced potions after returning to the guild, but I'm afraid that with my current injuries, I won't be able to return. Instead, please save my comrade, her. Speaking of which, Edmund coughed up a lot of blood as if he was about to die, followed by a violent cough that surprised Zormor, her. To put it nicely, Edmund vomited up a lot of blood as if he was about to die, followed by a violent coughing fit that greatly surprised Zormor. Instead, please save my comrade, her. Speaking of which, Edmund coughed up a lot of blood as if he was about to die, followed by a violent cough that surprised Zormor. Damn, he talks a lot, he said, stuffing the medicine tube into Edmund's mouth, telling him to try it. He puffed out his chest. For a few seconds, his body surged with amazing strength, and he could feel that he had recovered immediately. Edmund rubbed his hand not expecting that the recovery would also have something warm nourishing his body from the inside. Although I have only seen it before and never drunk it, but it is definitely the medicine of destiny that only the highest alchemists can create. Edmund's endorsement became a spokesperson for the brand, excitedly saying that it was sweet, with a hint of mushroom flavor, and it must be the nectar of the gods. Zormor didn't know what was going on in this guy's head, but he still had work to do with the remaining tube. At first he was worried that there wouldn't be enough medicine, but he didn't expect the effect to be amazing even after diluting it by 30%. Look at Mr. Edmund, he had to dilute it further before giving it to Alifei, otherwise it would be silly if there was too much energy left. She hadn't woken up yet, so pouring it in was much faster than Edmund's chatterbox, and she quickly opened her eyes. She vaguely saw a hairy young man with a pink pig on his head. Suddenly Edmund pounced over, we are very grateful, 
May I have the honor of knowing your name after drinking such a priceless thing? Zormor thought of the process of Zero absorbing from his buttocks and spitting skin from his mouth into his lips. The name is known, but the yellow liquid is nothing more than that, what is so precious? Alifei listened to the two of them talking, secretly judging that this person was not only powerful, saving us from that fearsome monster, but he could also casually give such a precious medicine to someone he didn't know. Unlike the people of the Holy Sword Guild, he must be a great adventurer who doesn't care about fame. Suddenly remembering her panicked face at the inn, Alifei felt a chill. The people in her tribe were right. Without her father's protection, she was nothing. She had really overestimated herself. Edmund couldn't get any information from the vial. So he gave up and said to him that he knew this. It sounds funny, but if you need help in the future, I will do my best to help you, Mr. Zormor. Now that the group is at Gallif's house, a short distance from the area of the volcanic vein, Zormor immediately asked Edmund if he knew the way there. All the townspeople had fled, there was no one to ask anything. He exclaimed, what, are you going to the volcanic vein? Zormor didn't see the panic, and whispered, do you know what kind of strange stone is? Inside it? Edmund trembled and replied, I will not hide this from you. Before I joined the Walrus Tusk Guild, I was a member of the One-Eyed Guild in the Volcanic Vein, but I must warn you not to go anywhere near it. Zormor asked in surprise, why? Edmund hesitated for a moment, and then replied, because the One-Eyed Guild has been, has been disbanded. What? Zormor's exclamation drew to. The elderly came over immediately, disbanded? Cage's strong hand grabbed Edmund's collar, shaking him like a doll, even though he was several times taller than him. What did you just say? Disbanded, we haven't avenged ourselves yet. Poor Edmund was shaken to the point of dizziness. Zormor had to step forward to the room and said calmly, at least give him a chance to tell the story. Finally Cage let go of him, who was spinning like a top, on the bed, and stepped back to calm down. She was curious but not as extreme as him, she wanted to know what kind of danger would force one of the six major guilds to disband? Alifei suddenly spoke up for the undead. According to our limited information, the humans and monsters in the volcanic vein were affected by the poisonous gas and became undead overnight. Their bodies began to rot, attacking any other living beings. Her face turned pale as she said that even a small wound would turn the injured person into an undead. Just like that, one became ten, ten became a hundred. Soon, the entire volcanic vein would be occupied. For some reason, Zormor suddenly blurted out four words, undead poisonous gas, and Wu nodded in agreement. That poisonous gas? The erupting stomach can do the same thing. Cage interjected, is that fire user dead yet? Edmund shrugged, are you talking about Mr. Wu Yuham? I don't know, the last news I heard was that he stayed to protect the base, but I doubt that with that power he has also fallen. Edmund said that the six major guilds had an agreement that they would never invade each other's territory unless requested. Zormor asked immediately, when the one-eyed guild was in trouble, did the other five guilds do anything? Didn't they help? If not, it would be considered a declaration of war. Although more than a month has passed, the one-eyed guild has not yet made an appeal for help. And until today, even the disbandment of the guild is just a rumor. We have not heard any news from the inside. Bo asked, so the other guilds are not afraid that the poisonous gas will spread to their homes? Alifei said no, because of the geographical location of the volcanic vein, all the undead are trapped near the volcano. In addition, as long as no one approaches them, the undead will just wander around there. Zormor thought to himself, so it is not certain whether the one-eyed guild has really disbanded, but the fact that the undead poisonous gas is spreading is true. Although Cage wanted revenge, our goal is still to find the fragments of Gollum's seal, so it shouldn't be too difficult to avoid those brainless guys, right? He looked up and asked the two elders, do we still need to go to the volcanic vein? How could Cage not want to go? He had to see the body of that fire mage to believe that he was dead. Bo's silence meant consent, and Zormor's group quickly came to an agreement. He was determined, and asked Edmund to please show him the way. As the sun began to set, Edmund led the group to a stone path built on the lava. Next to it was the sound of waves crashing, indicating that this was Galuf's house, but it had been destroyed by monsters some time ago. Even if they wanted to go there, everyone would have to stop here. Cage irritably went over to the other side of the broken wire. There must be a way, he couldn't go this far and turn back. A piece of metal fell down the lava below due to his footsteps, and it made a thud before sinking. Larger pieces of the wire also fell down, causing the group to retreat. Zormor didn't want to give up either, so he asked Edmund if there must be another way. He said that apart from the wire, everyone could also try to fly over there with a monster or an airship. At night, 
When the moon and the tide are aligned, a large amount of seawater flows into the lava lake, creating a large amount of water vapor. Before this place was destroyed, the water vapor was concentrated to create enough thrust to lift the entire ship up the volcanic vein. Tonight is one of the nights when this phenomenon occurs. After this time, it will be another month before they rise again, so the waves are so high now. But if the wires were destroyed, even if the ship could be lifted, it wouldn't be able to move. Edmund could only help so much, so he was very disappointed. Alifei ran over from somewhere and grabbed Zormor's hand, saying that this was not a good thing. The volcanic vein is too dangerous anyway, why don't you come back with me? You saved me and my brother, so believe that our guild will be very grateful to you. Besides, I come from the elf tribe, you can also go there instead of the volcanic vein. It was hard to refuse such a beautiful woman, and Zormor blushed with joy, his anger reaching its peak, and he couldn't help but headbutt his rival, landing on the ground in frustration. Zormor's face was twisted, and he told him not to be like that, not to be rude to someone who meant no harm. But, his blood was boiling, and he didn't listen to anything, looking at Alifei as if she were an enemy. At that moment, the waves crashed against the shore with a terrible sound, and the lava met the water and turned into steam with a hiss. Edmund headed towards the inn, telling everyone that the waves were coming. If you want to go, go now, or you'll get burned by the steam. Bo said, the train is just a tool. As long as we can find something to replace it, we can go up. Edmund turned his head curiously to look at her. Is there really a way? She quickly drew the gun from her waist and fired a shot at the wire, revealing a giant mushroom hot spring. The other two were shocked. Could she summon monsters? The mushroom turned its plump buttocks towards everyone, jumped to where the steam was rising, and sat its buttocks in it to relax like an old man. Wiped the sweat from its legs and exclaimed in delight, it's so dreamy. Looking at it like this, only when Bo stepped on it did he realize how big this hot spring mushroom was. It looked like nothing more than a perverted old man. Bo looked back at everyone and said that the hot spring mushroom would absorb the steam and prevent it from burning. Everyone hurry up and come up here. Cage and Zormor didn't delay and quickly followed. Alifei asked Zormor in a panic, is that place really dangerous, do you really have to go? He hugged the crying baby tightly in his arms, and said with a wave of his hand, of course, after all, that's the job of brave men like us. Baby was annoyed that this guy kept talking to Alifei, and was so angry that he couldn't do anything while being held tightly. In her eyes, this young man was just like a real brave warrior, and she was so moved that the waves outside told her to shake more violently than him. It spewed a huge column of lava into the lava flow, and the steam rose up from it in billows, hot enough to boil chicken. The whole group sat on the head of the hot spring mushroom with red faces, and noses, just like a fat old man taking a bath after a long day. When it had absorbed enough steam, it shot itself into the air, and from below, only Edmund was left, creating a magic barrier and looking up. Let's go. We still have to report the results of the mission to the guild. Alifei was still in a daze. This time she had decided to become stronger. She wanted to become a brave man like Zormor. But this brave man was afraid of heights, and he lay on the mushroom cap and cried until he was stupid. The old men pretended not to see. Hunan jumped up and down happily, ignoring the mushroom as if it was having an epileptic fit because the hot water mushroom was bouncing higher and higher. It had been a long time since it had been able to soak in the steam, like this, and it was laughing happily. The groundhogs were chatting about today's volcanic vein, when suddenly they saw a dark shadow over their heads. The little guys ran for their lives out of the falling sky, or rather the buttocks, of the hot water mushroom that was enjoying its trip. As soon as he landed, Zormor was about to call out to Sister Hugh. The old men wanted to avoid him by a few meters, and they didn't even have the heart to read. The system board congratulating them on reaching a new location, awarding 20,000 experience points. Zormor looked extremely lifeless, and tried to look up to ask, Is it here yet? You don't need anyone to answer just by looking at the scene. In front of him were dozens of volcanoes flowing, lava, turning the whole land into a bright orange color. Zormor looked closely, and he didn't expect there to be so many volcanoes here. Cage couldn't see anything but heat, and his calculations were even more like melting ice cream. The important thing is to defeat that organization and root them out. Bo was also sweating profusely, looking around for the source of color. As soon as he arrived, he didn't see any of them, and the baby was so hot that he wanted to sweat all over his body, and kept saying it was too hot to bear. Zormor was also hot, and took out the magic coin and crushed it. A red barrier appeared in several layers above the group's heads, and the blessing of fire rose up to the whole group completely blocking the heat. Zormor explained that this was given to him by a wizard, who said that the magic inside could temporarily block the heat of the volcanic vein. He looked up and called the system, 
now that he had arrived, could it tell him where the fragment of the Golom seal was? This barrier would only last for 90 minutes, and he had to hurry. Instead of answering, the status window showed that it was busy. Why did you keep asking the same question? I have already said that the fragment of the seal is only in a place with the highest energy, but I don't know where that is. In short, it didn't know. Zormor covered his face and sighed, that he was wrong to think that the system was useful. Now I can only confirm that you are really useless. It showed a warning board, and asked in frustration, what do you mean, useless? You are the one who refused to follow the rules and forced me. The mistake of the system is that it has a power button for Zormor to turn off, and the old man is like an old woman, so he can only find the fragment of the seal by himself. Is there anyone who can watch it here? It's very tiring to make a long video. Please comment number 7 if you have watched it here. Let Mike sit down and count how many friends there are. Cage pointed to a towering mountain, and called out, Hey kid, don't stand there and mumble to yourself anymore. If you are looking for a place with the highest energy, it must be the center of the largest volcano, right? Cage's hand tightened on his sword, and his voice became steely. The one-eyed Harmony Society must be there too. Now that we have a destination, let's get going. On one side, we'll get there quickly, and on the other, the lava is bubbling and boiling, and behind us the hot spring mushroom is waving goodbye. The station had stopped steaming, and Edmund asked a lift beside him if she had thought it over? Was she really going to leave the Walrus Tusk Society? The leader and the elders valued her very much. Her mind was made up, and she said that she would personally explain this matter to the guild master, and then return to her hometown. Is it the elven forest? Seeing Edmund ask in surprise, Alif didn't hesitate to answer. Now I understand that face or dignity or something like that. Doesn't matter. Now I just want to be stronger. As he was speaking, something suddenly passed by at the speed of light, leaving a thick cloud of smoke that made the two of them cough and splutter. Edmund looked in the direction of the black spot behind the smoke, wondering what it was. Suddenly a new character appeared, as this Vita or the main character. He roared his motorcycle forward, and came to a sudden stop at the edge of the road. His followers also stopped, although they didn't have a vehicle like the forest force leader, they were all bald and had a lot of guts. One of them asked, Boss, the road is broken from here, should we go back? He glanced down at the boiling lava sea below, and then turned, to tell his followers that he would go on from here alone, and that they should wait here. If they didn't see him within 10 days, they should leave. Before they could say anything, he had already shifted gears and accelerated, shooting up like an airplane, not like a motorcycle. His followers watched and shouted, Oh, boss, it's dangerous. The motorcycle really didn't know how to fly, and it crashed into the lava stream below. The soldiers above were shocked. Don't tell me he committed suicide in front of me. The boss disappeared briefly under the lava stream, and then suddenly emerged with an extremely fierce look in his eyes. It was the pig with the fiery hair, who turned on the angry mode and roared. The wheels slid across the lava like a god, and he glided across the length of the entire lake, reaching the cliff and immediately shifting gears to climb the mountain. His followers looked on in admiration, wanting to faint. What a cool boss, standing under the lake for a while, and after a while, they saw him climb along the stone wall and reach the other side. The volcanic vein always gurgled and created new lava, replenishing itself to form a river of lava. The earthworms were bathing themselves, looking at the little guy struggling to walk on the rock, and said lightly, I think it's cool, but these guys are overreacting. As soon as he reached the shore, he met a fire herding girl who was taking a piece of fat lava rock. The girl was so fierce that she was already hot, and the little guy had to use his shield to fight back, saving himself and pushing her away from the roast meat. The whole group escaped from there and groped on the dry ground. Cage was dissatisfied behind him and kept asking, little boy, are you sure you're going the right way? The road is getting harder and harder. The little guy didn't know either, and honestly said that he felt much more tired, much hotter, but he didn't know the reason. The system told him that it was because the blessing of fire was running out of time. The ability to resist fire and temperature was gradually decreasing. That's the sign, my friend. Below is a note about the ability of infinite vitality, which is only effective in normal environments, and in extremely hot or cold places, it still loses energy as usual. It's really good to be able to suck and inhale here. He looked up and said that there was still a distance to go before reaching the highest volcano. The closer you get, the hotter it gets, not many mushrooms can survive at this temperature. Unim is not only hot but also hungry. Where can I find apples to fill my stomach here? He hugged Dumo's neck and whined. He was very tired but still had to try to coax him. So the two of them still clung to each other and crawled towards the huge erupting volcano. Even C.A. Gi, who was full of energy, felt something was wrong. If we continue like this, we will lose all our strength before we reach the One-Eyed Harmony Society. Look, 
Bao said, there's a pond ahead. I thought I was seeing things, but I wasn't. There were many large and small ponds growing on the ground, where the earthworms were lying and soaking themselves happily. On it floated the shape of several crescent moons, the same color as the strange stones growing on the shore of the pond. It looked so unreal that Zamor used his identification skill to check it out. The moon hot spring is formed by the continuous high temperature. The moonlight extract slowly flows out to form a small pond, which only occurs in an extremely high temperature environment. Soaking in this extract will restore the physical state and provide resistance to environmental conditions. Seeing Unin on his shoulder about to faint, Zamor turned around and told everyone to come here, it's a hot spring. Suddenly he stopped, because, suddenly a picture of Unin and Bo wrapped in towels, soaking in the hot spring together, suddenly appeared in his mind, and he suddenly felt motivated. However, now Zamor's mushroom eyes were peeping over to the other side, and he understood why the identification said that this thing would restore the physical state. It had restored Unin and Bo to their monster forms, only Cage was gnashing his teeth and cursing. So why was he still in this form? Bo replied that perhaps the two magical forces within him were fighting each other, to the point that even they could not distinguish the true state of the body. But anyway, the more important thing was that the whole group could rest here and have the mood to think about how to proceed. The hot spring could not be put away and taken away. Zamor looked at the shiny rocks next to him and said that we could do it if we turned the moonlight into gems and then attached them to the inside of our clothes. No sooner said than done, he jumped to the top of the rock, put it right in the middle of the crevice, and immediately used his absorption. The stone vibrated with a few crackling sounds and cracked, and Zamor's body emitted an extremely bright light. Then suddenly the ground sank and rose strangely, and soon the stone. The moonlight shattered under Zamor's ass, and the window immediately reported that the absorption had failed because there were not enough materials. He gritted his teeth and glanced at another larger block. Let's see if it's still missing this time. Zamor climbed up again and put his butt on the top, and tried to absorb it again with determination. This one is big, so I have to brace myself. As soon as the light spread from his butt, brace myself. The light spread from his butt. The rock flew up with a crack, and within seconds it spread everywhere with a crashing sound. But Zamor had successfully absorbed it before it collapsed completely, and a new substance had been discovered. Cage reached out as if to support the boy, that big rock is very dangerous. However, Zamor had already jumped out of its range, and the fragments fell into the lake at the same time that the group escaped from there. Suddenly, Zamor's eyes saw something strange falling into the lake, but did not recognize it. What did the system mean when it said it had discovered an unusual substance earlier? Was there something inside the moonlight? Cage was already grumpy as soon as he touched the ground and pointed in that direction. Look at what you've done. The hot spring is destroyed. What are we going to do now? Zamor immediately distributed the tiny, sparkling ores, reassuring everyone that everything was still okay. As long as we keep the gems made from the essence of the moonlit ore, we can stay away from the heat. Cage was still growling as he held it in his hand. You mean all we have to do is hold this little stone? He was so angry that he didn't know when his feet started to smoke, and the smell reached both of their noses, and he sadly looked down and then reached out to hug his feet. It's so hot. Zamor added a little more oil to the fire. Looking like this, it probably won't work on the skin, it has to be attached to clothes to be used. A moment later, everyone was wearing clothes with moonlit stones attached, and Bao praised him to his face, no longer feeling the heat before. When the heat was gone, I felt the skin. On my back was sticking to my stomach, but Zamor didn't have to worry about that much now. He turned back to where he was just now and asked everyone if they had noticed anything falling out of the moonlit ore. Hearing him ask that, everyone looked intently into the lake, and suddenly something very strange appeared on the surface of the water. Zamor looked closely and found a piece of clothing, or rather a breast, floating up first, and then the face of a girl with blue bangs gradually appeared. Marianne's whole body suddenly floated up, and the wizard's staff in her hand suddenly lit up, along with the moment her blue eyes opened in surprise. As if she had been drowned and brought up, she jumped up and exhaled. Before she could look around, she asked if they were from the sacred sanctuary? You have finally arrived. Turning to the people above, Marianne sincerely thanked the saint for forgiving her old grudges, and coming all the way here to help me. Cage was furious when he heard her, and with two swords in his hands, he ran over to her, helping her? God knows I remember your face, I'll help you down to the underworld right away. She was confused, you didn't come from the sacred sanctuary, how did you, find me? Before she could finish her sentence, her eyebrows were tightly shut, and Marianne saw hundreds of broken, 
rotting hands rising from the ground, and she screamed with all her might, run, the undead are coming. They came, but they didn't run, they gathered into a huge mass like a ball being kicked. Over there with two swords, do you think you can scare me with this? The chance of you escaping us is zero percent. The others knew his temper, so they just let Cage charge forward with the mushroom. Cutting it to pieces, the pile of zombies exploded with a bang along the way Cage cut it. Blood splattered everywhere and they fell limply. The ball separated and each one plunged headfirst into the ground. However, the number was so great that the whole area was covered with corpses in an instant. From the minerals to the moonlit lake, all were covered with human bodies. The weapon also fell down with a name that had just descended. The smoke and dust had just subsided, and he was already crawling to his feet. However, the parts were a bit reversed, the blue-green arm was empty. Down to the ground, that creepy smile looked out from under the hook. The guy got up, a little wobbly, but Cage already understood why they were called the undead. The guy turned his half-familiar, half-horrifying face to look. At the whole group, from Zamor to Cage and Bao, their faces turned pale. Not to mention Zamor and Unin who were crying and groaning only because it was. One of the guys who had attacked the Mushroom Kingdom. Is he dead? The guy said softly with his eyes wide open. His teeth bared, uttering a few words. Found you. Target identified. He locked the group of five in his sights, but. The target identified was only one, Marianne. And the one who found her was already a zombie. Lilith called her name with a strange, absent-minded look. Standing under the chicken-shaped ceiling stone, Ba Jun still had the same childish smile as before. Quickly catch her, as long as her heart is still beating, just break her limbs. He uttered savage words with a sober face, finally. She also fell into our hands. Isn't that a pity, Mr. Gilham? Gilham did not answer. He was being pressed against the wall with the magic formation drawn on it. The snakes stuck out their tongues, holding the one-eyed deputy guild master on the wall. Seeing the familiar girl in the ball, Gilham's eyes could only narrow helplessly. Bono fired a new shot. Shooting through the zombies, it seemed that as long as they were knocked off the branch, they would not be able to revive. A purple beam of light shot through the zombies, taking advantage of their escape. Heading towards the guy who only had half a body left and was still running towards Marion's group. The guy exploded with a bang, his whole body turned back into a human form, using ninjutsu, the technique of substance, and immediately. Two cross-shaped mushroom cuts, the head went on a trip, but the body still stayed to work overtime. It threw down a rain of iron, making Cage sweat, can it still move without a head? Below, he was secretly blowing away a zombie that was approaching. The whole group, without a shield, Bowie had to take action, shooting a spore on the ground, in an instant it turned into a giant mushroom, extending its cap to absorb the darts. Ubel was dead, but his body enhancement skills were still there, now he was waving his sword continuously in the air pushing Jorma into a position where he had to use all his strength to fight back. There was no sign of magic on them, but they could still use skills that required magic. What kind of creatures are these killers? Marianne both blessed everyone and answered, they are the deadly puppets of the guildmaster, the magic energy on them comes from a mysterious shooting star. Most attacks will not work on them unless we can find and destroy the puppet with the magic source. Now, only purification magic can stop them. And only Marianne can use it, she uses the purification of God to embrace the headless corpse that is randomly in the air. It lost its magic and fell to the ground, successfully stopping its movement. However, Marianne looked shaky and unbearable, with the current situation. It is difficult to continue, even her magic energy is about to run out. The more fought them while retreating, on the opposite side Cage also kept a distance, all retreating to the base of the big mushroom. Marianne, bitterly said, I have been marked as their target, so they will chase me. You guys run away as soon as possible. Cage disagreed. Did you ask if you wanted to get rid of these guys? Don't even think about leaving our sight until I cut off your head. But she insisted that everyone stay. Here we'll die together, causing Zamor to speak up. Surely there are still many ways to destroy them. Maybe push them into the lava lake and use the high temperature to purify them forever. A headless zombie, carrying a minigun, played it like a trumpet and fired it with a bang at every step. It stepped on someone's head, in pain, and fired Bluetooth to the neck to call for help. Unexpectedly, it was its own head, so he reached out and grabbed it and put it back on his neck. This guy is from that day. Attacking the Mushroom Kingdom, who else could it be? The guy's eyes were gone, but he was still firing wildly ahead. They don't care about us. The Zomers didn't have a vision, but they found out that everyone was becoming a target. The whole group was worried about getting out of there, except for Marianne who was too tired, so she couldn't avoid it. A bullet went through her arm, leaving a large chunk of it. The rest of the people rolled on the ground for a long distance. The barbarians shouted. 
We need to find a way to push all the zombies into the lava while they're still targeting her. She put her staff on the ground, emitting a refreshing blue light, urgently calling everyone to come here. I will use the last magic to teleport us out of here. Cage didn't believe it, and put his hips on his hips to ignore the trap. The guy's acting is not very good. I will not be fooled by your fake actions. Just finished. Speeding into the lighted area where the group is also entering. The whole group was separated from the outside by a shield from Marianne. A few seconds later, she activated a long-distance teleportation, taking everyone out of the land of the dead. The group of them lost their target, screaming and howling, trying to follow them to get some groping. Ubel danced his sword like crazy, his hands clenched and flexed his muscles, still desperately throwing his giant sword towards the formation that was gradually disappearing. Bang! Someone's foot stepped hard on the body of the sword, causing it to break, and it fell to the ground right in front of the living Ubel, causing him to gasp. The whole group of zombies ran over to watch, their mouths screaming. The other foot landed on the ground, stepping out of the smoke. It was the guy with the rice roll head, with a sunny orange tan appeared with an aggressive attitude. Do you guys want to fight? I will do as you wish. Thanks to him, the whole group was traditionally moved out of the area with zombies, losing control and falling into a piece of land. Marianne crawled out of the hole, her tongue already. A sword pointed straight at her head. Who else but Cage, who was as hot as ice cream, growled a warning, don't move. I will cut off your head as soon as you show signs of using magic. He shouted a sentence that he had been holding back for a long time. Tell me, why did you attack the kingdom? Of mushrooms? Where is the guy who uses water and fire? She didn't seem to understand Cage's words, and muttered, attacking the mushroom kingdom? Which guild do you belong to? Why are you looking for Mr. Gu Yuham? The little girl didn't dare to say anything more. Cage's sword tip pushed close to her neck and touched her cold skin. He lost his patience and said, I'm the only one asking questions here. Answer me, where is that person? Marianne had to answer. Mr. Gu Yuham was taken away by the guild master Baron. He imprisoned Mr. Gu Yuham in a secret cave with a giant stone slab underneath. Zamor. Zamor jumped out and asked immediately, did you just say a stone slab? Do you know where it is? The little boy asked, and the sorceress answered more quickly, saying I don't know. But from the looks of it, it looks like a seal. The guild master wants to unseal it, so he wants to kill me. The whole group silently guessed the situation. No information had been leaked about it. The one-eyed guild master wanted to kill members. Bowie didn't understand. Why kill you? The whole guild. People started killing each other just to open a stone slab. The group started to kill each other just to open a stone slab. He said no, we don't know anything. Everything was Baron's secret plan. And he chased me because he wanted to get the last ingredient. She shivered as she said this. My heart. After finishing the sentence, her mouth exhaled a sigh and Marianne coughed up a pool of blood. She fell backwards and fainted. Even Cage didn't understand anything. He hadn't had time to do anything but threaten her. Zamor rushed over in panic, don't faint. I still have questions. He was in such a hurry because in the end, we also have some information about the stone slab. We must ask for it. Cage rudely pointed the sword at her and shouted, don't even think about playing dead. If you don't get up right now, I guarantee you'll be dead for real. Seeing the light gradually leaving Marianne, Zamor said nothing more. Immediately activated the identification skill to check her status. It says weakness here. Poisoning being marked. So he immediately spoke up to stop Cage. Wait, don't kill her. She really passed out. I have something important to ask her, so let's save her first. The whole group was peaceful until night. The moon rose high over the barren mountains. Marianne suddenly woke up and screamed. No, realizing that the surroundings were safe. She panicked even more. The zombies are not here. Bowie simply said, don't worry, you're safe now. Except for Cage who was very busy, everyone was staring at her. Still using identification, Zamor said that I gave you some medicine just now. Your magic power and stamina have been restored a bit. He saw that there was a stream of energy around Marianne that made her stronger. But the states of weakness, poisoning and marking still remain. She looked around in surprise. What's the appraisal skill? Isn't this a skill that only high-level priests of the Holy Land can use? She can use it too, so she looked at the bottles rolling around, and saw that they were all potions to restore magic power, stamina, dispel curses, and restore blood. But the people in front of her couldn't see it, and now they all saw the appraisal failed. Zamor looked down at a small electric current around him. It turned out that this was how it felt to be identified by someone else. Cage suddenly turned around and warned. Human, don't try to track me with your disgusting magic. She immediately retracted her skill, 
apologizing for her rudeness. Not only did all of their appraisals fail, but they could also find out. Failed, but they could also find out. There is no doubt that they are very strong. She does not want to irritate the whole group. Bowie suddenly broke the awkwardness, asking everyone to calm down and talk to each other properly. What exactly happened to the poison guild? Why did the guild master want to take your heart? Ka Jio was interested in that part, and interjected with a question about why they attacked my mushroom kingdom? At this point, Marianne couldn't hide it anymore. In fact, it all started with the attack on the mushroom kingdom. At that time, Ba Jun asked Mr. Gil Ham to lead us to attack the Mushroom Kingdom with two goals. The first goal was to obtain the crown of the Mushroom King, and the second goal was to create a large number of zombies by letting our members die in battle. The zombie explained the reason, but Zamor didn't understand why they needed the crown of the Mushroom King. Marianne honestly said that we didn't know at first. He didn't realize Ba Jun's real purpose until he told Mr. Gil Ham to take my heart saying that it was one of the keys to open the stone slab. Zamor asked in shock, then, you mean that the Mushroom King's crown and your heart are the ingredients to break the seal on the stone slab? Bowie interjected, your guildmaster could have easily killed you. Why? Didn't he take your heart himself? How did you manage to escape so far? She nodded, just as Bowie said, Ba Jun could have poisoned. Marianne, the story began on the day Ba Jun presented his plan to his brothers. At that time, Gil Ham stood in front of Marianne and asked the person opposite him to hurry up and say what the final request was. Ba Jun smiled kindly, you want to leave? The Poison Eye Guild, don't you, Mr. Gil Ham? Very well, if you can bring me her heart, I will let you go. After all, Miss Marianne will die without my medicine, so why not give me that heart so that I can make use of it? His face turned sinister as he spoke, unless you want to take her back to the Holy Land, but she will suffer a fate worse than death there. Marianne cowered as Ba Jun's words reminded her of painful memories. Gil Ham replied with a pained hesitation, Ba Jun, you know that I don't like to joke. Around. The green-haired dwarf jumped around the two of them as if he was having a lot of fun. He sang, of course I know you don't like to joke, Mr. Gilham. Why don't you help me? Please, Miss Marianne will die anyway. Let me tell you a secret. My medicine can't really save her. Its only effect is to temporarily hide the traces, so she will die anyway. Gilham roared in anger. That's enough. A huge force erupted from his body, sweeping through the grand hall of the palace, knocking Ba Jun out of the door. The two brothers wrestled in the smoke, and the whole palace was filled with smoke. Ba Jun stood up from the ground in embarrassment, still grinning. Why is it so troublesome? Suddenly his face twisted like an evil demon. I guess I have no choice but to do it myself. Just one day, the castle of the Poison Eye Guild was reduced to ruins. The darkness shone down on the floors that were now only bones, shimmering from the ashes licking up the floor tiles. The two of them fought all the way down to the dungeon of the castle. Gil Ham looked at the man above him, fully understanding that it had been a planned plan from the beginning to the end. Is this the gallum ceiling stone that the teacher told us about? The charred black figure clung to the steps, his voice still laughing. Oh, I really can't beat you, just like, back then, I couldn't even win when we were fighting for the position of guildmaster. Ba Jun turned around and smiled wryly on his face, which no longer had any human features, it feels like it did back then. He leaned up, groaning, the mud outside suddenly fell off, revealing green hair that made Gil Ham even more furious. Don't waste your time, as long as we are in the volcano, you will never be able to defeat me. Ba Jun shook off the loose dirt, returning to his original form, and smiled, I know, I can't defeat someone as strong as you which is why the master wanted you to take over the guild. Ba Run's long sleeves lifted up a small orb, a magic potion, which turned into a small barrier. Casting a blue light on Ba Run's young and vicious face as he muttered, endure the pain. Marianne's stomach ached as if it had been cut by a knife when she saw the image of the magic circle similar to the one on Ba Run's limbs. She felt the same pain. Her whole body fell to the ground and she could only cry out in pain. Wilhelm ran over and immediately used the fire of extinction to suppress the skill book, destroying it to save the girl. The two forces fought against each other for a while but, to no avail, Barun approached with a proud and mocking smile. Ha ha, it's useless. I know you're strong but you're not very good at curse magic. With a flick of his wrist, Ba Run lowered his sleeves, from which emerged a swarm of poisonous snakes with blue scales and red eyes that pounced on Wilhelm's back and bit him to death. He spat out a mouthful of blood, casting the Hell Knight's armor, bursting into flames that cut off the heads of the snakes as they were still clinging to his back. The armor of fire expanded, annihilating all the poisonous snakes, which was exactly what Ba Run intended. He laughed mockingly, 
you have to stop the seal of poison on Miss Marianne, and you have to maintain such a high level of magic. Although you have a lot of magic, you can't keep it up forever, can you, Mr. Wilhelm? Now the apostles of Gallum are trying to break all the seals and resurrect the demon god. Bowie continued, so, to sum up, the crown of the previous king is an ingredient to break the seal of the demon lord. So the apostles of the demon lord turned the previous king into a demon king and then killed him to get the crown. Cage looked straight at Marianne, so your guildmaster is an apostle of the demon. God, he sent you to attack this kingdom to break the seal, and that led to this situation. She was worried and stunned, and admitted in a low voice that she and Wilhelm really didn't know anything. In Cage's hands, it was nothing more than a sophistry, he jumped up and pounced, at the sword in his hand, still roaring, but because of your selfish reasons, you invaded my land and slaughtered my people. You, humans, should die in hell you, humans, deserve to die in hell. Seeing him do it for real, Marianne rushed out to stop him with her body, and Bowie had to speak up to calm the gods down. But at this moment, Cage didn't want to stop. The hands of this woman are stained with the blood of countless people in our clan. The reason we've come this far is because we want to avenge our king. He roared, his anger evident in his voice, why are you stopping me? Bowie said in a low voice but firmly, because that's what the current king said. Marianne still stood in front of Cage, and said sincerely, please, calm down, I will definitely help you avenge him, but killing her now is meaningless. We have to find the one behind the attack to get revenge. He remained unconvinced, so Marianne had to turn to ask Marianne more to prove that she was thinking in the right direction. Can you tell me what the guild master Ba Jun looks like? Is he wearing a long black robe? Marianne was puzzled but still replied, no, quite the opposite, he prefers to wear white lab coats. She reached out and used a visualization spell to project an image of Ba Jun. From her memory, perfect from head to toe, leaving Marianne stunned. Your guild master is a child, can you help me visualize the image in my head? Everyone can see that he looks like a child, but Marianne had to remind him to be careful not to be fooled. He only looks like that because he takes all sorts of potions and drugs that he concocts himself. But I can help you visualize the image in your head, give me your hand. Marianne cautiously held out her hand for her to take, is it like this? Marianne held the image in one hand and touched Marianne with the other, telling him to relax and not try to block my magic power. Unan was sleeping in a daze, and his eyes happened to close just as the mushroom took the strange girl's hand, and he ran to Marianne and lay at his feet. As their hands touched, a light flashed, and Marianne whispered, now please try your best to visualize the person in your head. Marianne tried to recall the strange name, and used the visualization spell to project the image. That person next to Ba Jun. He exclaimed in surprise, that's right, it's this guy. Do you recognize anyone from your guild? Marianne replied no, I have never seen anyone dressed like that in the guild. He must not be from the one-eyed fire guild. Bo suddenly interjected, is this the mysterious person you saw in the mushroom kingdom before? Hearing the mushroom girl ask again like this, Marianne asked in a panic, that's right, he was behind you guys. Didn't you see him? Impossible. Cage's roar startled both of them and they immediately let go of their hands. He looked menacing. With my power and bows, no one can get close to us without us noticing. Humans are known to be evil and cunning. Surely you have put some kind of mind or thought magic on this kid. Hearing the sound of the hilt of the sword being gripped tightly, Marianne was so scared that she hugged her head and said in distress, I didn't, I really didn't. At this point, it's impossible to apologize, Marianne said, if you don't want to die, make a deal with me. The cages and Bo were all stunned to look at him, it was a bold move, even Marianne couldn't believe it, what kind of deal? Who are these people? Marianne stood up to show her seriousness. The enemy of the enemy is a friend. I want you to help us defeat Ba Jun. Marianne said firmly that she could help and could even sacrifice her life just to kill him. But on one condition, you can't hurt Mr. G. U. U. Ham. Bo replied for him, of course the answer is no. He is the one who burned down the entire mushroom kingdom. He must die. Marianne replied, then I refuse, as determined as she was, saying that she could help, even though she knew that if she did, she would surely die with Cage. Sure enough, he stared at her, I gave you a chance but you refused. Now the chance to prove your worth to us is zero percent. Marianne clenched her skirt, accepted her fate, and stubbornly said, then kill me. At least when I die, Ba Jun won't get the last ingredient. At that moment, Zormor suddenly declared that he accepted the conditions, but I want the fire mage to help me defeat the real mastermind behind all this, and then I won't pursue this matter any further. Of course Cage didn't agree easily, he said angrily, kid, this is not something you can decide. Although you are the king now, we still need to avenge our people and the previous king. But this time Zormor was unyielding, he called him seriously, 
Uncle, if you think about it carefully, isn't the one behind this attack our real target for revenge? Ba Jun has an army of killers, and Galum's mysterious disciples are still lurking in the shadows. If we have the fire mage to help us defeat them, it would be good for him to atone for his crimes. Ask the girl next to him what she thinks, because Zormor knows she is the calmest one of the group. As soon as she said it was reasonable, Cage went crazy and jumped up with his sword in his hand. But before I confirm his attitude, I want to reserve the right to kill them at any time. So the two of them agreed without caring about Cage, though he had no choice but to go along with it, and said, if you two have said so, then I have nothing more to say. Marianne saw Zormor approaching, and was embarrassed to thank him for his trust, and was worried that the fierce Mushroom Kingdom had invited her to join the team. Unexpectedly, the gloved hand extended out, making Marianne not understand, and Zormor's face brightened with hope. From now on we are a team. Looking until her face turned red, Marianne quickly wiped away a tear of emotion, took his hand, and officially turned a new page in history. The system reported that the high priest had joined the team, and from today on they would live and die together. The truncated moonstone ore still glowed, faintly, but the scene in the volcanic vein was not peaceful. The rice roll head just realized that these things would never die, but there were no killers around. There were none within tens of meters of him because they had turned into fossils and piled up high. As for time, he had plenty, he picked his ear, ready to play with them. Suddenly, something drilled out of the ground right next to his feet, a giant, glowing head opened its mouth and bit his arm. After it bit him, it gnashed its teeth, but the rice roll head's face only showed disgust. He said, if you want to eat, eat it, if you don't eat it, let it go, he is not a monster, he is just a monster. Because the demon kept grinding, but it couldn't get through, his skin was so hard that the teeth couldn't penetrate it. The other eye punched the lip and the eyes split in two ways, leaving the skull rolling around. The pile of corpses trembled, wanting to rush out but couldn't. They were all frozen stiff like a collective scandal. Unable to move individually, each urn moved the entire mass of living corpses forward. The things that couldn't be separated and were close together suddenly wrapped around each other and joined together again, trying to appear as wriggling as worms. Suddenly, the whole group turned into a hideous skull, super giant, opening its mouth wide and swooping down on the rice roll head. He was not afraid, but he did not want to waste time. It was time to use that thing. Reaching into his muscular arm, he fumbled in his pocket space and took out a brand new cassette player. The corpses had already begun to form the shape of a fat man, roaring and swooping down, but he was still hunched over adjusting the radio. He pressed the split button, and the two sides of the speaker vibrated violently, and the sound waves from it spread out into visible and tangible obedience. The rice roll head seemed to ignore the corpse's punch that was trying to reach him. It got very close, he suddenly opened his eyes wide and threw something into the sky with a flick of his hand. Cutting off the other arm, he stomped his foot hard, and shot up to the same level as the large corpse, and slammed his arms down as if he was performing a pole dance on stage. With each collision in the air, the power from the rice roll hit the monster. He followed his music and played a few more beats, and his feet tapped a few more times. The whole space suddenly was filled with the sound of drums, constantly thumping, accompanied by the sound of a piercing trumpet. He danced to the music alone, his body forming into a superhero and charging forward. When he stomped on the ground, the giant monster had taken several horrific punches, leaving large membranes, and it didn't move for a long time. The music was still ringing in his ears, but until now, the rice roll head had only. In the introduction of the singer, his hands trembling to the music, it was time for the Zopcon to know. While fighting, he danced everything from Michael Jackson to BTS and then Blackpink. The music was getting more and more soulful, to the point where the controller of the zombies didn't understand, and peeked out to see what was going on. Lilith the zombie reported to her master, magic consumption is at 5%, we have extracted all the memories of the killers but we don't recognize this person. Ba Jun was clearly not happy, where did this strange and powerful guy come from, there was no information at all, so he just kept silent. Lilith asked her master, what are your orders? He was so mad, that his eyes were wide open, kill this annoying old man. The rice roll guy was still dancing after the fight, now he was switching to a song that seemed to summon all the killers to play along. They were afraid that he wouldn't have a dance troupe, so they put their arms around each other's necks and turned into a wave to create an effect for the radio guy. Finally, they formed a giant killer with a hideous bumpy head, staring intently at the dancer, itching to get at him. Each head cast a deadly spell, vomiting out a magic circle that looked like a spinning wheel, and threw it at the rice roll guy who was still dancing. In the midst of the loud music, he played with his bare hands to punch away the discs, and in a moment, made his body spin as fast as a pinwheel 
punching everything from top to bottom, left to right. The music changed, and he changed his position accordingly, but the vomit of the corpses was too much, and he accidentally got hit in the temple. However, it only left a small cut, and he was able to curse and slap it, cursing it not to interrupt his dance. Stick to his dance moves. The discs flew like rain, gradually expanding their territory, turning the gray sand upside down. The music stopped, and the man's face looked as black as a pig's liver, so the discs took advantage of the situation and flew more and more. They fell down to the rice roll guy at the same time, and then the zombies clung to each other, preparing to fall on him. They had transformed into the shape of hideous giant killers, and the waves came straight to the target, gathering into a ball of killer life. The zombies closed in on each other, and in less than a few seconds, they were trembling from the light coming from within. At first, it was just a few rays, then a huge beam of light, shot out like a spaceship had just been launched. The zombies that ate the shot were burnt black and red, and fell down below. The pupil still saw that the ball of corpses had burned a large, round hole right in the middle, revealing a black dot at its center. The lava surged and licked at the ground, melting it. The man dipped his two feet into the lava, his hair and head on fire in a very stylish way, and he had entered the 20% activation mode. How dare you break my beatbot, you've gone too far. The level 83 wild boar king just cursed on the screen. Which bastard is hiding behind? Come out and fight me. His fierce face was clearly shown on the screen of the sphere. Lilith next to the machine reported, the magic consumption is, has reached 20%, shall we continue? Ba Jun seemed a little impressed, not many people have reached the level of this guy, but I've never heard of his name before. Turning his head to look at Gu Yu Ham on the white wall, he asked the other person who seemed to be a user of fire magic, could he be your hidden trump card, Gu Yu Ham? Of course, he didn't know who the hell that guy was, he just prayed that he wasn't someone from the holy sanctuary. Luke Rezor will never allow Marianne to regain her power. Please forget about me, don't do anything stupid. On the dark land of the volcanic vein, the rumbling of hundreds of feet running away from the rice roll guy. He roared, hey, you're not done with me yet, but they didn't listen and rushed into the rotten meatball that was rolling, gradually disappearing from sight, making him bored to curse. Seeing them run away, the boar king was so angry that he jumped out of the lava river, his two legs flaming as he chased after them. But suddenly he stopped, his nostrils flaring. Never mind, there are more important things waiting for me. Scooping up a piece of lava forest, he put it in his mouth and sucked it up, tossing it back and forth between his two cheeks and then spitting it down into the river. Then, in the same place, the old man scooped up some water and washed his face, sitting down on the rock and sighing with relief. Oh, that was great. Again, he reached into his storage bag, and the boar king pulled out a bag as big as Santa Claus's gift bag, and put it on his shoulder and walked away proudly. His nose shouted at everyone, and suddenly it said something out of nowhere. My little pig is still waiting for its food. Each of his steps left a dent in the almond lava forest. The journey of a real man was just beginning. In contrast to the hot landscape of the volcanic vein, the central area of the five-colored desert was cold and full of white snow. The sky appeared a beautiful level 97 female dragon queen in the middle of it, flapping its pure white wings. It had unlimited strength, and could fly as far as it wanted. With a speed of up to 95, all its stats were sky high. This monster is known as a mysterious and beautiful species, living with. It's made in cloud fortresses that are difficult to see. The equipment and jewelry made from their fur and bones not only make the wearer feel more noble, but also have a very high resistance to magic. The Radiant Dragon is also one of the three dragons that dragon knights hunt the most, and suddenly three strangers appeared on the opposite side. The beautiful eyes of the Radiant Dragon looked at them warily, but, before it could act, it was slashed by a cold blue light. The creature was almost cut in half, and it fell to the ground in the snow, dead. Its bloody head meat only stuck to the tip of the fanged one's teeth for a moment, and he spat it out in disgust. How come I heard that these monsters live in cloud fortresses? What are they doing here? Kama Strawberry flew parallel to him and said, he can't do anything right. It seems that the watchdog of our guild is very happy. The old man wanted to slap the other guy, but he was afraid of the saint is flying above. So he asked her if he could tear the guy's mouth off his face. Camaro knew he couldn't, so he teased him even more, I'd be happy to fight you. I'm enough to protect the master by myself. I'm enough to protect the master by myself. He stuck out his bloody Mara tongue and teased, just you alone? Have you forgotten about the time I beat you up last time? After some back and forth, Lucrezia spoke up and he finally shut up. This is a very rare opportunity, 
We can't afford to make any mistakes, so be quiet. Remember when I found out about Marianne, she was supposed to sacrifice her body to bring the demon lord back to life. It's a shame that she chose to keep her purity. Then she ran to the One-Eyed Harmony Guild and was protected by Giu Yuham, so Lucrezia couldn't do anything to her for a long time. No one would have thought that one day Marianne would send out a distress signal and send a message that the Saintess had never thought of. Not only is the One-Eyed Harmony Guild in danger, but the two top members are also fighting each other. If Giu Yuham and Ba Jun can destroy each other, we will have a chance to win Gallum's heart. Suddenly, the sky in front of them opened up with a strange purple energy, and Lucrezia had to tell everyone to stop immediately. We've been discovered, the Saintess only said that, and the two fake ones became alert. What happened? Fenya's wolf nose sniffed around for a while, and he howled, I don't smell anything. Hey, Strawberry, use your echolocation. The cold dragon devil said indifferently. I've been using it for a while now, and there's nothing suspicious within a 10 kilometers radius. The saintess activated the sharing of her senses with these two gods, explaining that the two of them couldn't sense him. As soon as their vision was shared, the two subordinates were startled to see a swirling black streak, gradually transforming into a human figure with several small puppets flying out. Galum's apostle only uttered two words, go back. The saintess replied to him, besides so so who has disappeared, you are the most mysterious of all the apostles. You already know my plan, so stand aside, the heart of the demon lord will be mine. He only repeated the same two words as before, go back. Making the saintess lose her patience, she asked sharply, what if you don't? The two subordinates below, growled, waiting for the order to attack, but the other one only uttered the same two words, go back. Fenrir now lost his patience and muttered, master, why waste your breath? Lucrezia laughed, madly under her pure white mask, the one-eyed harmony guild has officially disbanded. Do you think you can defeat me without their help? The two subordinates received the signal, their whole body emitting a red and a blue light, releasing energy into two spheres, causing the pressure to change suddenly. Fenrir growled in his wolf-like dragon voice, anyone who dares to block the master's way will die. Along with him was, the vampire is sticking out his long tongue and licking it, that's the only thing that the two of us agree on. A level 118 vampire king and a level 121 white wolf king can take down an entire guild when they join forces, their henchmen are ready to fight, so Lucrezia confidently continued. Zuzu never wants to reveal her identity, but today, I will remove your mask to see who you are. The other one still stood motionless in the thick snow, neither side willing to give way. He pulled out the familiar bell, and repeated in a low voice, go back. Then gently shook the bell, causing it to vibrate and sweep across. The white snow below, revealing purple root-like things sticking up. The jingling of the bell was like an annoying sound in the ears of Camaro and Fenya. They didn't know what was going on until they saw the snow being trampled on by webbed feet. The huge monsters that were summoned were all looking up, waiting for the apostle to give the order to attack. The wolf king didn't seem bothered at all, since when did the demon king's transform form looks so cheap? Camaro added, not only are there a lot of them, but they are also flawed. Suddenly, the growl of a monster with sharp fangs made both of them wary. Growl of a monster with sharp fangs made both of them wary. Suddenly, the growl of a monster with sharp fangs made both of them wary. The radiant dragon queen with five eyes and a gigantic size appeared from behind the apostle. Her dark breath made Camaro retract his slanderous words. He still only repeated the two words, go back, with an undisguised threat. Marianne's projection magic was was now showing the entire scene of the one-eyed harmony guild headquarters she had just finished telling everything she knew about the guild Bo nodded now we have the location of the target and the stone now we just need to attack but marianne suddenly spoke up i'm afraid i can't go with you if you want to surprise ba jun the poison curse in my body could expose the whole group Bo didn't want her to separate so he frowned and asked why he found that the curse mark was indeed a difficult problem i've tried many different medicines and none of them have worked a female mage bowed her head dejected and hopeless although all kinds of healing potions can heal physical wounds, they are useless against curses. Unless the caster of the curse lifts it himself, there is no way to remove it. Moreover, I have two layers of curses inside me. The second one will kill me once it is activated. Bo suddenly remembered another way. What if he could absorb the curse? Cage gently, never getting tired of the child. Leave her here and let's go. But Bo felt that it was not possible. If she stayed here alone, she would be easily caught by Ba Jun's undead. Miss Marianne, if you trust me, let me try. In fact, ever since this curse was cast on me, 
death is only a matter of time. Once the magic power that Lord Guu Ham has cast on my body disappears, I will. Mary Ann hesitated to say this, we are on the same team anyway, I will trust you, as long as you have the ability to increase our chances. Even if you fail, there is nothing to regret. However, the two of them asked seriously if there was anything. It turned out that Mary Ann only shyly asked if you could tell me your identity, and why do you hate Lord Guu Ham so much? Without a word, the two of them exploded in front of Mary Ann. Onan still kept his original form, licking Joe Mo's mushroom head, and he only needed that to make the little girl horrified. Isn't this a monster transformation curse? Onan let out a puff of smoke, we are all mushrooms, from the mushroom kingdom that was slaughtered by you. After she finished speaking, she exploded, turning into a monster form. The fire mage who destroyed our home, how can we not hate him? Marianne began to panic because she remembered looking at Onan. No wonder she wanted to come to the One-Eyed Harmony Guild, trying to explain that Lord Guu Ham was forced. Cage's sarcastic voice spoke up for her. That's enough reason to sow discord. He sternly said you should also remember my face. Marianne looked at Cage's face for a long time, just one sound. Then looked again, asking a pointless question. Aren't you the one who lives there? No, damn it. Cage yelled furiously, I'm a mushroom. He went mad again, making Marianne bow and apologize repeatedly. Zomo explained that the noisy sound was similar for many reasons, but he couldn't turn back into a mushroom monster for now. Let me make this clear, Onan exhaled smoke. We are only in a temporary truce. We will never forget the name of that fire mage. And Ba Jun who is behind him must die. We will discuss how to deal with you and the mage later. But if you try to do anything now, we will not hesitate to kill you. Marianne timidly replied that she understood, as long as she could save Ji Yu. Yu Ham, she was willing even if she became a bait. Onan looked at Zomo decisively and said that she only needed to say that much. What is your majesty going to do now? Marianne turned to him and repeated, I will do as you say. He said it was easy, just let me get into your body. The little girl shrank her shoulders, panicked, what do you mean by getting into my body? We'll know about that later. Cage stepped out of there in frustration. As a mushroom man, I don't like it. Any human children, but I still get kicked out of here. Marianne lifted her green hair, revealing her flawless thin back, and asked hesitantly if this was okay? I don't know why I have to sit in such a strange position, but. Zomo excitedly put his thumbs up in approval, that's it. Up to now, he has analyzed many different things, from weapons, monster colors, various materials, and even biological substances. The analysis skill has reached level 6, allowing Zomo to analyze everything found in nature. The current analysis target is no longer bound by any fixed category. However, players still need to be careful about the results of absorbing different materials. Based on the skill description, Zomo realized that as long as the curse was not suspected to be infected with magic, the analysis would definitely work on it. No sooner said than done, he exploded a pile of Emperor's bases, turning them into the unconscious mushroom bodies, and jumped towards Marianne at Zomo's command. They reached a certain height, and simultaneously spread their legs 180 degrees, pressing their buttocks against the mage's body, leaving no space from her shoulders to her buttocks. The mushroom buttocks stuck to Marianne's skin as soon as they touched it, sucking it like a smoothie, and somehow made her let out a moan. Zomo concentrated on controlling the clone to continue, not forgetting to tell her not to resist, I'm going in. Using the undead operation, Zomo commanded the movement of the mushroom clones from afar. They began to light up with eyes, noses, and mouths, and the skill was activated, causing Marianne's face to flush and her mouth to open in a silent scream. In the spiritual world, Zomo saw fragments of. The statues were crumbling everywhere. Fortunately, the system was also there to inform him that he had entered the target's spiritual world through the use of undead manipulation. Congratulations on obtaining a new skill, linking the undead and gaining 10,000 experience points. He was surprised to be swimming in space, seeing something strange, and the system explained that it was the target's inner self. The things around it were the curses. Looking closely, it was a miniature naked version of Marianne, wrapped in a transparent block of stone, bound by many shining chains. The moment the curse touched the inner self, the target would be torn apart and die. Zomo used the undead jet to fly closer, clearly seeing the two curses, one red and one blue, surrounding it. He wanted to enter the area inside, but, he couldn't, his mushroom hat was too big. The system said that the curse was a strange kind of magic. If you want to get rid of it, unless you have the right method, to do it, otherwise no item will help. He frowned knowingly and asked, are you sure about that? Zomo clasped his hands together, spread his legs wide on the curse, and let out a loud bang from his body. The undead cloud enveloped the top, 
and then a group of mushrooms, appeared and attacked at Zomo's command. They pressed their butts together against the white screen, covering it completely, over the bridge, so that there was not even a gap. At the sound of the shout, the analysis, the whole group began to get to work. Outside, Cage was still isolated and hiding behind a rock. Zomo had been in Marianne's spiritual world for a long time and hadn't come out, making him very anxious. We have to reassure him not to worry. Zomo must have a way. The clones on her body were still emitting a bright light. Marianne was no longer happy with the strange feeling, and turned to pain and sweat. Light radiated from the cracks where the mushroom buttocks were crowded together. Hundreds of mushrooms were flexing their buttocks muscles, and their buttocks muscles were doing the same task. What kind of pain in the ass has everyone experienced? The crack widened. Zomo shouted at the climax, determined not to let go. Gradually the movement awakened Marianne's inner self, who opened her eyes. What caught her eye were hundreds of golden fishing floats, and the little girl screamed in fright, her butt, her butt, why are there so many butts? Just then, there was a loud bang, and the curse outside shattered into pieces, and the mushrooms on her body were pulled out. This time, it didn't hurt anymore, but it turned into pleasure, and the little girl tried to breathe a few times, not knowing that Zomo's clones had their faces buried in the ground, their butts facing the sky. The status window popped up to congratulate the player on successfully analyzing the curse, gaining the skills of anti-magic and anti-poison. Pocketed 20,000 experience points, and the analysis increased to level 7. It's done. Zomo's eyes widened in disbelief. On Marianne's white back, there were three pairs of buttocks, still smoking as if they had just come back from a long run. But soon they disappeared as if they had never existed. Unan couldn't stand it anymore ran over and hugged her tightly to his chest, rubbing against the mushroom cap. Calling the mushroom, oh mushroom, he comforted the little girl, thinking that she was worried that he had lost his strength, but unexpectedly, his teeth clenched on the top of the cap and pulled. Oh my god, Unan is hungry and has nothing to eat, don't tell me that the little girl is in a state of chaos again. The more Unan bit, the more he liked it, and Zomo struggled with pain, close, close, don't do it. Marianne gradually regained consciousness, not expecting that he had not only removed the curse of Ah Jun, but could also incidentally separate the divine curse that the man had placed on him. 